Chapter Hi guys, one. I want to invite Prologue. you to join the Patreon the where highest you get paying some benefits job. as well as audio When I was 10, my father sat YouTube. me down and asked me. Shin, do you know who in Korea makes the most money? The president. I was innocent. Wrong. M and then male doctors. Wrong again. Male lawyers. The Ministry of Gender Equality is going to take you away. Female lawyers. At my careful answer, my father said with a hearty laugh, it's the Dungeon Explorers. Ha. Huh. At the age of 10, I learned about the existence of dungeons. Chapter, 2. My father was the direct heir of a clan known for its spearmanship. There were other ancient martial art clans scattered throughout Korea, but my father was strong even amongst the heirs. While growing up, I never once saw my father lose. Even so, my father would complain every day of his ill fortune, saying things I could not understand. TSK, what use is there being strong on the outside? With no chi, it's all looks and no substance. Ki. Shin has a ki. Ha, huh, not ki, but chi. It's the energy you build up inside the body. Of course, as I was only eight years old, I didn't understand what my father meant by building energy inside the body. I was more interested by other things. Seeing my father smash boulders with his bare fists or drilling a hole in a concrete wall with a wooden spear in less than 10 seconds, I thought I wanted to get strong just like him. You can do it too. Really? I can be as strong as you, dad. Of course. You just have to train hard. Okay. I was at the age where I admired comic book superheroes. It was also why I fell for my father's sweet talk so easily. He had purposely left out the detail that it would take dozens of years of training. He forced me, his less than ten-year-old son, to scale mountains and even abandoned me in the forest. He said it was a necessary process to become a hero. Did I obediently do what he said? When I was only eight? Of course not. At first, I was bawling my eyes out. However, the only person who could cheer me up in this situation, my mother, was in Korea. I, on the other hand, was in the middle of the Amazon rainforest with my father. Without any way of communicating with the outside world, my cries for help went unheard. Yua. Shut up. There won't be dinner until you kill that snake. I hate you dad. Yua. My first ever summer break, which happened when I was eight, seemed to last forever. It was the same for that year's winter break, the following summer break, and the following winter break. For two years, I learned the basics of martial arts. At ten, I was able to at least take up a cool stance. My body became large, unlike others my age, and my once tender arms had turned a little muscular. Although the boys my age said that I looked cool and followed me around, the girls distanced themselves from me, saying that the cute shin had turned into a monster. Humph, girls. Once they grew up, they would no doubt go crazy at the sight of muscles of course, back then, I was young too, and seeing my body keep changing, I whined to my father to bring my arms back. He beat me up. He had long since stopped treating me like a cute son. And so on my tenth birthday, my father finally brought it up. It was a story about a dungeon that would stay with me for the rest of my life. In the dungeon, there are lots of precious things. Mana stones, magical weapons heck, even orc skin would be treated as new material never before seen on earth. Wow! So how do you go to the dungeon? My father laughed as he stroked my head. Through dad's cell phone. Can I go too? Not yet, kiddo. You're not strong enough. Dad, what's a mana stone? Can I see it? T that's at my inquiry, my father's smooth talk came to a crashing halt. I should have noticed then that something was wrong. Independent Illinois show you that later. No, there's no reason to. You can enter the dungeon and bring one back yourself. Okay. It'll go to the dungeon. I want to see it for myself. My ten-year-old self was detached from modern technology. In this day and age where even elementary school kids had smartphones, I instead received a kid-sized wooden spear as my school entrance gift. There was no way I could have known what dungeons really were. 
some kids my age were already playing dungeon exploring fantasy games on their smartphones. Without knowing that dungeons were imaginary, I bragged to my friends that I would enter a dungeon when I grew up. When my friends understood the severity of my delusion, they showed me all kinds of novels and games to convince me that dungeons did not exist in the real world. Unfortunately, my two years of training had turned even my brain into muscle. In other words, I was slow to understand what people were saying. At school, I talked and talked about become a dungeon explorer. What do you think happened? In what was dubbed Kong Shin's dungeon explorer incident, I lost my two of my best friends, Min Su and Su Chan. Kong Shin was my name, of course. Kong was my family name and Shin was my given name. My father chose my name, saying that single syllable names seemed strong. My mother had also agreed that it was a good name. Regardless of how others reacted, my grand ambition of becoming a dungeon explorer never disappeared. I trained harder and harder. Having trained systematically under my father, who had already half transcended the limits of a human, when I became 15 years old, my father was the only person left on earth who I was afraid of. Guns were scary, to be honest, but I was able to dodge a bullet with about a 50% chance. It was then that I realized that I had surpassed the realm of a human being. The next thing I knew, I had no one to call friends, and even my own beautiful younger sister was avoiding me. On my 15th birthday, I took my clothes off and stood in front of a mirror. Because I couldn't see my whole body if I stood too close, I had to stand far back. In it was a hulk. No, oh, this can't be. Well, maybe I was exaggerating a little. In any case, my body was far from normal. I was two meters tall and was only in my third year of middle school. My body looked like a gorilla's. It was all muscle and barely any fat. It was at the stage where my limbs were better described as deadly weapons. It was not something the human body could have normally. Something was definitely wrong. Not even my father looked like this. It's almost like an orc. Your handsome face takes after me, but your body. Dear husband, you must mean his face takes after me. His body is just like yours. My mother treated only my head as her son. Even though she was my true mother, I sometimes suspected her of being a protractor. How else could she be so sharp and ruthless in her measurements of me? Father, why did I become so big? I don't know, maybe it's because you started training at a young age. When did you start your training? Sixteen, I think. You crook. Hey, I only wanted to make you a dungeon explorer. On my fifteenth birthday, I beat my father in an official match. It was the moment where youth beat out experience. But even after taking a loss at the hands of my shoulder throw, my father said with bitterness, so you didn't manage to obtain chi. There is no such thing as chi. The thing about dungeons is a lie too. A lie you'll find out soon, son, so spare my back. On the same night that I carried out my sweet revenge, I received a message on the smartphone my mother bought me for winning against father. When I saw it, my eyes opened wide. Unlock by entering your password. Ku I can't open it. Because my head was full of muscle, it was impossible for me to remember the basic password mother put in. The next day, I asked mother to unlock the phone. Lost for words, she got rid of the lock entirely. I don't understand why she didn't do so in the first place. I nodded my head as I accepted the phone. When I looked down, this was the message I received. You have been acknowledged by the self-proclaimed strongest on earth Kong Yangong, and have acquired the Dungeon Explorer's license. As of this moment, you have become one of the five Dungeon Explorers on Earth. Would you like to enter the dungeon now? Dungeon Explorer it said. My eyes became wide in surprise as I realized the dream I had since I was ten years old was coming true. Watching my surprised face, mother walked toward me, looked at the phone screen, and crossed her arms. This old man dares to mess with his son with Katok. Today, he won't go unpunished. What's Katok, mom? It's the messenger you're looking at now. What's a messenger? I became embarrassed when she didn't reply, so I went to my younger sister to ask. She had just graduated elementary school and was in her first year of middle school. 
When I knocked on her door, she ran towards it happily and opened it. After seeing my appearance, she let out a shriek and shrunk in fear. When I explained my situation, she kindly explained it to me with a shy smile. I looked scary on the outside, but she still cared for me deeply. After about five hours of explanation, I became a bit more used to modern technology. Yua, how do I reply to this? Ah, mm, mm, appa, like this. Ah, what a cute angel. Seeing my sister trying to help even as she stuttered made me want to hug her. But because I didn't want to scare her again, I held myself back. After learning how to reply to the katok I received, I told her I would pay her back with a mana stone from the dungeon. Then, I typed yes into my phone. The next moment, I was inside the dungeon. An endless grey hallway, walls made out of stones and torches hanging on them. It was exactly like what father had described. Perhaps he wasn't lying after all. There was more. The moment I realized where I was, I heard someone's whisper in my ears. Kong Shin, bronze rank 9 dungeon explorer, has entered the dungeon. This is your first time. Beginner dungeon explorer support has sent you 5 lowest grade potions. Analyzing your abilities complete. Beginner dungeon explorer support has sent you a sharp wooden spear. Confirming rank complete. You are 5th of the 5 dungeon explorers from earth. You are 146,298 of the 146,298 total dungeon explorers. Rankings will be renewed at 6A. Tomorrow morning. You have obtained a status. Would you like to confirm? Yes no. Sorry for dragging it out so long. Everything was leading up to this moment. The moment where I became a true dungeon explorer. The Dungeon Explorer, titled Crown Prince of 5F. Chapter, 3. I couldn't calm myself hearing all these alerts. The first thing I thought of was yes. I'm finally a dungeon explorer. The next thing was is bronze rank 9 high or low. The last was what's a potion. Anything more was hard to put into my head. Ugh, I'm getting dizzy. Can you say that slower? Would you like to check your message log? What's a message log? It contains the messages Kong Shin Nim received. Yes, show me. As soon as the words left my mouth, a translucent window appeared in front of my eyes. Startled, I took a step back. To think it could trick and appear before me, who has better senses than my father. But when I realized that it did not have a real form, I let my guard down and approached it. There, the voices I had been hearing were recorded. It was amazing. Sharp wooden spear. It is inside your inventory. Would you like to confirm? Confirm how? You just have to say the word inventory. Inventory. Yua. It was the same as before. A translucent window suddenly appeared before my eyes. The only difference was that this one did not have words on it, and that it was long in height and short in width. There were ten fist-sized spaces next to each other. There was nothing above or below them, so it was one by ten. And on the first space was picture of a glass bottle filled with red liquid. The number five was written next to it. It seemed this was the potion the voice was talking about. In the second space was a wooden spear. When I reached toward it subconsciously, my hand went into the window. Yua. What was more surprising was that my hand didn't come out the other side. It really felt like my hand was inside the window. I wriggled my hand in surprise, but I stopped when I felt something touching my hand. It was thick and long. This was. A spear. I instinctively grabbed onto it and pulled it out of the window. As expected, a sharp-looking wooden spear was in my hand. As I stared at it, a small window popped up in front of me. Sharp wooden spear normal. Durability 7070. Attack 10. Equipment limit none. Explanation a wooden spear perfect for a beginner to use. It has no special abilities. Mm. I will be honest. I had no clue what this meant. For me who had never played a single game before, the terms beginner's weapon and basic weapons were foreign. In any case, I knew it was a weapon I could use. That was enough. 
I hung the wooden spear on my back and proceeded to check out this thing called potion. It said it would restore 100 HP, but I didn't know what that meant. Then, the voice told me to check my status. I didn't know whose voice this was, but I thought of it as a nice nunas, and just like she told me, I yelled out check status. Name, Kong Shin Race, Human Sex, Male. Class, None Title, None Rank, Bronze 9. Level, 1. HP 240240MP0. Strength 18 Dexterity 16 Constitution 17. Intelligence 5 Magic 0 Charm 7 Luck 10. Skill Low Rank Martial Arts LV4, Low Rank Spear Technique Master, Mid Rank Spear Technique LV3. Strange. I see two zeros there. And if my strength is 18 but my intelligence is 5, is my strength high or is my intelligence low? What's HP and what's MP? HP represents your life. When you get attacked by monsters, your HP will decrease. When it reaches zero, you will be kicked out of the dungeon. In that case, you will not be able to re-enter the dungeon for one week. MP represents your mana. It is used to cast magic or skills. It is also called Qi. Qi. Your MP is zero. In other words, you have no Qi. How can I get it? Those from worlds other than Earth know methods to accumulate mana in their bodies. Also, those who already have mana can increase the amount of mana they have by clearing the dungeon floor and leveling up. Leveling up. It will be explained to you soon. In conclusion, there is currently no way for Kong Shin Nim to obtain MP. What can I do to get it? You need to obtain a mana cultivation method. How can I obtain that? You can buy it at the floor shop located at the end of dungeon floors. Note, it can only be bought from floor shops above 10F, and they are very expensive. 10F. Since I'm on first floor, I just have to climb to 10th, right? That is right. How much does it cost? Is it more than 50,000 won? I was in my third year of middle school, and with my monthly allowance being 10,000 won, 50,000 won was an enormous amount of money. As I was wondering, the voice answered me. You cannot buy floor shop items with the one currency. You may only trade gold or monster remains dropped by the dungeon's monsters. Gold. Okay, there was hope. From what I understood, there were monsters in the dungeon and they dropped gold when defeated. I could climb to a higher floor when I defeated all of them, and when I reached the end of the tenth floor, I could buy a mana cultivation method from something called the floor shop. Then, I could finally obtain chi. I could fulfill my father's dream as well. I was awed at my brain's ability to comprehend all this. Of course, my brain wasn't yet capable of thinking if it was so easy, my father would have done it already. My intelligence was 5, and it was only a year later that I learned the average level 1 stat was 10. I even forgot why I wanted to become a dungeon explorer, and set my eyes on obtaining chi. I signaled Nuna that I wanted to begin exploring by asking her where monsters lived. Nuna kindly told me I could begin by shouting commence exploration. I shouted as soon as I heard it. Commence exploration. Then, all the windows that had been surrounding me disappeared in an instant and an ominous aura began to surround me. A few of the torches were extinguished and only the ones closest to me remained lit, burning strongly. Because I traveled the world with my father every break, darkness could not faze me. However, the prickling sensation I felt on my skin was concerning. Then, I felt a presence I did not feel before. I held my wooden spear and put up my guard. This presence was like that of the 10M long anaconda I fought at the Amazon. SS, SS. I could sense the anacondas crawling towards me from all sides, and I gulped. I knew I couldn't defeat an anaconda with my strength alone. Previously, father and I had barely defeated it with me drawing its attention and my father delivering blow after blow. But could I defeat several of them? Alone. I didn't want to be kicked out when I finally became a dungeon explorer. Thinking this, I tightly gripped my wooden spear. I saw them walk out of the darkness, and my eyes opened wide in surprise. Yua. Ah. 50 centimeters long and 30 centimeters wide. 
what seemed like puddings seemed to be diligently crawling towards me. To compare these things to anacondas. I felt sorry to the anacondas. I doubted whether these things were even alive. I stabbed my spear through one to check and it easily pierced through. You obtained a slime piece. You obtained one gold. It exploded with a bang. I stood still, stupefied, but soon gave a shout of joy and jumped. Who? I'm a dungeon explorer now. The curtains had lifted for the legendary stage of the dungeon explorer Kong Shin. Or so I thought before I knew any better. It didn't take long until harsh reality set in. When I first felt it was when I reached the third floor, past the second floor when honeybees attacked. Compared to the first and second floor, which were relatively easy, monsters called goblins appeared on the third floor, giving me trouble. At first, I did not even know what happened as my HP reached zero and I was chased out. I couldn't re-enter the dungeon for a week. The next week, I grit my teeth and entered the dungeon. Then, I finally figured out how I had died. Poisonous darts. The goblins had shot out poisonous darts and I had been completely paralyzed. When monsters hit me, it usually hurt as much as when my father hit me. But because of the paralyzing poison, I couldn't feel any pain whatsoever. Not feeling pain was scarier than one might think. Because there were so many of them, it was hard to dodge every single poisonous dart. As a result, my HP reached zero multiple times and I couldn't enter the dungeon for a whole month. In the end, I asked my father for advice. Father, the goblins keep shooting poisonous darts at me. Hmm. You're already at the third floor. It hasn't even been three months yet. Am I fast? It took your father a whole year to reach the second floor. It turned out my father had not yet awoken his sixth sense and was unable to feel the slimes approaching. As a result, it had taken him a year to take the initiative. Since you couldn't enter the dungeon for a week once you were kicked out, it wasn't surprising it had taken so long. Even I made no progress for a month. So you're level 3 now? Yep. When you cleared the dungeon floor, your level increased by 1 and you were given 5 bonus stats. With it, you could raise your strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, and others. Because I was unhappy with my intelligence being at 5, I put all my stats into intelligence when I reached level 2. Thanks to that, my intelligence had reached the level of an average person. Of course, even with my increased intelligence, because of the long years I lived out of touch with reality, I still believed I could easily reach the tenth floor. I tried to raise my magic stat when I reached level 3, but I couldn't put any points into a stat that was zero. In the end, I put two into strength, two into dexterity, and one into constitution. You must have made some money then. Money? I tilted my head. Money? I had gold, but no money. What relation was there between the dungeon's gold and money? What my father said next made my ears perk up. Chapter, 4. You can exchange it at the floor shop. Exchange? You mean you can exchange gold for one? Is there a bank? At the floor shop, stupid. Even if my intelligence stat was 10, I had lived too long as a fool. Even though I increased my intelligence stat, it was still difficult to breach the level I was born with. I talked back to my father, not fully understanding what he meant by going to the floor shop. In the end, I had to pay with my body. It was true that the body suffered if the mind was stupid. A week later, when I could re-enter the dungeon, I did not shout commence exploration, but rather turned back and went to the second floor shop. Because I was told what I wanted was at the tenth floor shop, I had not visited the first and second floor shops. It was because I felt I would waste my gold if I saw what was on display. Yes, customer, you can exchange 2401 for one gold. 2401. Yes, customer. The exchange rate changes at 6A. Every morning, so I suggest you exchange it now when the rate is high. I gasped in front of the floor shop owner, who was a pretty nuna. 2401. The first floor's slimes usually dropped one gold for every three killed and the second floor's honey bees dropped two gold at the same rate. Although I had not killed many goblins, they dropped four to five gold. 
This number was likely to increase exponentially as I went higher into the dungeon. Currently, I possessed 655 gold. Although my mental math wasn't perfect, I knew I would have well more than 1 million won if I exchanged all that I had. 1 million won. It was an unimaginable amount for the 15-year-old me. Even a single sin same dang one would make me tremble, but 1 million won meant 20 sin same dangs. I was certain 1 million won would be a large amount for any 15-year-old. It was then that I realized what my father meant by dungeon explorer being the highest paying job. Wow. I stood in awe. Soon, I opened my mouth to ask the shop Nuna to exchange all the gold I had. Suddenly, I remembered. To obtain chi, I had to buy a mana cultivation method. To do that, I had to go to the 10th floor shop, and I had to buy it with gold. Ah. My shoulders dropped. Then, the shop Nuna looked at me with worrying eyes. What's wrong, customer? And no, it's nothing. Thank you. Although I was conflicted, I swallowed my tears and turned back. Chi. I gave up one million won for this thing called chi. However, I remembered my father always talking about the importance of having chi. Thus, I chose to prioritize chi rather than one million won. Once I obtained chi, I vowed to exchange all the gold I had and eat all the delicious things in the world. With that, I jumped into the third floor. Of course, I became paralyzed by the goblin's darts and was beaten to death again. What am I supposed to do, father? I got kicked out because of you. For my son, you really are stupid. You could have just left the dungeon. Kook, why didn't you tell me earlier? Ha. When you level up, increase your intelligence stat first, got it? It'll tell you how to deal with the poisonous darts first. What my father said was simple. I just had to buy and consume the paralysis recovery potion from the second floor shop. With just one, I would become immune to paralysis for a whole hour. Why didn't I buy it when I went there before? I regretted not checking what was being sold. That day, I made two vows. One was that I would visit the floor shop every time I cleared a floor and check what was being sold. The second was that I would increase my intelligence stat when I leveled up. As a result, I was able to safely reach the fifth floor. It had only taken me half a year. Chwike. Human. Human, bigger than us. What appeared on the fifth floor were pig-headed humans speaking human language. According to the message Nona that spoke to me from time to time, they were monsters called orcs. Although I felt a sense of closeness to them because of our similarity in size, I was annoyed by their tendency to treat me as food and attack. However, I was at a disadvantage when I faced them directly. I had put 15 points into intelligence, and my intelligence was now at 20. Although I had gotten smarter, my other stats were low. Because I did not yet know any other method of raising my status points, I was forced to fight the orcs when my overall spec was below them. Chwike. Human, weak. Weak. Who's weak? Ack, I shouldn't have put everything into intelligence. Ack. I could finally think of it once my intelligence had reached 20. Of course, I was forced out, unable to defeat any of them. At this time, I began to learn with my smarter brain and I could finally communicate with others my age. I had stopped talking about dungeons at school after the Kong Shin's dungeon explorer incident, and after my intelligence reached 20, I came to understand that it wasn't normal that I could enter dungeons. I also learned it was abnormal to have family spear techniques to learn. Realizing that I might end up a loner for the rest of my life, I started to furiously study common sense, and after the tenth time I was kicked out of the fifth floor, I was able to act like a normal human being. There wasn't much I could do about my huge frame, but I had finally managed to make some friends. It was also the first time I learned of the existence of online RPG games. Ah. Uh. What's wrong, Shin? No, this done. The word dungeon almost came out my mouth before I swallowed it back down. The RPG game character's status was too similar to the status I had. That said, I couldn't show my status to my friends. I could open my inventory and bring out my wooden spear, but I didn't, as I was afraid the government would come to take me away. However, I was now certain. 
Although the interface was different, there were many things in common, like the inventory, status, and monsters. Thus, I began to learn games with the hope that it would help me in my future dungeon exploration. Unlike in RPGs, I couldn't gain experience and level up no matter how many monsters I killed. All I could get from them were their body parts, gold, skill experience, and the extremely rare equipment. From this, I found my answer. If my stats were too low, I had to make do with skills. My attack power got stronger with increased skill levels. It was what I learned from playing games. Yura. Chwike, mere human. Mere orc. I quarreled with the orcs as I stabbed them with my spear. When I told my father about it, he treated me like a weirdo. The mid-rank spear technique that had started out at level 3 had slowly grown as I fought the orcs on the 5th floor. Half a year after I entered the 5th floor, when I had entered my first year of high school, I had finally reached level 10, the master level. You have mastered the mid-rank spear technique. You can strike even more fiercely and sharply with your spear. You can intimidate others whose skill level is lower than yours. You must possess mana to learn high-rank spear technique. You cannot learn the high-rank spear technique. Here, mana once again held me down. However, I did not give up. I knew I could gain mana once I reached the tenth floor. In truth, I had already realized it. My father was unable to gain mana even after twenty years of being a dungeon explorer. Not long after my intelligence increased, I finally understood what it suggested. However, I did my best to ignore it. I didn't want to accept the fact that I could not obtain mana. Afraid of knowing the truth, I didn't ask my father. The fifth floor was different than the other floors. Unlike the first through fourth floors where my level had gone up automatically once I reached the end of the hallway, there was a large door at the end of the fifth floor hallway. When I stood in front of it, the calm voice once again entered my ears. The floor master, Orc Lord, is beyond this door. Would you like to enter alone? Or would you like to request a party with players from other dimensions? What was beyond the door was undoubtedly the boss monster. As this was the first time I had faced it, I was extremely excited. I didn't know what the voice meant by other dimensions, but I found requesting for help without even giving it a try to not be in the spirit of a man's pride. As such, I slammed the door open. Orc Lord. Fight me. Chwike. Inside the room were about fifteen orcs, all of whom were glaring at me. Deeper inside was a larger pig human sitting on a large chair and biting down on a piece of meat. He raised his head and I realized just how big he was. He was wearing a thick steel armor and had a glaive leaning next to him. Without mistake, he was the Orc Lord. I let out a light smile. Oh, I came to the wrong place. Although I quickly stepped back, the door had closed behind me automatically. The Orcs slowly got up one by one as they picked up their weapons. Fudge, those things hurt like hell, I whispered as I dropped my head. It had been a while since I was kicked out. I was beaten to oblivion. 1. Sin Samedang is the woman on the Korean 50,001 bill. Chapter, 5. I had no pride to save, nor did I need to. The next week, I stood in front of the same door and obediently shouted that I would enter a party. Then, a translucent window appeared. This is the party recruitment board. Click on the one you want and enter a party. Let's see. Hunting the Orc Lord, looking for healer. Must be above level 5. How stupid, isn't everyone on the 5th floor level 5? Thinking that there were people even more stupid than me, I slowly scrolled through the window and found one that was looking for a frontline damage dealer. Because I started playing games, I knew what a frontline damage dealer was. They were people who attacked in melee range using close range weapons. The moment I clicked on that post, I felt stunned briefly and soon found myself among nine other people. Welcome. You're a frontline damage dealer, right? A handsome western style man began talking to me. Thinking it was English, I was about to yell out I cannot speak English. Fortunately, I found that I could understand what he was saying without problem. Why yes, I use a spear. Oh, a spearman. Are you from the Edeus continent? And no, I'm from Seoul. Soul. 
It's the first time I've heard of it. Anyone else? It's not from the Luca continent. It's not from Pilos either. The people around me murmured as they shook their heads. When I glanced at them, I noticed that most of them had white or dark skin, and had blonde, red, or brown hair. They were all foreigners. As I cowered slightly, the man who first talked to me approached. He was wearing a small shield on his arm and had a short sword attached to it. With a sigh, he reached his hand out to me. You must be from a minor place. Nice to meet you. I'm the party leader Ellos von Cassina. Paul, Seltine, and I are from the Edias continent. Gasina 1. Gasina means BTCH in Korean. It's Cassina. I grabbed the hand of the party leader, who looked slightly disappointed. Having played games for a while, I knew what a party was. It was just that I never thought I would be in a party with people from other worlds. Im Kong Shin. Nice to meet you. After a brief introduction with the other party members, I thought we would immediately fight the Orc Lord. I was mistaken. Hold on. It was a small girl from a place called the Luca Continent. Besides this small girl, three other members, a woman carrying a rapier, a long-eared beauty with a quiver on her back, and a weak-framed girl barely holding onto her wooden shield came from this continent. The small girl was a blonde, twin-tailed beauty, whose hair shone like gold and whose wooden staff matched well. However, the way she talked wasn't cute in the slightest. Wait, look at his clothes. Aren't those the beginner's clothes? Beginner's clothes? What was wrong with my clothes? I looked down at the clothes I was wearing. Because I wanted to be in clothes suited for moving around, I always came into the dungeon wearing my training clothes. Even if they were ripped, they were restored once I got out of the dungeon. You haven't gone to the floor shop. I did. Because the other side was talking informally, I did the same. The girl asked again, surprised. They sell defensive equipment there. Why didn't you buy them? Ah. I did remember the floor shop selling defensive equipment. However, my goal was to reach the tenth floor and buy a mana cultivation method. I couldn't thoughtlessly spend gold before then. It was the same for my weapon. I continued to use the sharp wooden spear given to me at the beginning. Of course, it wasn't so sharp anymore. I have to save money to buy a mana cultivation method. What? You don't have a mana cultivation method? What family are you from? Family? The Kong family I guess. Doesn't that family have a mana cultivation method? Nope. What? Oh no, we got the wrong party member. Kick him out. Em, it's going to be difficult if you don't have a mana cultivation method. He doesn't have a mana cultivation method. The other party members began to whisper to each other. Realizing that something was going wrong, I talked to Elos, who seemed to be the most understanding. Does everyone else have a mana cultivation method? Of course. Wait, I don't know about the other dungeons, but it's known to be impossible to climb to the fifth floor of the first dungeon without a mana cultivation method. How did you get this far? Oh, I raised my skill level. I mastered my midrank spear technique. Midrank master. This time, another person in the back yelled out in surprise. It was a brown-haired man carrying a large shield and wearing a thick leather armor. Don't lie. I practiced my shield technique for ten years and it's only just gotten to mid-rank level two. You said you mastered the mid-rank spear technique. I did. Is that weird? It is. Mastering a mid-rank weapon skill without even a mana cultivation method, I don't believe it. Don't tell me, you have the high-rank spear technique. No, it said I couldn't learn it because I don't have mana. All the party members fell silent. Then, Elos spoke out. Let's bring him in. But Elos. We barely climbed to the fifth floor with the three of us. With the rule, all players below the tenth floor can only be partied with people from their own continent, he must have climbed to the fifth floor on his own. If he had his own party, he wouldn't need to enter ours. Am I right? Yes. When I nodded, Elos seemed to gain more confidence and talked louder. See. Kong Shin alone has the ability of all three of us combined. 
I can't speak for the future, but at least on this fifth floor, he has more than enough qualification to fulfill the damage dealer role. He's a mid-rank spear technique master. But look at his armor. I don't like him. Kick him. The twin tail kept on saying to kick me. I held myself back from glaring at her, but she got more arrogant and glared at me. Miss Paludia, please calm down. We haven't seen his skills yet. We don't need to. Look at him, he's using a half-broken wooden spear. Hmm. ITLL be too late if we take the time to see it. I don't know how your continent is, but mine is in a fierce war against the demon race. If I lose the opportunity to get stronger for a whole week, well fall behind in the war. My continent is also at war with invaders. Who, fine. Just give us some time. Mr. Kong Shin, I apologize, but you'll need to show us your power. There should be an orc further back, so show us your abilities by defeating it. Sure, it's not a hard request. Kook. The brat named Paludia stepped back from the negotiation with Elos, but still bit down on her lips in displeasure. You're an orc yourself. I'm not an orc. I couldn't help but yell out when she picked on my weak spot. When I faced her and glared, she seemed to be intimidated as she turned away. Humph. Humph. I also snorted. Then I sauntered off. Because there were no orcs near the door, I had to walk for five minutes. Chwike, human. Found one. It was wearing a worn-down leather armor and carrying a fearsome glaive. Confirming that the others were watching, I ran toward it. My spear spun in my hand, and I soon snapped my hand, grabbing onto it tightly. Now. Hap. I lightly dodged the orc's glaive attack, and the spear I struck out like lightning pierced its target. The orc that was running toward me stopped in its track, let out a burping sound, and began to fall with blood foaming at its mouth. As he fell, I quickly pulled back my spear to prevent it from breaking. Without anything to lean on, the orc fell with a thud. At first, I fought with monsters with brute strength, blocking their attacks with the spear. But because the durability of my spear wore off and fell below ten, these days I was doing my best to kill the orcs in a single blow. Because of my mastery of the mid-rank spear technique, it wasn't too difficult to do. W with just one hit. No way, did you see that? I didn't even feel a hint of mana. I did. Mana aside, that's not even a skill. Amazing. Elos and the other party members seemed to be awed by my technique. HM, I guess these days, I'm evenly matched with father just with pure spearmanship. Unfortunately, there was always that one person who likes to rain on your parade. Humph, that was just a coincidence. If he tried again, there's no way he can draw such a clean and beautiful trajectory. And Miss Paludia, even if it was a coincidence, he is undoubtedly skilled. He is more than suited to become our party member. Eek, if you can't agree with me, he'll just leave. It's either my party or him. Your choice. T that's. Then he'll just defeat another one. Because Elos looked troubled, I spoke out. Elos looked at me with teary eyes. Disgusting. Paludia, on the other hand, snorted and said, Try it. How convenient, there's one right there. An orc archer. They were an annoying bunch that shot arrows from afar. Thankfully, they didn't appear often. When they appeared with other orcs, I had to be prepared to receive injuries as I charged in. But now, there was only one orc archer. For me who could avoid even bullets, avoiding arrows wasn't much of a problem. Chwike. Orc shoot arrow. Human stab orc. Having hunted alone for a year, it became my hobby of sorts to talk back to monsters like them. With ease, I tilted my head and dodged the orc archer's arrow. I took a step forward and shot towards the orc archer. Just like before, my spear beautifully pierced through orc archer's neck. How is it? Ee. -e. Eek. Although Paludia's eyes were glaring, she clenched her fists and looked down. She had accepted her loss. I didn't know just what part of me she didn't like, but I could think of quite a few possibilities by myself. As such, I decided to not care. What was important was not the outside, 
but the inside. I am Kong Shin, the son of the world's strongest spearman. It'll show you the strength I gained by giving up my ordinary life. Chapter, 6 I felt much better knowing that I forced her off her high horse. Elo seemed to be at a loss as the comrades from Paludia's continent went to console her, but he soon clapped his hands and livened up the mood. Then he'll take it that no one has any problems with Mr. Kong Shin joining the party. Once Mr. Kong Shin is rested from his fight with the orcs, we will go right away. Roger. Got it. Take good care of me, mate. Take good care of me too. I greeted the other party members, then glanced at Paludia. My eyes met hers when she had briefly raised her head, but because she glared at me so intently, I hurriedly looked away. Because I had no contact with girls other than my sister and my mother, I felt awkward making eye contact with girls for more than two seconds. Then well enter. Ha, I hope we succeed this time. Not being able to come back here for a week it's too cruel. As the party members murmured and prepared themselves, Elo slowly pushed open the door. A familiar sight filled my eyes. There were fourteen orcs and the orc lord was at the deepest part, biting off on a piece of meat. You bastard, you're going to become a pig at this rate. Ah wait, you already are. Commence battle. We're going to kill the other orcs first. Paul, hold off the orc lord. Roger. Miss Paludia, focus your healing on Paul. Miss Isis, support Paul. Everyone else, we're going after the orcs one by one, starting from the left. I ran out. Although the orcs attacked me, unlike last week, I had comrades. In this party, we had two archers. One aimed at the orc lord and the other aimed at the orcs attacking me. I made use of the time he earned me, shooting out with my spear and quickly killing an orc. Next. Wow, you're doing great, mate. Hap. Goo. As the party members and I fiercely fought off the attacking orcs, the orc lord's cry resounded throughout the room. To even consider fighting against him alone how foolish I was. I could hear Paul, the warrior who was fighting the orc lord, letting out several grunts. My HP is going down fast. Miss Paludia. I know. Healing. No way, that healing is the healing from games. I was just about to turn and see with my own eyes when I realized it might trouble other people. I turned back to the orc I was facing. Like hell I'd leave myself open for attack. Hap. Another one hit kill. I've never seen anything like it. You can do it too. I can't. Ah, here comes another one. Hap. Kohahaha. Orcs, rise. Orc Lord used war cry. All orcs have been cleared of any negative status effects. All orcs temporarily become super armored. Their attack power increases by 50%. Bullshit. A mere orc is able to use war cry. A female swordsman who was swinging her sword next to me yelled out and cursed. She was one of the women from Polydia's Luca continent. She was using a rapier and had an elegant appearance. Realizing that you really can't judge a book by its cover, I silently attacked with my spear. I didn't know what a super armor was, but I could still kill orcs with a single blow. When I diligently killed my sixth orc, I suddenly heard Elo's shout. Paul. Cough. It'll go on ahead, see you at the palace. Party member Paul Von Kravis has died. Seeing the message use an ominous word like death, I complained to the message Nuna. As this was the first time I was doing a party play, it was something I did not want to experience. It seemed Elo's was more shocked than me, which made sense considering they seemed to from the same continent and had even climbed to the fifth floor together. Kook, super armor it says. Damn it will tank. Miss Shuna, help me. ITLL be difficult with just me alone. Gee got it. A delicate girl, who was using her wooden shield to barely block the orc's attacks, answered with a weak voice. Then, as she ran towards Elos, she tripped on a dead orc's glaive and fell. Ow. Hugh. Miss Shuna. Hugh. How did a girl like her end up with a shield? As I pierced my spear through the eighth orc, 
I made an expression of disbelief as I looked at Shuna running to Elos while crying. As if she had read my expression, the rapier-using woman looked at me and said with a bitter smile. Shuna is a princess of a small kingdom. According to her, everyone in her lineage is blessed by their guardian god to have an abnormally strong constitution. But because she had no talent with any weapons, she was left with no other choice than to wield a shield. Wow, a blessing. It really was like a fantasy world. Well, I guess my life wasn't that different. Don't look away. Ah, sorry. There was only one orc left other than the orc lord. Because of this super armor, it seemed unfazed by incoming attacks as it charged forward. As such, another party member got kicked out. It was Paludia's job to heal him, but she was preoccupied with healing Elos and Shuna. Qua. Dai. Kook. Miss Paludia. Hying, Ludia. I'm doing my best. Healing. We should take care of him quickly and go help. Kook, this coming from someone who killed more than half the orcs it sounds like a taunt. I defeated the last orc with the other party members. Now, only the orc lord was left. However, the situation didn't call for any peace of mind. Unsurprisingly, Shuna had been unable to handle the orc lord's attacks and was kicked out. Shuna. Kwa. When Shuna's body turned to small particles and scattered, Paludia's eyes rolled back and she charged toward the orc lord as she swung her staff. She almost looked like Jean Dark. In other words, it seemed like she would be whisked away with fire. T this mad princess. No, why is our healer charging forward? Now, I was beginning to understand how similar this dungeon was with a game. I knew fully well what would happen if our healer got kicked out. As such, I charged toward the crazy girl. Thankfully, it seemed like the super armor had ended as Elos managed to hold off the Orc Lord's attacks. Even so, Paludia would be in danger if she entered the Orc Lord's attack range. You pig. Cool. Paludia charged forward swinging her staff. The Orc Lord seemed to respond, as it raised its fists up. Damn it, I'm going to be late. I ran forward as fast as I could. Dai. Cool. You crazy. Right before the Orc Lord's fist fell on Paludia, I managed to reach her. I quickly pushed her to the side, and as I saw the Orc Lord's fist about to pour down on me, I could only think of one thing. Gee, that's one big fist. Kwong. I died. Of course, I couldn't re-enter the dungeon for a week. The week where I couldn't enter the dungeon always went by in a breeze. Sweating blood as I traded blows, sword against spear with monsters, was vastly different than spending my days going to school and talking with friends. If being a dungeon explorer was casting forth my life, then my school life was like dreaming of peace and happiness. Dreams were nice. They were happy, were not painful, and were fun. But it wasn't fun when it continued for a whole week. There was no meaning to such a life. It felt suffocating and irritating. For me who was used to living the intense life of fighting monsters, a life of no danger and pain was terrifying. Although my father now entered the dungeon to earn money as the head of a household, his initial goal must have been different. Just like me, it must have been with an excited mind that he charged into the dungeon to show off his strength. I had devoted my entire life to my spear technique. It was powerful enough to send any slime, honeybee, goblin, or orc flying. It was a sense of pleasure hard to describe with words. It was almost like a drug. I wonder if they succeeded. A week later, I once again stood in front of the boss room. I had thrown away any thought of trying to kill it by myself. I let out a sigh. Just as I was about to open the party recruitment window, a voice itched in my ears. In the corner of my eyes, a small window had appeared. Elos von Cassina invited you to a party. Would you like to accept? Eh. What's this? Don't tell me they couldn't finish it off. I tilted my head and accepted the invite. Just like before, I felt a tinge of dizziness engulf me. Before I knew it, I was surrounded by all the members of the previous party. Ah, you accepted, Mr. Kong Shin. Mr. Ellos. I stared at him with a look of bewilderment. 
He reached out with his hand and I met it with my own hand. I looked around and once more reaffirmed that everyone from the previous party was here. Although I would have preferred otherwise, Paludia and the others of the Luca continent were also here. However, unlike her past confident self, she was looking down, dejected. It wasn't hard to understand why. Did you guys fail? Mm, -hmm, it's embarrassing to admit, but yes. We were wiped out. Wiped out. Ha ha ha, floor masters are said to be extremely strong. It would be weird if we succeeded on our first or second try. Although Ellos was trying to laugh it off, Paludia wasn't buying it. This time, however, the target of her resentment was different. It's my fault. Ha, huh, it's not just Paludia Nim's fault. It's my fault. I got too heated and let Orc die. If by Orc, you're talking about me, it looks like you haven't learned your lesson yet. Eek. Hugh. Paludia seemed like she would burst after what I said, but she calmed herself back down when the rapier woman poked her side. When I looked at Ellos, he made a bitter smile as he shook his head. I knew she wasn't really feeling apologetic, but it would be enough if she wouldn't repeat the same mistake as last time. I let out a sigh. I don't have to kill two orcs again before I enter, right? Ha, huh, of course not. We know fully well how capable you are. If you perform like last time, we'll do our best to fulfill our roles. Kook. Please, mate. We all believe in you. You were amazing last time. T take care of us. Mm, you're reliable one just like your looks. Appa, you would be just my style if you lost some weight. Your face is handsome too. The last one was from the rapier-carrying woman. No matter who looked, I was the younger one. Also, this wasn't fat, it's muscle. 1. In Korean, the word for reliable is also used to describe someone with a heavy frame. Chapter, 7. Kwa. Humans, they'll take care of you at once. Tankers go take its aggro. Miss Shuna, stand by so you can take their place at any time. Orc Lord you bastard, it won't be so easy this time. Independent Illinois do my best. Everyone else, start taking care of the other orcs. Even if you don't say that, Mr. Kong shins on his fourth orc. Perhaps because we had experience coordinating before, the battle this time went much smoother. The man named Paul wielded his shield proficiently and blocked the orc lord, and the rest of us took care of the orcs more quickly than before. Qua. Orc Lord used War Cry. It cleanses itself of all negative status effects. Because there are no Orc minions in range, Orc Lord's attack power increases by 100% and defense lowers by 50%. It temporarily becomes super armored. Paul. I know, I can take it. Even though Orc Lord used War Cry again, Paul was prepared for it and did not die like before. He skillfully dodged its attacks and pushed it back with his shield. Paludia also looked on with her eyes opened wide as she furiously cast heal after heal. Well sweep from the left. There's an orc archer. It's shooting. Appa, your side is open. You just pay attention to that glaive coming at you from behind. We communicated to each other continuously as we defeated the orcs one by one. As a result of our hard-fought effort, we were able to take care of all 14 orcs without suffering a single casualty. Paul was also still holding his ground against the orc lord. All right. We'll start going after the orc lord now. Just like we had planned before, we took turns and attacked the orc lord. Although the orc lord turned its attention to the one that dealt a blow, we quickly weaved out afterwards and Paul redrew its aggro with his shield blow. It was just like tanking and dealing damage in an online game. Hap. Quayak. Kook, Mr. Kong Shin, your attacks are so strong that it's hard to retake the Orc Lord's focus. Eh sorry, it'll be lighter next time. Humph, as expected, Orc is no good. Miss Paludia, just focus on your healing. Hying. Because the other party members took the initiative to silence Paludia when she lashed out at me, she could only swallow her words and focus on healing. Serves you right. Sometime after we started to attack the Orc Lord, just as we were thinking it should fall soon, the Orc Lord suddenly let out an eerie shriek. 
KUA. What? Everyone fell back. Only Paul was capable of withstanding the Orc Lord's attack under its normal condition. With its attack power doubled, even he couldn't speak for certain. I will kill all you humans. The Orc Lord put strength into its glaive. In that instant, I saw a black aura gathering on the glaive's blade. It was similar to some of the skills the other party members used. Could that be mana? So that's chi. Although I knew how dangerous it was to get worked up, I couldn't help it. It's dangerous. Everyone fall back. It's useless. Gua. It held its glaive horizontally and cleaved through the air. Surprisingly, the mana gathered on the glaive followed the glaive's trajectory and shot forward. It was like a game character using a sword blast. You'll die if you get hit. Everyone run. You will. Everyone scattered frantically. Although I wanted to run as well, I caught sight of Paludia who was standing in place frozen. What are you doing, run? And my feet won't move. You won't really die anyways. What are you afraid of? T then it's fine if I die. What? Last time, you said something about a week being important. Ugh, there was no time to argue. I quickly rushed to her, grabbed her in my embrace and flung my body. Right afterwards, I sensed my hairs being pulled as I fell to the ground with Paludia. Dust went in my mouth and I felt a strong sense of disgust. Mr. Kong Shin, Miss Paludia. Are you okay? W were alive. Cough cough. Because it was still dangerous, I got up in a hurry. I still held Paludia as I ran back as fast as I could. The Orc Lord let out a bloodcurdling cry as it chased after us. Now. Got it. Two archers aimed at the Orc Lord's eyes. Although one missed, the other correctly pierced through the Orc Lord's right eye. The Orc Lord then held its eye and cried out miserably. Qua. H how long are you going to hug me, Orc? I'm not hugging you because I want to. Setting the Orc Lord's cry as the background music, I threw Paludia down on the ground. Even until the end, she did not say thanks. Her bottom hit the ground and she glared at me with teary eyes. I couldn't feel more satisfied. Who cares if you're pretty? I wouldn't want a truckload of irritating brats like you. Orc, you meanie. Shut it, you mean bit. Person. I considered calling her a BTCH, but it seemed wrong to curse at a girl, so I toned it down. Even so, she seemed to be shocked. As we were about to fight, Elo shouted at us from afar. It's not the time have a lover's quarrel. We have to quickly finish it off. It's not a lover's quarrel. We glared at each other one last time then split. I went toward the orc lord, she went toward the safer backline to focus on her healing. Although the orc lord used its sword blast move again, we were able to dodge it, having seen it before. In fact, right after it used the sword blast attack, it left itself wide open for attack. In the end, the orc lord fell, its throat pierced by the spear I had put all my strength into. Kook, strong humans. Good. Fight. This bastard's acting cool at the end. Watching the orc lord annoying me until the end, I kicked its head. The orc lord didn't manage to finish what it was saying and fainted. Everyone else clapped and told me I did a great job. Immediately afterwards, flashes of light surged out from our body. This was the fifth time it had happened to level up. You reached level 6. You obtained the qualification to enter the sixth floor. You obtained five bonus stats. You obtained 1000 gold. It is distributed evenly amongst party members. You received 100 gold. Rewards will be distributed in order of contribution. Kong Shin Nim's contribution is the highest. Choose your reward. Ah, uh, I see. Just like in games, it seemed boss monsters dropped several items. Additionally, because my contribution was the highest, I was the first one to choose a reward. A boss fight really was different. Before I looked at the list of rewards, I eyed the other party members. Everyone simply nodded in agreement. We acknowledge your contribution. You should rightly be the first one to choose. It would indeed have been hard without you. 
I can't believe they expect anyone to beat this thing. I understand why some people have been stuck for over 10 years. Everyone worked hard, but you worked the hardest. You dealt the most damage too. Agreed. You were cool, Appa. Eh, why did I feel like crying? How long had it been since anyone has complimented me? My father rarely complimented when we trained. Before I raised my intelligence, my grades at school weren't good, so teachers never complimented me either. My mother didn't acknowledge anywhere below my head to be her son. Even my sister acted awkward around me. Because I felt like crying, I desperately held it in. T then I will. Because this felt like Polydia's time to interrupt, I glanced at her, but she simply gave a light humph and said nothing. Smiling, I looked at the list of rewards. 1. Orc Lord's Glaive. 2. Power Earring. 3. Rescue Bomb. 4. Power Potion. 5. Steel Boots. 6. Steel Shield. 7. 200 Gold. 8. Muscle Compressing Elixir. 9. Fireball Magic Book. 10. Mana Potion. At first glance, only number one, the Orc Lord's Glaive, seemed to be a rare item. Considering its sheer size, it could easily be considered a spear. It indeed looked very nice to have, but... The moment I saw it, I reached out and touched it. Then, a small, black pill appeared in my hands. I instinctively examined its info. Muscle compressing elixir rare. When consumed, the bodice muscles will be compressed to be more shapely and strong. The muscle size will decrease, but their strength and dexterity will increase. It is the ideal item for a warrior. However, if one does not have enough muscles, it will have little effect. In fact, it may deal permanent damage to the body. T this is it. I muttered unconsciously. Although Ellos who was second in contribution stared at me with confused eyes, seeing that the best item was still on the list, I did not care. Muscle compressing elixir. This was it. Thank you, God. I finally found a way to put these overly grown muscles to rest. I thanked God I never paid attention to the jeers and let out tears of joy. Everyone else was looking at me like I was crazy. Well, although I had expected it to some extent, just eating one elixir didn't make me slender. However, I did feel that my bodice width had decreased by a bit. At the same time, an alert popped up in front of my eyes. Your muscles become compressed, making them more powerful and dexterous. Both strength and dexterity stat permanently increases by one. Great, great. Unlike the saying you couldn't be content after one cup of beer, I was very content. I finally found a way to reduce my muscles. I'll first climb to the 10th floor and obtain a mana cultivation method. Then, I'll just go around looking for more muscle compressing elixirs. Chapter, 8. As I was lost in my thoughts, everyone had finished collecting their rewards. Ellos clapped his hands and drew everyone's attention. Good work today everyone. Without each and every one of you, we would have failed to defeat the Orc Lord. As fellow comrades climbing the dungeon, it would be great to stay in touch. Stay in touch. How? Ah, so you don't know. You can send a friend request, and you'll be able to contact each other whenever you are both in the dungeon. I see. At Ello's words, I realized there was still a lot to learn about the dungeon's functionalities. I registered Ello's as a friend. Although I didn't really want to register Polydia as a friend, because she sent a deathly glare my way, I friend her as well. If I friend Ellos and not Poludia, it seemed she would throw a tantrum. Then will you be heading to the sixth floor now, Mr. Kong Shin? Yep. My goal is to beat the tenth floor. Ah uh, that. Ellos seemed to want to say something, but he dropped his head down. And no, it's nothing. Um good luck. Call me if you ever need help. I will help you as much as I can. Mm. Got it. What could it be? I tilted my head in wonder, but because I felt Ello's sincerity, I nodded my head. The party disbanded. I was sent back to the place I was before. 
It was the place beyond the boss room, the floor shop next to the stairway to the sixth floor. I went to the floor shop to check if there was anything special to buy, but confirmed that there was nothing. As I walked to the stairway energetically, the shop nuna cheered me on with a smile. Do your best. Ghosts suck out and consume human energy. Thanks, Nuna. Ghosts. Thinking that the sixth floor sounded more grim than the fifth, I yelled commence exploration. In an instant, darkness surrounded me. Eh. Shoo. Did I hear something? I felt goosebumps running down my arm. This is just the atmosphere I hate. I gulped down my saliva and walked forward. The next moment, something crept up on me abruptly. Oh yeah. As I let out a scream I could never let my father hear and fell, something white attacked me with a curious sound. Hyukiai. Ghosts are scary. I thrashed out with my fists, but they passed through it easily. It wasn't defeated. I instinctively felt that it had not even been hit. Wraith has tainted your soul. Because you have no MP, your HP will decrease continuously. Hyukiai. There was more than just the one. Several ghosts appeared and attacked me. I didn't even consider using my spear as I screamed from the top of my lungs and thrashed out with my arms and legs. They had no effect whatsoever, and my HP continued to be drained. In the end, my HP had reached zero and I was kicked out of the dungeon. It was a rather embarrassing exit. Father. Yua. What are you yelling for? You lied to me. About what? I haven't seen a single man a stone this entire time. There are wraiths on the sixth floor. Without Chi, you can't defeat them at all. Tell me honestly, what floor are you on? Well, you see, son. What floor are you on? When I glared at him intently, my father finally answered. T the sixth. Father. When I shouted, my father flinched. Ahem. What's wrong, Shin? You can earn a lot of gold just by defeating orcs on the fifth floor. It's with that money that I bought this house, car, and your mother's bag. See, your father makes good money. For someone who's only been to the fifth floor, you sure talk big. Humph, you won't be much different. You'll be hunting orcs forever. Father. Rather than cheering me up, he was making fun of me. I thought about grabbing him by the collar and fighting, but seeing mother and Yua staring at us through the door crack, I put away the thought. Hugh. I didn't become a dungeon explorer just to hunt orcs. Shin, this is not a chance everyone can have orcs give ten gold, which can be exchanged for twenty thousand one. Three orcs for twenty thousand one. Do you realize how rich this mine is? But father. What's wrong? I want to have chi. You. Father looked at me with a touched expression. His body was trembling. Suddenly, he embraced me. No, it was more like a wrestling move. Like you can obtain chi when even I couldn't. You better not get it before I do. We're done father. Done. In the end, I went back to the fifth floor. But I didn't want to just hunt orcs all day. Having experienced the thrill of fighting the orc lord, ordinary orcs were no longer enough to satisfy me. Now that things had come to this, I decided to obtain more muscle-compressing elixirs. I chose to enter a party and fight the orc lord again. Of course, there were many hurdles. First, it turned out that I could only fight the floor master once a day. Even if I succeeded, I could only try again the next day. Of course, if I failed, I couldn't enter the dungeon for a whole week. The orc lord was not a weak foe by any means. As a result, I was kicked out of the dungeon with a 50% chance no matter what party I was in. Plus, the muscle compressing elixir did not always come out. I wasn't always the one to get the first place contribution either. Sometimes, I was left with just power potions, which temporarily granted a strength bonus, and low grade potions. There was a good news as well. The reason my body was so big was not only because my muscles were overinflated, but also because my bones themselves were large. Simply put, I had the bones of a dragon. About half a year after I succeeded in my first Orc Lord hunt, when it was the fourteenth time I defeated the Orc Lord, 
a new compressing elixir had appeared. Bone Compressing Elixir Rare When consumed, the bodice bones will be compressed to be smaller and stronger. However, if one's bones are already compressed to the maximum, consuming it may have no effect or even kill in the worst case scenario. Who? I jumped in place just like the first time I obtained the muscle compressing elixir. I immediately consumed the bone compressing elixir, and this time, my constitution went up by one permanently. Consuming compressing elixirs didn't always increase my stats, but they did increase from time to time. As such, it wasn't such a bad thing that I repeatedly hunted the Orc Lord. Most importantly, fighting a strong opponent like the Orc Lord played a vital role in quickly increasing my low rank martial arts skill. After a whole year passed, it was getting easier and easier to hunt the Orc Lord. It seemed like there was an unknown network amongst the dungeon explorers as when I created a party, the people who joined would ask if in the Crown Prince. When I asked them what they meant by Crown Prince, they answered it was the nickname given to me who specialized in hunting the fifth floor master. The official title was Crown Prince of 5F. See Crown Prince. I somehow gained a humiliating nickname. Of course, I knew it was a way of acknowledging my strength. Having faced the Orc Lord for a year, I grew strong enough to defeat the Orc Lord without losing a single party member. My stats that were going up slowly through the muscle and bone compressing elixirs was one reason, but the more important reason was the stronger martial arts skill, which had grown just as strong as my spear technique. With it, I could quickly read and react to the orcs every move. Someone had also contacted me after a year. It was Ellos. He had told me he was now going through the ninth floor. Sorry. If only I could teach you my mana cultivation method. It's fine. I know it's your family secret. I heard you couldn't trade things bought from the floor shop either. That's my luck, I guess. In other dungeons, ghosts don't appear until after the tenth floor. It's unfortunate you became an explorer of the first dungeons what a shame. Like I said, that's just my luck. I could feel Ello's concern. I also understood what Ello's was about to tell me a year ago. Three months after Ello's contacted me, someone unexpected contacted me. It was Paludia. I never thought I would see or talk to her again. I heard you're still on the fifth floor. Tisk, where are you? Hmph, I'm already on the thirteenth floor. I'm different than you. Good for you. It wasn't sarcasm. I really was jealous of her. I didn't become a dungeon explorer just to make money. Treasures, monsters, exploration. I wanted to experience new things. I wanted to fight with more diverse, stronger monsters. Although I knew Paludia would make fun of me, I didn't really care much about it now that a whole year had passed. I if if it angers you that much, hurry up climb up. There's no time to dawdle on the fifth floor. But I have no mana. Eek, do something about that with your spirit. You saved me twice, so you should be able to do at least that. Heh. What, is she trying to cheer me up? Although I could only hear her voice, I knew she wasn't making fun of me. I felt like I had received a surprise present. W what? Thanks. You et. I didn't do anything you should be thankful for. I'm just thankful. You cheered me up. I'll try harder. You you do what you want. Next time, you contact me first, stupid. Then she hung up. I kept my eyes closed for a while, then slapped my cheeks and got up. Alright, let today's hunting begin. Chapter, 9 About two years after I first defeated the Orc Lord, any party I was in no longer knew defeat. No matter how messed up the party composition was, even if a worthless explorer joined, I had no problem defeating the Orc Lord. I defeated an Orc Lord every day without exception, and the 100 gold reward stockpiled slowly. With the increased number of times I succeeded in defeating the Orc Lord, I naturally had more opportunity to obtain a muscle or bone compressing elixir. Now, just eating one or two wasn't enough to raise my stats. I had to eat at least ten. The amount of free stat points I gained through muscle and bone compressing elixirs was twenty-eight. It was just short of the amount gained from six level ups. I knew I was level six, yet not really level six. One day, 
because no muscle or bone compressing elixir had dropped, I chose the Orc Lord's glaive. It was just about when my wooden spear was completely worn out. In truth, it was surprising I lasted so long with a wooden spear. Once I began carrying around the glaive, the way people saw me changed. It became easier to find my place in parties. It was the first time I realized the importance of weapons. Once I had the Orc Lord's glaive, my attack power increased exponentially. Some time later, I found myself wearing a leather helm, leather gloves, and leather armor. They were all equipment dropped by the Orc Lord. Crown Prince. It's the Crown Prince. Yes, after five years, I can finally escape the fifth floor. My name became more and more well known. When I began recruiting party members, all ten slots filled up in an instant. Other dungeon explorers also called me the one who leads the path past the fifth floor and savior incarnate. Although I tried to stop the embarrassing nicknames from spreading, it was of no use. Because I didn't want to make money by hunting orcs like my father, once I defeated the orc lord, I left the dungeon and studied. I had to make use of my twenty intelligence stat. My grades at school went up. My mother was happy and the number of universities I could attend went up. No matter how much money I made from the dungeon, it was my mother's opinion that I had to attend a university when I graduated from high school. I could do little to resist my mother. In truth, the thought of attending a university excited me. It was something I couldn't have even dreamed of when my intelligence of low. Yes, other than the fact that I couldn't obtain mana, everything was perfect. I focused my efforts on the Orc Lord raids and paid little attention to maintaining a social life at school not that I had one to maintain in the first place. One day, I was called to part of the school teachers rarely visited. I was nervous, wondering if delinquents were trying to pick a fight with me. Instead, a familiar girl had appeared. She was from my class. Contrary to her usual cheerful and enthusiastic self, her head was drooped down like she was an entirely different person. I, I like you. Huh. Who? This cute girl. Me. She likes me. I thought it was a joke. Even though I was taking muscle and bone compressing elixirs, I was still the person who was once called an orc. When I asked if she was joking, she began crying and ran off. Why are you crying? I, I wasn't kidding. You are. Uh, a rumor had spread throughout school that I was rejecting girls. When I came home and told my mother and sister about it, they stared at me as if they had just heard the most ridiculous thing. W what? You didn't notice. Appa. Stupid. Eh. Stupid. I'm not stupid anymore. Stupid. Kook. An unsolvable mystery was created that day. Half a year after that, I began to think whether I needed all ten members to defeat the Orc Lord. Just as a test, I went into battle with just eight people, but it was still extremely easy. The ones who came in with me made expressions of disbelief. It worked. But how? It's. A bug. Bugs referred to monsters that dropped an unusually high amount of gold or a high-grade item that normally would not drop on that floor. They were considered treasures, created from mistakes by the ones who operated the dungeons. But it seemed I was being treated like a bug. Ha ha ha. This is no laughing matter, Crown Prince. He's right, Crown Prince. You should hurry up and head to a higher floor. Stop calling me Crown Prince. I retorted bluntly and checked the list of rewards. It was then that I seemed to be struck by lightning. 1. Orc Lord's Glaive. 2. Power Potion. 3. Middle Potion. 4. Skin Compressing Elixir. 5. Orc Lord's Boots. 6. Muscle Compressing Elixir. 7. Mana Potion. 8. 230 Gold. No way. Am I seeing this correctly? I washed my eyes and looked at the list of rewards again. Orc Lord's Boots. This was the first time I had seen it in two years of hunting the Orc Lord. There was something else that surprised me. Skin Compressing Elixir. I was thinking about how my skin wasn't reducing at the rate that my muscle and bones were reducing. 
Without a shred of hesitation, I chose the Skin Compressing Elixir. Skin Compressing Elixir Rare Warning when someone who has not consumed both muscle and bone compressing elixir consumes this elixir, one could experience severe pain and permanent bodily damage. For those that consumed both muscle and bone compressing elixir, this elixir will make one's stretched out skin tighter and stronger, boosting one's defense and giving the skin a clean, hard texture. I ate it, and my constitution increased. It was the start of a new grind. When the number of people decreased, new items appeared on the reward list. When I thought about it, it made sense. Quantity decreased and quality increased. I hunted in a party of eight for a while, then switched to seven, then six, then five. Even then, everything went smoothly. Skin compressing elixirs appeared more often, and muscle and bone compressing elixirs always appeared. I compressed my body endlessly. The more I repeated it, the smaller and stronger I became. When I realized my 210 cm height had gone down to 190 cm, the winter break of my third year of high school had started. No way. Standing in front of a mirror, it was all I could mutter. The mirror was now capable of capturing my whole body without problem. Did I become blind when I focused on a topic? Although I washed myself every day, it was only now that I was seeing the changes in my body. The me in front of the mirror was a normal young man. No, I wasn't exactly normal. Those who worked out could easily see through the strength hidden in my muscles. On the outside, I was more than enough to be described as slim. More importantly, my muscles weren't repulsing to look at anymore. In fact, it was the opposite. My body finally matched my face, which took after my mother's good looks. Although I felt like I was still a bit too tall, it was nothing to complain about. Hugh. Feeling a sense of fulfillment, I sighed silently. It was a long journey, but I had finally done it. To be exact, no matter how much compressing elixirs I took, my stats wouldn't increase anymore. So I quit. After taking elixirs for almost three years, I had gained a total of 40 stat points. 10 strength, 10 dexterity, and 20 constitution. Just with my status alone, I would be evenly matched with level 14 explorers. Ellos and Paludia must have passed the fifteenth floor now. I murmured bitterly and let out another sigh. The fact that I couldn't use mana had tied me down to the fifth floor for three years. I felt sorry for myself. I then realized my father must have felt the same. It must be why he was going around talking about getting chi at such an age. Name, Kong Shin Race, Human Sex, Male. Class, None Title, None Rank, Bronze Seven. Level, 6. HP 1, 9401, 940 MP 0. Strength 342 Dexterity 30 Constitution 39. Intelligence 20 Magic 0 Charm 16 Luck 10. Skill Low Rank Martial Arts Master, Low Rank Spear Technique Master, Mid Rank Spear Technique Master. Was this the status of a level 6 explorer? The answer was yes. I didn't believe it either, but it was the truth. What was strange was that my charm stat had gone up by itself. It was 7 initially, but it had gone up until it was 16. Because the charm and luck stat were bonus stats and you could not distribute status points to them, I didn't pay much attention to them. Most importantly, my magic stat was still 0. Compared to the HP I had, it looked completely barren. My equipment were entirely from the Orc Lord. Its helmet, chestplate, leggings, boots, gloves, and glaive. On one ear, I even had an orc lord's earring, which raised the strength stat by two points. If I walked around Myung Dong like this, would they think I was cosplaying? I quickly erased the thought from my mind. With how the world was these days, it wouldn't be surprising if someone really attacked me thinking I was a monster. It looks like I'm ready. If you ask what I'm ready for, it was obvious. It was killing the Orc Lord solo. I had always kept the possibility in my mind. The reward increased as the number of explorers in the party decreased. If I succeeded in defeating it alone, what reward would I get? As far as I knew, there was no one who managed to defeat the Orc Lord alone. The reason was simple. 
Once one defeated the next floor master, it was impossible to go back and hunt the previous floor master. In other words, explorers above level 11 could not come back to the fifth floor to kill the orc lord. Those below that did not even think about hunting the floor master alone. If there was such a person, it would be someone who grinded through elixirs year after year just like me. I had asked father about the elixirs, but he said that as the man in charge of the house, he gave up hunting the orc lord and focused on hunting as many orcs as possible. It was likely to be the same with others in a similar situation as father. Someone who could pass the sixth floor did not need to kill the orc lord. That is, I was the first. I should be. I would like to be. I did not want to just try it. If I was doing it, I wanted to succeed. Pressing down on the orc lord's helmet, I stood in front of the huge stone door. Hugh. Here I go. Then, just like three years ago, I pushed open the stone door and shouted. Orc lord. Fight me. Chapter, 10. Orc lord. Fight me. Chwike. The spawn locations of the fourteen orc minions were limited. The moment I entered the room, I realized which spawn pattern the orcs were in, and charged towards the orc closest to me. Because of war cry, it was impossible to kill the orc lord while ignoring the orc minions. As such, you had to quickly take care of the minions. The orc lord's attacks hurt no matter what, but when he used war cry alone, his defense also decreased by 50%. As such, it was necessary to kill all the minions. Kawak. Chwike. Human. Fast. Now, I could send the trash mob orcs heads flying by just slashing with my weapon. It was one of the pros of using a glaive. It could stab, but it was more powerful when used to slash. Plus, the orc lord's glaive was a rare grade item. It was different than a wooden spear. Kwa. Seeing his minions drop like flies, the orc lord stretched his back and roared. He was using war cry. However, I had already cut down more than half the orcs. You won't have a chance to. One more, one more. My body moved exactly like I had calculated. Like a farmer harvesting his crops, I quickly cut down the orc's heads. With the slight speed bonus from the orc lord's boots, it seemed even easier. When the orc lord finally finished his war cry, there were no orc minions left in the room. Orc lord used war cry. It cleanses itself of all negative status effects. Because there are no orc minions in range, the orc lord's attack power increases by 100% and defense lowers by 50%. It temporarily becomes super armored. Qua. You dare. I've heard that line over a thousand times already. I charged toward the super-armored orc lord without hesitation. I knew the orc lord's attack patterns in and out. I had already experienced it to near boredom. In truth, the fight was already over when I cut down all the orc minions. A super-armored monster ignored incoming attacks and focused on its own attacks. However, it had its disadvantages. Because you did not stop at all, you sometimes ended up taking more damage. As a result, it was much easier to land a critical hit, which dealt more than double the usual damage and sometimes even damaged the target permanently. Of course, it was easier for the Orc Lord to deal critical damage to others under the super armor effect, but you just had to not get hit. Like now. Hap. Quiak. Critical hit. You dealt a deadly blow. As I rolled on the ground to dodge his attack, I swung my glaive and cut his Achille tendon. Because he was in his super armor state, he kept charging forward regardless. As a result, his wound only became worse. When its super armor state ended, it would face an unimaginable pain. Human. Even if you don't tell me, both the heavens and my cute sister know I'm human. At the orc lord charging forward due to super armor, I continuously attacked with my glaive from the back. When it hit the wall and stopped, I slashed down on his back and jumped back. You will not escape alive. Here it comes. The orc lord raised his glaive and black mana began to gather around it with a ringing sound. It was the skill that drove me mad with jealousy every time I saw it. Sword blast. I had already figured out the time it took to charge, and all the angle and direction patterns. 
I slid to the side, dodging the sword blast with ease. Using the small opening it had after using sword blast, I stabbed my glaive through his belly. Whoops, that was close. I distanced myself from the orc lord thrashing about randomly. At least ten minutes had passed since the battle began, but the orc lord still seemed healthy as it roared incessantly. If there was a difference between games and the dungeon, it was the HP bar. No matter how much I wished for it, I couldn't see how much HP the enemy monsters had left. Die, human. After the sword blast was the random thrashing. It swung its arms and legs everywhere and made a complete mess of the surroundings. This skill gave off powerful vibrations and powerful blows, which easily disrupted even the most well-organized parties. I couldn't find a good solution to this attack even after fighting it close to a thousand times. If I approached it now trying to attack, I could die with a single misstep. When the Orc Lord was also under the super armor effect, the damage done couldn't be described with words. That was exactly the case now. D-A-E-E. -E. Would you jump into a charging bulldozer because someone told you to? All right, all right, it'll kill you, just wait a little. Thankfully, it wasn't so difficult to dodge it. I just had to keep running back when it started thrashing around. If it chased after me, I just had to draw circles around it as I retreated. Because the room was rather large, it wasn't so hard to do. Additionally, after this phase ended, it stood in place and drew its breath for a little while. This was the best chance to counterattack. Ignoring the fact that I was making fun of its speech earlier, I charged toward the Orc Lord shouting the same thing it had been shouting. In my hands were the Orc Lord's glaive. My target was its thigh. Crack. Quiak. All right, it went in. The super armor state had already ended. The Orc Lord dropped its weapon in pain and wrapped its arms around its thigh. When the Orc Lord received damage surpassing a certain threshold, it dropped its weapon. This was another great chance to attack. Excited, I stabbed my glaive through the other thigh. Critical hit. With luck, I even got a critical hit. When the Orc Lord received huge damage while it had its weapon dropped, it would just fall in place. It would then faint and stay unconscious for a period of time. I won. This battle was mine. Hap. I aimed my glaive at the Orc Lord's throat, which was at a perfect height for me to do so. Although I couldn't pierce through it, I had dealt the damage. Of course, I wouldn't be satisfied with just one attack. I stabbed with my glaive a couple more times. Then, a thick stream of blood exploded out. Did I get too excited? I forgot to control myself and stabbed its throat one more time. It was then that the Orc Lord opened its eyes. Qua. Damn. Kook. He swung his fist and hit me. With just that, I flew back as my HP dropped tremendously. Thankfully, I did not hit the wall and just fell on the ground. Your HP fell below 30%. You are in need of urgent treatment. Ack, damn it. Losing too much blood too quickly, I couldn't move my body for a moment. Setting aside the pain I was feeling, I would definitely have died without the Orc Lord's defensive equipment set. D-A-E-E. -E. It's charging. I put strength into my knees and got up. My legs were shaking. It wasn't easy to digest the damage from its fist. Human, this is the end. Kook. I hurriedly took out a potion from my inventory and drank it. Once my HP recovered a little, it would become easier to move. However, the message I received was not the one I was expecting. You used a power potion. For 15 seconds, your strength is increased by 10. Damn. It seemed like I would have to face him directly. I didn't have the time to drink an HP potion anymore, and my legs weren't fully recovered. They could only manage standing their ground. Although this isn't what I had planned. I tightly gripped my glaive and looked forward. The Orc Lord was charging toward me in a straight line, its eyes glowing red. Its eyes were burning with love and the glaive in its hands were full of passion. It was truly the worst love confession. Phew let's do this. Don't look down on my spearmanship because it's only mid-rank. What I learned could not be described by ranks like low and mid. 
It was a technique passed down from my ancestors. Their breath still lived on in it. Faster than lightning, stronger than a dragon, grander than Mt. Tai, and more delicate than the ocean. This was. Dai. Well, it didn't have anything embarrassing like name. Thinking rather useless things as the orc lord neared me, I thrusted my glaive toward the orc lord's chest. If it could survive this, then I would be the one to die. P.U.K. I heard a sound. My attack had definitely hit its mark. The question was whether it died or not. Because my eyes were shut, I couldn't see if it was dead or if I was about to die. In an instant, everything became quiet as if all sounds in the world had disappeared. It like when you turned off the TV in the middle of the night. Slowly, I opened my eyes. Hike. The orc lord's face was right in front of mine. When I pulled out my glaive and stepped back, the orc lord fell with a thud. I blinked. This could this be? Did I succeed? A grand accomplishment. You have defeated the floor master, orc lord, alone. Amazing. You obtained the title orc lord slayer. All stats permanently increase by one. This effect will apply even if the title is not equipped. You have become bronze rank 6. Congratulations. You defeated the Orc Lord alone. You have obtained the special reward, Orc Lord's Pauldron. You obtained 1000 gold. Choose your reward. Chapter, 11. Choose your reward. 1. Deific Manifestation Magic Book. Ack, I'm getting dizzy. Can't the messages come slower? I asked the message Nuna I had grown rather accustomed to as I checked the message log. Let's see. Mmm, a grand accomplishment. Just as I was thinking it only sounded grand and gave no rewards, I saw that I had gotten a title. Not to mention, it raised all of my stats by one. I didn't think my stats would increase again. And the special reward, the Orc Lord's Pauldron. I see it's for my shoulders. Now that I thought about it, I had never seen the Orc Lord's Pauldron before. That could only mean that it only dropped when you defeated the Orc Lord alone. In other words, it was impossible to collect all of the Orc Lord's equipment until you defeated it alone. There was no equipment set this hard to collect in any game that I've played. Here it is. Wow, it looks amazing. I opened my inventory and equipped the Orc Lord's Pauldron. My body was now entirely covered with the Orc Lord's leather armor. I had lasted until the fifth floor with just training clothes, but now that I thought about it, I might as well have been naked. I didn't understand how I even thought of going into the dungeon like that. Even though you couldn't re-enter the dungeon for a week if you died, I had only thought that they were easy to move in. Not to mention, I was also using my wooden spear. Thinking about those days, I couldn't help but sigh in embarrassment. As I was standing still in reminiscence, another message was heard. You equipped the Orc Lord set. Your strength and constitution increases by 5. When the Orc Lord set is equipped, you can use Orc Lord's Warcry once per day. Ah! No way, it went up again. Although it seemed a little small compared to how hard it was to gather the full set, upon more careful consideration, two levels worth of stat points seemed fairly big. Not to mention, it would be weird if something from just the fifth floor was even better than this. Although completing the Orc Lord set or consuming compressing elixirs wasn't what I had planned from the very beginning. Now that I had experienced it, I thought that perhaps this was the result that the one who led explorers into the dungeon had planned. Checking how I looked in the full Orc Lord set, I nodded my head with satisfaction and read the next line in the message log. 1000 gold. This was to be expected. The Orc Lord always gave 1000 gold when defeated. The next was choosing my reward. But because I defeated the Orc Lord alone, there was only one reward on the list. There's no choice here. Looks like Message Nuna has to level up and raise her intelligence. Only thinking about such things and not letting it out of my mouth, I looked at the reward. 1. Deific Manifestation Magic Book. What's. This. I never expected to see a magic named after me one. The MC's name, Kong Shin, directly translates to deific manifestation, the name of this skill so he's confused. 
Was it just created? What was it for? Was it something only I could use? Although I had numerous questions, I held myself back. Because of my lack of mana, I couldn't use magic anyways. Just as I was thinking that. You have obtained the deific manifestation magic. You can use all of your MP and half of your HP to call upon a soul connected deeply to your roots. The duration of manifestation will depend on the amount of MP and HP you use. You can only manifest someone of the legendary rank or above, and you cannot use this skill again if you fail. On success, the skill has a cooldown time of one month. This magic has no skill level. It felt like someone was playing a trick on me. Come to think of it, a lot of people used to do that when I was little, though it stopped as I became abnormally big. This deific manifestation magic. For a second, it reminded me of psychics. Of course, this magic would be useless on me. After all, I had no MP. There was no way I could use this skill. I let out a sign. To think something I worked so hard to get would be of no use. Ack. Deific manifestation, deific manifestation. I shouted at the top of my lungs. Although I knew nothing would happen, I poured my heart out as I shouted. I will admit, I was slightly worried that I may have looked a little crazy shouting out my own name. But. All of your MP has been consumed. Half of your HP has been consumed. You use 20 MP and 1020 HP. For 1 minute and 40 seconds, you summon the mythical heroic spirit, Pryuta Relo Vatafoa. Eh. What? Did I see that right? 20. I thought I didn't have a single MP. As I looked puzzled, I suddenly began to feel that my body wasn't mine anymore. It was like I was wearing hundreds of clothes and could not move my body like I wanted. Then, a voice rang out inside me. Oh, what is this boy? What a talent he possesses. Yet, he has no mana. Strange, very strange. W who are you? I didn't look around like an idiot. I had already done so the first time I entered the dungeon. You were the one who called me. I am Pryuta Relo Vatafoa, a spearman now long forgotten. A spearman? You're a spearman. Wow. I use a spear too. Hmm. Ha ha ha. That's what I thought. Someone who can call me should no doubt use a spear. But this is concerning. Because of your lack of mana, I cannot stay for too long. But I have no mana at all. That's what I thought, but it turns out you have an extremely tiny amount. By the looks of things, I would guess you don't have a mana cultivation method. Am I correct? Yeah, I have none. Sorry. No need to be sorry. Since fate has connected us together, I will help. Kook, I already have to go back. Next time, they'll first teach you a mana cultivation method. Why yes. Take care. Not knowing where exactly he was going, I shouted. When the stuffy feeling disappeared, I no longer heard any voices. At the same time, I felt my body go limp and became devoid of energy. Even after realizing Pryuta disappeared, I remained still. I could not quite understand what had just happened. I thought I didn't have mana. What happened? Status. Name, Kong Shin Race, Human Sex, Male. Class, none title, Orc Lord Slayer rank, bronze 6. Level, 6. HP 1-0-1-0-2-2-40 MP 120. Strength 348 Dexterity 301 Constitution 396. Intelligence 201 Magic 01 Charm 161 Luck 101. Skill Low Rank Martial Arts Master, Low Rank Spear Technique Master, Mid Rank Spear Technique Master, Deific manifestation. Ha. Ha. I see, that was it. It was an extremely simple reason. 20 mana. I understood where this small amount came from. When I earned the title Orc Lord Slayer, all my stats had gone up up by one. Naturally, my magic went up as well. I could not distribute points into it with the points I gained from leveling up, but it seemed that this was fine. This had to be a bug. 
Of course, I had no intention of reporting it to a GM like I would in an online game. Well, not that I knew how to contact one anyways. In truth, I didn't know for sure whether this was a bug or not. What was important was that I finally had mana. Excited, I couldn't help but dance. Yes. I finally have mana. I can learn a mana cultivation method from Pryuta too. I can have chi. I can learn the high rank spear technique. Just like that, on the winter break of my senior year of high school, I found a solution to my goal of obtaining chi. Of course, it took another month before I could meet Pryuta again. He seemed prepared as the first thing he did upon being summoned was to imprint his mana cultivation method in my body. Because of the pain where it felt like liquid iron was poured into my body, I couldn't stop my tears from streaming down. However, tenacious to impart everything onto me, Pryuta gave little care for the pain I was experiencing. After finishing his work in just one minute and seven seconds, Pryuta disappeared, saying. If you guide and circulate your mana through the pathway I left in your body, mana will naturally grow inside you. I stood still, looking like a woman who had just been raped by her trusted lover. What was more irritating was that Pryuta was right. At first, it was hard to control the mana in my body, but as I moved it through the pathway he left, I became more relaxed and I could feel my body start to gather mana. The only weird part was that cultivating mana became noticeably slower outside the dungeon. As such, I had to increase the time I spent inside the dungeon. I worked diligently to increase my mana. It was because Pryuta said he would teach me spearmanship in a month. Although I heard that my family had an explosive spear technique that made use of chi, it was a story from long ago. Just when I thought I would have to learn the high rank spear technique on my own, I had come across the perfect teacher, Pryuta. When I could wield the high rank spear technique to a certain level, I could finally conquer the sixth floor filled with those damned ghosts. It would have been well past three years and two months. It had been a while, so I contacted Ellos and told him about what had happened. Surprised, Ellos shouted. Did you just say Pryuta Relo Vatafoa? Yep. He said he was a spearman. You know him. As we had exchanged messages for three years, we had long since become friends. I more than just know him. He's from my continent. Well, even if I say that, he's. From my continent's myth. Myth? Now that he mentioned it, I did seem to remember message Nuna saying something about a myth when I first summoned him. Yep, the creation myth at that. One sword, one spear, one shield, and one light. They laid a foundation in darkness and spread light into the world. Pryuterello Vatafoa is the spear from that story. I thought it was just a myth, but you said you summoned him. Since you say that, I'm starting to think it's not the same guy. He might be a fake. There is power behind names. Even if he isn't the same one from the myth, someone with the name Pryuta Relo Vatafoa shouldn't be ordinary. How much mana did you say you had? Ah, it's just over 700 now. You. Didn't you say you started cultivating mana a month ago? That speed of growth isn't normal. It can't be an ordinary mana cultivation method. Ah uh, really? Ha <laughs> ha. You really know how to surpass my expectations. Alright, let's beat the 25th floor master together. That's asking for too much. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha. I also tried contacting Polodia, but she didn't pick up. Now that I thought about it, a year and a half had passed since she told me to contact her. It was when I was infatuated with compressing elixirs. Ah. Because Ellos always contacted me first, I had naturally spent a lot of time talking to him. But Paludia had never contacted me since then. This was my fault. If she was mad, I couldn't do anything about it. In the end, I left her a message and called it quits. In truth, I didn't regret it at all. Chapter 12 Apart from light shining down on my future as a dungeon explorer, my final day as a high schooler was approaching. It was graduation. The scent of the evergreen pine tree. At the auditorium, the school's old-fashioned and childish song was playing. Of course, none of the graduating students were paying attention to the song nor the principal's instruction. 
Only when a few students were going up to the podium to receive awards did anyone check to see if it was someone they knew. Just like that, my graduation ended. My sister came and handed me a flower bouquet. She had long, straight hair and a doll-like face. Although her short height could be considered a flaw, other than that she had a body even a model would be jealous of. Her chest which wasn't all that big could also be considered a flaw as well, but to my eyes, it was one of the things that made her perfect. Appa, congratulations on graduating. Thanks, Yua. How pretty. Hee <laughs> hee, I picked it myself. No, I meant you're pretty. I wonder who your lucky brother is. Hee <laughs> hee, Appa. Seeing my sister laugh with such a lovable smile, I lightly hugged her. As my height went down to 190 centimeters and my body no longer looked massive, Yua stopped instinctively trembling when she saw me. It was the dungeon that turned me into a human capable of communicating with my sister. As I was enjoying happiness by holding the bouquet and embracing my sister, my mother slapped me on the head. Hey, stop right there. You're both my son and daughter, so don't get any weird ideas. If you want, they'll even let you do a DNA test. Eh, and mom. Of course we're your son and daughter. We take after your pretty looks. Phew, after you started going to that dungeon, only your talking has gotten smoother. As I partied with explorers from other worlds for the last three years, I too noticed that I had become a lot more sociable. Even in the short span of time where party members gathered to defeat the orc lord, a lot of internal problems could happen, just like what had happened between me and Poludia. As a party leader, I learned to deal with situations like those. It almost felt like I learned a passive flattery skill, not that that's a good thing. Let's go to a restaurant. We can celebrate Appa's graduation with steak. But Dad's not here. Father's probably fooling around somewhere. Let's just go eat without him. A few days ago, when I met Pryuta for the third time, he taught me the high rank spear technique that made use of mana. The first technique allowed one to attack for a long time by lightly imbuing the spear with mana. The second technique was an explosive thrust where one instantly imbued a large amount of mana into the spear. With just these two techniques, I was able to easily tear through the wraiths on the sixth floor. I could now move forward. What was more important was my father. He still did not have mana, and could only remain on the fifth floor. Some time ago, I showed myself swinging my spear with mana. He then said as he grabbed my shoulders, teach me. Father, you see. I could not leave a mana pathway in his body like Pryuta had done for me. He couldn't summon Pryuta to his body either. As a result, he decided to walk the same path I had. He would grind for compressing elixirs, obtain the Orc Lord equipment, and try for a one-man boss fight. But because he was a lot smaller than me, I was worried that he wouldn't be able to ingest too many compressing elixirs. I made sure that he knew the negative effects of overdosing on compressing elixirs. As my father was the type to worry for his safety, I did not worry too much. So you're saying your father's in the dungeon? Yep, he's probably fighting for his life right now. Phew, when will he grow up? You know, he's going to get slimmer like me. Really? Hell gets stronger too. Gulp. My mother swallowed. In truth, father wasn't so bad looking. It was just that his body made him look muscle-brained. Seeing mother change from disparaging father to looking forward to his transformation, Yua made a dumbfounded expression. Phew, who's the adult here? Ha ha ha. Seeing my sister act grown up was too cute, and I couldn't help myself from petting her head. Thinking how happy I was, I laughed. If only things continued like this of course, I knew my life would always be slightly more special than others. But life didn't always go as one expected. That day, two moons rose above the sky. The world had begun to change. Monsters appeared. Not inside the dungeon, but in the outside world. Breaking news. In Seoul's Ahyendong, a two-meter tall wolf appeared and began attacking people the two moons and the mutant animals. The relationship between the two will be discussed by our panelist. After two moon, reports say that parts of the mountain ranges have changed formation and that the oceanic crust are acting up. 
members of the government are saying that a state of martial law must be proclaimed. Reports say that mutant marine life have begun to attack major harbors and vessels. This incident, which is estimated to affect sea commerce, is breaking news. A man seemingly fighting against the mutant life forms, which have shown to take little damage from guns and knives, saved several nearby citizens. Experts say this is an effect of the two moon. At the same time that mutant life forms began appearing, people with the power to fight against them also appeared. Mutants that suddenly struck humanity with calamity. Would you believe that these mutants possess a secret that could advance our medical and chemical knowledge by 100 years? After the so-called two moon, the world became a mess. The government had even barred its citizens from stepping outside our homes. Because of strange creatures that suddenly began appearing all over the world, 20% of the human population suddenly died. Although various countries' militaries managed to drive them out, guns, knives, and even missiles were ineffective against them. These monsters flat out drove some countries to ruins, and feeling the danger of these monsters, the remaining countries formed an allied force against them. However, even the allied forces could only stop their advances by a little. In this situation where Earth was going crazy, like vaccines, people that could fight against the monsters appeared. Some beat down monsters with strange auras they imbued into their weapons, some burned them down with strange fires, and some twisted their necks off with telekinetic power. Although they were weak by themselves, they could fight well against monsters in groups. As a result, the government began to gather these people with powers and formed new divisions to fight against the monsters. In humanity's sudden moment of crisis, there was no time for countries to fight amongst themselves. Soon, a global anti-monster institution was established and monsters were chased out until they no longer appeared in areas populated by humans. Consequently, monsters began to gather in previously unpopulated areas or areas that had been abandoned by humans. With this, the fight between ability users and mutant life forms seemed to slow down. Ironically, the war resumed when scientific analysis of the mutant life forms, now called monsters, finished. Surprisingly, the monsters' corpses themselves, substances extracted from them, and blue nuggets very rarely found inside them all seem to possess significant value for use in science, medicine, the military and energy. As a result, the government began to change the way they worked. They began to use these special divisions, formed to protect citizens, to instead collect these resources. People were very sensitive to this change, and under the pretext of protecting the rights of ability users, many left the government divisions and formed their own institutions. Such phenomenon occurred on a global scale. In the end, two main structures emerged for ability user institutions. One was Guardian, formed under the government. The other was Freedom Wing, formed by independent ability users. What was at first considered a calamity for humanity was now considered an important resource for human advancement. Father. What's up? The world became a dungeon. It did. We spoke as we watched an interview from a representative of Freedom Wing. Between fighting monsters in the dungeon and fighting monsters here, what do you think we'll earn more? I don't really care about money, but wouldn't the monsters here give more money? They say it's 200 million won for just one. It looks easy, doesn't it, son? It does, father. Want to go hunt some together? ITLL be annoying if anyone finds out. Who cares? We can just say we're rogues. There were, of course, ability users who were not part of either Guardian or Freedom Wing. As Freedom Wing was once part of Guardian, it still had remnants of an organized structure. Ability users who disliked being tied down hunted individually or in small parties, then sold monster corpses to those that wanted them. It seemed trading centers for monster corpses were also in the making. According to the rumors, America already had them set up. It will be really annoying if we get branded as ability users. I'd rather go to dungeons. Besides, even if I hunt monsters here, I don't get any stronger. Is getting stronger all you care about? Yep. I want to conquer the dungeon all the way to the 100th floor. According to Ellos, no one had ever reached the 100th floor of the dungeon. I wanted to see the 100th floor with my own eyes. Although I was only level 7, 
if I traded all the gold I had accumulated from three years of hunting the orc lord, I would have more than five hundred million won. It was an awful lot of money for someone who had not even gone to college yet. Ah, uh, of course, colleges were currently closed due to monsters. The point was, I didn't plan on doing anything bothersome just for money. Father, do you want to obtain an ability user license? I'm thinking about it. But you already earn a lot. You can never have enough money. What do you need more money for? I can buy a bigger house, a bigger car, a bigger ring for your mother, more expensive clothes for you. Uh. What about me? You can make your own money. Father did not get licensed right away. It was partly because he had yet to obtain mana, but more importantly because the world wasn't yet stable. I agreed with his decision. Although ability users were amazing human resources, beside the fact that they could fight against monsters, they were no different than normal human beings. It was impossible to know whether anything untoward would happen. It took another half year before everything calmed down. It was a stormy period where the paradigm of human history was changing. Some sang of the end, while some sang of a new beginning. My mother busily stockpiled canned food and ramen, my sister studied at home as schools were still closed, and my father continued to fight the orc lord in hopes of obtaining mana. Of course, in that half a year, I devoted my entire time to the dungeon. Chapter, 13 Hap Woo Shut it I struck down a wraith with my mana-imbued spear. Although the weapon I was using was technically a glaive, because of the way I was using it, I often called it a spear. The wraith seemed to want to phase through my attack, but, unable to do so, it scattered into little pieces. Wraiths could not be damaged by physical attacks, but they were incredibly weak to magical attacks or attacks imbued with mana. It seemed the sixth floor was a place where those who could use mana were separated from those who couldn't. According to Elos, because no one in their party had a high rank weapon technique, to fight against the wraiths they had to learn an applied skill that used mana. I, of course, knew the high rank spear technique, so I could deal with the wraiths using that. In any case, I was no longer on the sixth floor, but the seventh. Late at night two days ago, when I managed to plow through the sixth floor's wraiths and arrive at the seventh floor, I was met with even more wraiths. When I asked Elos, he answered that wraiths appeared all the way until the end of the tenth floor. For a little while, I was confident I wouldn't be phased by any horror movies. With the wraiths popping out incessantly, I had grown too desensitized to be surprised. I now had about 850 mana. Just when I was thinking that the growth speed was beginning to slow down, it jumped by about 100 when I leveled up to level 7. It was then that I realized that level UPS acted as breakthroughs for slowed growth. Level ups were like mini evolutions. It was raising my entire self to a higher realm of being. Together with the fact that you could choose the direction of growth by means of your status points, level UPS were truly an overwhelming and grand authority. That said, it was still important to have a mana cultivation method. With constant training, not only would the mana's speed of growth get faster upon leveling up, its speed of recovery would also get faster. My mana cultivation method positioned itself in my status by the name Peruta Circuit. Perhaps because it did not have a rank like low or mid, it was still level 2 even after 2 months of training. All of you, come at me. You used Orc Lord's war cry. All party members are cleansed of negative status effects. All party members' attack power increases by 50% for the duration. All party members become super armored, unfazed by enemy attacks. Using Orc Lord's war cry, which was a perfect skill other than the fact that I could only use it once a day, I charged towards a flock of wraiths. I had no time to waste on guys that didn't drop anything. Kia. Tempest. Tempest. It was one of the skills I learned from Pryuta. Using a special breathing method combined with a special mana circulation method, it took the artificial current of mana that was generated around my spear and exploded it forward. Everything in its path was torn up by blades of wind. There was truly no skill better to open up a straight path. The downside was that it used up over 300 mana. I see the stairs. I also saw the floor shop next to it. I once again swung my glaive and killed the wraiths flying toward me. 
Then, I rushed toward the floor shop and was greeted by the same Nuna I always met. I had begun to question whether this Nuna was the same as the ones from all previous floors. Not only did she look the same, she also knew me extremely well. Oh, you were quite fast. You broke through the seventh floor in just two days. Others take two months or even half a year. I should be able to keep going at this rate for a while. Is that so? You remained bound to the fifth floor for over three years, but it looks like you didn't spend your time in vain. The shop Nuna made an odd smile as she looked at me. Then why don't you prove your worth? Hmm. A quest appeared. Quest. Upon hearing about it, Elo spoke excited. A quest. Amazing. Is it? Of course. I'm on the twenty-first floor now, but I've never encountered a quest. What's a quest? I of course knew what a quest was. It was something easily found in games. When someone accepted a request from an NPC and fulfilled it, he would receive experience points and rewards. Simply put, a quest was fulfilling a request and earning rewards for it. But I never imagined that the dungeon would have quests. I couldn't hide my surprise at this revelation, and I contacted Elos to obtain whatever information I could about it. A quest is a quest. It's like a surprise present. No one knows what triggers it. A surprise present. Yep. In my continent, there is an explorer who conquered the fiftieth floor of the third dungeon. From what I heard, he could only climb so high because of a quest he triggered on the seventeenth floor. Like I said, no one knows what conditions triggers quests, but we do know one thing. If you do as the quests say, you can obtain skills or items unobtainable by normal explorers. Through that quest, the explorer I mentioned learned a skill that would become his iconic move. Growing along with it, he climbed all the way to the fiftieth floor. Wow, so what happened to him? He fell while fighting against the invaders. It was a truly heroic death. It's a shame. If he was an explorer of the first dungeon instead of the third, he could have become much stronger. You mean the reward is greater if the dungeon's difficulty is greater? Yep. The number in front of dungeons denote how difficult it is. According to Elos, his home continent, Edias, always had magicians, priests who used God's power, and knights who manifested auras. It was only about 300 years ago that dungeon explorers began to appear. Elos called these first ones to become dungeon explorers the pioneers. The pioneers raised their levels by exploring dungeons, and became the strongest in the continent by equipping items from the dungeons. By the time followers, ones who obtained the qualifications to enter the dungeon by the pioneers' acknowledgement, appeared, invaders began to appear in their continent. These invaders arrived with large armies, and their goal was to massacre and conquer all residents of the continent. No words got through to them, and the residents of the continent were left with no choice but to fight back. Against these enemies that used mystical weapons and magic, it was obviously only the dungeon explorers who could face them. This war that began 200 years ago still seemed to be raging on. After becoming a dungeon explorer, Elos also obtained a key position in his country. Now that he had climbed above the 20th floor, he was on the front line fighting against the invaders. When I first heard his story, I was shocked. I found it regrettable that all I could do to help him was to cheer him on. Does the first dungeon have less explorers? Yep. A dungeon explorer's qualities determine which dungeon he gets to go. Not that I'm bragging or anything, ha uh ha. -huh. Consider it flattering me then. What? Ha ha ha. Anyways, congratulations on getting a quest, friend. I'll pray for your success. Alright, I'll talk to you later. Quest charged through the ghosts. Content although you dawdled, Unable to break through the sixth floor for over three years, you were able to somehow break through the seventh floor in two days. The first dungeon's floor shop owner, Loretta, wishes to test the potential she sees in you. If you can break through the ninth floor in a day, Loretta might give you a rare item unavailable for purchase. Time left until quest ends, 23 hours 46 minutes and 14 seconds. Kia. HM, breaking through the ninth floor in a day it shouldn't be too hard if I eh? As I read the content of the quest in front of the eighth floor, 
lightning seemed to strike me as I finally realized something. I have to break through two floors in one day. W. Watt. I checked the amount of time I had left. Oh no, my precious 14 minutes. I hurriedly began charging with my glaive in hand. The wraiths from the eighth floor went after me like ants that had just found a lollipop on the ground. Screw off. I don't have time to play around with you guys. I had 600 mana left. If I succeed in completing this quest, I swear it'll focus on the Pryuta circuit. Making a belated vow of regret, I bravely held up my spear and charged forward like Don Quixote tilting at windmills. The only choice I had left was to rush forward. Stupid. I told you to contact me first. Why didn't you for so long? Don't tell me you're going to stop with just a single message. You stupid orc. It seemed like someone sent me a message, but I was too busy to pay attention to it. I am one with the spear. My spear is the spear that will pierce the heavens. Why you, I finally contacted you, don't tell me you're going to ignore me. Fine, you orc. I don't know you anymore. I hope you slip and break your nose. Hua. Ah, I wonder who can stop this wonderful feeling I'm having. One with the spear, I shall rush forward. My only goal, the staircase. Stupid. Stupid. I hate you. I don't know you anymore stupid. After about 15 hours, I finally reached the end of 8th floor. Ha ha. Oh, you look tired. You have 9 hours left. Are you sure you can do it? Who, ho ho oh of course who. Clearing away the annoying windows in front of me, I answered. So she really was the same person. Strange. How was it possible? I stared at her trying to figure it out, but the Nuna whose straight hair was memorable looked away with reddened cheeks. Even if you stare at me so passionately, I won't increase the time. No, that's not it. Compared to when you first arrived, you became much manlier. Even so, you're still five years too early. I prefer men who can protect me. No, that's not it either. I didn't want to waste any more time talking to her, so I sat down and began eating beef jerky. Then, Stor Nuna began another conversation. Her eyes were shining, unlike last time. Chapter, 14 Did you notice any difference between the wraiths on the 7th floor and 8th floor? Mm. The 8th floor wraiths were a bit stronger. Their defense seemed to be higher. Unlike the wraiths on the 7th floor, the wraiths from the 8th floor didn't die in one hit. But Nuna didn't seem satisfied with my answer. You didn't feel anything else? Anything else? Ah. Uh. Oh, yeah. There seemed to be ones that spit out something from their mouths. They were almost like goblins with their poisonous darts. Because I became temporarily paralyzed when they hit me, they were quite annoying to deal with. Without them, I could have reached the end of the eighth floor a few hours quicker. Do you think the ninth floor won't have wraiths like those? What are you trying to say? Even though I asked, I knew what she was going to say. Just as I had expected, the shop Nuna shoved a strange object in front of my face and shouted. Here. This here is spiritual shield, something that can block the wraith's ectoplasm arrows 100 times. It's only 5,000 gold. If you buy this, you might be able to break through the ninth floor in under 9 hours. Did you give me a quest just to sell me things? Nuna clearly turned her eyes away at my inquiry. Then. But customer, you never come to the shop. T that's. For over three years, no less. Not once. Do you know how much my performance has fallen during that time? P performance. Why don't we help each other, customer? You make so much. It wouldn't hurt to spend some at the shop, would it? But 5,000 gold is too much. Since the exchange rate was 2,101, that would mean 10. 5 million one. Now that I did the conversion in my mind, I really didn't want to buy it. I couldn't buy such a high price item on a whim. Without this, it probably will be impossible to break through the ninth floor in 9 hours. Ah, it's 8 hours, 57 minutes, and 58 seconds now. You're too meticulous with time. In the end, 
I reluctantly bought the spiritual shield. It was a sticker, and when I put it on the back of my hand, I felt an instant zap. The sticker then disappeared and the sticker mark seemed to be tattooed onto my hand. I regretted it. It was a Pokemon sticker. Damn it, I have to quickly use these up. If mother or father saw me with a Pokemon tattoo on my hand, they would no doubt look at me with strange eyes. I quickly rushed up to the ninth floor, leaving behind the shop Nuna cheering me on. Next time you buy it, they'll give you a 10% discount. Like I will. I ran. Although my mana rose to over 1000 after hitting level 9, I did not pay any attention to it. I only had 8 hours 55 minutes and 34 seconds left. Commence exploration. I shouted with a ringing voice. Wraiths surged out from all directions. Just like Shop Nuna said, there were more wraiths that shot out ectoplasm arrows. Although I doubted whether I needed to spend 10. 5 million won to block them, I managed to leave the thought behind, believing that the quest reward would be much better. Quest success. Seeing you break through the ninth floor in 24 hours, the shop owner regrets making a bet. But a promise is a promise. She will give you a worthy reward. You received a system reward. You obtained one skill point. You can raise the level of a skill by one. You really succeeded. Yes. You really. Succeeded. Nuna, your face. Unable to take on shop Nuna, Loretta's depressed expression directly, I turned away. I was more concerned with this skill point. Raising a skill level, wasn't this an amazing reward? It seemed better to save it than to use it now. Loretta seemed to have found her calm as she grabbed my hand and handed me a translucent circular object. Hugh, a promise is a promise. Here is your reward. You received Soul Bomb X2. What's this? There's Soul Bombs, customer. Although I was thankful she talked to me nicely, her eyes were still dead. I thought about pointing this out, but I just chose to check the information on these soul bombs. Soul Bomb Rare A magical tool created by a great sage who wields soul magic and Kaloha races blacksmith, hand of creation. When this magical tool is thrown and shock is applied, the spiritual burst skill will be used, dealing fatal damage to all existences in soul form. It deals 505,000 damage to all souls in a 20 meter radius. These are consumables. That's why I gave you two. So I can only use it twice. Well, customer, would you like to make another bet? It's breaking through the tenth floor, right? I don't even need to be told. To think she'd make use of her reward and make another bet. What a vicious woman. But there won't be a time limit this time. Ho. You can complete it whenever you want. Let's hear it. Hoo hoo. I've got him. Your inner thoughts are coming out, Nuna. The bet is simple. You have to defeat the tenth floor master, the Wraith Queen, by yourself. A quest appeared. Race Queen 1. Wraith and Race are homophones in Korean. I hoped she didn't ask. Thinking about a racing girl in a miniskirt upon hearing Wraith Queen only proved that I was a man. Will you accept the challenge? Loretta looked at me provokingly. I smirked and answered. I will. Something like that will be no challenge for me. You accepted the quest. Oh, how bold for someone who stayed on the fifth floor for three and a half years. I ended up defeating the Orc Lord alone, so. Yes. You didn't know. In an instant, Loretta's face turned pale and froze. Then, she suddenly grabbed onto my arm. She looked like she was about to cry. Let. Let me take that back. The die is cast. T then let me add a time limit. A girl's words carry the weight of a thousand gold. There's no such saying. Visiting the doctor after death. Ack, you evil customer. At least buy more spiritual shields. The one I've got still has seventy-two uses left, so I'm good. Ah, uh, really? You're evil. Just like that. I accepted my second quest. Um, it seemed like I was forgetting something. Must just be my imagination. Yep, just my imagination. The tenth floor master, 
Wraith Queen. It was accompanied by fifty wraiths, and used fear magic, confusion magic, and ectoplasm arrows to torment dungeon explorers facing it. However, it had a clear weakness. It was that its HP was much lower compared to the Orc Lord. Loretta was also selling items that blocked fear and confusion magic. These items that only blocked the Wraith Queen's magic for five minutes were five thousand gold apiece. According to Ellos, dungeon explorers who challenged the Wraith Queen suffered under her insatiable desire to devour money. I still won't buy them. Why? With them, it's impossible to beat it alone. I'm not trying to beat it alone for now. Cool. Priest-type explorers knew spells that could cleanse the fear or confused status effect. Rather than challenging it alone from the beginning, I chose to enter a party and experience a boss raid. In this chaotic time when mutant life forms were appearing on Earth, being unable to enter the dungeon for a week meant my time stopped flowing. Even if I hunted the mutant life forms, not only would my level not rise, I would risk exposing myself as an ability user. As such, the only place I could train was in the dungeon. I had no plan of ever being kicked out of the dungeon again. Take good care of me. In Kong Shin from Earth. Earth? Are you? That Kong Shin? Yep, in that Kong Shin. No way, the Crown Prince has advanced to the tenth floor. What? It's really the Crown Prince? Whoa, the Crown Prince is in our party. Amazing. I had just entered a random party, but it seemed everyone knew who I was. I wonder how the rumor spread. This is my first time fighting the Wraith Queen. I might get in your way. You'll be more than enough help just by clearing all the wraiths. The priestesses can take care of the rest. Leave it to us. There were three priestesses in this party. Oddly enough, there were no priests. Although the priestesses were beautiful, they were ugly compared to my beautiful Yua. Just as I was thinking this, one of them talked to me. Crown Prince Nim, do you perhaps know her highness? Who? I was about to say, Crown Prince is my nickname. By her highness, do you mean Yua? Her serious eyes stopped me. I mean Awer Empire's Crown Princess, Her Highness Paludia Gren Awer. I heard you partied with her previously. Eh, Paludia. Yeah, I know her, but... Crown Princess. When I told the priestess that this was the first time I've been told about it, she gave me a dumbfounded look. You mean you couldn't tell from her graceful and beautiful appearance? Graceful? She was just a noisy brat. What? Ah, uh, whoops. Just like that, I had to spend the next five minutes hearing about Polydia's beauty. Why did I have to go through such an unreasonable treatment? What part of that flat-chested twin tail was so beautiful? Of course, I didn't say anything out loud. You understand how beautiful and splendid Polydia Nim is now. She is the rising morning star of our continent, the ever-burning flame of hope, a flower that must not fight against the demon kind. All right. All right, I understand, so let's just go hunt the Wraith Queen. By your half-hearted response, it looked like you didn't understand in the slightest. It'll tell you one more time, so wipe your ears clean and listen. My ears were very clean, thank you very much. In fact, hearing more about Paludia would only make my ear go. Wait. Paludia. Come to think of it, yesterday. Aitich. Kaya. You surprised me. When I screamed, the shocked priestess fell on the ground. However, I wasn't in a position to pay attention to her. Oh no, I ignored Polydia's messages. That noisy girl wasn't the type to stay silent after having her messages ignored. With my rising fear, I began to sweat. Now that things had come to this, should I keep ignoring her? No, I couldn't avoid her forever. Eventually, I would meet her again in the dungeon. Plus, ignoring her would be too rude. Although she wasn't likable, she wasn't detestable either. All right, he'll contact her as soon as the Wraith Queen raid ends. Making a vow, I spoke to the party members. Let's hurry and do this. Crown Prince C. Although I made an enemy in an unexpected way, I chose to ignore it. Not paying any attention to the burning gaze behind me, I opened the door to what was a haunted house. Chapter, 
15. Kia. Kayak. Menacing ghosts turn their attention toward us. I quickly scanned the room to find the Wraith Queen. Just like I had expected, she was looking down at us from a throne in the innermost area of the room. She appeared to be three meters tall and took the form of a woman. Humans dare to enter my territory. I shall extract your souls and make you suffer for all eternity. Well take care of the wraiths first. The attack strategy was not too different from the strategy for the Orc Lord. Against all the wraiths flying toward us, I used Tempest and paved open a path. Quiak. All right, let's go. Eh. Yes. Since I spent 300 mana to kill about 30 wraiths, I felt it was justified. However, my party members seemed to disagree. I remember the party leader saying that the Wraith Queen had a skill that summoned wraiths when their numbers got low and that we had to take care of them quickly. What was wrong? Is there a problem? What level are you? 10. Aren't we all? Are you really level 10? Yes, I really am. It felt a bit weird hearing them repeatedly say 10-1. When I replied in a displeased tone, the party leader retorted as if he had just heard the most ridiculous thing. What skill allows a level 10 to kill 30 wraiths of the same level? The high rank spear technique. It was level 2 high rank spear technique, to be exact. High rank weapon techniques really were hard to level up. H high rank. This is the power of the crown prince. Crown prince. I felt like dying from embarrassment. In the meanwhile, the Wraith Queen was making a summoning gesture. More wraiths are coming out. I have a limit to my mana, so I can only use that skill two more times. Ah, everyone, charge. Priestesses, prepare your status effect cleansing spells. Yes. With the party leader taking the lead, everyone rushed forward. Although I also ran while taking care of the incoming wraiths, the Wraith Queen resummoned ten wraiths in one go. The summoned wraiths flew toward us the moment they were summoned, and the Wraith Queen went back to her summoning gesture. She's one annoying ghost for sure. When the number of wraiths fall below 20, she starts summoning more. It'll take care of the wraiths so you can focus on dealing damage. Got it. Everyone, use auras. A bluish aura wrapped around the party leader's sword. As I struck down the wraiths, the party leader and five other people all used their swords, blades, and spears to attack the Wraith Queen. Even as she screamed out in pain, the Wraith Queen didn't stop summoning wraiths. Hap! I let out a spirited shout and activated Tempest to sweep the wraiths once more. Mana surged from my body as it traveled from the heart, ran down the arm, and wrapped around my spear. It formed a spiral current as I thrusted it forward. Boom! Kia! Saya! A majority of the leftover wraiths were swept away by the tempest. The wraith queen stopped her summoning and let out a rageful scream. Kia! Wraith queen used vengeful spirit's wail. All party members fall under a state of confusion. All party members fall under a state of fear. You attempt to resist. With 22 charm and 11 luck, resistance chance is 28% resist failed. You fall under confusion and fear. What? What just happened? Suddenly, I couldn't balance myself properly. My head was spinning and I wanted to fall down. I didn't understand why I was here. I just wanted to lie and rest. When I raised my head, I was surrounded by several Paludias. Hook. No way. Paludia. You orc. Bastard orc. You dare ignore me. You're just an orc. It'll kill you. Sorry. I didn't meant to ignore you. Like I care. Die. You whack. All the Paludias suddenly jumped at me. It'll die, it'll die right here. At that moment. Save those who fell under darkness. Purify. You have been cleansed of status effects. Yuak, Paludia, Imsor eh. When I snapped out of it, all the Paludias disappeared and turned into wraiths. No, they couldn't have been Paludia in the first place. They were wraiths from the very beginning. Did I mistake them for Paludia in the confused state? Why was I so afraid of her in the first place? 
Leader! One of the priestess suddenly shouted. When I hurriedly turned my head, I saw the Wraith Queen endlessly shooting out ectoplasm arrows at the party leader. He seemed to not have any spiritual shield or have run out as he turned pale and soon fell. Damn, the leader died. The Wraith Queen is summoning again. Kook, at this rate. The next thing I knew, the raid was about to end as a failure. Didn't I have an item for this exact situation? I hurriedly took out a soul bomb from my inventory and threw it at the Wraith Queen. The moment the bomb made contact and exploded, a boom sounded out and the Wraith Queen staggered. Kwang. Spiritual burst activated. Wraith Queen received 1496 damage. Wraith received 700 damage. Wraith received 4700 damage. Damn it, it could deal up to 5000 damage and it only did 1500. Although I was disappointed by the soul bomb's power, it managed to stop her. The two wraiths standing near her also died in the blast. Now was the time to turn the tide. I decided to use the skill I kept hidden. Everyone, charge. You used Orc Lord's war cry. All party members are cleansed of negative status effects. All party members' attack power increases by 50% for the duration. All party members become super armored, unfazed by enemy attacks. W what's this? Isn't this the Orc Lord skill? Who used it? No way, it's the Crown Prince. Stop babbling and attack. Feeling my body glow under the effect of super armor, I rushed toward the Wraith Queen. When I thrust my spear in, I could feel a definite response. As expected of a 50% attack power increase. Kiak. I'm going to have to work on my habit of shouting out in fights. Even as I scolded myself internally, on the outside, I was acting wild like a boar that had just been hit. The party members seemed to understand that questions were for later as they followed my lead and attacked the Wraith Queen. Attacks from the entire party. Not to mention, they were strengthened by 50%. The Wraith Queen could not finish her summoning gesture and stumbled down. When a beautiful woman fell, it would be a man's instinct to help her rise. Unfortunately, none of the men here had the desire to escort the Wraith Queen. Kiak. Wraith Queen uses Vengeful Spirit's Wail. Super Armor State ignores status effect. Wow. I didn't know Super Armor had such an effect. In truth, because the Super Armor was such an unusual state, I did not fully know all of its uses. However, I did know that this was the best opportunity to finish off the Wraith Queen. I checked the amount of mana I had left. Still about 300. What should I do? Save it? No, if I saved it and Orc Lord's war cry ended, it would be terrible. I did not doubt I would succeed, but I did not want to unnecessarily send other party members on week-long vacations. Kook, were being pushed back. This Wraith Queen. Even her physical attacks are strong. Sino is about to die. Heal her. Kia. Let the vengeful spirits burn you alive, humans. In the end, I came to a decision. Brushing aside the wraiths that were nearing me with a single swing, I pulled my spear back slightly. This was not a spear technique I learned from Pryuta, but a Kong family spear technique I learned from father. It focused the entire Bodhis power into the spear tip and penetrated the enemy. By pouring all of one's concentration into the spear tip, it created a single blow that surpassed the limit of humans. With it, I wrapped the spiral current of mana used in Tempest. The spear tip began to tremble, and I held it back with my willpower alone. For a move that poured everything into a single attack, not a shred of hesitation or wavering could be allowed. Eh, Crown Prince is doing something. Someone hold down the Wraith Queen. She's trying to run out. Crown Prince, hurry. I did not even have the energy to reply. Damn, controlling mana and controlling the entire Bodhis strength. Doing these two things at once gave me a splitting headache. Was it really impossible to do both of these at once? No, wait. Wasn't mana part of my strength? Why was I trying to stick to the shape of Tempest? It was an attack focused on a single point. Why couldn't I just focus my mana with it? 
The moment I realized it, the current of mana wrapping around the spear disappeared. Instead, my mana began to flow from my body to the spear tip. The stream of pure white light flowing and gather at the spear tip made it look like I was gathering energy for an energy blast. But I had to end it quick. I could feel my mana draining. The only thing to do was to draw my breath and thrust out. In this tranquil state, I stared fixedly at the Wraith Queen's chest, the target of my attack. And no way that light is. Hero. I see, Crown Prince was his world's hero. I thought he was overly strong. No words entered my ears. The only important thing to me right now was this attack. I devoted my entire focus on this attack. The attack timing came in a surprise. It was the moment right before the Wraith Queen tried to use another vengeful spirit whale and also the moment right before Orc Lord's war cry ended. I thrust out with my spear. Puke. Surprisingly, a soft sensation like sticking a fork through cake flowed through me. I smiled. I knew this attack was a success. There was no chance that it failed. Kia. The Wraith Queen let out a blood-curdling scream, slowly turning transparent. At the same time, in front of us eight members someone else seemed to have died without me noticing, a large window appeared. You became level 11. You obtained the qualification to enter the 11th floor. You obtained five bonus stats. You obtained 3000 gold. It is distributed evenly amongst party members. You received 375 gold. Rewards will be distributed in order of contribution. Kong Shin Nim's contribution is the highest. Choose your reward. Kaya, we did it. We won, we won. All hail Crown Prince. Crown Prince is the best. After standing blankly for a while, everyone threw themselves onto me. Because most of them were women, I almost lost my sense of reasoning from their sweet scent and soft touch. Everyone, let go of Crown Prince. He has to choose a reward before we do. Ah, right. Sorry, Crown Prince. Sorry, Crown Prince, but you looked so cool back there. That aside, why do you all keep calling me Crown Prince? Expressing discontent at my nickname that seemed to have become fixed, I checked the reward list. 1. Wraith Queen's Headdress. 2. Middle Potion. 3. Mana Potion. 4. Soul Tempering Elixir. 5. Rescue Nut. 6. Animate Dead Magic Book. 7. Wraith Queen's Ghost Shoes. 8. Emergency Medical Kit. Hoo, hoo hoo, hoo hoo hoo. Hike, Crown Prince is laughing. Hmm. What could have come out? Ah, in third in contributions. I hope there are at least three Wraith Queen drops. Hoo-hoo, don't worry, you'll obtain what you want. Of course, I will too. Would I choose anything else at this point? Without a shred of hesitation, I chose number four, the Soul Tempering Elixir. Soul Tempering Elixir Rare. All souls become dirty and mixed with impurities as they live their lives. When the body experiences sudden growth, the soul often is unable to adapt to the new body and even degrade. The soul tempering elixir purifies the soul and strengthens it to fit the body. A tempered soul not only affects the body positively, but it also positively affects one's mana. Note, when someone whose soul has already been tempered to the max or when someone who has both weak soul and body consumes this elixir, it may deal permanent damage or even kill in the worst case scenario. As I expected. When I swallowed the soul-tempering pill without hesitation, it felt like hot water was pouring inside me. However, I endured it with my willpower. When the feeling had disappeared, a message I had been expecting appeared. You tempered your soul. As a result, your magic and charm increases by one. Eh, why did charm go up? Although this was something I hadn't expected, since it was a good thing, I decided not to put much thought into it. Wow. There are two Wraith Queen items left. This raid was amazing on so many levels. Kia, a magic book. Crown Prince. Crown Prince. Can you guys stop chanting Crown Prince? Please, 
I beg you. 1. Ten in Korean sounds similar to the F word equivalent, although not exactly. Chapter, 16. What did I do after that? I, of course, went straight to the eleventh floor. My situation was different than before. Three years ago, I had to remain on the fifth floor hunting the orc lord because I couldn't advance through the sixth floor. Now, I could do things a little smarter. Dungeon explorers became unable to challenge floor masters once they defeated the next one. In other words, as long as they did not defeat the next floor master, they could always go back and challenge the previous floor master. In short, before I defeat the fifteenth floor master, I could always re-challenge the Wraith Queen. Between level 11 and level 15, there was at least a 500 mana difference. There was no need to take the hard path when the easy one was so readily available. As such, I decided to explore the 11th floor. When Loretta saw me heading up from the 10th floor, she trembled and said, T that method is unfair. Unfair. What I wanted was for customer to challenge the boss at level 10. But you didn't say that yesterday. Ha. I understand, Nuna. I agree that leveling up to level 15 and challenging the Wraith Queen is slightly unfair. Customer. Then. But the world of competition is cruel. Loretta made a sulking expression. Because it was too cute, I couldn't help but laugh. Ha ha ha. Even so, as far as I know, defeating the Wraith Queen alone should be hard even at level 15. Of course, it is. I have only seen it happen twice. HM, so there is precedent. Of course. If you think you will be the first in everything you do, you are mistaken. Though, you are the first in the past 200 years. What was that at the end? No, it's nothing. Well, customer, it looks like you discovered a loophole in my quest. Then, try your best. I sense great malicious intent in what you said. What was that? Ah uh, yes, the item you need for the eleventh floor is this. The rat trap. This great item is now selling for a mere 100 gold. I didn't ask. I had more or less expected it when Loretta talked about rat traps, but the monsters on the eleventh floor were the infamous rat men. You could simply think of them as one meter tall rats walking around on their hind legs. They had long, sharp tails that swung around like whips and were difficult to attack due to their quick movements. Moreover, they did not travel alone. When you spotted one, there would undoubtedly be five more behind it. Their reproductive capabilities were like that of cockroaches. That said, I already had experience stabbing flying cockroaches to death. It wasn't so hard for me to follow some rat's movements. Ugh, I get goosebumps every time I see them. Kayak. Human kill rat. That's right, today will be an extermination day. Fighting against rat men who always ambushed in groups, my battle sense grew significantly. As I always stayed alert, predicting where they would come from next, I began to acquire the ability to grasp my surroundings. Because I was not on a timer this time, I spent about a week to slowly grow my battle sense. All the rat men on 12th and 13th floor would also be stronger, I knew their movements couldn't be too different. As such, I decided to grasp all their movement patterns on the 11th floor. This took an additional week. Hoo-hoo, it's not so easy anymore, is it? After seeing me for the first time in two weeks, Loretta asked with a satisfied expression. It seemed she thought I wanted to give up on the Wraith Queen quest, so I smirked and answered her. Hey, do you want to make an additional bet? No, I don't, said Loretta making a triangle mouth. I couldn't help but laugh again. You shouldn't make fun of this Nuna. You can't be that much older than me. You'd be surprised. I'm much older than you could ever imagine. Really? Can I still call you Nuna? Humph, only a pervert like customer would call a strange shop owner Nuna. I'm looking forward to continue working with you, Loretta Nuna. Cool. In truth, I had no experience interacting with women. Besides my angelic younger sister Yua, there was no one of the opposite sex that I talked to regularly. Although I had quite a few close female friends when I was in elementary school, things changed when my muscles began to grow. As a result, Loretta was the first girl outside of my family that I talked with for such a long time. 
I couldn't help but feel that I was pitiful. How did things come to this? Phew, I know I'm beautiful, but I'll be troubled if you approach me. No, I'm not really interested as a man. When I told her flat out, Loretta smacked me. How rude. Apologize. Apologize and buy this rat trap. What does the rat trap have to do with this? Come on, hurry up. Sigh. Then he'll buy five for now. That will be five hundred gold, customer. Since you didn't apologize, you should buy five more. Sorry, five is fine. Just like always, my conversation with Loretta ended with gold. Seeing her undying professionalism, I pledged to never judge a woman by her looks. With five rat traps in hand, I walked up to the twelfth floor. As I did, I thought, I seem to be forgetting about something well, whatever. It can't be anything important. Yep. One month from then, on the fourteenth floor, I was running from a hailstorm of lightning. Come on, what kind of rats shoots out lightning? Pika pika pika. Shut it, you fakes. Pika my ass. I silently complained as I ran away from the five for one electric rat men. I had wondered why the thirteenth floor shop was selling lightning resistant robes. Because it cost ten thousand gold, I left without turning back, but now I was regretting it. Pika. Ack, shut up. Tempest. My orc lord's glaive trembled and shot out a gale in a straight line. Tempest tore apart the ratman's lightning along with their bodies. Pika. Just die already. I shuddered and stopped in place. Gasping for breath, I checked and saw that I had about half my mana left. Adjusting my breath calmly, I initiated Peruta circuit. Of course, even as I circulated mana, I didn't forget to use my ears. Rat men were fundamentally different than orcs and wraiths. They knew all too well exactly when and how to annoy explorers. They popped up from the most unexpected places at the most unexpected time. They were driving me crazy. If I wanted to rest, I had to throw down a few rat traps in the area. I was only using the Peruta circuit because I had some strength left. Katok. At that moment, my phone buzzed. What was that? You didn't think phones worked in the dungeon? Nope, they worked perfectly fine. How else would I communicate with the outside? I needed to run to Yua if she ever needed me. I picked up my phone. It was a message from father. I awakened. What? I couldn't help but speak my thoughts out loud. He uh what? Awakened? I calmly thought about what he meant. Because I had been too focused in fighting the rat men, I couldn't think critically. I see I knew what it meant when someone awakened. You might find it hard to believe, so come see it for yourself. Father awakened. That meant father had become an ability user. I quickly left the dungeon. As long as I wasn't in battle, I could exit the dungeon at any time through my phone. The moment I came out, I saw father waiting for me on the couch. Father, you became an ability user. Yes. I didn't think it was possible. You jealous? What ability is it? Um, mm, it'll show you. Here. Father's eyes turned serious. He pulled his fist back, then pushed it forward. Suddenly, I felt like his fist was flying toward me. He had clearly not moved his fist, but I trusted in my instincts honed by experience and quickly ducked. Surprisingly, Something passed over my head in an instant and hit the wall, leaving a crack. A shockwave. Yep. Freaking awesome. Freaking awesome indeed. Father nodded his head in agreement. He was already strong, but to think he would obtain a shockwave ability. I was dying from jealousy. I was recently thinking that I had gotten stronger, but just like this, the scale had been flipped. How did you awaken, father? You see, I saw a dream. A dream? What dream? Dungeons. Dungeons? Countless dungeons appeared on earth. They were not like the first dungeon we are familiar with. From them, countless monsters began pouring out, and us humans did our best to stop them. Some had swords clad in auras, some shot out flames from their hands, and some used telekinetic power. 
various abilities were being used to stop the monster's onslaught. I was among them. I held a spear in my hands and was beating down monsters one by one. Then, I used shockwaves to kill a knight wearing strange armor. When I woke up, I could use shockwaves just like in my dream. No ability users had revealed how they had obtained their abilities. As such, I had no way of knowing whether father's method was normal. Assuming that everyone obtained their abilities in the same way, were these precognitive dreams or triggers for obtaining abilities? Perhaps they were both true. Regardless, I was still extremely jealous. Hoo-hoo, son, guess what? In the process, I even gained some mana. Jealous? Eh. Then what about the Orc Lord? Cough. Okay, never mind. It seemed repeatedly hunting the Orc Lord was hard even for father. To maintain father's honor, I decided not to ask about it. Just like that, father became an ability user. He quit the Orc Lord raid and advanced to the next floor. Two months after two moon, two weeks after father had awakened, I reached the fifteenth floor. You became level fifteen. You have obtained the qualifications to challenge the floor master. You obtained five bonus stats. Name, Kong Shin Race, Human Sex, Male. Class, Nun Title, Orc Lord Slayer Rank, Bronze 4. Level, 15. HP 4, 5404, 540 MP 1, 8401, 840. Strength 4, 58 Dexterity 4, 21 Constitution 5, 16. Intelligence 201 Magic 281 Charm 171 Luck 101 Skill Low Rank Martial Arts Master, Low Rank Spear Technique Master, Mid Rank Spear Technique Master, High Rank Spear Technique LV3, Pryuta Circuit LV2, Deific Manifestation My current self could easily handle three of my level 10 selves. I felt confident that I could even deal with the 15th Floor Master. Of course, I didn't have the leisure to play around with Dark Ratman. I immediately turned back. 14th floor shop's Loretta was already glaring at me. Customer, you really went all the way to level 15. That is not adult-like. What do you mean, this is exactly what an adult would do? Meanie. Take good care of me. After all, we are in a relationship of mutual dependence. I taunted her with a wink, and as expected, Loretta became angry. I won't give you any discounts, customer. Yeah, yeah. You're very cute. Qua. This is the first time a human called me cute. How humiliating. Then see you later. Go die. I rushed down to the tenth floor. Of course, climbing down posed no problem whatsoever. This was where it began. The Wraith Queen grind starts now. I swear, it'll hunt one of you every day. Chapter, 17. I first decided to hunt the Wraith Queen with ten party members. If I succeeded without anyone dying, I would reduce the number to nine, then eight, and so on until I could defeat it alone. Our party leader's level fifteen. Why did he come back to the tenth floor? There are people like them from time to time. You know, the equipment set the boss drops. They want to collect them. Eh, it's impossible to collect them all though. Shoo, just leave him be. Of course, I planned to do that as well. Well, perhaps it wasn't really a plan, since I knew they would naturally fall into my hands as I collected soul tempering elixirs. Without answering the party members' questions, I opened the door where the Wraith Queen was waiting. Kia. Human, live humans. Kia. Everyone go in. Two tankers hold her off. Damage dealers, get in position. Tempest. As I gave out orders, I blew away the group of wraiths flying toward us with Tempest. With half of the wraiths suddenly gone, the remaining wraiths panicked and flew around in circles. At the same time, the wraith queen started her summoning gesture. Seeing my party members' dumbfounded expressions, I smirked and commanded, the wraith queen is in her summoning gesture. Everyone attack! After two months, I successfully changed from the Crown Prince of 5F to the Crown Prince of 10F. Crown Prince Nim. No way, this is Crown Prince Nim's party. Crown Prince Nim, how many are you accepting into your party today? 
three blonde beauties teleported in front of me. Because I had partied with all kinds of people from other worlds, I was no longer phased by average people like them. Kong Shin, you grew up. To think a day would come where you could call such eye-catching beauties average. It will be just us four. But you didn't ask what our classes were yet. One of you is a healer, right? Right. How did you know? I found that parties of three or more always have a healer in them. I gave a quick reply and checked my equipment. I had consumed 53 soul tempering elixirs so far, and had raised my magic and charm stats by nine each. The muscle, bone, and skin compressing elixirs all stopped having any effect after raising ten of their respective stats, so I safely assumed it would be the same for the soul tempering elixir. In other words, once I raised my magic and charm by one more stat point, I would be done with soul tempering elixirs. On the seven times when the soul tempering pill did not drop, I picked up the Wraith Queen equipment for six of them and a middle potion for one. I now possessed Wraith Queen's headdress, Wraith Queen's black jacket, Wraith Queen's white pants, Wraith Queen's silk gloves, Wraith Queen's ghost shoes, and Wraith Queen's leather whip. The Wraith Queen's equipment were made of lightweight fabric, but because I didn't know what skill they came with, I decided to collect them all. That said, I couldn't get myself to like the Wraith Queen's weapon, a whip. The grind is almost over. Eh. Over. You're leaving the tenth floor. Ah, it'll still be around for a little while, but it'll eventually have to go to the fifteenth floor. Wow, as expected of Crown Prince. So cool. Alright then, let's head inside. The Wraith Queen was much easier to hunt than the Orc Lord. At least, I thought so. The reason was simple. The minions could all be blown away in one hit, and the ectoplasm arrows the boss shot out crazily could be blocked easily with spiritual shields. Most importantly, the Wraith Queen's special skill, which drove countless dungeon explorers to despair, could be blocked by my Orc Lord's war cry. I simply had to use my skills properly and beat on the Wraith Queen. In the past, when the Orc Lord used war cry, I felt like I was barely hanging on at the edge of death. In contrast, the Wraith Queen fights had become so easy that I even yawned in the middle. In truth, I already had full confidence to defeat the Wraith Queen by myself. The only reason I had not done so was that I was still looking for more soul-tempering elixirs. Most important was the fact that I was level 15. Setting aside the fact that I was strengthened by muscle, bone, and skin-compressing elixirs, there was a huge difference in challenging the first floor master at level 5 versus challenging the second floor master at level 15. Additionally, I had grown exceedingly used to boss fights from over three years of grinding the Orc Lord floor master. The only reason I needed a healer in the party was to ensure other party members would survive. Among dungeon explorers, there were some who stayed on the same floor for several years due to their lack of ability. While I was at it, I wanted to help them safely advance to the next floor. In RPGs, you gained experience points and leveled up whenever you killed monsters. However, it wasn't so easy in the dungeon. To level up, you had to prove your qualifications by conquering dungeon floors or by defeating floor masters. You did not get stronger by leveling up. Proving your strength was what allowed you to level up. As such, the strong only got stronger and the weak remained weak. In the beginning, I was last out of some 140,000 dungeon explorers. Now, I was in the top 100,000. In other words, there were 40,000 people who could not advance past the 15th floor. Of course, this number included people in 2nd, 3rd, and 4th dungeons. That said, as I was in the 1st dungeon, it was safe to assume none of these 40,000 people were stronger than me. Of the 5 dungeon explorers on earth, I was now ranked 3rd. Father was still lower leveled than me, and there seemed to be someone else at a lower level. Although I was curious who the 1st ranked dungeon explorer was, because I couldn't do anything about it, I decided not to concern myself with them for now. Why was I talking about this? To prove my point that this dungeon placed great emphasis on strength. Having defeated the Wraith Queen in under 10 minutes, the three blonde beauties had entirely different expressions. Crown Prince Nim you really are incredibly strong. Gulp um, Crown Prince Nim. Yes. As I was about to look through the reward list, my head turned toward the three beauties. 
starting from the eleventh floor, you know you can party with people from other continents, right? Would you like to continue partying with us? That's right, Crown Prince Nim. I don't usually say this, but if it's you, I would be happy to. Temptation like this was something I had not received on the fifth floor master fights. It was likely because they had not yet learned the dungeon's charm or the importance of having a strong party member. Starting from the eleventh floor, however, it became possible to party with people from other continents. It was natural that people would want to recruit strong people into their parties. Climbing the dungeon made one stronger. Borrowing others' strengths to do so wouldn't change that fact. In truth, it was incredibly foolish. If people focused solely on leveling up, they would undoubtedly neglect to improve their skills. In the end, they would have no choice but to bow down somewhere in the dungeon. However, these women weren't thinking about such things as they offered me tempting looks. One even used the excuse of fixing my clothes to whisper, I wouldn't mind offering you my body if you entered our party. It wasn't the first time this happened. Even parties that were complete with five people offered to kick someone out to recruit me. My response was always the same. Sorry, but I want to test just how far I can go by myself. Ah, Crown Prince Nim. Then, I'm off. I hope you can find what you're looking for in the dungeon. Confirming the soul-tempering elixir in the reward list, I quickly grabbed it and disbanded the party. When I exited the boss room and closed the door, it began to wane and disappear. Those three likely went back to the dungeon they came from. I found Loretta staring blankly at me, and returned a smile. It's good to see you again. Yes. You haven't given up on the quest yet. Huh, you see gulp. Unable to think of what to say at the sulking Loretta, I laughed and swallowed the soul-tempering elixir. Then. Your soul is tempered to pure white. Your magic and charm stats increased by one. A perfectly tempered soul strongly affects the body, making it easier to control mana and making it look more charming to others. Your affinity to all souls has increased. Consuming more soul-tempering elixirs will likely have no effect. The duration for deific manifestation skill increased. The skill's cooldown time decreased by one day. Ha! <laughs> the moment I saw the message, I laughed. I couldn't help it. I never imagined there would be an additional effect. At Loretta who was looking at me like I was crazy, I explained, Loretta Nuna, it'll clear your quest tomorrow. Eh. I thought you were putting it off because you weren't confident. Wait, hold on, the thing you just swallowed. It was a soul-tempering elixir, right? Yes. I'm asking just in case, how many soul-tempering elixirs did you consume? 54. That one was the last one. Loretta Nuna turned into stone. Because she didn't respond even when waved my hand right in front of her, I lightly pinched her cheeks. Only then did she finally regain consciousness. Ow, what are you doing? Nothing, I thought you were frozen. Of course not. I just spaced out from surprise. Is it that surprising? I didn't think anyone could consume so many soul-tempering elixirs. Even the ones who were lucky enough to obtain soul-tempering elixirs stopped after one wait. Thinking just maybe, Loretta asked, did you also consume muscle-compressing elixirs? And bone and skin-compressing elixirs? Yuwa, I was wondering how someone so big could become so slim plus, this is the first time I've heard of skin-compressing elixirs. So there are things even Nuna doesn't know. I'm usually only at the floor shops. If my customers don't sell me the boss drops, I have no way of knowing the floor master's rewards. The people who obtain skin compressing elixirs must have consumed it for themselves. Just like me. Yes, yes, you're amazing, customer. Ehu, I picked the wrong person to make bets with. So that's why you didn't die a single time in these two months. She pouted and complained, but soon made an expression of relief. Well, it might better this way. Hoo-hoo, try your best, customer. I, Loretta, will watch just how far you can go. Her words, try your best, had a different nuance than the last time she said it. At her heartfelt support, a smile appeared on my face. However, that was that and this was this. Don't just watch, continue helping me. I am a shop owner. 
My role is to sell you items objectively and fairly. I will be sure to sell you the right items at the right time, so be satisfied with that. TSK, you suddenly became cold. You were cuter when you were angry. See cute. Loretta's face suddenly turned red. Sensing danger, I quickly opened my phone to leave the dungeon, but was a step too late. Stop, you rude customer. See you tomorrow. I, of course, waved my hands at her and turned to leave I could only challenge the Wraith Queen once a day. In my spare time, I trained my spearmanship, practiced my mana cultivation method, read books, or helped mother with chores. All right, let's go practice my Peruta circuit. Wait. Chapter, 18. Four and a half months after Two Moon, the invading monsters had been mostly killed or chased out of cities. At the same time, repair on the areas ravaged by monsters was fully underway. With Guardian and Freedom Wings increased activities, the world that seemed to be on the way to ruin turned back. It was now a time of transition. Although school had not yet resumed, there were rumors that colleges would reopen around fall term and have their opening ceremonies. It was likely that high schools, middle schools, and elementary schools would open around the same time. Appa, you're really strong. I am. Yua and I were sitting side by side on the couch, watching TV. If there was something that I deemed the strangest while I was watching TV at a young age, it was seeing my family sitting side by side on our couch. We couldn't fit even on a four-person couch. Although mother and Yua were incredibly slim, father was tall and muscular and I looked like an orc. It was physically impossible to sit on the couch with other people. But it was different now. We could lean on each other's shoulders and watch TV like a loving brother and sister. It was God's blessings. Appa, aren't I heavy? You're light like a feather. Don't ever go on a diet, Yua. You'll shrivel up and die. Come on, I'm not that skinny. Yua laughed bashfully. In truth, Yua was a pitiful child. At the age where she should have been spoiled by her older brother, he was too busy sweating and swinging his spear, talking about going to the dungeon. She could only act spoiled in front of mother. Even so, mother had a tendency to not spoil us, so Yua grew up to be calmer and more adult-like than her age. I couldn't help but feel guilty. I wanted to make it right. Yua was hesitant at first, but she seemed to have gotten used to it as she now often acted spoiled around me. Here is a footage from Korea's only SS rank ability user, the goddess of Magma Yiwaya, hunting the S rank monster Wyvern. She is the pride and joy of the Republic of Korea. On the TV screen was a woman who looked to be in her early twenties burning up a wyvern, which resembled a ten-meter-long dragon. Perhaps because of her awakening, not only her hair that reached her waist, but also her eyes, were dyed in flame red. The burning wyvern looked to be in excruciating pain. If that flame touched me, I'd be burnt up in an instant, I thought. The world really was unfair. I started off as level one and had to work for years to become strong, but others got lucky and awoke to SS rank, easily defeating such terrifying monsters. Then again, there were people who awoke to weak abilities and could only stay in E or D rank their entire lives. Similarly, as long as I continued to climb the dungeon, I surely could get stronger than her. I was given a possibility greater than instantaneous strength. And below the ability users were ordinary people. Too many died in situations where they could have survived had they awoken to even the weakest ability. There were even more people refused to step outside their houses because they had not awakened. I learned spearmanship from a young age, but there were plenty of other people who learned martial arts but could not become dungeon explorers. Luck was the sole factor in determining who became ability users and who was eaten by monsters. In that case, did I have the right to look down on those weaker than me? Did these ability users on TV have the right to be looked up by so many people? Even with my 20 intelligence stat, I could not come up with answers to questions like these. Suddenly, my thigh itched. Ow. You you. For some reason, Yua looked teary and in pain. Blowing on her thumb and index finger that had turned red, she looked extremely adorable. It looked soft, so I pinched it, but it's way too hard. Ah, uh, sorry. Yua. Are you hurt? Um, let's see a potion. 
It's fine, Appa. You kept staring at the woman on TV, so I. Mm -hmm. No, Yua, Appa was just thinking about something. You weren't looking at her because she was pretty? At her words, I looked at Korea's only SS rank ability user, Yi Waya smiling after she defeated the wyvern. She was indeed beautiful. I didn't know how much the awakening had affected her, but she was tall and slim, had snow-white skin and a well-defined facial structure. Even as her hair fluttered in the wind, she did not flinch and instead looked forward with her flame-red eyes. Above all, she had an amazing chest. That was A.D. It was at least A.D. How shameful. That was an insult to D-rank ability users. No, perhaps they were E. No, F. Unacceptable, an SS rank with FS. Appa. Cough, no, Yua. You're the prettiest in the whole world. Really? Ehe. Of course, I really thought Yua was the prettiest in the world. Although that Yi Wyatt definitely had a superior figure. I patted Yua's head and buried the thought deep inside my mind. Otherwise, my hard acquired position as her Appa could get shattered. Then, the day of Wraith Queen Solo arrived. After spending some time debating whether to contact Elos or not, I decided against it. I would do so after I succeeded. And Paludia to Paludia. No. I forgot again. I felt a chill running down my back. I was screwed, definitely screwed. What could I do? That was no chance she wouldn't get angry. I was certain. If I talked to her, things would get annoying, extremely so. Ichem. Should I just ignore her? I could pretend she never existed. It felt like an outstanding solution. However, I knew I shouldn't. Although Paludia was sharp-tongued and rude, she had messaged me in concern. Plus, after we separated three and a half years ago, I was the one who did not contact her and ignored her messages. All right, they'll contact her when the raid ends. This time, I won't forget. I vowed to myself and clenched my fists. Then, I opened the door to where the Wraith Queen was waiting. Tempest. The moment I entered the room, I used Tempest. Having raised my magic with soul tempering elixirs and Pryuta circuit, I now had over 2200 MP. If my MP was low, I could simply drink a mana potion. Although mana potions were extremely expensive at the floor shop, I had over 100 lowest grade mana potions, which restored 100 MP each. Not considering the 1 minute cooldown time for potions, I had over 10,000 spare mana. Gulp, gulp. Again. Tempest. Every time I thrust forward with my spear, dozens of wraiths screamed and died. The flustered wraith queen quickly began to summon more wraiths. It was exactly what I hoped would happen. Let's go. Ha. I immediately rushed toward the wraith queen. Wraiths that had survived my attack flew toward me, but I sent them flying back with a simple swing of my spear. Although the wraith queen summoned twenty wraiths at a time, it required her to chant for a long time. It was more than enough time for me to arrive in front of her and deal a blow. One that concentrated my bodice entire mana and strength. Having practiced this move against the Wraith Queen for two months, I could now perform it pretty easily. Because other people kept saying hero this hero that, I came to call it heroic strike. In truth, it was quite embarrassing. Hot. Eat this. Kia. A dazzling white light gathered on my spear tip. The moment it pierced the Wraith Queen's stomach, it exploded beautifully. The Wraith Queen's throne shattered as she was sent flying back, hitting the wall. I knew all too well what she would do next. So I made my move first. D-A-E-E. -E. I collected all nearby energy and exploded it outward. The resonating sound seemed to shake the entire room. The Wraith Queen was no exception as she trembled with her half-transparent body. You used Orc Lord's war cry. All party members are cleansed of negative status effects. All party members' attack power increases by 50% for the duration. All party members become super armored, unfazed by enemy attacks. Kia. Wraith Queen used Vengeful Spirit's Wail. Your super armor state ignores its effect. Just like I predicted. 
looking at the Wraith Queen staring at me blankly, I smirked. Taking out and drinking a lowest grade mana potion, I announced to her, I don't even need to use my trump card. It'll end this within five minutes. What followed was an easy battle. Like I thought, the Wraith Queen was much easier than the Orc Lord. Her strength lied in Vengeful Spirit's Wail, a status effect magic, and her ability to shoot out hundreds of ectoplasm arrows at once. My Orc Lord's Warcry directly countered her Vengeful Spirit's Wail and her ectoplasm arrow attack had a fatal weakness of stopping when she took a critical hit. Before my spiritual shield wore off, I could deal a critical hit. Then I just had to use my restored mana to use Heroic Strike again. Although it took over three years to completely conquer the Orc Lord, it only took a little over four months to conquer the Wraith Queen. How long would it take to conquer the next floor master, Dark Ratman? I snickered and checked the message windows popping up in front of me. Chapter, 19 A Grand Achievement You defeated the floor master, Wraith Queen, alone. Amazing! You obtained the title, Wraith Queen Slayer. All stats permanently increase by one. This effect will apply even if the title is not equipped. You defeated the Wraith Queen alone. You obtained the special reward, Wraith Queen's shirt. You obtained 3000 gold. Choose your reward. 1. Spirit Mastery Magic Book. Phew. As expected, I obtained another title. Along with the Orc Lord Slayer title, all of my stats were now permanently increased by 2. I stood speechless for a while, then pinched my cheeks to wake myself up. The first thing I did was to check the Wraith Queen equipment's set effect. I took off the Orc Lord equipment and put on the Wraith Queen equipment. I wondered if I also needed to equip the whip, but it appeared that wasn't the case. You equip the Wraith Queen set. Your magic and charm increases by 5. When the Wraith Queen set is equipped, you can use Vengeful Spirit's Whale once per day. As expected. After staring at the message window with lingering attachment, I shrugged. Then I switched my equipment back to the Orc Lord set. Vengeful Spirit's Wail, a skill that changed the entire battlefield by affecting the enemy with confusion and fear status effects. It was undoubtedly a good skill. However, compared to the Orc Lord's war cry, it felt too weak. Why? Because it was possible that the enemy was immune to confusion or fear, or could use a priest-type cleansing skill. In that case, the skill would be useless. On the other hand, unless there was a monster that cancelled the buff, Orc Lord's War Cry would always be useful. I could only use one of the two skills, so I decided to choose the Orc Lord's War Cry. Although the Wraith Queen was a higher rank floor master, her equipment was cloth, inappropriate for a warrior type like me. However, its black jacket, white pants, and shirt all had a good texture, making me want to wear them in my daily life. Next up was the rewards. 3000 gold was the normal amount given for defeating the Wraith Queen. What was important was the reward given for defeating it alone. Another magic book. Spirit Mastery, huh? It made sense. Wraiths, the Wraith Queen, and the Soul Tempering Elixir all had to do with souls, so a magic book like this was expected to a certain extent. However, I hoped it would be a skill powerful enough to bring my strength to a new level. No, I shouldn't complain. Magic books are said to be rare after all. Be more respectful, Kong Shin. It seemed I got greedy after seeing someone vastly stronger than me. I could get stronger. If I try to rush it, it would only work against me. I had to do it my way, slowly and steadily. I vowed to myself once again and put my hand inside the half-transparent window. You obtained the spirit mastery skill. Your affinity to souls and spirits increase. The strength of all soul and spirit related skills increases. As the skill level increases, your affinity with souls and spirits will also increase. In other words, my deific manifestation skill would be stronger. I had a partner I could call once a month, Puryuta. If Spirit Mastery's skill level rose, I might be able to summon him more often and for longer durations. When I thought about that, I was finally convinced that Spirit Mastery was a good skill. All right then, let's go. It was time to collect the long-awaited quest reward. How would Loretta react? 
Excited for her reaction, I couldn't hide my smile. Quest success. You conquered the Floor Master Wraith Queen alone. As a feat unseen in two hundred years, the floor shop owner, Loretta, is in awe. She is regretting her decision to make a bet out of revenge. However, she will still give out her reward. After all, she is an honest shop owner. You received a system reward. You obtained one skill point. You now have two spare skill points. A guffa for Kiralo. Can you say that in human language? It seems I haven't mastered alien language yet. Yua, you really did it. She showed a reaction surpassing my expectation. Just yesterday, she seemed full of doubt, but now that I had really done it, she was spouting out strange words with a soulless expression. After I talked to her a few times, she started crying. How shameful. Sob, you're right, I'm a bad woman who gives quests but hates seeing it be completed. Are you disillusioned? No, it's nothing new. Uhohuk. Um, Loretta Nuna? When I called her hesitatingly, she turned toward me instantly. What? Can't you see that I'm crying? Um. Give me my reward. Like I default for your tricks to skimp out on my reward. Hugh. Now, now. Stop crying and give me my reward. H-U-E-E. -E. It took a long time before I could calm her down. Although her intentions were crystal clear, I had no choice as I had to collect my reward. Only after I made a promise to bring her ramen did she stop crying. It seemed a dungeon explorer from Earth had treated her before. You'll really bring me one? Yeah. Sob. Okay, they'll trust you. Loretta wiped away her tears, then handed me something. Take it. It's the best reward I can give you, customer. This. After receiving it, I tilted my head. It was a pocket watch. When I opened the lid adorned with fancy jewelry, I saw a clock with only one hand. Just when I was wondering where the hour hand was, I realized the clock did not have any numbers written on it. Instead, in the places where the numbers should be were twelve small holes. The minute hand remained fixed between the eleventh hour hole and the twelfth hour hole. The pocket watch was on a silver chain. Unlike its outer appearance adorned with fancy jewelry, the inside looked antique and rustic. I couldn't help but be disappointed when I opened it up. It didn't even have a crown. Can I get angry? TSK, TSK. You have no eye for valuables. Try reading the item info. I don't think that would change my mind. Let me see. Even as I sent Loretta looks of doubt, I checked the information of the pocket watch. Immediately afterwards, my eyes seemed to pop up from their sockets. Secret subclass. A pocket watch filled with unknown powers. Its beholder will eventually obtain a class befitting it. Class. Hoo, now you realize what a precious treasure that is. And Nuna, there's a way to obtain a class. When I first entered the dungeon, I realized that I did not have a class. I expected to get a class like Spearman, but even after all this time, I could not get a class. It seemed Elos and Paludia had received the knight and priestess classes, so I couldn't help but think something was wrong. Not too long ago, when father became an ability user, he obtained a cool-sounding class called Wave Attacker. Although he complained, saying that a traditional spearman like him should not have such a superhero-like class, I knew he was secretly bragging as he talked about getting bonus stats and few additional skills. My father really was childish. In any case, I was the only dungeon explorer I knew that didn't have a class. I felt bad, as it was like being told I had no ability. If possible, I wanted to at least have Crown Prince of 5F as my class. But it was brought up now when I least expected it. Of course there is. In the first place, dungeon explorers from other continents who are appointed as knights or ordained as priests already possess classes before entering the dungeon. But customer is different. That's right. I haven't been appointed a knight or ordained as a priest. Nor did you have the qualification. That's why I didn't have a class. I see, there was a reason I was treated like an unemployed person. Then, I remembered my father who had the wave attacker class, and asked Loretta. 
What about father? Ah, that ability. That's like a seal engraved directly on one's soul. It would be a different story if he already had a class, but since he didn't, of course he would get a class. There's more that you know, right? About the things happening on earth. My, that's a secret, customer. I didn't think my inquiry on classes would lead to this. Although I always wanted to find the relationship between the dungeon and what was happening on earth, I didn't think I would hear it from the floor shop owner, Loretta. Now that I thought about it, something was strange. Both Edia's continent where Elos came from and Luca continent where Paludia came from were being attacked by invaders, the so-called demon race. Earth was in a similar situation, having to fight against invaders. This did not seem to be mere coincidence. When I thought this far, I could feel my hair stand on end. However, before I had the chance to speak, Loretta placed her hand on my mouth to block it. Remember, customer. In the end, I am a shop owner that sells items to customers in need. I am on your side. As long as your willpower stands tall, the dungeon, too, will be of help to you. So for now, don't ask any tea, Kaya. Why did you lick me? Loretta screamed as she hurriedly pulled away her hand. I also experienced a strange sensation of licking woman's hand for the first time. It tastes weird. A bit salty, maybe. It's not salty. Don't say something like that so casually. What should I say then? That's. Hee <laughs> hee, this is fine then, right? At my smiling expression, Loretta's face reddened. Forgetting all about her anger, she smiled. Really, what a strange customer. You're the one to talk, Loretta Nuna. You can just call me Loretta, customer. Nuna sounds like you're emphasizing our age difference. Loretta. Don't call me without a reason. Really. The day I conquered the Wraith Queen, I obtained many things and learned a lot about the situation surrounding me. I felt that I had taken one more step toward becoming a true dungeon explorer. The next day, I challenged the 15th floor master, Dark Ratman. I died. For a week, I could not enter the dungeon. Chapter, 20. Kaya. Mom, Appa's looking like his soul's been sucked out. He's been like that for a while. He seems depressed. Go console him, you guys get along. Huh, I defeated the Wraith Queen alone, mm, yup. That won't change. But the Dark Rat Man. Appa, Appa. Snap out of it. An angel from above no, Yua shook my shoulders and I flopped about with no resistance. Yua had a cute voice. She was the support that prevented me from falling. If Yua ever got a boyfriend, what should I do? Should I tear his limbs apart or should I kidnap Hook? Appa. Why Yua? Are you okay? Ha. When her scream woke me up from my daze, Yua let out a sigh of relief. Was she really worried that something was wrong with me? Kook, how cute. Huh, no need to worry, Yua. Appa is fine. But you looked so soulless. You were murmuring something to yourself too. You're right well, Appa just experienced some failure, is all. Failure? Yep. It looks like I was too arrogant. I remembered what happened just a moment ago. After saying goodbye to Loretta on the 10th floor, I rushed to the 15th floor boss room. I entered a random party and challenged the Dark Rat Man. Alright, let's get this over with and move up. The party leader was a middle-aged swordsman. That was perhaps why he was talking down to the party members. It was then that I started to feel apprehensive. Including me, the party consisted of dungeon explorers from five different continents. No party could be successful without harmony among its members. However, with the party leader being so oppressive, it was hard to do. Sure enough, my apprehensive feeling came true. Come on, kill the rat men. You're just charging straight at the rat men. We should have discussed beforehand who would tank and who would lure the rat men. First, the party leader and our damage dealer began to argue, while I silently hunted rat men on the side. If not, the boss fight would have ended much quicker. There were two healers, both from different continents than the party leader. As such, they made unsightly expressions at party leader's oppressive tone. 
At the same time, our tanker, who was from the party leader's continent, got along well with him. Kiki Kiki. Don't look down on me just because I'm a rat. Kill that rat bastard. The dark rat man was two meter tall, comparatively smaller than the other floor masters. As such, I thought that our tanker would be able to handle him. Of course, I was wrong. Kikik. Kikik. Kook, this rat's attacks are too heavy. Heal. Fuck. The tanker had the same personality as the party leader. The healers seemed almost reluctant to heal. As a result, there were times where their timings were off. The party leader was clearly focused on attacking the dark rat man to collect contribution points. Our damage dealer, who had argued with the party leader, ended up missing some rat men, which headed towards our tanker. What? Hey, what are you doing? Get these off of me. Fuck, just focus on the dark rat man. Ah. As the tanker and party leader yelled irritably, the dark rat man became free to do as he wanted. I was hunting the rat men one by one, but when I heard this, I rushed toward the dark rat man. Although our smart magician instantly changed his target to the dark rat man and cast an attack magic at it, the dark rat man was unfortunately too fast. Kikikik. It'll burn you all up. Dark rat man uses dark thunder explosion. What followed was an unforgettable sight. In an instant, a dark light burst out from the dark rat man's body and struck the party leader and tanker who were closest to it. The two of them burnt up in an instant and kneeled. I thought it would end there, but I was wrong. It was only the start. Kikikik. -kick. It's a lightning party. Kikik. -kick. Boom. Just like the name suggested, black lightning exploded out. Both the party leader and tanker died in an instant, and I, who ran after the dark rat man, was no exception. Neither my high HP nor my orc lord equipment were of any help. They only made the pain last longer. I lost consciousness, and when I woke up, I was outside the dungeon. It was my fault. Or at least, I thought it was. I had thought I could defeat the dark rat man no matter what these idiots did. For that reason, I didn't try to stop their arguments nor did I say anything against the party leader's foolish commands. Now that I thought about it, I shouldn't have stayed in that party in the first place. The moment I realized how dysfunctional it was, I should have left and looked for another one. Finally, I should have attacked the dark rat man myself instead of relying on my party members. At the time, I was playing around too much. So much so that I was done in while I was hunting the rat men minions. It was inexcusable. I was too excited from defeating the Wraith Queen alone. Even though I clearly knew there were 100,000 people above me. On Earth, not to mention the SS rank, even the A rank were stronger than me. No, perhaps even the B rank were stronger. The dungeon was a place where one had to be alert at all times. Since I was fooling around with my guard down, it was only obvious that I died. As I was reproaching myself, Yua suddenly placed her hand on top of my head. You can do it, Appa. Yua. I believe in Appa. You can definitely do it. But. Everyone makes mistakes, Appa. Yua slowly rubbed my head. I closed my eyes and waited for her words. At the same time, I became more relaxed. Appa, someone who learns from his mistakes can do anything. So it will be the same for you, Appa. You're right. Thanks, Yua. I promise you, I won't make another mistake. I won't be kicked out of the dungeon ever again. Yua's words gently healed my broken self-esteem. If I stayed depressed after hearing that, I wouldn't be a man. I resolved myself to never let my guard down, to never make such mistakes, to never be kicked out of the dungeon again. I patted my admirable sister's head. Yua squealed with her cute voice and twisted her body in delight without letting go of me. It was the sibling relationship I had wanted for such a long time. Knowing how to comfort her brother Yua had all grown up. Appa swears he will make you happy. HM, that doesn't sound right. Right, I will protect this angel's smile. Having regained my energy from Yua's magical words, I clenched my fists. Suddenly, a crashing sound rang out. When I looked, mother was trembling as she stared at us from the kitchen. 
On the ground was a frozen pork neck. She should really buy pork belly with how much father makes. And no, you can't. You guys are blood related. Don't you dare think about it. I said that's not it. Is that all you think about, mom? But it's too suspicious. Why else would two grown-ups be all over each other on the couch? Damn, being too awkward was a problem, but being too close is a problem too. With no one to complain to, I could only hold in my anger at the unfairness. A week later, I challenged the dark rat man to a revenge match. This time, the party I was in gave off a good vibe. That said, I had planned to continue until I could defeat the dark rat man alone. It was best if I did not rely too much on my party. It would be fine as long as they didn't hinder me. Could it be? Crown Prince Nim. However, the female party leader seemed to know me. Who was she? She was a beauty with pearl white skin, a blonde ponytail, and a sparkling green iris. I had no recollection of meeting such a pretty girl. I asked if she heard of me from rumors, but she shook her head. Thanks to Crown Prince Nim, I broke through the fifth floor two years ago. I'm still grateful for it. Back then, I couldn't fulfill my role no matter what party I was in, so I became depressed, thinking I wasn't suited for the dungeon. I challenged the Orc Lord as a final challenge, and that was when I entered your party. Ah, I see. You were really cool that day following Crown Prince Nim's commands, I gained confidence in myself. I was able to defeat my fear and stab my sword through the Orc Lord. After we defeated it, my confidence grew and I arrived here, partying with my comrades from the Luka continent. Ten floors in two years. Although it was slightly slower than Elos or Paludia, they were among the top in both talent and effort. A girl who was stuck on the fifth floor climbing this far in two years was undoubtedly praiseworthy. I didn't hesitate to reveal my thoughts. That's incredible. You must have put in a lot of effort. Ah, you were less informal then can you talk casually like in the past? It would be too awkward otherwise. No, how could I? Casual. I talked like that to a grown-up woman like her. Where were my manners? Seeing me act flustered, she shook her hand as she giggled. No, you did. Because two years ago, I was a little kid who wasn't even 130 sea high. Yes. Sea high. It was Luca Continent's unit of measurement, equivalent to about one. One centimeter. In other words, she would have been about 143 centimeters two years ago. But how was that possible? She looked well over 160 centimeters now. How could anyone grow so much in two years? Now to mention, her amazing chest size Koham. Hoo, you're cute when you're flustered. No, that's. You don't have to be so surprised. People from the Luca continent experience a huge growth spurt at a certain age. It's a little more than people from other continents, so I suspect it's our people's special trait. Ah, uh, I see. It made sense. Even though we all looked like humans, we were from different worlds. Our growth periods being different wasn't so hard to accept. But for some reason, the word Luca continent seemed to remind me of someone. Well, it's probably nothing. With that, I put away the thought. Chapter, 21 So. You'll talk more casually, right? Mm. Okay, yeah. Then can you call me by my name? I'm Sheena, Sheena Gran Awir. Okay, Sheena. I'm looking forward to working with you. I'm Kong Shin. Call me Shin instead of an embarrassing name like Crown Prince. Yes, Shin Nim. As Sheena and I were exchanging our names, the other explorers from Luka Continent looked flustered. Hold on. You can't. Keikoham. Eh. Did I do something wrong? When I tilted my head and asked, their mouths twitched. However, they soon shut their mouths, and only one person replied with a strange voice. It. It's nothing. That's good to hear. Sheena. I didn't do anything wrong, did I? You're fine. Ho ho, I was nervous after hearing how strong the dark rat man was, but with Shin Nim, I'm not afraid of anything. Sheena quickly retorted and changed the topic immediately. She was right. 
we had to focus on fighting the Dark Rat Man, not reminiscing about the past. It also wasn't important that Sheena seemed to remind me of Paludia, or that I completely forgot to contact her a week ago. I should really start begging Paludia for forgiveness. No, that's absurd. We are only close enough to contact each other occasionally. Well, I should focus on the Dark Rat Man first. Although Sheena might have been a little kid two years ago, she was now a brilliant party leader. She used all the information available about the Dark Rat Man and formulated a solid battle plan. She calculated each party member's abilities, and made sure each of them knew what they should do at any given moment. It wasn't something anyone could do. Are we good to go? Shin Nim, everyone. Yeah, I'm ready. Yes. Let's go. Sorry to be a downer everyone, but I have no plans to focus on party play. Because I plan to conquer the Dark Rat Man quicker than I conquered the 10th floor's Wraith Queen. I gave myself one month. Of course, this excluded the time it would take me to get to the 20th floor. I knew that it was impossible to defeat the Dark Rat Man alone at level 16. Just like I always did, I planned to slowly lower the amount of people in my party. Of course, this was assuming that the Dark Rat Man didn't drop a stat-increasing item like the Compressing Elixir or the Soul-Tempering Elixir. That said, I wouldn't do something like deliberately offending or hindering other party members. I would follow the party leader's plan. However, I would not take things slow like in Sheena's plan. All right. Let's go. The moment the door to the boss room opened, I ran in. Although priests were casting elementary buffs to other party members, I did not receive them. I had to practice for when I would defeat the boss alone. I could not rely on buffs. Kikik, human. Kugagak. I stabbed my glaive through the first rat man I saw. The orc lord's glaive I had been using since the sixth floor was still effective. Although rat men had high attack and maneuverability, they had low defense to compensate. As such, I could kill the rat man in one blow. Mana really was amazing. Just by coating my spear with it lightly, it had such effect. Wow, Crown Prince Nim. You didn't receive a buff. Right? You killed a rat man in one blow without receiving a buff. Ah, Shin Nim, so cool. L leader. Snap out of it. The party members began to make their move. They were a beat slower than me, and that was enough. I had only fought the Dark Rat Man once. I did not yet know how the raid flowed or how the Dark Rat Man fought. Before I could completely grasp the flow of battle, I still needed their help. What I had to do now was clear. My job was to kill the 40 Rat Men scattered through the boss room as quickly as possible. Everyone focus on the Dark Rat Man. Don't commit on the attacking Rat Men. Just send them flying back, I will take care of them. Crown Prince Nim's hunting them so fast, it doesn't look like well need to. Free damage dealers, stick to the Dark Rat Man. I heard it uses a strong skill if left open. You've done your research. My last party was massacred because no one knew about it. Remembering what happened in the last raid, I vented my anger on the Rat Men. Kick it, kill that human. Strong human. Too strong. Steal his spear. Compared to the wraiths or the orcs, the rat men were much more intelligent. They were the first to try to steal my glaive. However, rat men began appearing from the eleventh floor, and of course, it wasn't the first time I faced rat men trying to steal my spear. They had never succeeded once. They were always killed before they could. Hap. I pushed mana into my spear and thrust it forward. In an instant, the mana surged to the spear tip, forming a blade of mana and crushing the incoming ratmen. Although I could only maintain this state for less than a second, it was able to extend my spear for an instant. I called this extending spear, though I never said it out loud since it was such a senseless name. Aora. No, rather than aura, it's pure mana. Healers, don't just watch. Use your heals. The boss is incredibly strong. The tank cried out as he endlessly repeated between being attacked by the Dark Rat Man and kiting it. The healers then apologized profusely and began to pour their heals on him. Suddenly, the Dark Rat Man let out a strange cry. 
Kagagagak. It'll burn you all up. Someone stop him. He's trying to use Dark Thunder Explosion. The tank who understood my urgent call quickly raised his shield and bashed the Dark Rat Man's head with it. Kagagak. Don't disturb me. Die. The Dark Rat Man continued to try to use Dark Thunder Explosion. In response, the tank, Sheena, and other damage dealers all bombarded the Dark Rat Man when they saw a chance. However, it was only enough to slow down the skill activation, not stop it. How absurd. Feeling rushed, I took care of the rest of the Rat Men with Tempest. A maelstrom of mana rose up, creating countless cuts on the Rat Men and sending them flying to a single space. Just Tempest was not strong enough to kill them, so I clad my spear with mana and attacked the Rat Men who were gathered together. Die. The spear I thrust out with a spirited cry sent several Ratmen's heads flying. I then cut down the remaining Ratmen one by one. Suddenly, message windows popped up in front of me. Dark Ratmen uses Dark Thunder Explosion. Party member Kart Von Gina's Nim died. Party member Desihard Nim died. Party member Jairia Nim died. BB Boom. A small explosion followed by a large explosion instantly took out three party members. I quickly turned to the Dark Ratman. Its hair was standing, flashing out with black lightning. However, that was not a skill, just the aftermath of one. Dark Thunder explosion had already ended, taking out all the damage dealers. The tank was alive due to using a life-saving skill in the last moment. Heal. Heal. Don't die. The tank was trembling in place. Was it a reaction from enduring such a powerful skill? Or did the skill inflict some status effect on him? Then, I noticed Sheena, who was a damage dealer, was still alive. I ran back when I got a strange feeling. Before it activated Dark Thunder Explosion, it used another skill that froze nearby enemies. The other damage dealers who were hit by it couldn't dodge in time. As I thought. It seemed Sheena was alive due to being outside Dark Thunder Explosion's area of effect. To escape in time, you needed to dodge the paralysis skill that came before. Alright, I remembered it. It seemed Dark Thunder Explosion was a skill you could not block. There was only one way to survive it. That was to not get hit, like Sheena had just done. That said, now wasn't the time to leisurely think about its skill area of effect. The tank was unable to protect himself as he was hit by the Dark Ratman, and the heals couldn't keep up with the damage being taken. As if we had planned it out before, Sheena and I ran toward the Dark Ratman, our weapons in hand. Hornet Pierce. Sheena's attack was the first to hit the Dark Ratman. Her sword was dyed purple, and when it penetrated the Dark Ratman's abdomen, the Dark Ratman's face was also dyed purple. Its claws attacking the tank stopped Midair. Then, as if it was drunk, it began to spin in place. Could that be? It's poison. It will stay like that for a moment. I didn't know how long a moment was, but I stopped Tempest I was in the middle of using and stood tall. Then, I held my spear up high and began to focus on energy on it. Kook, such a huge mana pool. Is he really level 15? Well, the soul tempering elixir and Pryuta circuit helped a lot. Answering him in my mind, I poured all the mana I had into the spear in my hand. It wasn't just mana. To burst out with as much strength as possible, I concentrated my entire strength into the tip of the spear. Father always said to thrust out with the resolve to collapse the world. My ancestors called it the heaven collapsing strike. I called it the heroic strike. From the spear tip, white light exploded out, dying the entire boss room. Ah! So the rumors are true. He really is a hero. I would eventually come to know what this white light signified. For now, I was focused solely on concentrating my energy in one place. Prepare to die. Kugagak. The dark rat man seemed to be somewhat recovered from Sheena's poison as it sensed danger and tried to distance itself from me. Unfortunately for the dark rat man, it was too late. I smirked and launched my spear forward. That is, I threw it. A spear imbued with energy did not lose that energy just because it was separated from the body. If anything, the forward momentum made it stronger. 
Kugaga, Kugagak. The spear stabbed into the dark ratman's chest. Perhaps sensing its death, the dark ratman let out a final laugh. Thinking it was annoying even until the end, I raised my body, which had bent down after throwing the spear, up. Immediately afterwards, the light on the spear tip exploded. Boom! Chapter, 22 Shin Nim, why are you taking something like that? The fight ended. I, of course, had the highest contribution. Because three people died, there were only seven rewards to choose from. From them, what I chose was the Thunder Crystal. On the outside, it looked just like a transparent crystal, but black sparks filled in the inside, making it look like a plasma globe. The moment I laid my eyes on it, I was sure it was a medicine just like the compressing elixirs or the soul-tempering elixir. However, it seemed Sheena thought I refused the good reward. I'm going to hunt a lot of dark rat man, so don't worry about it. Yes. So there was a reason why you hunted the fifth floor master for three years. Mm there was, but at the same time, there wasn't. I debated whether to explain to her or not. In the end, I nodded my head. Yep. You know about it, right? That floor masters drop items that increase stats. I do, but I heard the chances are low and that there are limits to how much you can consume them. I even heard that they weren't guaranteed to raise your stats, so I didn't think anyone would challenge the floor masters for them. Not to mention, floor masters are dangerous. If you die, you wouldn't be able to enter the dungeon for a week. Muscle, bone, and skin compressing elixirs all have pretty high drop rates, though you have to meet certain conditions to consume them. What's important is how high your contribution is. If they really don't drop, you can always lower the number of people in the party. Also, it's not that they don't work sometimes. It's just that after the first one, you have to consume several of them to have the same effect. Whoever told you must have been confused. Ah, of course, there is a limit. Each stat can only go up by 10 at most. Wow. Hearing my words, Sheena gasped. Staring at me, she asked. Could Shin Nim have for all the floor masters? It's only the 5th and 10th floor master, but yeah, I consumed all the stat increasing elixirs to the limit. As expected, my eyes weren't wrong Unis too. Uni. I it's nothing, Shin Nim. Sheena shook her head, then said with a sigh, fighting the floor master dozens of times I don't have the confidence. I can't even imagine doing it. The week where I can't enter the dungeon after dying is like hell. I know how strong you are, but to think you could take the risk to continually challenge the floor master. Hoo hoo, in that way, your strength makes sense. It's not just the Boda's strength, but the mine's. You're praising me too much. All explorers had reasons to enter the dungeon. Although slightly different than others, it was the same for father. Because the dungeon was the source of income for our family, he could not be careless. Although he put himself at risk to obtain mana, once he awakened, he never challenged the floor master again. Explorers from other continents were under even more dire circumstances, and thus could not act carelessly. Of course, there were still those who acted arrogantly and caused their parties to be annihilated. In any case, I was in a much better situation compared to them. Although a crisis struck the world I lived in, the situation was not that serious yet. Well, I wondered what would happen at first, but the situation never came down to threatening my family. That was why I could be bold in exploring the dungeon. That was why I could slowly and leisurely seek to get stronger. I was just lucky. That was what I thought. If Earth was in a desperate situation like Luca or Edia's continent, I would not have been able to spend several months just to fight the same boss. I would not have had the chance to even find out I could increase my stats through grinding the boss. After all, I would have known a mana cultivation method if Earth was like the other continents. Regardless, it seemed hard to convince this girl staring at me with eyes full of admiration. As such, I kept my silence. Sheena seemed to be drawing her own conclusions. Anyway, I successfully defeated the Dark Rat Man and obtained the qualification to advance to the 16th floor. You consumed a Thunder Crystal. Your resistance to lightning increases slightly. Your affinity with lightning increases. Ha! 
The thunder crystal I swallowed expecting a stat increase gave a result that was both hard and not hard to accept. Even if my affinity with lightning increased, it did not matter since I was not a magician. I did like the increased resistance to lightning. Since consumable item effects seemed to stack up to 10 times, my resistance to lightning could increase 9 more times. When that happened, I would not need to worry so much about lightning magic. What a shame. Compared to the sweet fruit the 5th and 10th floor masters gave, the thunder crystal felt disappointing. It seemed I could only look forward to the Dark Ratman set and the Dark Ratman Slayer title. I didn't know whether to be happy about having a shorter grind or sad about not having the chance to increase my stats. With a sigh, I stood in front of the stair to the 16th floor. I could not repeat the same mistake forever. All right, I'm ready. With a serious expression, I opened the friend window. Including Sheena, I had only friend three people. I looked for Paludia's name. It was there. She was inside the dungeon. I clicked on her name and sent her a message. Paludia, it's me. Sorry, Paludia, for not replying to your messages before. I was in a dangerous situation, so I meant to contact you later, but. Who is this? It's me, Kong Shin. I don't know anyone with that name. No, I sorry. I don't know what you're sorry about. Like I said, I don't know an orc like you. You do remember. Also, I'm not an orc. Phew, I was wrong. Forgive me. That's what you have to say after ignoring me for so long. That's it. What else would I do? I felt the urge to complain, but I calmed myself down by thinking of you as smiling face. Yep, I calmed down right away. Sorry, if there's anything you want me to do, tell me. Humph, like you could heal my wounded pride. Don't be stupid. Don't be like that. A chance like this doesn't come often. You don't sound sorry at all. Do you know how much I UK? Hmm. What? Don't ask. Paludia. She was like a medical book. I couldn't understand her from start to end. You'll do anything. If it's within my ability. Fine, you cowardly orc. Go on. Paludia was silent for a moment. Just when I was wondering if she was fed up and about to delete me from her friend list, she sent me a message. Hurry up. Hmm. Climb up quickly. To the 25th floor master. I'm saying he'll wait for you. So hurry to the 25th floor. We can defeat the floor master together. Uh, let's make that 30th floor. Hey. It would take me several months to grind in the 15th and 20th floor. However, Paludia seemed uninterested by my offer. It'll give you three months, so you better reach the 25th floor by then. Otherwise, I won't meet you ever again. H. Hey. No buts. With that the message ended. I tried to contact her again but she did not respond. This girl, did she even know what floor I was on? And what did she mean she wouldn't meet with me again? Wasn't the last time we saw each other almost four years ago? I was speechless. Three months. That's impossible. What an unreasonable girl. I murmured to myself and sighed. Although she called me Orc, I knew she considered me to be her friend. Because I knew I was in the wrong, I wanted to make up for it, but that did not mean I would ruin my pace for it. If she didn't want to see me, then she wouldn't. I made my resolve. However, Loretta from the 15th floor shop smiled at me. Customer, you had a girlfriend? No, she's just a friend. Can you stop smiling like that? It's creepy. You made fun of me before, customer, so it's only fair that I do the same. Don't be absurd. Besides, Paludia is really just a friend. One that easily gets angry, treats me like an orc, is short, and has a small chest. She's your friend? That sounds more like a mortal enemy. Loretta made a rare serious expression and advised me. You should sever all ties with her immediately. From what I see, she'll do something perverted to customer. Like kidnapping you and using you as a sex slave. What did you say? I gave Loretta the coldest look I made in my entire life. 
D don't look at me like that. I just happened to read a novel like that recently. Ah, your eyes got colder. My heart's going to freeze, please look away. Loretta spent the next ten seconds unfreezing herself, then took something out from her pocket as I was heading up to the sixteenth floor. Customer, hey raise a special offer from the floor shop. You're trying to sell me something again? This here is a very special item. It's a ticket that ignores the once-a-day limit for battling the floor master and allows one to challenge it again. It's the floor master battle voucher. If you had something like that, why didn't you tell me sooner? It's being sold at the cheap price of 3,000 gold. 6 million won. I almost passed out from the shock. I understood why she only told me about it now. Each time I defeated the Wraith Queen alone, I got 3,000 gold. The Dark Rat Man gave 5,000 gold, from which I only received 500. I would be losing 2,500 gold every time I used it. That's crazy expensive. But customer, isn't it enticing? In truth, I'm selling it at the manufacture cost because no one has bought any in the past 300 years. They aren't normally this cheap. If it's so unpopular that no one bought any in 300 years, can't you make it cheaper? Loretta didn't seem to flinch at my reasonable claim. I have to at least take the manufacture cost. Customer, I'm already being generous with my offer. Not to mention, this isn't something anyone can buy. Ah, uh, by the way, you can only use up to two per day. So, in total, you would be able to fight the floor master three times a day. Looking at Loretta's sincere eyes, I knew she wasn't lying. It was true that I had a lot of gold stockpiled. But if I continued to buy those things to fight the Dark Rat Man, would eventually dry. That said, if I used them, I would be able to finish grinding the 15th and 20th floor masters and reach the 25th floor in three months. I was certain. Setting my promise with Polydia aside, just the prospect of quickening my growth tempted me. In that case. Fine. Oh. So you'll buy them. You'll buy them after I reach the 20th floor. Ah. Loretta made a disappointed expression. I smiled and waved my hand at her. Then, I continued on my way to the sixteenth floor. Three months, huh? I wonder why she was so bent on meeting me in three months. Well, Paludia, I'll see you then. Don't be too surprised after seeing my changed appearance. Chapter, 23 Since the two-moon incident occurred around the school entrance season, all schools had to delay their opening by at least half a year. The teachers, who were on paid vacation, were the only ones happy about the situation. When things settled down and society returned to normal operations, schools began their semester late opening. School starting in the fall, huh? I, who was hard at work to break through the 19th floor, received a notice from my college. It was now the start of September, a time when cool winds washed away the heat of summer. Thinking how the graduation would be messed up, I headed towards the school opening ceremony. With all the freshmen gathering with their puffed up cheeks, one would think it was a toad reunion. As I laughed to myself silently, someone silently brushed past me. Whoa! Who I thought was a guy turned out to be a girl. She was covering herself with a grey hoodie, but her clear eyes and full lips strongly suggested her sexual identity. She seemed surprised by my shout as she stared at me fixedly, then tilted her head and walked away. I noticed something strange. She was clearly brushing past people, but no one seemed to notice. Although it could have been a coincidence, I knew the more likely answer. Damn, she was an ability user. I almost revealed my identity. Ability users were not required to join Guardian or Freedom Wing and fight monsters. I told myself to act more unmoved by strange happenings as I continued on my way. Everyone must know by now how fortunate it is to enter college at such a tumultuous time and be taught by professors equipped with newfound knowledge and passion. Before we send you off into society as a proud alumni of our school. The university president's speech was similar to my high school principals in that they both seemed to have strong sleep-inducing skills. As I pinched my thighs to keep myself awake, I suddenly felt a strange gaze. It was not a gaze filled with killing intent, but rather one of curiosity. Was it the ability user from before? As I promised to act more placid a moment ago, 
I ignored the gaze that was growing sharper. Although it seemed to contain a hint of killing intent, I continued to ignore it. The opening ceremony was a very long and boring event. Thinking I would rather fight two dark rat men at once, I endured through the ceremony. After the opening ceremony, the tradition was for new students to attend an introductory party, but as I had the important mission of going to the dungeon, I chose to skip it. As I secretly snuck out of the auditorium, I felt a presence approaching me. Ha! With a sigh, I started walking away, trying to ignore the presence. However, the presence continued to follow, approaching from the right side. Should I ignore it? Or should I avoid it? After a short contemplation, I decided to ignore it. However, the presence immediately clung to me. As expected, it was the hoodie girl from before. Who are you? Ah, you surprised me. I acted surprised and brushed her aside. I was truthfully surprised. I did not expect her to jump on me like that. As I glared at her, she glared back at me. Who are you? How did you see through my stealth? What about you? At first, you brush past me, now you suddenly jump on me. I'm an ability user. Ah. Well, I knew that. I should have thought the question through more. I'm not affiliated with any group. You came after me on purpose, right? To take me to Guardian or Freedom Wing? No, sorry to inform your ego, but I'm just an ordinary person. Guardian or Gardevoir, Freedom Wing or Gundam Wing, I don't care. Are we good? I'm off then. W8. Adios. If you're an ability user and you want to avoid people's attention, you'll have to do more research. Everyone was lined up along the parking lot, seemingly waiting for rides to the freshman opening party. I would have escaped without anyone knowing had it not been for that hoodie girl. However, I was not afraid. A man had to bold. I ignored the several gazes falling on me and continued onward. You had to be bolder in situations like this. Unfortunately, the hoodie girl kept following me. Are you really an ordinary person? Yep. You're lying. I'm not. Then how did you see through my stealth? That was the first time it happened. Stealth is walking through people with your head down. I didn't know. Kook, my stealth is like that. As long as I didn't release it or attack something, I wasn't discovered. At least, until now. Then you can modify your data with what happened today. Good. I'm off then. You you, you said that just to make me reveal details about my ability, right? My blood pressure was rising. I thought Paludia was the most annoying girl in the world, but it seemed there was someone else. Too lazy to even reply, I walked out of the plaza, but the hoodie girl ran toward me in a hurry and clung to my arm. What are you doing? What? Aren't you going to the freshman opening party? You're asking about that? Thinking that this hoodie girl might be an idiot, I replied, no, I'm not. Aren't you a freshman? I am. Your name? I felt like I was getting investigated. Since I was already at it, I decided to continue acting twisted. I won't tell you. You can't say it because you're not a freshman, right? I'm not saying it because I don't want to. And if you want to ask for someone's name, you should give your own first. I'm Su Yiun from the business department. Got it. Take care, Su Yiun. Your name. I said to give your name if you wanted to ask mine. I never said I'd tell you my name. Eek. You're dodging the question. Su Yiun continued to cling to my arm. I was beginning to grow angry from the hoodie girl's incessant behavior. Should I make her let go of me using my power? Wouldn't it get annoying afterwards? I'm going to have to continue my act. Ack, I got bit by the worst kind of dog. Can you let go of me, please? I'm telling you, I'm not an ability user. Ah, the bus is leaving. Ah. Su Yiun made a blank expression. Buses holding students from their respective departments were leaving. It did not take long for all the freshmen to find their way onto their bus. It was rather surprising. Regardless, Su Yiun who seemed to want to go to the freshman opening party was now left alone. All right, I'm off. 
Good luck, abandoned Su Yiun. Hey, who's abandoned? No, I didn't say that at all. You totally did. Su Yiun frowned and continued pulling on me. The bus was already gone so I don't know why she was pulling on me for. Regardless, I continued walking forward. Su Yiun naturally was dragged with me. Sadly, I was also in the business department. What if I saw her in my classes? It's all your fault. I missed the opening party. It's because you kept clinging on to me. Delinquent, liar, crook. Shut it hoodie girl. H hoodie girl. My university had a clear separation between the engineering and liberal arts campus. The engineering campus was a little ways away from Seoul. The opening ceremony was held at the engineering campus, while the graduation was held at liberal arts campus. That is, we were now the only ones left in the countryside. After I completely left the campus, Su Yiyun seemed to have grown tired of being dragged around as she let go of my arm and was walking by me silently. Inside her hoodie, her expression was all frowns. Ha, huh, because of this guy this is the worst. Stop murmuring. It's all your fault. Are you really not an ability user? Stop asking will you? I'm going to report you otherwise. Then buy me food. Why? This woman's way of thinking was definitely out of the ordinary. My head began to hurt. Before I noticed it, we were at near the station. With all the people and cars around, I was thinking about making a run for it. It was then that Su Yiyun murmured quietly. I have no money I'm hungry. For the first time since Paludia, I felt like hitting a girl. I brought Su Yiyun to a nearby McDonald's. I watched her order a Big Mac with large fries plus extra, then ordered whatever for myself. You don't need more fries. She looked at me strangely, almost like ordering more fries was the norm. I ignored her completely, took my plate from the employee and walked to a seat by the window. Su Yiyun asked why we were going there when there were better seats open, then she stole the plate out of my hands and walked to a seat at the center. She then murmured, is he really stupid? Ah ah. It wasn't too late. Bill first put in a hook to her stomach, then. However, she was currently holding on our food. Since I couldn't waste it, I decided to hold back. Feeling pitiful, I followed her and sat down. Thanks for the food. You're welcome. Su Yiyun unwrapped her Big Mac then took a big bite. Then, with her eyes sparkling even from inside the hoodie, she took a handful of fries and ate it. Then, she took another handful. Seeing her cheeks puffed up like a hamster, I couldn't help but laugh. You must have been really hungry. Nom nom nom. She sounded like she was chanting some black magic, but she was probably saying she starved since the morning. I gave her my share of fries. Then, she looked surprised, staring between me and the fries. Angel. That's a quick change. You bestowed fries upon me. Don't talk like that, it creeps me out. I also unwrapped my burger and bit down. It was delicious. Since mother never let me eat like this at home, it had been a long time since I had junk food. Mmm, -hmm, maybe Yua would like it too. She might even give me a kiss on the cheek. In the end, while Su Yiyun was in the restroom, I secretly ordered another burger set, entered the restroom, and stored it in my inventory. It was the perfect crime. Time was frozen inside the inventory, so it would be hot and crunchy no matter when I took it out. When we left McDonald's, she seemed to remember what situation she was in, as she separated herself from me and stood guard. She looked completely different from the one who just called me an angel. Was she simply an idiot? Yep, she must be. Are we good? Go home now. You you really aren't an ability user. I'm not, and you're an ability user that begged an ordinary person for food after bugging and annoying him. So can we just go home now eh? Su Yiyun looked strange. It wasn't an expression of anger. Rather, it seemed to be frozen completely. Sensing that something was off, I turned around. In front of us was a two-meter tall pigeon, seemingly having appeared out of nowhere. Chapter 24 Because it was the first time I saw a monster outside of the dungeon, I tensed up for a second. 
but because the monster looked exactly like a pigeon, I relaxed. Of course, I knew better than to let my guard down around a monster, regardless of its looks. As I made this mental note, my body shook. I thought I had received a katok, but it turned out Su Yiun was shaking like a vibrating cell phone. A monster. Oi. Ability user, oi. SSS scary. Aren't you an ability user? I, I see can't do a anything with my a ability. Not with that AA attitude. The people nearby were already running away screaming. With that size, it probably couldn't chase us underground. I took the frozen Su Yiun by her arm and began running. Snap out of it. We're running. NNN no, scary. W are going to die. Come on, what happened to the person cornering me asking me if I was an ability user? Fortunately, Su Yiun was light, so it was not too hard running while dragging her. However, it seemed that Pigeon was coming after us. Before we could reach the underground road, the Pigeon flapped its wings and landed in front of us, completely blocking the way. I clicked my tongue and began running towards the opposite direction. Did you plaster yourself with honey? Why is it chasing us? I I I don't know. I'm scared, save me. Just don't open your mouth. Screw it, I'm holding you. HH holding me. In an instant, I lifted her legs and put her in a princess carry. Feeling that my arm had gotten lighter, I continued to run. I was much faster running while carrying her than while dragging her along. Should I go to where lots of people are? No, that would only make it dangerous for others. Was that the only underground road entrance? No, but the others were already filled with evacuees. I couldn't bring the pigeon there. Then do I continue running until either Guardian or Freedom Wing showed up? That would be announcing that I'm an ability user. Then. Ugh, Su Yiun, you're making this so much harder for me. Emmy. Why? Stop shaking. I changed my direction to a deserted alleyway. Would others think of me as a hero leading the monster away from others? Or would they just think him a fool? When I reached the alleyway, people watching from the windows screamed and shut their windows. Looking around, I found security cameras installed nearby. Not here. I continued running. Buildings became sparse. It seemed I was at a construction site, as building materials were stacked nearby. All right, perfect. It was crucial that I was in a place where no security cameras could watch me. I glanced back. The pigeon flew past my head and landed at the construction site. I first let Su Yiun down. She shouted with teary eyes, W why did you come here? Why did you bring me too? Hey, Su Yiun. What? You better keep this a secret. I picked up an iron pipe from nearby. It was two meters long with the ideal thickness and weight. Although it bothered me that it had a dull end, I couldn't do anything about it now. Seeing me pick up the iron pipe by my strength, Su Yiun's eyes opened wide. Why you're an ability user? It's a secret. Keep it. I held the iron pipe with both hands and glared at the pigeon. It was hard to understand why it was targeting us. Was it targeting me or Su Yiun? Although I wanted to know the answer, with no way of talking to it, I could only kill it. The pigeon began to flap its wings. Before it could fly up, I switched the iron pipe to one hand and threw it forward. White light spiraled around the entire pipe. It was my mana, one that caused other dungeon explorers to call me a hero. Boom! That was it. The iron pipe penetrated the pigeon, pinning it to the wall. Mm, although its size was big, it was incredibly weak. Now I just had to get rid of all the evidence. I checked around one more time for security cameras or anyone watching. Then, I put my hand on the bleeding carcass and stuffed it in my inventory. My inventory expanded by 10 slots each time I leveled up, so I now had 190 slots. So it actually goes in. Kayak. I ignored Su Yiun's scream completely and stuffed the bloodied iron pipe into my inventory. Now, I only had to clean the pigeon's blood. As for the carcass, it would come in useful one day. For example, when father registered as an ability user, 
he could turn it in for money. It was the perfect crime. Su Yiyun, let's go. Why you? She still seemed unable to calm down as she trembled with her mouth opened wide. I sighed and held her hand, dragging her. Let's go. We're going to get found out otherwise. A ability user you lied. I'm not an ability user. I refuted her in anger. Then, with a face full of pride, I told her, I'm a dungeon explorer. What's that? Of course, I regretted it immediately. It seemed I needed to raise my intelligence stat more. Nineteenth floor of the dungeon. Along with the past three floors, it was a place filled with lizard men, humanoid lizards with hard scales. Strangely, these guys wielded spears. Although I battled them at first thinking I could learn something from them, I soon found out they could only stab with brute strength. However, because they attacked simultaneously in groups, their attacks were difficult to dodge. Of course, that was for ordinary dungeon explorers, not me. My training wasn't so soft that they were a match for me. Schwick, attack the scraggy human. He looks flavorless. Mind your own business. With a spirited shout, I swung my orc lord's glaive and shook away the approaching spears. I then lowered my center of mass and charged straight at them. Because the lizardmen's spears were three meters long, there was a huge opening once they missed their attacks. Even now, they couldn't take a counter-offensive stance as they watched me rush towards them. Schwick, dodge him. Too late. With a short curse, the glaive I struck out pierced through a lizardman's neck. However, there was more than just one lizardman. I hastily took out the glaive and confirmed my next target. Avenge our brethren. Schwick, avenge him. They're coming like bees. I imbued mana into my glaive, once again swinging and striking down their spear attacks. I tightly gripped my glaive and, in a sequence of fast and elaborate moves, pierced the necks of the lizard men one by one. Of course, having fought the lizard men for over a month, I knew their movement patterns in and out, making it easy. The only problem was my mana. Because of the lizardmen's hard leather, it was impossible to kill them in one blow without using mana. As a result, my hunting speed naturally slowed down and it took over a month to climb to the 19th floor. Of course, when I told Ellos about it, he bitterly said, you bugged bastard. In truth, I wanted to encounter a real bug. Apparently, Ellos had found one on the 22nd floor and obtained a unique grade sword. I was dying of jealousy. Quiak. Strong human. Call for reinforcement. Reinforcement, called. Reinforcement coming. Kruna coming. Hmm. When I began to quickly dwindle their numbers, they began to spout something different. It was the first time something like this happened since I entered the dungeon. Kruna. If I understood correctly, it did not mean reinforcement. It was a name. I had heard of it before. Normally, monsters from dungeon floors did not have names. However, it seemed a named monster appeared with an extremely low chance. These named monsters were much stronger than normal monsters and could even use skills. In exchange, they had a low chance of dropping a rare item. Most of the time, however, it ended in disappointment. A named monster on the 19th floor. Curse my luck. Why did it have to be a named monster and not a bug? I complained as I fixed my grip on the glaive. Although I had been repairing it at the floor shop, I started to want a new spear. Since all the lizard men were carrying spears, I expected the 20th floor master would as well. No, I sincerely hoped so. I leisurely hunted down the lizard men, when suddenly, I felt a sharp presence. I backed off a little. When I laid my eyes on the presence, I was dumbfounded. There was a female. Shouldn't you be called a lizard woman then? Human, don't stare. You, not my type. How did I know? For one, there was a light pink ribbon on her smooth, scaly head. Unlike the lizard men who were carrying spears, this guy, or rather, gal, was wearing a fancy robe and carrying a wooden staff. But wait, what did she just say? Heroic strike. Shashak, queek. Angered by her words, I instantly imbued all my energy in my spear and threw it. It was no doubt the heroic strike. 
Without even a chance to react, Kruna screamed and perished when the spear penetrated Kruna's abdomen. Until now, I had to spend dozens of seconds to concentrate the energy in my body on the spear. However, I had just succeeded in activating the skill in an instant. If possible, I didn't want it to happen this way. You defeated the named monster, Kruna. You obtained the reward, Headband of Wisdom. High rank spear technique became level 4. Your insight into the way of the spear increases. The amount of mana required for high rank spear technique decreases slightly. You can display your full strength with any spear. You created the skill Heroic Strike. It concentrates the bodas energy and mana into one point and strikes out. It uses the HP and MP of the user proportional to the charging time. This skill may only be used by its creator. The skill level is adjusted to lower rank level 7. You created a skill. Heroic Strike is a skill that never existed elsewhere. Created with the most exquisite combination of energy and mana, this skill is a feat which must be passed down to future generations. You obtained one skill point as reward. Current skill points, 3. Wait, what's this? Creating a skill. I could not understand why Heroic Strike had suddenly been systematically recognized as a skill. Regardless, an extra skill point was always appreciated. Not to mention, becoming a skill meant that its might was guaranteed. All in all, it was nothing but good news. At this unexpected gain, I grew excited and even forgot about the disgust I felt from Kruna. As I was about to check the skill, I finally noticed the lizard men growling and surrounding me. He killed Kruna. Male killed pretty female. Kill human. Pretty. What is? The ribbon. At my inquiry of sincere curiosity, the lizard men reacted sensitively. Shock. Killed precious female. Kill male. Schwick, we cut it. See cut what? Why you bastards? Don't get near me. Taken by surprise, I couldn't help but stutter. Only after I blew them away with tempest did I find my calm. Don't be so harsh. You wouldn't be able to tell she's female without the ribbon anyways. Schweik. Kill human. Human insult dead Kruna. You created the skill, provoke. Shouting out with a bit of mana, it draws the nearby enemies toward you. A skill suited for a warrior of noble mindset that wishes to protect his weak allies by means of self-sacrifice, it requires 10 MP per use. W what? Something was strange. I had not gained any new skills since Spirit Mastery, but I just created Heroic Strike and Provoke out of the blue. But was it me or was this skill description trying to make fun of me? Alright, fine. All of you, come at me. It'll reach the 20th floor today. You use the skill, provoke. You draw nearby enemies toward you. Die. Schwick, avenge Kruna. Human meat. Meet down there. Down where? Where do you think you're aiming? After that, I ran around so much gathering up lizard men that blisters formed and popped. Killing the gathered up lizard men with heroic strike was much more efficient. The downside was that I paid too big a price to find out. It seemed I needed to raise my intelligence more. Chapter 25 You became level 20. You obtained the qualification to challenge the floor master. You became bronze rank 1. If you defeat the 20th floor master, you will be acknowledged as a silver rank dungeon explorer. Class, none title, wraith queen slayer rank, bronze 1. Level, 20. HP 6 2706 270 MP 2 9402 940 Strength 559 Dexterity 492 Constitution 597 Intelligence 202 Magic 472 Charm 312 Luck 102 Skill Low Rank Martial Arts Master, Mid Rank Martial Arts LV9, Low Rank Spear Technique Master, Mid Rank Spear Technique Master High Rank Spear Technique LV4, Low Rank Spirit Mastery LV2, Low Rank Heroic Strike LV7, Low Rank Provoke LV1, Peruta Circuit LV2, Deific Manifestation. Oh, you obtained a name drop item? Yes, Loretta. 
As I wrapped myself in bandages five gold after fierce hours of battle, I answered Loretta at the 19th floor shop. Although leveling up restored HP and MP, it strangely did not heal all wounds. As such, I would sometimes collapse after breaking through a floor. She received the pink ribbon Krunet dropped and examined it. Then, with a satisfied expression, she offered, I'll buy it for 500 gold. I'm not selling it. I replied immediately. You. Loretta seemed surprised by my clear-cut answer. I snorted as I tied the bandages shut. There's no way I would sell a named drop item so easily. I couldn't see the item description, don't you have an item that lets me see it? At my spot-on question, Loretta made a cute pout. Then, she retorted bluntly. You've grown, customer. All thanks to you. When I poured a potion over the bandages, the wounded area heated up and then subsided. Seeing that my HP had stopped decreasing, I nodded and looked back at Loretta. Loretta, who was watching me wrap myself in bandages, looked away at the same time that I looked up at her. I didn't yield to her complaints and asked, so. You have it right. How much is it? Chet. It's 100 gold. Here, 100 gold. Even as she grumbled, she took the gold from me, returning back the headband of wisdom along with a scroll. I always wondered, just where was she taking these things out from? It's an appraisal scroll. Because items dropped by named monsters aren't registered with the dungeon, appraisal scrolls are needed to check their item description. With this, you can see the description of any items. Since you can always come across cursed or magical items with unknown effects, it's best to always carry some around. Before using this, is it impossible to find out the headband's effects? A magician with the appraisal skill would be able to do the same thing. I learned more good information. I followed Loretta's instruction and ripped the scroll above the hairband. Then, a translucent window popped up in front of me. Headband of Wisdom Rare. Durability 50-50. Defense 3. Equipment Requirements Female Only. Option Intelligence 5, Magic 5, Charm 7. Here, let me see. Gek. Loretta stuck her head next to me, letting out a fragrant scent. When she saw the item description on the window, she frowned and made the sound of a frog being run over by a truck. She then murmured, I should have bought it for 1,000 gold. I wouldn't have sold it anyways. This is good, right? Setting aside the charm stat, it has the stat value of two levels. Plus, it's an accessory. Of course it's good. It's as I thought then. One problem though, I'm not female. You can gift it to your girlfriend. Loretta, are you picking a fight with me? Like I'd have a girlfriend. Can't you see by the fact that I'm always in the dungeon hunting? When I shot Loretta a look of resentment, she made a sly expression and poked my shoulder. It hurt. What do you mean, customer? You promised to meet someone, remember? Ah. She had to be talking about Paludia. That wasn't funny, even as a joke. Why would I make a choice equivalent to throwing my life in the dumpster? However, regardless of what Loretta said, Paludia was still mad at me. If I gave her a gift, she might forgive me. The only other female explorer I knew was Sheena, but I was much closer to Paludia than Sheena. All right, then it was decided. I made up my mind to give the headband of wisdom to Paludia. After returning the hairband to my inventory, I talked to Loretta again. Loretta, I want to buy 20 floor master battle vouchers. 20. T that 60,000 gold. And it was also 102 million one. Kook, now that I made the conversion in my head, I felt just how much money that was. However, it wasn't such a big amount compared to how much I had. Excluding the few items that Loretta forced on me, I never used gold or exchanged it for one. As such, they were just piled up in my inventory. For reference, the lizard men from the 19th floor gave 170 gold for every three that I killed. It meant each of them gave over 50 gold, or 100,000 one. It's fine. I still have about 500,000 gold saved up. It was 1 billion one. Amazing, customer. Just when did you get so much? 
It must be from all those floor masters I hunt every day. All right, hurry up and give them to me before I change my mind. Customer, I'm seeing you in a different light. You're a man when you want to be. Just fork it over. I snatched the twenty battle vouchers from Loretta. Since I could only use two per day, I had bought enough to last for the next ten days. After taking the sixty thousand gold from me, Loretta gave her money bag a slight look of reluctance. Then, she sighed and returned ten thousand gold to me. I received the money, confused. What's wrong? It's a discount, customer. Discount. Don't you know? I know what a discount is, but why? I could not understand why Loretta gave me such a benefit, especially given what she said about them being sold at manufacture cost. However, after handing over the gold, Loretta looked almost relieved as she replied with a light smile. I was a little mean last time trying to sell them at their manufacture cost. No one buys them anyways. Humans are truly too weak. Even though the dungeon guarantees to save their lives, no one dares to adventure. For hundreds of years, everyone only thought to climb higher while avoiding floor master battles. Even in this first dungeon where the brave and strong have been gathered. Ah, I can't say anything more than that. Regardless, customer is a hero I haven't seen in a while. I shouldn't be punished for supporting you this much. You're saying that too, Loretta. I'm not something like a hero. It's just that I'm not desperate right now. I can be adventurous because I'm not afraid of losing a week's worth of time. Hoo hoo, customer, you see. As if it was a secret, Loretta lowered her voice to near silence, bringing her lips to my ear. As I was about to tear myself away, Loretta seemed to have read my thoughts as she whispered. The more desperate the situation, the more necessary it is to adventure. I held my breath. She was right. My existence proved she was right. I understood. Saying that the continent's in dire straits, or that every second is important. They were all nothing less than excuses. Perhaps they said that as they never had the chance to see muscle-compressing elixirs or soul-tempering pills. However, there had to be people other than me who discovered and consumed them. Yet, the thought of dying and wasting a week caused them to give up re-challenging the floor master, and they continued their climb. I, on the other hand, was different. That's how I got stronger. Although I may be weaker than them now, I would continue to grow stronger. Stronger than them. I was confident. Now you get it. The fruit of adventure is always sweet. Hieronym. Loretta whispered sweetly with small teardrops hanging from her eyes. Seeing her bewitching figure, I couldn't help but gulp down a mouthful of saliva. Wait, was she? Are you that sad about the ten thousand gold? You shouldn't have given it to me then. I seemed to have hit the bull's eye, as she yelled with her teardrops flowing midair. Don't say it. I was trying to forget about it, but now it's on my mind again. What's done is done. Thanks. You you, Mimi. The floor shop owner, Loretta, with acute personality. It seemed the playful relationship between me and her would continue. Phew, all right. I'm going to start my Dark Ratman conquest today. Customer, are you going for a complete conquest again? Complete conquest. If it referred to consuming the Thunder Crystal to the limit, collecting the Dark Ratman equipment set, and defeating the Dark Ratman alone, then my answer was clear. Although I thought over the benefits of consuming Thunder Crystals, since Loretta already confirmed the path I was walking was right, I no longer hesitated. Of course. See you later. Chapter, 26 The Dark Rat Man was fundamentally different from the Wraith Queen or the Orc Lord. The Orc Lord had nothing but brute strength and the Wraith Queen had a clear weakness. However, the Dark Rat Man was fierce, possessing a strong attack power and a powerful skill. His minions were also nothing to scoff at. I led a party of ten to challenge the Dark Rat Man. Although we succeeded, three of us had died. Thank you. Thanks to Crown Prince Nim, we can finally challenge the 16th floor. As expected of the one who leads the path. Crown Prince. Crown Prince. Just like the explorers from the 10th floor, the six surviving members bowed and thanked me, or chanted my name. At this rate, 
they might even pick me up and toss me into the air. I knew it wasn't my place to say, but if they continued climbing up by relying on others and not on their own strength, they would eventually be brought to their knees. After saying my goodbyes, I left the boss room. Then I fell on my butt and murmured, Phew, strong. Too strong. When my level was low, a small difference in stats made a big difference. However, the Dark Rat Man was the floor master of the 15th floor, and I was level 20. Now, it seemed a difference of 5 levels was only a mere difference of 5 levels. Even though my stats were abnormally high from the compressing elixirs and soul tempering pills, it was still not enough to make a decisive difference. Since my stats could not overwhelm it, I could only do so by experience. I needed to read all the Ratman minions' movements and prevent the Dark Ratman from attacking me while I took care of them. I also needed the ability to escape from the Dark Ratman's fearsome skill without failure. Of course, the goal was to let all the party members avoid it, not just me. From my experience, it was rather simple. As long as the Ratman minions were taken care of that is. Now. Get back. Kugagak. It's a festival of lightning. That bastard's way of talking was the same as ever. At my shout, the party members backed off, and the dark rat man's lightning only burned through empty air. I disregarded the burning smell and charged at his body. Shining out with radiant white light, my heroic strike penetrated his abdomen. Now that it had become a skill, it had a wonderfully short charging time. Critical hit. Kugagagagak. As Dark Ratman cried out in its death throes, I let out a sigh of relief and looked around. One, two, three, eight, nine. Perfect. Everyone was alive. Oh, Crown Prince. All hail Crown Prince. To defeat the Dark Ratman without any casualties. This is the first time I've heard of such a thing happening. To think I'd become the witness of history. Crown Prince. It took three days until I succeeded in defeating the Dark Rat Man with all party members surviving. In other words, it had taken me nine boss fights. Of course, with me taking the top contribution for all of them, I was able to take the Thunder Crystal eight times and the Dark Rat Man's leather vest for the other. It seemed I was getting the hang of it now. Thinking about slowly lowering the number of party members and completely destroying the Dark Rat Man, I could not help but get excited like a child. As I was immersed in my thoughts, the party members suddenly pounced toward me. Crown Prince, Crown Prince. Hey, prepare to pick him up. Who? Stop. Just go up already. Then one day, just as I finished eating breakfast and prepared to go the dungeon, my mother stopped me. Shin, school starts today, right? It's September 2nd, the first day of school. I sometimes wondered if my intelligence stat was really 20. Perhaps the dungeon was lying to me. Today was another one of those days. When I asked Loretta about it, she said, how can someone born with the intelligence stat of 20 be the same as someone who raised their intelligence stat to 20? I was speechless. It seemed this applied to not just intelligence, but also strength, dexterity, constitution, magic, and other stats. When I thought about it, it made sense. I was originally adept in using my strength and moving my body, but when I saw other explorers, I wondered why they couldn't move as well. Loretta's words had solved this mystery. In short, raising one's stats did not immediately make one stronger. There needed to be some time to adjust. Loretta jokingly called this updating. But how could I forget the first day of school? It had been years since I raised my intelligence stat, how could it still be updating? Was it because I didn't use my brain enough? With mother giving me the don't tell me you forgot face, I smiled bashfully. I've been busy with the dungeon lately. Dungeon this, dungeon that. Your father's been saying the thing. Do you have gold hidden in there? Doesn't father bring you some every day? What about you? Eh. Well, I. I turned away from her gaze. Sorry mother, with all the gold I'm spending to meet a friend, I don't have any to bring home. But if I told her this, I got the feeling she would cut our tie of kinship. That would be troublesome. It meant I would not be you as brother anymore. How can I be the same as father? I don't make as much. 
In fact, I spend more than I make. Well, that's what I thought. Your father, though. Why isn't he registering as an ability user? Currently, father was frantically breaking through a dungeon floor. He should be on the 14th floor. As expected of the self-proclaimed strongest on earth, he swept through so many floors in just a few months. I knew exactly what father was thinking. He's a bit too weak right now. When I told her that he was raising his level and shockwave skill level, she tilted her head. It seemed there was something even mother did not know. I had no idea how an ability user developed their ability. I could only suspect that they grew with frequent use. It was also possible that abilities could not grow. After all, if it was so easily doable, there wouldn't be so many F-rank ability users complaining on internet forums. However, it was simple for an awakened dungeon explorer to develop his skills. He just had to repeatedly use the skill and raise its skill level. As a bonus, he could also raise his mana stat with the level up stats points, making it all the more easy for skills to develop. All in all, there was no other bug like a dungeon explorer awakening as an ability user. When ability users awakened, they visited the government-owned ability appraisal center, and determined what category their ability fell into, as well as the amount of mana they held and their rank. Of course, since father did not have any plans to register as an ability user, he could only guess his rank from the power of ability users shown on TV worldwide. The result was D-rank. F and E-rank ability users were not deployed to fights against monsters. If they were, it was only as supports. Only at the D-rank did one have the power to fight against monsters. Of course, with father's spearmanship and strength as a dungeon explorer, his real strength was well over D-rank. However, his ability itself was D-rank. Father, who thinks he should be the strongest on earth, jumped at the prospect of his ability being labeled D-rank, and rushed into the dungeon. As a result of leveling up Shockwave's skill level along with his own, he now had the strength of an upper C-rank ability user. Of course, he would continue to get stronger. Yup, I was jealous. However, father gave up on everything like compressing elixirs, soul-tempering pills, orc lord set, and titles. He focused solely on climbing higher and raising his skill levels. Although it was a decision he made to quickly increase his strength and earn more money, I did not think it was wise. Complete conquering of the dungeon. I believed that this path I was taking was the way to infinitely grow stronger. So shouldn't you go to school? Yes, I will, mom. As I regretted scheduling my first class to be at 9A. In the morning, I had to walk up the school's annoying hillside road. Seeing the ginkgo trees one lined up along the path, I smiled. In a while, they'll be extremely beautiful. Ginkgo nuts fell and exploded, their pungent odor spreading out into the air. Let's do our best so more will grow next year. Ehu, I'm annoyed by all these old women picking up the nuts. We have to give them to the queen. Fall, a season wrought with the smell of ginkgos, was now coming to an end. There was less than two weeks before winter began. When the time came, I vowed to take the shuttle bus, instead of treading uphill in the cold. The lectures happened on the second floor of the business management building. It was a class with over 100 people. Somehow the students had already gotten to know each other, as they chatted like they'd known each other for years. I, on the other hand, was standing outside the door, staring at them like I was from a different country. I had the feeling that campus life I dreamed of would not be happening. It was then that I felt a hand pulling on my sleeve. I turned around. Gek, hoodie girl. Su Yiun. Right, Su Yiun. It was nice seeing you again. As I made a 180 degree turn and began to head towards a corner seat, Su Yiun grabbed onto my sleeve again. You. I still don't know your name yet. Su Yiun was again covering up her head with a hoodie. Even so, at a close distance, her face was in full view. Round eyes, aquiline nose, and full pink lips. She had all the qualities of a beauty. Of course, even if her beauty could topple Cleopatra off her throne, I wanted nothing to do with her. 1. HTTPS N. Wikipedia. Orgwikiginko Biloba. Chapter, 27. 
If I involve myself with her, others might find out that I'm an ability user. Even worse, the fact that I'm a dungeon explorer might be revealed. Mm, I still couldn't believe that I told Su Yiyun that I was a dungeon explorer. What was I thinking? I could only hope that she wouldn't sell out someone who saved her life. Kong Shin. Kong Shin. Yeah, hi. I tried to turn away again, but this time, she held onto my arm. Hey, stop. Why are you avoiding me? Put your hand on your chest and ask yourself. Pervert. Can I hit you just once? Su Yiyun let go of my arm then asked in an even quieter voice. I want to know what your ability is. I don't want to know yours. Do you hate me? Now you know. Why? You're a bother. This time, she didn't grab onto my arm. I wondered if I was too harsh, but soon told myself I wasn't. It was because Su Yiyun was still following me. Are you picking a fight? I couldn't go to the opening party because of you. So. I don't have any friends to talk to. Was I wrong to sympathize with her? No, I wasn't. We were both innocent. I suddenly felt my hostility dwindling and I let her sit in an open seat next to me. She seemed surprised at this unexpected action as she opened her eyes wide under her hoodie and smiled. Thanks. Humph, it's not like I did it for you. I just didn't want to talk more. Ah, uh, maybe that wasn't the right response. I regret it inwardly. What I knew for sure was that I couldn't fully shake myself loose of her, and that she became my first friend at college. Ha, huh, life really didn't turn out as one expected. I had a dream. I was shouting, but I couldn't hear myself in the noisy background. The sky was dark and full of storm clouds. Crimson devils filled the earth and the sky, and only she was by my side. There were comrades nearby that weren't human, but she was the only human. If I told you that I love you, what would you say? I stopped my shouting and looked at her unbelievably beautiful face. I do say that I hate you. Because I do. Nothing ever goes my way with you, huh? I looked lovingly at her blazing eyes. Before she obtained her ability, she set herself ablaze. After she obtained her ability, she set everything apart from her ablaze. I held in my desire to embrace her and said. This isn't the end. The end won't come. Ever. I'm surprised you can say that in this situation. We're going to survive, xx. Until the end, together. And if we do. Then he'll tell you I love you. Stupid orc, acting superior. xx said that. xx said that. Gur. I opened my eyes. It was the worst wake up I've ever had. Ha. Huh. My head hurt and so did my eyes. My throat was parched. Did I dream? No, I couldn't remember anything. I felt like I saw a dark sky but my head hurt when I tried to remember it. I gave up and opened the windows, letting the autumn wind tickle my hair. Good morning. I came all the way from West Sea. Ah, the smell of the sea. I shook my head to shake the sleepiness off. It seemed fatigue had built up from staying in the dungeon for too long. Plus, I had to go to school now too. Two weeks had passed since school started, which was enough to take its toll on me. Let's not overdo it, I murmured to myself. Immediately after, I was preparing to fight the dark rat man three times in the morning. My classes were in the afternoon. Poludia contacted me recently. To meet on the 25th floor. Yup. As I thought, it's because of you. What do you mean it's because of me? Ha, huh, Shin, you aren't good with women, are you? Oh, and you are. At least more than you, friend. I have a fiancé after all. Fiancé. It surprised me. Elo sounded content as he chuckled. Um, mm, yes. Well, you better hurry, friend. There's only a month left until the promised day. All right, I'll try. What floor are you on now? I'm on the 24th floor. Since I'm near the end, I should be able to reach the 25th floor in time. All right, then see you on the 25th floor. Yes, see you there. 
I finished my conversation with Ellos and thought back to the boss fight I just had. It was overall a success. There were three people including me and we all survived without a hitch. However, I could not see the path ahead. I did not have the confidence to take on so many rat men along with the dark rat man. I had the key to the solution, but using it would decrease my attack and defense significantly. When I noticed the stinging gaze and turned to face it, I found Loretta staring at me intently. Wah! Customer, why do you always leave me standing here like a fool while you exchange messages with others? Are you mistaking the floor shops as rest stops? It isn't. There are lots of foods to eat and a beautiful server as well. I won't fall for any lip service. Not to mention, I'm not phased by such an obvious truth. Then give me a five gold fruit juice. Thank you, customer. Loretta really was simple-minded. I took the fruit juice from Loretta it had an effect of quickly relieving fatigue, and asked her a question that suddenly popped up in my head. Loretta, you're always at the floor shop whenever I come. Of course. Isn't it the duty of a shopkeeper to meet her customer? Then what do you do when I'm not here? I've been meaning to ask it for a while. She was there on every floor shop I went to. I was curious what she did when I wasn't here. Loretta answered with a chortle. My, customer, are you hitting on me? Not yet, it's too early for that. No, not at all. Ow ow ow. Loretta approached me without any change in her expression and pinched my cheeks without mercy. It hurt extremely. You shouldn't tease girls like that, customer. Eh. When did I? Sorry, spare me. Seeing Loretta bring out a double-sided axe from the back of the shop, I acquiesced. Loretta returned the axe with a humph. What was the question? What I usually do. That will be five hundred gold, customer. You cheapskate. I won't ask. Hoo-hoo, girls have many secrets, customer. A secret worth as little as five hundred gold. You're no fun. How will you get along with your girlfriend like that? Like I said, she's not my girlfriend. Loretta remained silent at my tiresome reply, and only when I was about finished with my juice did she speak out of the blue. You know I'm not a human, right? I expected as much. I am a member of a race well known for our aptitude for magic. I won't tell you what race it is until later, though. Magic? Yes. Did you think you were my only customer in this dungeon? Eh. You mean you trade with other dungeon explorers as well? Loretta lightly nodded. It's the power of magic and also the power of the dungeon. I can take pieces of my consciousness and put them in puppets, thus spreading my consciousness to countless places in a dungeon. Although I don't trade with all dungeon explorers, I do trade with about 10% of the first dungeon explorers. UK, that sounds exhausting. Hoo-hoo, are you worrying about me? Don't worry, I'm also resting in my house located somewhere in the dungeon. That's good then. In other words, the Loretta I was talking with was a puppet. I was truly surprised. It was something I had never considered. After all, her skin was just like a person's, her eyes were also. Do you want to try touching me? No, it's fine. As I thought, I'm scary, right? Scary? What is? When I asked with a look of confusion, Loretta naturally answered. It's not normal. Being able to split one's consciousness and control puppets. Even dungeon explorers can't help but be shocked and they hear it. Well, it's certainly shocking, but I don't see why it would be scary. Are you not scared of me, customer? I hate to be the one to say it, but I'm an amazing magician, you know. The moment I saw you sitting in the floor shop of this mysterious dungeon, I knew you were someone amazing. The one in front of you is nothing but a puppet controlled by a piece of consciousness. Doesn't it disgust you? Disgust? I took the time to think about it. What was in front of me was a puppet with Loretta's consciousness. It was seemingly no different than a real person. Through this puppet, Loretta cried, laughed, and got angry. What disgust? I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be disgusted by. Loretta is Loretta. Just because you are in a different form, doesn't change the fact that you are Loretta. 
Isn't that right? Ah, uh, um. Mm. Um. Loretta suddenly stuttered. Her cheeks were slightly red. You you. Certainly, this is how I hoped you would react, but. Yes. What did you say? Nothing. You can go now. Mm. Um. No, why so suddenly? Okay, I'll leave, stop pushing. Hurry up and leave. Loretta screamed and tried to chase me out. She was now red as a tomato. Itchem. Did I just make Loretta mad? What did I do wrong? I wasn't sure exactly what I did wrong, I told myself to apologize to her the next time I saw her. Then, I got out of the dungeon. It was now time to go to school. Chapter 28 She did not cry. Even when her country fell to ruin, even when her continent collapsed, even when her sister was dragged away by the demon lord, even when the emperor and empress committed suicide. As the crown princess and the last surviving member of the empire, she stood tall until the end. They'll come back to reclaim what is mine. My lovely crown princess, what a shame it is to have you leave I will await the day I see you again. The demon lord whispered to the girl in my embrace with a sly expression, then faced me and said. Savior, hero. For what reason have you arrived at this fallen world? Ak, you have a severe case of 8th grade syndrome. I'm just here to save my friend. The reason I will not kill you now is. Because you can't, idiot. I'm leaving. Next time I see you, the first thing you'll do is punch you in the face. Return. How arrogant, human. At my shout, my surroundings shone with a brilliant light and a door appeared in midair. I opened the door and stuck my middle finger out at the demon lord who was trying to look cool until the end. If you don't like it, why don't you come over to my world? Again. It was another unpleasant morning. Was it because I only said I'd go easy and really didn't? My entire body felt out of sorts and I had a splitting headache. I sat down cross-legged on my bed and initiated Pryuta circuit. Whenever my body felt out of balance, Pryuta told me to use the Pryuta circuit to rebalance it. Mana, which circulated with my body as the center, was extremely intense, but at the same time, extremely pure and dynamic in movement. Once I began to circulate it, it moved mostly by itself. Circulating the mana inside of me and accepting the outside mana, I spit out the impurities that had accumulated inside of me. Kaya, cool prince. The mana is so bright. I'm being sucked in. Someone hold him. I knocked on my ear a few times and stretched. Today was the weekend, so I headed to the dungeon right after breakfast. It was the day I would challenge the dark rat man with just two people. My partner was none other than Sheena. Are you sure? You left your party members behind. Plus, it's dangerous. It's fine. We're only making small progress on the 17th floor. Plus, all the party members are busy today. Sheena answered as if she had it prepared beforehand. On one hand, she held a round shield, and a long sword on the other. As expected of a party leader, her equipment looked good. She would be my tank for today. She was stable and had the sense to dodge the dark rat man's skill. She was the best choice for a partner. To be honest, I'm slightly worried, but I know it'll be fine with you, Appa. Yep. Like I said, you just have to delay the dark rat man for a little. Got it. Take good care of me. Exchanging messages with her from time to time, we became close enough for her to call me Appa. She was usually mature, but she also knew how to spoil herself and act affectionately. She was overall a very likable girl. Though, of course, she wasn't a match for my Yua. With the boss fight in front of us, she put on her lightning-resistant robe. I had my Wraith Queen set on as well. Although Orc Lord's Warcry was a fantastic skill, even if I could ignore the Dark Rat Man's attack, just a single Dark Lightning would kill me. As such, it wasn't particularly useful in the 15th floor master fight. Wraith Queen Set's Vengeful Spirit's Wail had the effect of inflicting confusion and fear on surrounding enemies. With it, I could take care of all the Ratman minions while the Dark Ratman was stupefied. Thus, whenever I fought the Dark Ratman, 
I took off the Orc Lord set I liked and wore the Wraith Queen set which I still felt awkward in. I also couldn't help but shiver at the lightness of this armor set. However, Sheena seemed to be paying attention to another side of the Wraith Queen set. Wow, you look so cool, Appa. Mmm. Hoo-hoo, it goes well with your handsome face. Like royalty. Our royalty you're flattering me too much. With how much I was being called Crown Prince, it would be bad if I confused myself for an actual royalty. With a bitter smile, I held up the Orc Lord's glaive. Alright, you can flatter me after the fight. Got it. Let's go. We stood side by side and kicked the door open. Inside, there were forty ratmen and the dark ratman. It was the same as always. I shouted at the top of my lungs. Come fight me. You used the skill provoke. You gained the attention of nearby enemies. Kijik. Kugagak. Kill him. Human male. From above, it would give anyone watching the unpleasant feeling of a bunch of rats running. While I gripped my spear tightly and prepared to use heroic strike, I yelled toward Sheena. Take care of the dark rat man. Yes. The dark rat man was among the rat men running toward me, and Sheena rushed toward it to take the aggro. Sure enough, the dark rat man changed target, swiping at her with its claws. For some strange reason, the rat men had low defense compared to their high attack. Their mental defense was even weaker. It was clear to see by how they were so easily provoked by a low rank skill. Modifying the trajectory of my spear as I went, I included as many rat men as possible in my attack. Heroic Strike Clad in white light, my spear thrust forward and slaughtered about a dozen rat men in its path. I then wrapped mana around the spear and began to pierce the other ratmen's throats. Queek. Human. Hap. I continually used provoke, making sure none of them went toward Sheena. By piercing the ratmen's throats one by one, I made sure that they were dead. Kayak. It's using its skill. Vengeful spirits wail. Kia. Although I wanted to save it since I could only use it once a day, Sheena had already been hit by the lightning. She would be able to dodge the follow-up attacks if she dodged the initial lightning, but she had no choice but to die if she was hit. Not unless I used Vengeful Spirit's Wail. You used Vengeful Spirit's Wail. All enemies have become confused. All enemies have become feared. Kijigik. Human, too many humans. Scary. Dark scary. The surroundings had become chaotic. Some of the rat men began to fight each other, while others fell and trembled in fear. The dark rat man had also cancelled his skill and was fighting the nearby rat men with reddened eyes. We don't have much time. Deal as much damage as you can. I shouted as I took care of several rat men with Tempest. Sheena seemed to have recovered from the paralysis thanks to the lightning resistant rope as she gasped for air and concentrated mana on her sword. Her mana was the same color as her eyes. Take this. Hornet Pierce. Queek. While Sheena was attacking the confused dark ratman, I continued to take care of the ratman minions. With them fighting by themselves or trembling in fear, they were completely defenseless. When I killed the last ratman, the effect of Vengeful Spirit's wail wore off, and the dark ratman once again used his skill. Kijigik, I will cook you until you're charred black. I think you mean burn, idiot. Dark Ratman uses Dark Thunder Explosion. It was here. The moment Black Lightning began to explode out from his body, Sheena and I jumped back. Alright, we dodged it. Kugagaga. The Dark Ratman continuously shot out lighting in madness. Of course, we weren't just watching from the side. I drank a mana potion and prepared my heroic strike, while Sheena drank a health potion. Phew, this is hard. You've always been fighting like this. Yeah, well it's coming. Kugagak. Humans. Eat this. Seeing the dark rat man charge toward us the moment his skill ended, I threw my spear forward. When I felt the condensed energy on the spear, I felt an unprecedented feeling of satisfaction. At the same time, I had a feeling that my spear would hit exactly where I aimed it. Critical hit. Kugagak. 
The Orc Lord's glaive completely pierced the dark rat man's chest, coming out of his back and nailing him to the wall. Blood spurted out from the dark rat man's chest as he collapsed on the ground. He was either dead or was on the verge of dying. A amazing. To pierce through a floor master's defense. Ah. Sheena. Hurry up. Ah. Yes. Sheena and I both charged toward the dark rat man. Although he twitched its body, unwilling to die, Sheena's and my attack easily finished him off. Hap. Die. Ait. Keiki. Hearing the last blood-curdling shriek of his dying breath, Sheena and I high-fived. We had succeeded. You consumed a thunder crystal. Your resistance to lightning increases slightly. Your affinity with lightning increases. Your magic increases by five. It seems taking more will not have any effect. Oh. I finished consuming thunder crystals to their limit much earlier than I anticipated. It was also unexpected that it would increase my magic by five. As I was checking my status with satisfaction, Sheena, who obtained the dark rat man's leather boots, looked at me with an apologetic expression. Is it really okay, Appa? I hear the leather boots are a rare part. I already have it. I only need two more to complete my set. A amazing. One of them would come from hunting the dark rat man alone, so I really only had one more to go. Once I had that one piece I would solo the dark rat man. I still wasn't confident, but I had no choice. Good luck, Appa. Although I'm not sure what you're doing, I know Appa can do anything. Huh, are you trying to cheer me up? Thanks. Call me if you ever need me again. I will always be available. Alright, see you again later. I said my goodbye to Sheena who was acting cutesy with sparkling eyes. Alright, he'll obtain the last piece of the Dark Rat Man set by the end of the day. Then, he'll challenge him solo tomorrow. I murmured, trying to ease my anxiety. Chapter, 29 The sky was dyed black. Under the artificial sky where not even a stream of light shone through, the dungeon, having swallowed all challengers, opened its mouth as if to seek more prey. From it, the screams of the dead and the smell of blood were still leaking out. Son, are you ready? Holding a spear over three meters long, he looked back at me. He was a veteran hero, a hero of the human race. Not just him, but all those who gathered to clear the dungeon were the same. Answering him lightly, I checked my equipment before entering the dungeon. An armor made from five-colored metal, a strange gauntlet emanating otherworldly aura, and plate boots that wouldn't melt even in lava. Finally, in my hand, a spear of pure white that rejected all darkness. Finally. Sharana, Ruyue, Pika, Dortu. Im ready. What? Let's just go in already. Im ready to rampage. Let's get this boring dungeon over with. Then we can go play. Im Dortu. I will follow master's command. With them by my side, I would not be afraid no matter who I was up against. I gave the girls a big smile, and they also smiled back. I could do this. I was filled with confidence. I raised the pure white spear in my hand and pointed it at the entrance to the dungeon. We're going in. I woke up. I calmly raised my hand. It was my hand, the one I had seen for nineteen years. I then touched my body. It was the same, wearing the same shirt I always wore as pajamas. Hugh Hugh. I felt like vomiting from a splitting headache. How many times had I now seen dreams like this? I could remember at least 3 5 20. I could not remember the faces of people that appeared in my dreams, but I vaguely remembered our conversations or the scenery. Were the dreams from my future? No, it could be from a ruined. Prince Nim. Solubritai. He smells nice. Kaya. He looked this way. By the slightly open windowsill, I saw the air swirling. A few masses of blue light were frolicking about. They must be the owners of the voices I'd been hearing recently and trying to ignore. These small and rowdy existences held incomprehensible powers. Elementals. I became certain at this moment. I had awakened. 
spirit mastery and deific manifestation. Was it really coincidence that I learned these two skills? I remained doubtful. At first, I thought deific manifestation was a skill that would allow me to learn a mana cultivation method, and I thought spirit mastery would only make deific manifestation stronger. Now that I had awoken to my ability, these two skills had entirely different purposes. Was this by someone's design? If so, who was this someone? Was it the one who created the dungeon? Would that existence even be a person? Things I had never thought about flooded my mind. However. Clap. All right. As I rubbed my swollen cheeks, I returned to reality. Even if I tried to remember, I couldn't remember what I couldn't remember. I just had to do the things within my power. Then what were they? It was to form a contract. There are many elementals on earth, but I can't just go around searching for my partner. I realized from hearing the voices of many elementals in the past few days. Earth was full of elementals. Though, I did not know whether they were always there, or whether they appeared after two moon. I slowly recalled my ability. Elementalist. If I were to call it something, that would be it. I could feel elementals, see them, and use their powers by forming contracts with them. Contracts. The language for it was already prepared. Almost as if I had known it my entire life, it was ingrained into my mind. Although I felt unfamiliar with myself, I soon became numb to the feeling. I had to acknowledge what I had to acknowledge. However, I was curious as to whether all awakened experienced the same feeling. Of course, just because I could hear the voices of elementals and form contracts with them, it did not mean I could form a contract with any random elemental. An elementalist could only see and form contracts with elementals on the same wavelength as the elementalist's soul. As the quality of the elementalist's soul increased, he would be able to see more elementals. However, I was still a rookie elementalist who had not formed a contract with a single elemental. The first thing I had to do was to find an elemental on the same wavelength as me. How could I go about doing that? I, of course, couldn't travel the world searching for the right elemental. That was why the contract circle existed. It was something ingrained into my mind when I awakened as an elementalist. It was a magic circle that connected me to the elemental whose wavelength matched mine. First, I pushed my bed to the side, then began to draw the magic circle on the ground. I bit down on my finger, tracing the outer perimeter of the circle with blood. Then, I engraved the inside of the circle with symbols that popped up in my head. At the same time, I imbued my mana into the symbols, giving them power. Look. It's a contract circle. Really? It's an elementalist. I've never seen one in this world before. I want him to contract me. Then, I'll ask him to embrace me snugly. Dream on, weakling. The nearby elementals seemed to have noticed what I was doing as they made circles around me. However, I ignored them completely. Although I could hear their voices, I could not clearly see their forms. It meant their wavelengths did not match mine. I used over three hours to draw the circle. Of course, I had my door locked. I did not want to be disturbed. It was Sunday, so I did not have to worry about much. After I finished drawing the circle, I imbued my mana into it to check that it worked properly. There was no problem. I got down on one knee and chanted as I placed my left hand on the contract circle. I, Kong Shin, request the world's help. Draw a connection between me and the one who will become my friend in strength. Let us come together like we were in the beginning of the world. Oh Wong. As soon as I finished, the contract circle began to vibrate, radiating light. It not only sucked in my own mana, but it began to absorb the mana in the atmosphere. Kaya, run. We're being sucked in. As I expected, he's a ma zing. It's the birth of an elementalist. You stupid elementals. I said run. Even as the elementals near me ran away in a hurry, the contract circle sucked in more and more mana. This continued for a while before it began to calm down. Then, after radiating out with a final burst of light, it calmed down completely. At the same time, I confirmed that a connection had been made between me and someone beyond the contract circle. I whispered softly. 
Can you hear me? Who are you? This strong and familiar feeling of lightning. I consumed thunder crystals to the limit. Since my affinity to lightning increased, it was obvious that I would be connected to a lightning elemental. I continued. In Kong Shin. Who are you? I am a lightning elemental, Pika. I've been sleeping in a place where no one could find me. I found you. I want you to become my strength. I am the same. I also want you who holds the power of lightning. I want the outside world. Then form a contract with me. Okay. In the next moment, the contract circle let out a resplendent light. It was so bright that I could not help but close my eyes. When I opened them, an adorable girl, whose height did not seem to reach 20 centimeters, was floating above the contract circle. She wore a delicate black silk dress and silk gloves, and had straight black hairs that curled at the ends. She had snow-white skin, eyes that shone with noble gold, an appearance like a porcelain doll. It was a shame. If she were human, she would have been a girl of incomparable beauty. She closed the folding fan in her hand with a thwack, then pointed it toward me. I'm here to form a contract. My name is Kong Shin. In exchange for my mana, I wish to form a master-servant contract with you. My name is Pika. Until the day I perish, I solemnly swear my loyalty to thee. In that instant, the connection between me and Pika transformed to an inseparable bond. An indescribable pleasure swept through my body. At the same time, I heard messages that I could only see in the dungeon. You formed a contract with the lightning elemental Pika. Your affinity and resistance to the lightning element greatly increases. You obtain the class, Elementalist. Successful first class advancement increases your magic and charm by 10. You obtain the active skill, Spirit Aura. By infusing a weapon with one's elemental, you can increase the weapon's strength. The strength increase depends on your mana and your affinity with the elemental. You obtain the passive skill, Elemental Contract. As the skill levels increase, the number and quality of elementals you can form contracts with also increases. At the same time, it has a positive effect on already contracted elementals. Summoning elementals and maintaining them increases skill proficiency. Currently available number of contracts, 1. You obtain the class passive skill, Elemental Control. You can further control your contracted elemental. You can temporarily call upon ownerless elementals in nature in exchange for your mana. As the skill level increases, you can use less mana to more strongly control more elementals. Commanding and communicating with elementals increases skill proficiency. List of contracted elementals 1. Pika Lightning Elemental Unique Elemental Locked Locked Unawakened Low rank spirit mastery becomes level 4. Your affinity to all souls and spirits increase, allowing you to wield even stronger power. Hugh. I finally obtained a class. Although I had lingering attachment to the spearman class, it was easy to see that elementalist was a much rarer class. No, setting aside the matter of its rarity, I knew I could not be anything else but an elementalist. I was certain that it was coded within my soul's essence. Was this what awakening was? Was this what becoming an ability user was? I did not know how the dungeon managed to find out and turn my ability into skills, but at this moment, I was too enraptured to care. Elemental Contract It allowed me to feel an existence completely different than my own, and the feeling of being able to control it allowed me to experience a drug-like ecstasy. I felt her powerful existence, and even as it scared me, I smiled. Pika floated up and came right in front of me. Then, using the hand not holding the folding fan, she touched my left eye. I will engrave the contract symbol in Master's eye. It's going to hurt a bit, Master. Kook. It was a pain like stabbing one's eyes with a needle. However, the pain only lasted for an instant. When I picked up a mirror to check my eye, I was startled. The center of my iris was radiating with a golden light. You won't notice it unless you look closely. Pika grinned and spoke. I could see the symbol of our contract on her as well. A black dragon symbol was tattooed on her cheek. What's that, a dragon? 
It's the creature closest to the essence of Master's soul. That's what a contract symbol is. I see well, it's nice to meet you, Pika. Nice to meet you too, Master. I don't know why, but Master has a very nostalgic scent. It's very fragrant, I like it. I hope Master can continue summoning me. Yeah, that's what I plan on doing. If I summon an elemental and maintain the summoning, would increase my proficiency in elemental contract, spirit mastery, and elemental control. This applied not only inside the dungeon, but also outside in the real world. Although my mana would be drained continuously, that was an issue I could easily solve by periodically initiating Pryuta circuit. Pika made a happy smile and sat on my shoulder. I put my bed back in place so that the contract circle was covered, then stepped out of my room. The world looked different. It was full of elementals. Chapter, 30 Wow, a lightning elemental. It's the first time I've seen one. How beautiful. She stole my heart. Heart. Thief. Ah, she's an elementalist's contracted elemental. I could hear the chatter of elementals all around me. Their radiant souls were lighting up the world in a way I had never seen before. The noble scenery charmed me completely, leaving me speechless. This all happened in the instant when I became aware of myself as an elementalist. Although the elementals' wavelengths did not match mine, just knowing how many elementals there were in the world filled me with an indescribable emotion. Master doesn't need to look at other elementals. Master has me. Ha, huh, how reliable. But aren't you still weak? T that's. It'll get stronger soon. I couldn't help but smile at the sight of Pika standing on my shoulder and declaring her intentions with her folding fan held high. I knew that Pika was a strong elemental and that she would continue to get stronger. She was a unique elemental with self-awareness and a name. She also had secrets I was unaware of. However, Pika right now was still weak. All elementals were like that. They were existences that grew stronger by continued communication with their contracted master. No elemental was strong from the moment it formed a contract. Well, there were, of course, exceptions. In general, by spending time together, the souls of the elemental and the elementalist became similar, thus making the elemental stronger. The speed and the limit of growth, which differed for each elemental, determined the strength of an elemental. However, they all started at the same starting line. Let's get along, Pika. Leave it to me. I am the lightning elemental Pika. As I was enjoying my talk with my lovely partner, I suddenly recalled what I had planned for today. One last part. The Dark Ratman Solo. I trembled slightly. Today's circumstance was a lot different than yesterday's. Let alone the Dark Ratman, I felt like I could defeat even the 25th floor master alone. With Pika's strength and elemental control. Kong Shin Nim's contribution is the highest. Choose your reward. 1. Dark Ratman's Leather Vest. 2. Middle Potion. 3. Dark Ratman's Leather Fedora. 4. 600 Gold. 5. Dark Ratman's Leather Glove. There. I clenched my fists. If the equipment part one wanted did not drop, I would have had to fight the boss again. Thankfully, Bringing four other people did the trick. Choosing the Dark Ratman's leather glove, I smiled. Wow, Crown Prince Nim already picked an item, but there are still two set items left. Crown Prince Nim is truly unparalleled in boss fights. He's an elementalist. They are people the likes of us can't begin to comprehend. How come I've never heard of Crown Prince Nim being an elementalist? He must have been hiding it. Why? I don't know. Like I said, elementalists are people we can't comprehend. As my party members were writing a novel of their own, I confirmed the six Dark Ratman set equipment. Because weapons did not count towards the set, I never chose the Dark Ratman's claw. The Wraith Queen set had six parts to it, but it seemed the Dark Ratman set would have seven. What I had now was the Dark Ratman's leather fedora, Dark Ratman's leather vest, Dark Ratman's leather belt, Dark Ratman's leather glove, Dark Ratman's leather pants, and finally, Dark Ratman's leather boots. 
Since it was unlikely that a shirt would be made out of leather, I suspected the last one would be a leather jacket. I was about to find out. Good work everyone. You'll be leaving now. Thank you, Crown Prince Nim. As expected of a hero. An elementalist, I'm so jealous. I hope to see you on the 20th floor too. That probably won't happen. By the time you're on the 17th floor, you'll have long since left the 20th floor. Of course, I didn't let my thought escape my mouth. Wishing them good luck, I left the boss room. On the other side was Loretta, who I was seeing for the first time today. See customer. Um, on your shoulder. Eh. She could see Pika. Although elementalists could let others see their elementals, I had not done so. This could only mean that she was an elementalist whose wavelength matched Pika, or Fairy Race. It's the first time I've seen a member of the Fairy Race. Pika shouted in surprise when she saw Loretta. With my guess having been confirmed, I nodded my head. The Fairy Race, a mystical race that was represented by the well known elves, fairies, hobgoblins, and dwarves. Although elementals could be considered true fairies, they were different from elves or dwarves who had settled down on the material world. Members of the human race could not wield mana, or the select few that could had to learn it through their own efforts. However, members of the fairy race were born with the ability to wield mana. Although they had their shortcomings, in terms of their magical abilities they were unparalleled. Of them, the elves had the greatest affinity with mana and elementals. Whether they could form contracts with them or not, they were born with elemental eyes, which allowed them to see elementals. It seemed Loretta was a fairy, and an elf at that. I imagined that an elf would have long, pointy ears, but since she said her form was a puppet she created, she must have hidden her racial features. But how could she see elementals with through her puppet? Ah, uh, I see. It was an ability rooted in the mind, not the body. Wait, how did I know all this? Was it part of the knowledge ingrained into me when I became an elementalist? Customer, you became an elementalist. Wow, that was unexpected. That. Doesn't sound like a compliment. I mean, a few years ago, you were muscle-brained and muscle-bodied. If anybody said you would become an elementalist. A hellhound passing by would laugh. I wouldn't want to be in a place where a hellhound is randomly passing by anyways. You, did you ridicule master? When Pika glared at Loretta and asked, Loretta shook her head with a smile. Elemental Nim, customer and I share a special relationship. We were just having a friendly conversation. Humph, I don't like you. Not to mention, you're hiding in a puppet. With a humph, Pika snorted and turned away. As I gently rubbed Pika's head, I talked to Loretta. He'll be back. It shouldn't take long. Loretta seemed to have understood what I meant as a faint smile flickered around her mouth. Good luck. I'll pray for your safety. Thanks. I inspected my Wraith Queen set one last time and made sure I had all sorts of potions ready on my body. Finally, I patted Pika on the head. I'm not a child. Although Pika shouted and puffed out her cheeks, she did not refuse my patting. How cute. I already knew what she thought with the connection we shared. I stood in front of the door I just closed. With my spear in hand, I kicked it open. Kugaga. Human, a human. Tasty looking human. It'll turn you all into rat meat steaks. You use the skill, provoke. You draw nearby enemies toward you. Not that I'd eat it. Thinking rather useless things, I charged forward paving forth away with my spear. Pika, I'll leave it to you. Got it. As I swung my spear amongst the sea of ratmen, Pika calmly flew up. Then, as if to make fun of the ratmen attempting to block her way, she leisurely flew past them and towards the dark ratman. Although the rattled dark ratman tried to attack her, she was a lightning elemental. As a wind elemental was swift, as a water elemental was soft, as an earth elemental was sturdy, and as fire elemental was hot, she, as a lightning elemental, was fast and sharp. Little fly, Kugagak, it'll crush you. F fly. You dare compare this noble lightning elemental to a fly. It'll kill you. 
I could feel mana draining out of me. Pika had taken it to manifest her elemental lightning. Although the Dark Rat Man had its black lightning, it seemed the elemental lightning attack worked, as it let out a pain-filled shriek. Good. It seemed I could leave the Dark Rat Man to her. Feeling an infinite trust in my elemental, I drank a lowest grade mana potion, and focused again on the Rat Man in front of me. I continued to use Provoke to draw them near me, then used Vengeful Spirit's Wail. Kia. You used Vengeful Spirit's Wail. All enemies within its area become confused and feared. The gathered rat men made vacuous expressions and began to roll around on the floor or attack each other. It was now. I raised my spear up high. Elementals. Prince is calling. What do we do? What do we do? Ugly rats, E.W. Come to my spear. Together, well exterminate those ugly rats. Who, im first? We. What I prepared was tempest. At my calling, the nearby elementals let out small lights as if to assert their existences and flew toward my spear. Along with Peruta circuit's flow of mana, a spiral current formed around my spear and the elementals naturally began spinning along the current. Fun. It looks fun. Me too, me too. Put me in too. No matter how faint the lights were, when they gathered together in mass, the spear was radiating with bright light. If heroic strike shone with a pure white radiance, then the countless elementals on my spear shone it with a festival-like rainbow. In front of such beautiful sight, I almost forgot to attack. However, I soon remembered what situation I was in due to the elementals slowly draining my mana. Here I go, Tem. No, this was different from the Tempest Peruta had taught me. My technique as a spearman and strength as an elementalist. It was a technique that embodied my identity. Here I go, Elemental Tempest. Chapter, 31. Here I go, Elemental Tempest. Shouting out the name that suddenly crossed my mind, I thrust out my spear clad with the enormous elemental storm. As always, my naming sense was rather simple. Quiak. Kijik, Quak. Immediately afterward, I staggered as dizziness swept over me. I had lost too much mana in an instant. I bit down on my cheek to rouse myself, and quickly took out and gulped down a middle mana potion. One thousand mana slowly filled me up, soothing my dizziness. Middle mana potions were sold at the floor shop for five hundred gold. In other words, they were each worth one million one. Although I would have preferred to save them, now was not the time. The dark rat man was still alive and kicking. I raised my head to see the result of my attack. What I saw was shocking. The dungeon's stone floor was a mess as numerous holes were scattered about. The rat men that once filled the room were all dead, torn to shreds. Although I had somewhat expected it, it was still a surprising sight to behold. At that time, I heard a message that I had heard once before. You created the skill, Elemental Tempest. A technique that combines elemental power with the ancient spear technique designed to handle many enemies. It possesses a domineering force, obliterating nearby enemies. It uses half of the user's MP. This skill may only be used by its creator. The skill level is adjusted to lower rank level 5. You created a skill. Elemental Tempest is a skill that never existed elsewhere. Created with the most exquisite combination of mana, spearmanship, and elemental power, this skill will remain a legend for future generations of elemental spearmen. You obtained one skill point as a reward. Current skill point, 4. Ha, ha ha ha. I created another skill. An indescribable feeling of satisfaction swept over me. Attack skill. Sheena's Hornet Pierce was considered an extremely rare skill. Attack skills were as rare as magic, and would serve its user for his or her entire life. As such, I was surprised I would create a second attack skill after Heroic Strike. Not to mention, one was a single target attack perfect to use against a boss, and the other was a multi target attack perfect for fighting mobs. With these two, I would be in Vinci No, wait. I could apply elemental power to Heroic Strike too. Of course, Heroic Strike was different from Tempest. 
It was easy to harmonize elementals with Tempest because it used a current made for mana. However, Heroic Strike was a pure concentration of my energy. If other elementals interfered, it would become weaker instead. However, that did not mean I could not make use of elemental power. Spirit Aura If I infused my spear with Pika, it would be possible. How strong would that be? Luckily, I did not need to imagine its strength. I could just test it now. Kugagak. I will fry you along with your wings. You wish. When all of its minions died, the Dark Ratman became noticeably anxious. It tried to use Dark Thunder Explosion, but Pika was none other than a lightning elemental. She absorbed the Dark Ratman's paralyzing electric shock and let out an even more dazzling light. It was to be expected. Elementals had a 100% resistance against their own elements. In other words, they were completely immune to their own elements. Now that I saw Pika, however, it seemed she had an absorption ability as well. Although I suspected it when I first read the information about her, but it really seemed Pika was not an ordinary elemental. Kahaha. <laughs> it's a festival of lightning. Try it, I dare you. As Pika fearlessly taunted the Dark Ratman, I escaped Dark Thunder Explosion's area of effect. Even if Pika was immune to it, that did not mean I was immune as well. It might be different if Pika developed further and our affinity rose to the extreme, but that was not the case now. As expected, Dark Ratman's black lighting was absorbed by Pika the moment it came out, and she let out an increasingly dazzling light. When the skill finally ended, the Dark Ratman panted and screamed. Kugagak. Tough fly. Stop calling me that, you rat. Kugagaga. The Dark Ratman's physical resistance was close to zero with its leather burnt from Pika's endless lightning attacks. It had exhausted its mana with Dark Thunder Explosion as well. As it was now, it was no different than a sandbag. Hugh. Hap. The Dark Ratman was exhausted to the point it could not even shoot out a single bolt of lightning. However, it swung its long claws in the air in attempt to attack Pika. Meanwhile, I charged toward the Dark Ratman. Although it noticed before long, I was prepared. Pika, stop his movements. Eight. At my command, Pika let out a cute shout and raised her hand toward the Dark Ratman. Parts of the lightning that danced around her shot forward toward the Dark Ratman, paralyzing it. I knew she was my elemental, but she really was perfect. Now, Spirit Aura. At the same time I activated my skill, Pika turned into a small particle of light and got sucked into my spear. I could feel my spear vibrating like it was alive and breathing. Above the spear, white lightning flickered about. Tell me in advance before you use it. Sorry, I was in a hurry. Pika's lightning could not paralyze the enemy for long yet. I could not afford to waste the precious opportunity she created. Within that short period of time, I tensed my muscles and squeezed out all the strength and mana into one point on my spear. Then, I thrust out. Heroic Strike. Kugagak. Kak. I targeted the left side of its chest where its heart was located. Lightning rippled and white light radiated out as my spear burnt its leather to crisp, broke its muscles and bones, and penetrated its heart. The dark rat man shrieked as it coughed up blood. Before long, its head drooped down. It was dead. I couldn't believe it even after I did it myself. No matter how much Pika's lightning had drained its energy, I had just defeated a floor master in a single blow. So this was the power of an elementalist. This was the power of an awakened. Even though it was mine, I was scared that I would become addicted to this power, that I would neglect my martial arts training. I had to remind myself. My strength lies in my spearmanship honed through ten years of hard work. Never forget it. Don't become drunk on this new power. Then, as always, I was flooded with messages. A grand achievement. You defeated the floor master, Dark Ratman, alone. Amazing. You obtained the title, Dark Ratman Slayer. All stats permanently increase by one. This effect will apply even if the title is not equipped. You defeated the Dark Ratman alone. You obtained the special reward, Dark Ratman's leather jacket. 
you obtain 5,000 gold. Choose your reward. 1. Return magic book. Phew. Only after I heard the flurry of messages did I relax. Although I felt like collapsing on the floor, I held on and first deactivated spirit aura. Having returned to her elemental form, Pika sat down on my head and pulled on my hair here and there. Next time, tell me beforehand. It was scary suddenly being sucked in like that. Yeah, sorry, Pika. Okay. I forgive you. Pika seemed to have been appeased as she gently stroked the hair she was pulling. Perhaps it was because she was an elemental, but she was extremely pure. Absent-mindedly, I went over the message log. The Dark Ratman Slayer title was something I expected to get. Having defeated the third floor master alone, all stats were now increased by three. No matter how small it seemed, piled up over a long time, it would have a significant effect. And as I expected, I received the last part of the Dark Ratman set, the leather jacket. I suspected that this equipment set had that skill. If so, I would gladly replace the Orc Lord set I spent a long time to gather. Of course, I was currently wearing the Wraith Queen set. I took off the Wraith Queen equipment one by one. Leaving behind just the shirt, I put on the Dark Ratman equipment. After wearing the leather pants, leather boots, and leather belt, I wore the leather glove, put my the leather jacket, and pushed the leather fedora on my head. Although they were heavier than the Wraith Queen equipment, they were lighter than the Orc Lord equipment. Although I was worried that the Dark Ratman set's defense would pale in front of the armor-type Orc Lord set, the equipment dropped by the 15th floor master were fundamentally different. When I finished putting on the last equipment part, a fanfare rang out in my ear. What was that? I never heard something like it when I got the Wraith Queen skill. The messages that followed made me freeze in place. You equipped the Dark Ratman set. Your strength and dexterity increases by 10. When the Dark Ratman set is equipped, you can use Dark Thunder Explosion once per day. Up to this point, it was within my expectation. Still, it made me dance in happiness. I could now use that powerful skill. Like the Orc Lord's war cry and Vengeful Spirit's wail, equipment based skills did not use mana. Even though they could only be used once a day, being able to use such powerful skills without mana was a great merit. What surprised me was what followed. You satisfied the opening condition of Collector's Pocket Watch. You obtained a subclass. Opening condition, learn 5 skills, collect 3 skill equipment, create 1 skill. You obtained the subclass, Skill Collector. Your magic and luck increases by 10 through class advancement bonus. You obtained the class Active Skill, Endow Skill. You can extract skills from equipment and endow the pocket watch with them. The skills will then be usable without having the equipment set equipped. You can endow up to 12 skills and they will be usable once per day. This skill has no level. You obtain the class Passive Skill, Spirit of the Collector. Upon defeating Floor Masters or Event Dungeon Bosses, or clearing Event Dungeons, the chances of items you need appearing on the reward list increases. The chance increases based on your Charm and Luck stat. This skill has no level. The pocket watch. I had forgotten about it. I didn't even remember when I got it in the first place. Chapter, 32. Since I had already gotten the elementalist class, I had forgotten about it. I left the pocket watch stuffed into my inventory and never looked at it. But to think it would turn out like this. As always, the best feeling came from unexpected gains. More importantly, it was a subclass. Unlike the Elementalist class, it did not grant me any amazing abilities that changed the way I fought. That said, it would have been weird if my class changed from Elementalist to something else. Being able to use Orc Lord's Warcry, Vengeful Spirit's Wail, and other equipment set skills without having to equip them was certainly beneficial. Not to mention, the class passive skill Spirit of the Collector. Although this skill seemed to rely on luck for the most part, it was clear that the skill would not be harmful in any way. As a passive skill, it would help me for a long time. After organizing my thoughts, I hurriedly took out the pocket watch. The pocket watch was shining with dazzling light from the jewels on the lid. It was as if a switch had been turned on. The moment I opened the lid, the minute hand, 
which was between 11 and 12 o'clock positions, suddenly began spinning. At the same time, I heard a voice in my ear. You used the skill, endow skill. You currently possess three skill equipment. Which of them would you like to endow? 1. Orc Lord's War Cry. 2. Vengeful Spirit's Wail. 3. Dark Thunder Explosion. Wow. Although it wasn't like I had doubted it, but I could not help but smile seeing it with my own eyes. Without erasing the smile from my face, I spoke out. Orc Lord's War Cry. Designate the hour. Hour. Ah, it's asking where. Then one o'clock. As soon as the word left my word, the Orc Lord set flew out of my inventory and fell on the ground. Then, the Orc Lord set began to shine with red light. Soon, a red jewel flew up amidst the red light and went into the pocket watch. Thinking I was being attacked, I almost let go of the pocket watch. But seeing that I was unhurt, I turned my gaze toward the pocket watch. The spinning minute hand had stopped and was now fixed on the one o'clock position. A red jewel was embedded there, replacing the number one. I now realized that these holes weren't actual holes where something came off. They were empty sockets where skills would be embedded. Vengeful spirits wail. Like before, the Wraith Queen set shone with a gloomy gray light and spit out a gray jewel. It then entered the two o'clock socket. I continued with the Dark Ratman set, which went into the three o'clock socket. For some reason, however, the jewel was yellow. Was it because lighting was yellow? But it's called Dark Thunder. How mysterious. Who, so this means I don't need to wear the full set anymore. Though, since the Dark Ratman set is the best, it'll continue wearing it. It increased my strength and dexterity by 10 points each. That was a stat bonus equivalent to four whole levels. The Dark Ratman was comparatively difficult to solo, but I had also gained a lot from doing so. Feeling all around happy, I smiled from ear to ear as I patted Pika's head. Stop, my hair will get tangled. Since Pika said it while flushing her cheeks and twisting her body, I continued to pat her. Hmm. Why did I feel like I was forgetting something? Oh yeah, the reward. The reward from defeating the floor master alone. I had almost forgotten about it. When I checked, it was a return magic book. Return. Tilting my head, I used it immediately. You learned the return skill. Using 80% of your remaining mana, you can teleport to any predetermined location. You can bring up to two people. You can only choose two locations at any given time, and you must have visited these locations before. You can only use this skill twice a day. You can change these locations every two weeks. The number of locations and the number of times return can be used will increase with levels. You cannot bring non-dungeon explorers to the dungeon. You cannot bring those belonging to other worlds into your own. Geez, why is there so many twos? It's easy to memorize at least. Wait, now that I think about it, this skill. It's amazing. There was no better skill for going to and from school. Imagining myself teleporting to the school and teleporting back as soon as classes ended, I could not hide my excitement. Ah, uh, going from school to home should be easy since I can just go into the restroom, but the other way would be hard. I'll need to look for a secluded area at school. Well, I'll think about this later. Class, Elementalist Sub-Skill Collector Title, Dark Ratman Slayer Rank, Bronze 1. Level, 20. HP 5 8705 870 MP 3 8603 860 Strength 55 15 Dexterity 49 13 Constitution 593 Intelligence 203 Magic 743 Charm 433 Luck 203 Normal Skill Midrank Martial Arts LV9, High Rank Spear Technique LV4, Peruta Circuit LV3, Midrank Heroic Strike LV2, Low Rank Provoke LV7, Return LV1, Deific Manifestation. Class Skill Low Rank Spirit Mastery LV5, Low Rank Spirit Aura LV1, Low Rank Elemental Control LV1, Low Rank Elemental Contract LV2, Low Rank Elemental Tempest LV5. Subclass Skill Endow Skill, Spirit of the Collector. Hugh. 
Now that I looked at my status, one thing stood out in particular. It was that my highest stat was magic. It was because I received bonus magic stats when I became an elementalist and a skill collector. Of course, since magic could strengthen spear techniques, it was not a bad thing. Other close combat classes most likely received bonus strength, dexterity, or constitution stats. But the compressing elixirs I consumed easily covered that difference. Not to mention, the bonus from the Dark Ratman set should have made me surpass them. I knew for certain that equipment that raised strength and dexterity by 10 were rare. When I visited the floor shop afterwards, Loretta was smiling without saying anything. Even when I showed her my sparkling pocket watch, she seemed to have expected it as she maintained her tranquil smile. Her leisure irritated me for no apparent reason. So you'll be challenging the 20th floor master next. Yes, although I won't go for a complete conquer until I'm level 25. At my words, Loretta seemed to ponder over something, then said, Customer, the 20th floor master, Lizard Knight, is a monster that separates the bronze rank and the silver rank. It is a cruel and formidable monster that slaughters explorers who do not meet the qualifications to rise to the silver rank. Is that so? But why are you telling me this? For customer, it might be easier to defeat the Lizard Knight than the Dark Rat Man. Why is that? Loretta stayed silent for a moment before she opened her mouth again. Customer, if the Dark Rat Man appeared with a stronger defense, but without its Rat Man minions, what would you have done? I probably could have defeated it at level 15. I would just have to dodge its skill. There was only one reason the Dark Rat Man fight was so hard. It was because of how difficult it was to fight the fierce Ratman minions while dodging the Dark Ratman's lightning. But if there were no Ratman minions to worry about, defeating the Dark Ratman would have been easy. In fact, it might have been easier than the Wraith Queen fight. No matter how much its defense increased, it would not stand a chance against my skills. I just had to use it a couple more times. But at my answer, Loretta became speechless and stared at me fixedly. When I gave her the why are you looking at me face, she cleared her throat and continued. That's exactly how the Lizard Knight is. He does not have any minions that fight for him. However, he is strong, fast, and robust. With these qualities, he has forced countless explorers to kneel and despair. But if customer is confident, it would be fun to challenge him alone. Dare to adventure. That's what you're saying, right? Do you remember what I told you? That the fruit of adventure is always sweet. Loretta was giving me a hint. But what did she mean by the fruit of adventure being sweet? The title of Lizard Night Slayer should be the same no matter when I earned it. What difference was there in getting it now or later? Don't tell me, there's a difference if I succeed in a solo raid in my challenge. Who knows? Why why? Loretta avoided my gaze as she whistled. It was obvious to the point it was doubtful, but Loretta had never said anything to put me at a disadvantage. She did try to con me into buying more items though. Could I trust her? One more thing, customer. As I was wondering whether a mere level 20 adventurer like me should try to do something that doesn't seem particularly appealing, Loretta added, as if to put the nail on the coffin. The first is always special. The first. I felt a strong attraction to that word. It also implied that I had never truly been the first. Being the idiot that I am, I felt my pride being provoked. Even her eyes seemed to be saying you can't even do this. All right, you'll do it. The first. Loretta stared into my eyes for a moment before flushing her cheeks and turning away. Then, she shouted as she took something out of her pocket. Then Hayrace an offer from the floor shop, customer. This here is a magical item that holds down the enemy's movement for five seconds. Now it's only ten thousand gold. I'm not buying it. Why? I'll challenge it. At level twenty, I will solo the twentieth floor master. Without that magical item, of course. Chapter, thirty-three. Trusting Loretta's words, I stood in front of the door to the twentieth floor master and ignored the recommendation to find a party. I put my hand on the door, but soon took it off again. No matter how easy Loretta said the Lizard Knight would be, if I went in blindly, I might face the same situation as I had with Orc Lord four years ago. 
Instead, I sent somebody a message. Thankfully, he was in the dungeon. Elos. Oh, Shin. What's up? I want to ask you about the Lizard Knight. Wow, you're already on the 20th floor. Amazing. You might really end up meeting us on the 25th floor. Of course I will. More importantly, tell me about Lizard Knight's fighting style or skills. Normally, I learned these things through experiencing them directly. But now, I was in a situation where I had to defeat it on my first try. Since Loretta guaranteed a hefty reward, I had to defeat it even if I had to break my usual style. You usually don't ask these things. I wonder what happened. Well, it'll tell you anyways. Lizard Knight appears alone unlike the other floor masters, and wears a set of scaled armor made from its own scales. With it, he has a truly formidable defensive power. He uses an incredibly swift and powerful spear. If anyone who's not a tank is hit by it, they will most likely be half killed. HM, fast and powerful. And if a lot of people jump at him at once, he suddenly swipes with his tail. This attack has a bigger range than you'd think. Not to mention, it hurts incredibly. Watch out for it. Actually, that seems like something I can exploit. What else? Oh, yeah. When he feels like he's at a disadvantage, he strikes down on the ground with his spear. The ground then rumbles and a huge damage is dealt to all explorers touching the ground. You need to dodge this one for sure. He strikes down on the ground with his spear. So I can just dodge it by jumping. Yep. But if you do, he immediately attacks you with a spear thrust, so be careful. Alright. What else? After that attack, he uses a skill called Dragon Skin. His body becomes red and incredibly tough. For the next five minutes, no attack will work on it. The worst part is that he continuously strikes down on the ground in that state. That does sound bad. Wait, his armor gets harder too. Yep. That's what makes it so troublesome. Neither physical nor magical attacks work when he's in that state. But if you last long enough for Dragon Skin to end, your victory is mostly secured. Because when Dragon Skin runs out, he's exhausted. All the party members can just throw out their attacks and kill it. How many tries did it take you? Seven tries. For the record, that's considered outstanding. It's even considered good if you defeat him in 20 or 30 tries. Ha, huh, thanks. He'll contact you again once it ends. Kook, you mean you have the confidence to beat him on your first try. Alright, well see. I ended my conversation with Elos and grinned. It took Elos seven tries with a party of ten to defeat the Lizard Knight. He would never expect that I.D. try to defeat the Lizard alone. Master can do it. Because I'm here. Yeah, I can do it. Because Pika is here. I formed a plan based on what Elos told me. After checking over it multiple times, I nodded my head and boldly opened the door. Fight me, Lizard Knight. A human. The Lizard Knight was standing alone in the spacious room. He was about two. Three meters tall, and as Elos said, on top of his scaled body was a set of full body armor made from its own scales. In its hand was a five meter long spear with a razor sharp head. You are challenging me alone. This is a first. Yeah, I am. I smiled at him. He was trying to look cool unlike the other floor masters, but to me, he was no different. When I first heard Elos' description of him, I was nervous. I had once imagined what would happen when monsters, who were born strong, took the time to train in martial arts. However, that wasn't the case for the Lizard Knight. In fact, he fell below my expectations. I could tell from the fact that he had not taken even the most basic stance. It was likely the result of easy growth from his natural-born strength. How foolish. He'll show you what a true spearman is. I held my spear up and took my stance. Pika, can you go inside? I like the way you asked. At the same time Pika nodded her head looking pleased, I activated spirit aura. She was sucked into my spear in an instant, and my orc lord's glaive began to flicker with sparks. You worked hard too. I'll let you rest soon. 
You, you're a spearman. Great. Yes, it's great. Great indeed. I was father's one and only disciple. No matter how busy I was as a dungeon explorer, as father's son, I often had friendly matches with rising stars in Korean martial arts. Father ran a dojang that was in name only, and one of the only times we actually used it was when we held friendly competitions. I didn't know anything about the validity of father's claims as being undefeated or strongest on earth. However, I knew that I had never lost in a formal match. Hap. When I charged at the lizard knight, he opened his vertically slit pupils wide and thrust out with his spear fiercely. However, the spear Ellos described as swift was lackluster, almost like the swing of a baby. I easily dodged his attack and stabbed the center of his armor. Kook. For a human, you aren't so bad. This is the fifth time I've heard that since I came to the dungeon, lizard man. Even as I retorted, I continued to attack. Repeatedly stabbing his armor with my spear, I made sure that the shock damaged him. Realizing what situation he was in, the lizard knight tried to step aside, but I followed his movements tightly and continued to attack. Although I knew my attacks would not pierce his skin, I knew Pika's lightning was effective. Electric sparks flickered on his armor, slowly breaking it. Kook. Human, you were an elementalist. You tricked me. I said I was a spearman, I never said I wasn't an elementalist. Kuhop. He let out a rough shout as it swung forward with his spear. Of course, that was within my expectations. I ducked in a hurry, and ran forward into him. At the same time, my spear was shining out with white light. Kook. Parts of his armor broke off and flew into the air. The lizard knight himself also flew back and hit the wall. When I was about to run after him, he seemingly ignored the shock from hitting the wall as he stood tall and spit out blood. At least he knew how to look cool. Kukuku, not bad. To think you could drive me into a corner like this. Stop blabbering and come. It'll show you my strength. Kook, what is this loud noise? Good question. As I approached him, I shouted. Dark thunder explosion. Kook. Black lightning shot out from my body and struck the lizard knight. Although it tried to jump back in surprise, having taken the initial hit, it could no longer dodge the attack. Although I did not think it would die with just this, I shouted out in hopes that it would. Immediately afterwards, countless bolts of lightning shot out from my body enough to block out my vision. Even with Floor Master's sturdiness, it seemed impossible to endure an attack of such scale as the Lizard Knight screamed out in pain. Quiak. W what's this? It's my skill. Eat up. Even though I had never lost a formal match, this was the dungeon. It was natural to fight the explorer's way. Dark Thunder Explosion was truly powerful. Perhaps it was because of the 50% boost from Orc Lord's Warcry, but when the Lizard Knight emerged after being swept by the Flood of Lightning, its armor was almost entirely worn out. In addition, I could see blood spurting out from parts of its body. Kook, human. I won't forgive you. Eh. He's already using it. The Lizard Knight raised his spear up high and struck down. It was the earthquake attack. What followed would be dragon skin. Ellos said I just had to endure for five minutes. You're wrong, Ellos. Tempest. I shot out Tempest, aiming at its spear. Almost in an anticlimactic way, Tempest forced Lizard Knight to drop his spear. In an instant, the Lizard Knight made a panicked expression. This was a chance. A chance to beat it to death. I did not need to use any skills. While he stood blankly in place, I stabbed forward with my lightning-clad spear. First, I destroyed the armor that barely hung on his body. Then, before he could snap out of his daze, I crushed his knees and his right arm. As I swung my spear at his left arm, he cried out in pain and used dragon skin, blocking my attack. However, it was too late. Three of his four limbs were no longer in a state to fight. See, Ellos, it's as I thought. If he knew the lizard knight would use dragon skin after the earthquake attack, why would he just leave it to use it freely? I knew from my own experience with using skills that they had clear openings. As such, before I used any of my skills, 
I made sure to put myself in the super armor state with Orc Lord's war cry, or to immobilize the enemies with vengeful spirits wail, or to be at a good distance away from the enemies. If I could not do any of the above, I made sure to mix in my skill with my normal attacks as well as possible to ensure I was safe from counterattacks. Of course, even with all that, I could not say I was 100% safe. That was the nature of skills. Although the skills floor masters used were extremely powerful, they had their moment of weakness. And as long as there was even a single weakness, I could exploit it. In truth, it was shocking that someone like Ellos failed to see through it. It seemed I needed to tell him about it later. Kook, you. I will kill you. Try attacking me. After activating Dragon Skin, the Lizard Knight flashed his crooked teeth and provoked me. With a snort, I picked up its spear and threw it far away. Then, I deactivated Spirit Aura and threw my spear down. Human. I'm a martial artist. I don't just know spearmanship. Of course, I didn't tell it that I learned martial arts because I liked the feeling of beating people up with my bare hands. Chapter, 34 there was a technique developed around the principle of using an attacker's energy against him. It was jujitsu. Spearmanship was a martial art that hurt the opponent regardless of whether the spearhead had a blade or not. As such, my family also passed down a jujitsu technique to neutralize opponents without hurting them. In truth, it was a modified version of Japanese judo, and thus shared many similarities. Although it also took from several other close quarter martial arts, Judo was the main martial art. Of course, even though jujitsu could neutralize opponents without hurting them, that was on top of gymnastic mats. If someone inexperienced received a hip or shoulder throw on concrete, his back and spine would undoubtedly break along with the rest of his life. Thankfully, I didn't need to worry about that now. Hap. Humph, what are you trying to do by grabbing me? Don't tell me, you're trying to throw me. You thought I couldn't. If you thought I couldn't pick you up with nine levels of mid-rank martial arts, you're mistaken. I grabbed the arm he tried to strike out with and proceeded to do a hip throw. With his awful stance, I did not need to work hard to ruin his balance. The only slightly hard part came from the fact that he was much taller than me. When his heavy body hit the ground, it was as if a meteorite had struck and a thundering roar boomed out. Seeing the ground crack, I realized this guy had potential as a weapon. Maybe I should carry him around instead of my spear. Kook. Your head's going to ring. Especially with that hard head of yours. Dragon skin was most likely a skill that maximized the outer skin's defense. However, that did not mean it protected the internal organs. Rather, if enough force struck the hard outer layer, the impact would travel inside and hurt the internal system. It was the same concept as when one got hit by a bullet while wearing a bulletproof vest. The bullet wouldn't penetrate the skin, but the force from it would break one's ribs. By picking him up and throwing him down on the ground, I essentially pitted the lizard knight and the hard ground against each other. Although I would have preferred to continue with a joint lock, I knew it wouldn't work on the lizard knight whose entirely body has been hardened by dragon skin. If he wanted to continue lying on ground, I could only leave him be. Of course, being the idiot that he was, the lizard knight got up and sent a kick toward me. Unwavering courage, undying vigor. I didn't hate him for that. In fact, I liked it. Hook kick. Kohuk. Shoulder throw. Quayak. For the entire five minutes when his body was hardened, the lizard knight became a testing object for my jujitsu techniques. Every time he fell, he got up, without knowing to stop. Eventually, after taking a two-handed grip shoulder throw, he coughed out black blood and collapsed. Cock. At the same time, his reddened skin turned back to its normal color. It seemed that dragon skin had run out. I once again picked up my spear. His once fierce gaze was now blankly chasing the tip of my spear. It seemed the effect of dragon skin ending overlapped with the effect of the intense date he had with the ground. It'll show you what real spearmanship looks like. I was truly too kind. The skill heroic strike was so fast that no enemy could see through how it worked. As such, I did not use the skill, but manually concentrated my bodice energy and mana on the tip of my spear. 
With this, I was positive that even this idiot could see real spearmanship. Real spearmanship wasn't some cheat like hitting the ground with large amount of mana and strength. T that's. Well, you're going to die soon anyways. With glaring eyes, I shot my spear toward his face. With a rather unpleasant sound, the light in his eyes dimmed. Like Loretta said, the Lizard Knight really was easier than the Dark Ratman. Though, my Dark Thunder explosion did play a big part. Immediately afterwards. Amazing. You are the first in first dungeon's history to succeed in soloing the Lizard Knight on the first try. The dungeon will remember you as a great explorer. You obtained two skill points as a reward. You obtained a special mansion free purchase ticket. Remaining skill points, 6. You obtained the title, Lizard Knight Master. All stats increase by 2. This effect will apply even if the title is not equipped. You defeated the Lizard Knight alone. You obtained a special reward, Lizard Knight's Scale Armor. You obtained 10,000 gold. You received the only reward left hidden for the first explorer. Congratulations. Your luck stat increases by 1. Secret. Divine Speed Magic Book. Looking over the reward from defeating the Lizard Knight, I found it hard to calm myself. First. So this was the first that Loretta was referring to. Two skill points. It was the amount equivalent to creating two skills or completing two quests. There was also the special mansion free purchase ticket, not that I knew what it was. The title was also different. Lizard Knight Master. It gave two points to all stats instead of one. If I had defeated the Orc Lord, Wraith Queen, and Dark Ratman in the same way, then. No, let's not think about meaningless things. I needed to focus on now and the future. I would have received the gold and the scale armor regardless, so what interested me next was what came after. The only reward left hidden, Divine Speed Magic Book. Just the word secret made it seem extraordinary. Just when I was about to learn it, a fanfare rang out. You became level 21. You obtained the qualification to climb to the 21st floor. You became silver rank 9. You are no longer an apprentice explorer, but an official explorer. You can appoint one person as a first dungeon explorer. This is a right given only to bronze rank explorers who explored the dungeon for 20 years, or to explorers who have been promoted to the silver rank. When you become a gold rank explorer, you can appoint an additional person as a dungeon explorer. As a silver rank explorer, you obtain the right to enter event dungeons. You can enter event dungeons by hunting monsters or finding hidden areas while exploring. You obtain the right to participate in event raids. Event raids are created when specific event dungeons are cleared, or when the necessary conditions are met. The event raid's creator becomes the host and can invite others to participate. One can join a raid by accepting the host's invite. One's levels or qualifications may prevent him or her from participating, and the host maintains the right to enter and exit raids. You can buy a residence in the dungeon by going to the dungeon's residential area. The residences of explorers from various worlds are located here, and support and recreational facilities exist to ensure explorers can make the best use of their time of leisure. Explorers can privately meet with other explorers, and a market exists where various foods are sold. However, to enter the residential area, one must use a residential area entrance ticket, dropped by monsters above the 21st floor. Other dungeons explorers cannot enter the first dungeon residential area. Eh. I was an apprentice until now. I suddenly felt irritated. So all this time when I was gloating in self-satisfaction, it was like a baby being proud after learning how to walk. The pride I felt from being the first to defeat the lizard knight suddenly shrunk. No, this is where it begins. Let's not be so hard on myself. I've only been a dungeon explorer for five years. Not to mention, I spent three years of that period stuck on the fifth floor unwillingly. I was doing well. I can continue to do well. It's not like I didn't know how much I had left to travel. There was no need to be down. I just had to keep running and keep getting stronger. More so than the superheroes I dreamed of being when I was young. Perhaps because I was now an official explorer, 
I found out many things about the dungeon that I did not know before. The first was the event dungeon. I already knew about it since I had heard from Ellos. I could explore a unique dungeon using an event dungeon entrance ticket that monsters dropped with an extremely low chance. And of course, I could expect a hefty reward when it was cleared. There was also the event raid, which happened at a fixed rate when an event dungeon was cleared. A minimum of 50 explorers could gather to fight a boss monster incomparable to the floor masters. Just thinking about it made my heart beat. I wanted to quickly participate in an event raid. Of course, not that anyone would include me with my low level. This was the first time I had heard about the residential area. I never expected something like that to exist in the dungeon either. It seemed I could just stay there without ever going back to my own world. Although, I would never do so as a college student and you as older brother. The residential area also seemed like the place where I could use the special mansion free purchase ticket. Special mansion. I was curious, but I had no way of going there as of yet. In summary, there were four benefits I gained from becoming an official explorer. 1. Authority to appoint one person to be a first dungeon explorer. 2. Ability to find and join event dungeons. 3. Ability to participate in event raids. 4. Right to enter the residential area. After I organized the info, it did not seem so complicated anymore. With that, I finally checked the divine speed skill I received. You learned the active skill, divine speed. By using 20% of your mana, you can quintuple your speed for zero. 5 seconds. The skill duration and speed increase goes up with increased skill levels, and the required mana decreases with increased skill levels. Hugh. I let out a deep breathe. I focused on the fact that this skill was a growth type skill. Although it only increased my speed for zero. 5 seconds for using 20% of my mana, 400% speed increase was amazing. Since every aspect of the skill increased with increased skill level, I eagerly anticipated its growth. Master? No, Pika. It was thanks to you that I could beat the floor master. Thanks. Who, ho ho. Now you realize my true worth. Busy looking over all the information, I randomly replied to Pika's murmur. Thankfully, she seemed extremely satisfied with whatever I said as she crossed her arms and puffed out her chest. Seeing her cute reaction, I couldn't help but pat her on the head, and ended up being scolded again. Chapter, 35 College was boring. It wasn't that different from high school. I had no expectations in the first place. I was a dungeon explorer. My stage was the dungeon, not the school. However, as member of society and citizen of Korea, I had to be in a social position appropriate for my age. Even with my above 20 intelligence, I couldn't quite understand these things. Mother knew that I was a dungeon explorer just like father, and thus could make just as much money as him. Even so, she insisted on me attending college because I was at that age. This way of thinking seemed fake. It was doing something for appearance's sake. Perhaps, this was what was keeping society afloat, especially now when the world flipped upside down with the appearance of monsters and the awakened. As I was having a rare moment of serious contemplation, Su Yiun gobbled down fries. I can really eat it all. Really? Yeah, you can. A angel I love you. Yeah, I don't. Her large size love was only worth 6,501. I rejected her hot and cheap love and blankly stared at her eating fries. Today was Thursday. Classes ended at 5.30. It was also the day when my class overlapped with Su Yiun's. Midterms were coming up, but Su Yiun persuaded me to go out for fries and beer. Her aim was clearly fries rather than beer, but I didn't particularly reject her offer. What are you thinking about, Shin? Nothing. Su Yiun had a monster phobia. It was why she shook so uncontrollably and froze when we met that pigeon. Monsters. Surprisingly, People living in the 21st century found it hard to understand these strange creatures who possessed unusual sizes, appearances, and abilities. Not only did people feel natural aversion towards them, 
but they also froze in front of these creatures who possessed incomprehensible strength. Monster phobia emerged as a new word to describe people like them. In truth, most people who did not awaken to an ability possessed some degree of monster phobia. However, Su Yiun was an ability user. Although she was found out by me immediately, her stealth ability was one of the best abilities to survive a monster encounter. I suspected that there was a good reason why she was so afraid of monsters. Although I was curious, I didn't really try to find out. I didn't want to be involved, though if she asked for help, I would oblige to a certain degree. I wondered if the fact that I was thinking all this meant I considered her to be a good friend, but I soon threw that thought in the trash can. Damn, I really should have found someone else to be friends with. All those times I spent in the dungeon and not attending to my social life was coming back to bite me. As I was thinking these rather useless things, it happened completely out of the blue. A dungeon explorer from Earth conquered the 50th floor and became a gold rank dungeon explorer. A dungeon explorer communication channel will now open on Earth. Those who wish to talk may do so by putting their left hand on their mouth. When you don't want to hear from the communication channel, you can just say channel off. Earth's dungeon explorers, you heard that right. I cleared the dungeon's 50th floor. Can you all hear me? I shot up from my seat. Although Su Yiyun stared at me with strange eyes, I wasn't in a state of mind to pay attention to her. I first took out my cell phone and texted my father, don't say anything. I then sat back down, trying to act calm. Meanwhile, I could hear voices whispering in my ear. My name is Waya Eleni Mastaford, an SS rank ability user and a dungeon explorer of the second dungeon. My Korean name is Yi Waya. I have British citizenship so keep that in mind. I clicked my tongue. An SS rank ability user was a dungeon explorer. Both father and I knew other dungeon explorers could have awakened too, but we didn't expect the ability to be an SS rank ability. She said her name was Yi Waya. She was that fire girl from TV. A wall I felt I could jump over someday suddenly felt a few hundred times, a few thousand kilometers higher. Biting down on my lips, I paid attention to her words. You all should know that there are only five dungeon explorers on Earth. I want to keep it like that for a while. That is, I don't want any new dungeon explorers to emerge. After all, we can't just let anyone become a dungeon explorer. Her silvery voice continued to ring out like a bell. We have to come together. Aren't we a bit special to be considered the same as other ability users? When we gather, we'll have synergistic effects. Of course, since I have an SS rank ability and became the first on earth to conquer the 50th floor, I would be the leader. I want to create an organization of dungeon explorers, and I want you all to be in it. Interesting plan, Masterford. It was the deep voice of a man. It was not father's voice, so it had to be a dungeon explorer I didn't know. I closely listened to his voice. I admit you're the strongest among us. But that doesn't mean we should be under your command. I'm not saying he'll command you however I wish. It's just that if we come together, the leader position should belong to the strongest one. Ha! Your offer isn't very tempting nor convincing. Even without coming together, Dungeon explorers have the potential to command over other ability users. We can be stronger if we're together. We'll have a stronger voice as well. Plus, I'm not saying we should come together for a monetary reason. What about the others? You should know about it, right? What happened to other worlds with access to the dungeon? I did. A demon lord was rampaging in the Luka continent, and invaders appeared on the Edia's continent. The residents of their continents were truly fighting to determine their fates. Our world two monsters began to appear. Shin. Shu. Su Yiyun who was worrying about me blanking out completely. I waved my hand to shush her, and focused on the communication channel. This time, I heard another voice chime in. It sounded like a young girl's. I am Su Samayar Violet Minami. So is Mastaford SSI-1 saying that if we gather, we can defeat all the monsters in the world? Oh, you're a half too. But yes. We can grow until we reach the end. When we come together, no country or institution can ignore or take advantage of us. 
Plus, as long as we have the power to appoint dungeon explorers, we can use that power to expand our organization. A point. We can appoint other dungeon explorers. It seems Little Miss here is still an apprentice. The man spoke with a disappointed voice. TSK, that girl. I knew it from when she revealed her name, but she wasn't so bright. She should have pretended to know. You'll become silver rank when you break through floor 20, Samir. Then you're given the right to appoint one dungeon explorer. When you become gold rank, you can appoint another. Ah, uh, I see. I'm still on the 18th floor. It's only been two years since I came to the dungeon. 18 floors in two years. Well, I didn't know which dungeon she was in. If I had mana, I could have done it too no, don't mind it. Calm down, calm down. Hoo-hoo, <laughs> Samire. You shouldn't give out your information so freely. Uni's worried. It seems Mastiford favored how pure and innocent the girl was. But hey, you revealed that you were from the second dungeon too. Why don't you worry about yourself? Minami laughed at her and answered. Aren't we all comrades? I don't think we need to hide ourselves. This girl. She's telling me and father to come out, right? You level 18. Father's weak to these things. You're right, young lady. Sorry for staying silent. I just wanted to listen in on the beautiful voices for a bit. As expected, father appeared with some nonsense drivel. Beautiful voice my ass. Classic music makes you fall asleep in less than five seconds. Then there's only one left. Don't tell me you're going to stay silent. It was the deep-voiced man. I thought for a while, then came to a decision. Putting my left hand on my mouth, I talked. I didn't really want to cut in on your conversation. An organization of dungeon explorers. It sounds interesting and will probably be effective. I just don't see how it would be different from Guardian or Freedom Wing. It will be different. Dungeon explorers will have their say. The organization's goal will be to find the underlying reason why the monsters appeared and solve it. Mastiford SSI, all organizations start out with righteous causes. Guardian is an example, and the result is as you see. How cheeky. It seemed Mastiford wasn't happy with being told off by me, as a hint of anger flashed in her voice. I could almost feel the heat in my ears. To be honest, I'm quite interested in the organization you're planning to make and its goal. I agree that if we don't take care of this monster crisis, our world might be in danger like the other worlds. Then why did you say what you just said? I'll be honest. I'm weaker than you, but I'm not the type of person to crawl between someone's legs. So we can talk again when I become stronger than you. I'll happily join your organization, though I'll be the boss then. I won't need to worry about the organization losing its focus either. PFT. Now that's a man. But he'll be the one to be the boss, so Kuham, boy. The deep-voiced man snorted while father made a childish comment. Not to mention, he almost revealed that we were father and son. Mastiford replied. PFT, you. You want to surpass me? A second dungeon's gold rank explorer. An SS rank ability user. Hmm, um, so that's the first thing you say. If you were really worried about the world, that wouldn't be the first thing on your mind. It wouldn't matter who the boss is, right? Of course, I knew I was just picking apart her words. I was digging into her hubris and making her lose her train of thought. Mastiford was baited in perfectly. But it's obvious that I would become the leader as the strongest. Aren't you the one overestimating yourself? How are you going to surpass me? Plus, I'm really thinking about the future of us dungeon explorers. No, I agree with the boy, Mastiford. I can see clearly just how this organization of yours is going to run. Good luck, but I'm out. I'm, I'm still weaker than the young lady too. I also don't want to work under someone. Best of luck. Did my words lead to this result? No, father probably wouldn't have joined anyways, but him leaving with the deep-voiced man leaving made Mastiford look like a fool. Nice assist, father. W what's with everyone? I think Uni has a point. She's the strongest one right now, 
and she's also the one who brought up the idea of making an organization. It's not about that, little miss. It's just that Mastaford isn't trustworthy. And not trustworthy. You haven't even met me. The young girl was just as innocent as her name suggested too. She didn't know how to doubt someone. Of course, I wasn't so innocent to trust someone asking me to join her organization. I don't know about Miss Minami, but I have a strong pride, so I can't work under someone like her. In truth, I didn't think Mastaford had any ill intentions. She was quick to show that she favored Minami and revealed information about her that she did not need to. She was probably as hot-blooded and honest as her ability, Flames. However, she had strong self-esteem and wanted to be above others. I had no plans to work under someone like that. Even if I had something to gain, it would only bring more pain than comfort. I was no pushover. Until I at least held the same position as her, I had no intention to talk to her. Are you saying you'll ignore a global crisis just because of your pride? Global crisis, you say. Then he'll ask you a question, Miss Minami. What can we do together? Can we not do anything when we're apart? T that's but being together will be more. I think I'm done here. Masterford SSI, I assume you're done as well. Humph. I wouldn't accept a narrow-minded person like you anyways. Samayar, let's just talk between the two of us. Why yes, Uni. Girls were truly mysterious. They could talk so friendly within minutes of meeting each other. As I was about to shout channel off with such prejudiced thoughts, the deep-voiced man cut in. I'm Edward Walker, also British and 26 years old. Boy, may I know your name? British. You said you're British. Then how can you say that to me? Two of the five explorers were British. Of the seven known SS rank ability users, there was another British ability user besides Mastaford. It wasn't like Britain had a huge population, so how did this happen? Well, it was most likely just a coincidence. That said, it seemed Britain would have stronger authority than other countries. It was mildly infuriating. Although I wasn't exactly a patriotic person, I knew it wasn't a good thing for one country to possess so many powerful ability users. No, with me and father around, Korea was the strongest country in the world. After hearing Edward Walker introduce himself, I contemplated whether to reveal my name or not. Then, I came to a decision. Im Yun Wa Woo. I'm Korean and 23 years old. I lied. Why you? You're Korean. I should have known from the irritating way you talked. You do something about your government and media. They keep insisting that I'm a Korean ability user. I'm British. A proud British noble. Eh, a noble in this day and age sorry Mastaford SSI, but I didn't even know you were a half until today. Plus, I couldn't give a crap whether you're from Korea, Britain, or Atlantis. Atlantis is fictional. Goodbye, fictional lady. I won't remember you. Yuga. I'm um, Yun Wa Woo. I'll remember that name. It seems you're worth watching over. Feel free. With that, I turned off the communication channel. I received a text from father immediately afterwards. When did you plaster your tongue with oil three, son? It's none of your business. Well, maybe it was. You must be stressed from all those tests coming up. Want me to take you to a doctor? You mind your business, you potato demon. Why was no one around me normal? 1. Korean equivalent of the Japan CC, San. 2. Both violet and samire refer to violet flowers which means innocence. 3. Equivalent to sugar-coated tongues. Chapter, 36. I always wondered why so many people knew my crown prince nickname. When Mastaford broke through the 50th floor and the communication channel among dungeon explorers was created on Earth, I finally understood why. It all began on the 5th floor. In the three years that I stayed hunting the Orc Lord, word quickly spread that there was someone helping others pass through the 5th floor easily. That was when I got the nickname, Crown Prince. The people that passed the fifth floor with my help must have talked about me on their continent's dungeon explorer communication channels. And just like that, 
people were able to recognize me on the tenth floor. Really, that's a violation of my privacy. Confirming that my party had been filled up to the max the moment I created it, I murmured in a tired voice. Soon, nine explorers began to appear in front of me. Three women and six men. Two of the women were priestesses and one was an archer. Two of the men held shields and swords, one wore a magician's robe, then there was an archer, a priest, and a young man with a claymore on his back who looked to be my age. It really is Crown Prince Nim. Kaya, it's Crown Prince Nim. He's just as handsome as the rumors say. He looks soft, I don't see how he's so strong. I can hear you guys, you know. As I looked at them with a dumbfounded expression, the magician came up and talked to me. I haven't heard that Crown Prince Nim advanced to the twentieth floor. Are we your first party? It's an honor. I didn't refuse his hand shake. He was wearing a smile that made people feel good. It might just be my subjective judgment, but dungeon explorers were generally good people. There were some like Paludia or that party leader from the Dark Rat Man raid who were narrow-minded, but even they weren't evil or heinous. I thought about why and soon came to an answer. The first generation of the first dungeon's dungeon explorers were specifically chosen, and those that followed were chosen by these pioneers. As such, they had upright personalities. Of course, I did not mean that evil people could not be talented enough to be chosen as a pioneer, nor would all followers chosen by the pioneers be kind. But I remembered Loretta saying that dungeon explorers did not come to the dungeon just because they were talented or strong. In other words, there were other reasons they were chosen. I suspected that one's character was one of them. As I said before, I was not certain that there were no heinous explorers. However, I had yet to meet one. I was certain that if they existed, they were few in number. Are you that crown prince? As I was greeting the other party members, the man with the claymore approached me and asked. He had a lion-like hairstyle and a scraggly beard. He had a sense of wildness that drew people in. I answered. Yes, I am. People have been calling me that for some time. Although I don't really like it, I can't do much about it. Ichem. To be honest, I don't understand why your name is so popular among other explorers but I know it's foolish to judge a book by its cover, so it'll make my judgment after the raid. His way of talking was strange, but since I didn't feel any malicious intent, I decided not to care too much about it. Then, as the party leader, I began to tell them my strategy, though I was ashamed to even call it that. All right, hey race the plan. First, we'll separate our attack team into two. Two. Yep. One will be me, and the other will be all the other damage dealers with the Claymore Warrior Nim as the center. Aren't you a being a bit too self-confident? The Claymore Warrior looked at me with worrying eyes. Mm, it was a reasonable response. However, the magician stepped in to answer him. You may not know it Warrior Nim, but Crown Prince Nim is extremely famous among lower-level explorers. He overwhelmingly crushed the fifth, 10th, and 15th floor masters and allowed countless number of explorers to advance. But there's no guarantee that the same will happen on the 20th floor. It was yet another reasonable response. I began to like the Claymore Warrior. However, the magician seemed to be at a loss for words, so I stepped in and talked to the Claymore Warrior. You're right your name. Ren, you can call me Ren. Ren. At the very least, my method will work on the twentieth floor. I've already confirmed it. But didn't you say this was your first time fighting the twentieth floor master? I said it was my first party for the twentieth floor master. Hmm. Isn't that the same thing? I'm not quite understanding what you. Ren suddenly seemed thunderstruck as he opened his eyes widely. It was the same for others around me. With a teasing smile, I asked. Are you good now? Why you, is that true? You fought against the floor master alone and won. Impossible. Didn't Crown Prince Nim always fight against floor masters in parties? Naturally, when I fight the floor masters alone, no one would be around to see it. See Crown Prince. Crazy. Could he be telling the truth? What would Crown Prince gain from lying? He's already famous through all the worlds. We can just confirm it. 
Regardless, it's true that Crown Prince Nim is strong. I heard rumors that Crown Prince was collecting Floor Master's equipment sets. So it was true. See could that be the full Dark Ratman set? No way, I didn't think it was possible. As the party members murmured among themselves, Run looked at me with sparkling eyes and asked. Can you spar with me once? If you can wait until the raid ends, then sure. All right, it's a promise. Let's hurry up and finish this then. When I gladly nodded my head, Ren suddenly became upbeat and urged the other party members on, and I had to stop him with a bitter smile. We only decided on the attack teams. The next is the support team. We have two archers, right? You guys make sure that the lizard knight doesn't attack the priest and priestesses. When I give the signal, focus on attacking the lizard knight, especially in places like his eyes. Got it, Crown Prince Nim. Understood. The two archers seemed to have accepted my orders without any objection. What I said was just an embellished version of stand around and attack when we're pummeling him. It seemed saying it like this made them think they were playing important roles. Magician Nim, can you use debuff type magic? Iminun. Unfortunately, I can't. I've only learned amplification magic and ice element magic. Amplification. I can amplify someone's ability by about 50% for 3 seconds. It's a pretty rare skill. If the timing is right, it can show great results. That's great. It wasn't just flattery. Amplification truly did sound like a good skill. Although it had a short time period of 3 seconds, that was something I could overcome with my ability. I requested that he use it on me or other damage dealers when I gave the signal, and he easily accepted it. I trust that the healers know what to do. I can use buffs. I can cast shields and recovery spells. Same. Perfect. I'll leave it to you then. Let's go. Confirming that all party members were ready, I opened the door boldly. The lizard knight was in the same position as he was yesterday, waiting for us to come in. It was slightly irritating. Challengers. So many of them, too. He'll be the first to go. The second team can go behind him and just deal as much damage as possible. He'll block all his attacks. Just be careful of his tail. When I fought the Lizard Knight last time, he did not use his tail attack. I didn't know why. Did he think he didn't need to against one man? Or was it his pride as a spearman? My Dark Thunder explosion could have also forced him to skip the tail attack phase and go straight to the earthquake attack phase. No matter what the answer was, it did not matter. The only disappointing part was that I could have killed him quicker if he used his tail since he would have been more open to my attacks. Good luck, Crown Prince Nim. May the blessing of the goddess be with you. Bless. You received a blessing. Your resistance to physical attack increases. Your physical and magical attack power increases. Pika, I'll leave it to you. Got it. Following Bless, Pika silently went into my weapon. There were ways to use Pika other than Spirit Aura, but Spirit Aura was the most efficient when fighting in close range. The party members, who didn't know about Pika, were startled, but I ignored them and charged toward the Lizard Knight. Kawa. Your breath stinks. The moment Lizard Knight's long spear shot toward me, I slid on the ground and shot my spear up from underneath. Although he was wearing a full body armor, it was not attached to his body. From underneath, I could easily see the gap between his armor and skin. It was one of the pieces of information I picked up from my last fight with him. You whack. It's going to tingle. Tempest. Quiak. Oh, interesting. The lizard knight floated in air for a second. While I stopped my sliding and got up, the lizard knight screamed out in pain without being able to hold himself steady. Meanwhile, the second attack team safely got behind him. What did we just see? Crown Prince Nim charged in, and it seemed like he was about to get hit by the Lizard Knight spear. Before we noticed it, the Lizard Knight was screaming in pain mid-flight. Ignoring the useless people wearing their spectator goggles, I continued to attack the Lizard Knight. You really are weak to pain. How did you manage to become a floor master? You used provoke. 
The enemy's focus falls on you. Quiak. It'll kill you, human. I've heard that line over a thousand times, and here I am. I did die a few times, but they didn't count since I only got kicked out of the dungeon. Chapter, 37 The lizard knight roared and thrust his spear toward me. Before his spear could touch my body, I parried it with my glaive. His spear shot up into the air, and as he was unable to withstand my strength, it separated from his grip. I used my glaive and quickly pushed it away. All of this takes some time to describe, but actually happened in the space of a second. Although I wasn't weak, I was no match for the lizard knight in a direct exchange of strength. I had to rely on my techniques. No way, the floor master let go of his weapon. I saw it too, so stop shaking me by my neck. I took my stance and pulled my spear back. The lizard knight let out a rage-filled roar and swung his tail. It was exactly at the same time when the second attack team made their move. Whoa, dodge his tail first. Humph, lion strike. While the other damage dealers were running back, Ren shouted out and swung his claymore down at the lizard knight's tail. Since he said lion strike, it was likely a skill. His claymore, dyed gold, collided with the tail with a boom. Along with the explosive sound, I heard the lizard knight scream. I did not wait to find out what happened. I was certain Ren had crushed him. Enun, amplify me. Got it. Amplification. The moment Enun used amplification, I felt an instant surge of strength. I could certainly feel the amplification. It felt like the mana around me was flooding toward me. At the same time, I instinctively felt that this state would not last long. Everyone get back. Heroic strike, divine speed. This was my first time using the divine speed skill, which quintupled my speed for zero. Five seconds. With faster speed, it was obvious that the attack power would increase. Although I could also use it to dodge attacks, the Lizard Knight's attacks weren't so fast that I needed to use Divine Speed to dodge them. Divine Speed was truly powerful. When I thrust out with my spear as I normally did, I heard the sound of my spear cutting wind as it entered the Lizard Knight's stomach. White light enveloped my glaive as it flickered with lightning from Spirit Aura. With the incredible boost from divine speed on top of everything else, my spear was no different from Zeus' lightning. Quack. The lizard knight's armor, as well as the scales protecting him, broke in an instant. With a shrill cry, the lizard knight coughed out a mouthful of blood. It seemed the amplification did its job. Of course, I wasn't doing so well either. Heroic strike normally had a strong recoil. With the momentum from divine speed added, my arm throbbed like it was going to be ripped off. Is Ren okay? He's alive. I'm healing him at the moment. Kook. Im. Fine. It seemed he received a huge recoil from his attack. As I was worrying about Ren, the lizard knight threw away his broken armor and became bare-skinned. It seemed that's when he realized he did not have his spear as he rushed to where the spear went flying. Even I had no plans to block his charge head on. As such, I stepped back and shouted to the archers. Archers, attack. To stop the lizard knight's movements, the two archers endlessly shot out their arrows. Meanwhile, the priest and priestesses managed to restore Ren to fighting condition. Spitting out some blood, Ren held up his claymore and asked, What happened to his tail? Ah, uh, it's dangling, half severed. Ah, uh, I see. I answered Ren as I watched the Lizard Knight happily picking up his spear. Although Ren seemed depressed that he was unable to completely sever the Lizard Knight's tail, I was surprised on the inside. It was extremely difficult to cut the limbs or tail of a floor master. Their bodies were built completely different from normal monsters. Rather than cutting their limbs, it was much more efficient to continuously attack their pressure points. However, Ren managed to crush a floor master's tail with a single use of a skill. It was a questionable attack from a warrior's point of view since he destroyed his body in the process, but that was why healers existed. In truth, although the way he used his strength seemed foolish, I had to at least acknowledge the force it carried. Frankly, he was stronger than the current me. As his claymore suggested, his class likely put great emphasis on his strength. 
As I was thinking about Ren, the lizard knight, who managed to retrieve his spear, raised it up high. I, of course, would not miss this opening. Just as I pulled my spear back slightly to use Tempest. Ren cut in with his stupidly large claymore. Lion upper. Unlike his large body suggested, he moved rather nimbly. Having approached the lizard knight, Ren swung his claymore from the bottom to the top toward the lizard knight's spear. It wasn't a bad approach. However, unless he had a technique to make use of the enemy's strength to maximize the counteractive force, it was better to just strike from top to bottom to mess up the enemy's breathing. Kyaha. Human. Die. Ugh, Yuwoa. It was just as I expected. Ren was unable to win against the downward force of the Lizard Knight Spear. His claymore was sent flying and the Lizard Knight Spear ended up hitting the ground like he wanted. Me. Because Ren made me miss my timing to use Tempest, I used Divine Speed to approach the Lizard Knight the moment his spear struck the ground. Cough. Yuwak. Kook, damn it. Party member Sherbets died. Party member Enun von Karbiat died. Party member Rodlin von Ionard died. Party member Diroin died. Damn, just a single earthquake attack had killed four party members. They were the three healers and the magician, Enun. It seemed all he did was use amplification once. At least the priest and priestesses healed Ren. Me. I had leapt forward with divine speed zero. Five second boost and was flying toward the lizard knight. Kook, hang on. Use your potions. Crown Prince Nim. I was going to take care of it even if you didn't call me. I was near the lizard knight before I knew it. At a spear's thrust distance away, I first attacked the lizard knight's eye. Although he tried to intercept me, I was faster. My spear hit its eye perfectly, causing blood to explode out. I first stunned the lizard knight from holding his spear up. In the instant when his body lost its tension, I once again made him lose his spear. After the earthquake ended, the lizard knight swung his half-severed tail at me with fury. I was waiting for this moment. Elemental Tempest. Who? Everyone gather up. Prince Nim is going to scold us otherwise. Hurry, hurry. We're going to be late. That looks delicious. Someone fry it up. There are no fire elementals here. I couldn't believe it. Even the process in which the elementals gathered was shortening. Seeing the usually lax elementals rush to my spear, I shot my spear directly at the cut on the lizard knight's tail. With the swooshing sound of air being cut, a storm ripped the lizard knight's tail apart. The tail got cut. Please, does that look like it got cut? It got shredded. As expected, a skill that used half of my MP was indescribably strong. Heroic Strike, Divine Speed, and Elemental Tempest. Thanks to these skills, my MP was completely drained. As a result, I felt nauseous and my head throbbed. Gulping down a lowest grade mana potion, I landed. As it only restored 100 mana, it only helped to slightly alleviate the symptoms. Lizard Knight was now using Dragon Skin. Kukuku, humans, you are strong, I admit. But that won't matter now. Yeah, the one I met yesterday said something similar. Kook, they'll finish him off. Ren the eager warrior said as he got up with his claymore. He was exactly the type of person who kept getting up after he was knocked down. However, if things were left to Ren, he would undoubtedly mess up like before. As such, I silently waved my hand at Ren. Just stand there and watch. But. Because you couldn't block his attack, four people lost a week of their time. I deactivated Spirit Aura. I put my glaive aside and charged toward the Lizard Knight barehanded. He had to be severely damaged from Heroic Strike, Lion Strike, Elemental Tempest, and the Archer's Focused Atta. Well maybe not that. In any case, his condition was obvious from his shaking legs. It was almost like he was begging for me to use my techniques. Hey race a two-handed grip shoulder throw. Yuwak. And no way. Sea Crown Prince picked up and threw the Lizard Knight. I can't stop myself. I'm falling in love with him. I must marry him now. But you're a guy. 
Before I noticed it, the damaged dealers from the second attack team had gotten up and were now spectating with popcorn in hand. However, as I was focused on the fight, I could not hear what they were murmuring about. I did not want to either. I threw the lizard knight over and over again without stop. Because I had no mana left, I knew my body wouldn't last the moment I missed a technique. I was in a more dangerous situation than yesterday. This was all Ren's fault. Human. A mere human. It happens, and sometimes you die before you know it. Human. What, lizard knight? This is the end. Floating drop. This was the power of level 9 midrank martial arts technique and body strengthened with mana. As I threw the two. 3M giant down on the ground, the lizard knight coughed out blood. Kook, human. Hero. That wasn't even heroic strike, you fool. In case it was still alive after spitting out a mouthful of blood, I made sure it was dead with my spear. He soon disappeared and we finally heard the system message we were all used to hearing. You defeated the floor master. Chapter, 38. 10,000 gold is distributed evenly among party members. You received 1667 gold. Rewards will be distributed in order of contribution. 1. Lizard Knight Silver Spear. 2. Middle Potion. 3. 1000 gold. 4. Midrank Mana Potion. 5. Scale Knife. 6. 1500 gold. Looking at the list of rewards, I became speechless. Could it get any worse? Although I got unlucky from time to time, today was too much. Was it because of Ren's stupid move in the middle? Because I was interested in what medicine the Lizard Knight would drop, I couldn't help but be disappointed. In the end, I grabbed the Lizard Knight's silver spear. I'd been meaning to replace my Orc Lord's glaive. I couldn't keep tormenting it. It was time to use a spear that matched my level. Silver spear was certainly a good spear. It was made out of some silver-colored metal and was very hard. Although it wasn't as long as the one Lizard Knight used, it was still about 3 meters long and had a very good thickness to it. The blade on the spearhead seemed long enough to be used for slashing, and the tip of especially sharp. I loved it. Whether in function or look, it satisfied me completely. Unlike with the Orc Lord's Glaive, the moment I held the Silver Spear, a message popped up. By equipping the Lizard Knight's Silver Spear, your strength and dexterity increase by two. The Lizard Knight Master title grants another three strength and dexterity. That's right. It was about time that weapons had effects like this. With a satisfied smile, I looked around at my party members. There wasn't a happy atmosphere like I expected. Usually, when I defeated the floor master, everyone was happy no matter how big of a loss we suffered. However, the party members seemed to be angry. They were also all glaring at Ren. People died because Ren Nim did unnecessary things. Your contribution points must have been cut too. Crown Prince Nim was doing perfectly fine on his own. Because of Ren Nim's charge, Crown Prince Nim had to cancel his skill. Ha, this is why you can't party with people from Pan and Continent. Sorry. It's all my fault. I have no excuse. Ah, uh, so that was it. I smirked. Dungeon explorers were people too. Most of them did nothing to contribute in the raid, and they must have felt bothered by it on the inside. It was a case of inferiority complex. In that situation, however, someone who was worse than them appeared, Ren. Although he was eager and passionate, his actions almost led to the party being wiped. These people just wanted to gain self-satisfaction by confirming that there was someone who was worse than them. They were telling themselves that they were better than that person. That they had more qualification. It was truly laughable. What really surprised me was Ren. Unlike the fiery temperament he showed in battle, he fully acknowledged his faults and was bowing his head in apology. Although it wasn't particularly commendable, most people in his place lashed out rather than apologize. He left a favorable impression on me. Since I also thought differently, I decided to cut in. Sorry. I should have told everyone about Lizard Knight's skill. 
because of my hubris that I could stop it easily, I forgot. It's my fault. I apologize. And no. Crown Prince Nim did fantastic given the circumstances. That's right. We could only beat the Lizard Knight thanks to Crown Prince Nim. Ren Nim, you realize Crown Prince Nim is trying to cover for your mistakes, right? Kook I apologize, your highness Crown Prince. No, I'm not a Crown Prince. Don't naturally treat me like royalty. Thanks to me, the party members that were scolding Ren calmed down and left with their rewards. Even though Ren made the great contribution of almost cutting the Lizard Knight's tail, because of a crucial mistake that led party members to their death, his final contribution was the lowest. As such, he held a middle potion and wore a melancholic expression. Middle potion I had only grabbed that thing once. Ren clenched the hand with the middle potion and murmured as he trembled. Damn it, whenever I enter a battle, I. You can think calmly in normal situations, but you become hot-headed in battle, right? Ren looked at me with blank eyes. You want to challenge even though you know the taste of losing. You want to surpass those stronger than you. Because you don't want to lose, you do your best, or even bluff. Even when you end up becoming a mess and feel self-loathing, you can't stop yourself from doing it again. T that's right. How did you know? That's simple. I was once like that. Answering him with that, I smiled at Ren. Excited, Ren jumped at me. H how can I fix it? That's even simpler. Do you want to fix it? Of course. In the pan and continents only hope. Whether it's for those that died or for Sir Labique who chose me to become the dungeon explorer rather than other talented young men, I have to get stronger. I see. I like your determination. I think I can be of help. I wanted one too, hee hee. With all the new abilities I.D. gathered, I wanted to organize them. Although fighting against monsters was nice, beating up I mean, sparring with someone strong was also good. I nodded my head in satisfaction and took out the silver spear I just got. All right, fight with me first. You'll find your answer then. Ooh. Thank you, thank you. Crown Prince really is different. Not really. You won't thank me for long. No, I will thank you from the bottom of my heart. You really want. Even as I murmured that, I smiled kindly. Just like that, I obtained a sturdy Sam by mean, sparring partner. I hate you. Ren, who was collapsed on the ground, blurted out with malice. He was still alive, surprisingly. Sipping on Loretta's fatigue recovery juice, I answered him. I told you, you won't thank me for long. I thought you'd really kill me. Without killing intent in your spear, how can you expect your enemy to bring out his all? I plugged a fatigue recovery juice in Ren's mouth as well. Ren began to immediately suck it down. Loretta, who was watching me blankly from the side, asked. Customer, you know you can't dispose corpses at my shop, right? He's not dead yet, don't worry. Cough. Ren coughed out the juice he was drinking. It was a joke but Ren seemed to have thought otherwise. I crouched down next to Ren. So. Do you feel better after the spar? Huh? You were attacking me with a do or die attitude just now, but you're not now. That's because I'm all out of energy. He was panting like he was about to die. However, his eyes were blazing even now. I liked it. He was just like me. So you're saying, once you get your energy back, you'll come at me again. That's right. I really can't do anything about my competitive instinct. Don't worry. ITLL get fixed soon. Give it a month. That's a rather specific number. That's how long it took for father to fix my bad habits. With a refreshing smile, I answered Ren as I reminisced about the old days. It was when I was 14 years old. I had just dominated the friendly match competition against other martial arts clans heirs and was feeling overly self-confident. I believed there was no one I couldn't defeat. It was also the time when I pestered father to quickly let me become a dungeon explorer. I still remembered it clearly. Father laughed, and staring into the sky, murmured, so it's that time for you too. That afternoon, I sparred with father. 
he beat me up into oblivion. Really. From head to toe, the only place where his wooden spear didn't hit were my testicles. Feeling spiteful, I challenged him again and again, like a moth to a flame. Father didn't go easy just because I was his son and really beat me up. He really was childish in that respect. That continued for a month. And during that one month, I learned not to charge at the enemy directly, but to take my time and analyze the opponent. I learned how to wait for an opening to strike, and learned that it was always better to go for a gap in defense than to fight head on. Apparently, people from my lineage always had a phase where our strength went over our heads. During this period, whoever our teacher was had to beat us to discipline us. Because the teachers thrashed us so much, we called it the thrashing phase. When I first heard father talk about the thrashing phase, I felt it made great sense. However, Loretta who was listening from the side seemed to disagree. Customer's father really is stupid. I didn't think there could be a stupider person than customer in the world. Like father like son. Ren, if you've recovered enough to spout nonsense, you should be ready to go for a second round. Ah, we're going on another lizard night raid in an hour too. Eh. Raid? How? Ren tilted his head and asked. I was about to ask why he was asking such a stupid question, but realized that Ren did not know about the battle vouchers. When I looked at Loretta, she answered Ren's question. Customer, do you wish to fight the lizard knight again? T there's a way to do that. Of course I do. Impanans Ren. If I don't get my revenge on the lizard knight, I will not be me anymore. I can only get stronger if I overcome him. How about it, Loretta? He seems to have the qualifications you were talking about. That's what I liked about him in the first place. His fiery nature that was unlike other dungeon explorers. Of course, if I didn't think he had talent, I would have just thought he was stupid. When I asked Loretta with a wink, Loretta flushed her cheeks and dodged my gaze. Eh. Did I do something wrong just now? Kekuham. Fine. Although he doesn't quite meet my standards, since cuz since Shin Nim is with him, he'll sell it. Sell? Sell what? Ren tilted his head and asked with a naive expression. Loretta beamed as she took out a handful of battle vouchers. Then, as usual, she set her sales line. The Floor Master Battle Voucher. Allowing you to overcome the limit of once per day fight and rechallenge the Floor Master. If you buy it now, you can get them for 4,000 gold each. Just 4,000 gold each, customer. You scammer. Chapter, 39. Ren bought the battle vouchers in bulk. He seemed to be the same type of person as me, as he preferred not to buy equipment or consumables. As a result, he had gathered quite a bit of gold. Even as he used all of it up because he met the wrong person, he did not seem to mind. A look of resolve could be seen on his face. I finally met someone who would put an effort for me. If I don't believe in you, I don't deserve to call myself Ren. Did Ren have to put in an exclamation mark every other sentence? He really was hot-headed. Kook. Take it, shopkeeper. In exchange, they'll take those vouchers. Yes, yes. Thank you, customer. Come again. The scene of Ren buying battle vouchers looked like exchanging money for chips at a casino. Luckily, with me around, he would always hit the jackpot. Loretta, I'm almost out of battle vouchers too. Can you give me thirty more? Yes, Shin Nim. Thirty, right? That will be seventy thousand gold total. Strange. For some reason, the discount rate was higher for me. I was thankful for it but unfortunately, Ren picked up on her words. Eh. Shopkeeper, isn't the number wrong? Thirty vouchers should be. Customer, it's seventy thousand gold. For Shin Nim, that is. Loretta exerted an intimidating aura with a smile. However, that wasn't enough to prevent stupid Ren. Then, shouldn't you give it to me for that price too? I gave you four thousand gold per voucher. Hugh. It seems customer isn't very knowledgeable about the floor shop yet. What do you mean? Shouldn't the price be the same? Loretta stared at Ren with her smile, then laughed. 
Her smile was so scary that I was afraid it would appear in my dreams. Shin Nim is a premium member, and premium members can buy items for a cheaper price. Do you understand? As expected of someone Shin Nim brought, you are dense. I'm mm. Premium. So that was it. No, there's no such thing. I've never heard of it before either. Wanting to make the two idiots stop talking, I quickly took out the gold. Here, 70,000 gold. As always, thank you, Loretta. Hurry up and go do your raid. Being thanked by Shin Nim gives me chills. Like the saying went, women's hearts were as fickle as the weather. After she happily sold battle vouchers for a cheap price, Loretta's mood seemed to have turned for the worse as she tried to chase me away with a flushed face. Dejected, I left the floor shop wondering if a day would come when Loretta and I would be totally unreserved around each other. Suddenly, Ren asked me a question. Are you dating the shopkeeper? It took me a moment to process what he said. After standing around as if I suffered from a lag, I barely managed to reply. What? No matter how I look at it, that was a lover's quarrel. Our conversation from just now. I suddenly thought of a possibility. Ren certainly had a masculine face and a healthy body. But. Ren, have you been single your entire life? H how did you know? I was right. I could tell because I was the same. Damn it, I didn't want to relate to him like this. You think any man and woman talking friendly are in a relationship, right? Hook. If you see a girl staring at you, you fix your hair and think about what to say when she starts walking toward you, right? I planned to continuously tease Ren as we walked to the boss room. But because I felt like I was tormenting myself, I stopped. Although I didn't tell Ren yet, only he and I would be fighting the boss. To completely crush his overly competitive spirit, just sparring with me wasn't enough. Plus, I had to take lesson fees as well. I couldn't work for free, could I? That's why. Lion strike. That idiot's doing it again. Shishik. Die, human. Ren who was in charge of the Lizard Knight's backside bravely lunged at Lizard Knight's tail flying toward him. I was like Sancho Panza watching Don Quixote tilting at windmills one. Tilting at windmills attacking imaginary enemies. With a wishful expression, I prayed for him to return alive. At the same time, I stabbed the Lizard Knight with my silver spear to prevent him from focusing on his tail. Quiak, human. Yeah, I'm a human. After the Lizard Knight sent Ren flying, he rushed toward me. I first threw him off with a light sidestep, and made him fall by making him trip on my spear. Then, I stabbed at his neck. Although my spear carried bountiful mana, it was only enough to break a few scales and damage him lightly. As expected of a floor master. His defense was nothing to scoff at. Quack. Whoa, don't suddenly get up. You almost scared the crap out of me. I quickly jumped back and dodged his counterattack. Whenever I saw an opening, I attacked him. This fast-paced switch between offense and defense continued until the Lizard Knight raised his spear to use his earthquake attack. This time, either because he received a bigger shock or because there were no healers to help him, Ren had not gotten up. As such, I was able to smoothly use Tempest to send the Lizard Knight's spear flying. If you lost your weapon, you need to attack me without it. Don't just stand around. No, wait, why am I lecturing you, not Ren? It was a piece of cake to toy with the Lizard Knight who had lost his spear. This time, I didn't even give him the opportunity to use Dragon Skin. Once when I defeated it alone and once when I defeated with party members. Using these two opportunities, I memorized the change in his stance when he was about to use Dragon Skin. Now, whenever I saw him getting into that stance, I delivered a critical blow to prevent him from using Dragon Skin. It was only later that I found out it had a technical term called skill cancelling. Ellos, who explained it to me, blabbered on about it being a legendary secret technique or whatever, but I had long stopped listening to him. Quiak. A mere human dares to attack this lizard knight. Kook. For a lizard, you sure know how to talk. After piercing his neck with heroic strike added with divine speed, I murmured leisurely. 
I called Ren who was sent flying after being unable stop himself from charging at the lizard knight's tail. It's over, so get up. Cool. I, I hit my head. At least you're tough. I was thinking I liked the feeling I was getting in my hand. Can you repeat that? Wow, look at the rewards. I blatantly ignored Ren's question and looked at the reward list with just two items. Then, I unconsciously grinned from ear to ear. The item I was waiting for had finally appeared. 1. Muscle Strengthening Elixir. 2. Lizard Knight's Iron Boots. In the second raid, where I brought in nine other people, I wondered why an elixir type item did not drop. Until now, no matter how badly the other people did, my achievements were enough to make elixir items drop. However, that wasn't the case for the second Lizard Knight raid. I wondered what I was missing. The answer was simple. I wasn't missing anything. In fact, I had too many. Too many of what you ask. People. It was people. With four people dying, there were only six of us left to get rewards. Even then, we had too many people to bring out a rare item. The solution was simple. I just had to lower the number even more. What caught my attention then was Ren. He had the guts to pounce on a floor master, and he had the strength to back it up. Of course, he was still a problematic explorer who was lacking in techniques. This time, my brain was uncharacteristically clever. I formed a plan where both Ren and I benefited. All right, Ren. It'll take the reward as promised. You you, I do have a net gain of 1000 gold, but it's the lesson fee. After taking the muscle strengthening elixir, I received the iron boots from Ren. Ren bought floor master battle vouchers for 4000 gold each. With the 5000 gold he gained from the raid, he was earning 1000 gold without doing much of anything. Not to mention, I was personally training him and preventing him from dying. As for me, I could shorten my floor master grind by receiving two rewards every time. It really was the perfect plan. There was only one thing I didn't take into consideration. It was that Loretta would sell the battle vouchers for 4000 gold. I expected Ren to make 2000 gold, but now that he was only earning 1000 gold, it felt a bit weird. Of course, since we would be doing the raid three times per day, he would be making 3000 gold in total. 3000 gold is certainly not a small amount. With personal training from the crown prince on top. 3000 gold per day plus personal training from me. Isn't it great, Ren? Ichem. I have a lot to say, but I don't quite know how to put it into words. Ak, my sides hurt. You reap what you sow. I swallowed the muscle strengthening elixir like candy. For a moment, I was worried that my muscles would bulge out like before. Thankfully, nothing of the sort happened. The moment I ate the elixir, I felt every muscle in my body tighten like they were being squeezed. Then, a fiery heat spread out across my body in an instant, followed by a wave of exhaustion. Every muscle in your body becomes tougher and stronger. Strength and dexterity both increase by one. Nice. Two stats increased at the same time. With this, I could get stronger once again. Excited, I urged Ren on. Alright, let's go do our final raid for the day. At my words, Ren paled and his lips trembled. You. Are you human? Hmm. What's wrong? What happened to your spirit from earlier, Ren? My entire body hurts. It hurts too much. Ren had an extremely desperate expression. He was finally wearing an expression befitting of his young face. With a calm smile, I consoled him. That's why I said I would massage you well. A.K. Crown Prince is murdering a dungeon explorer. Ha ha ha, you're free to enter, but not free to leave. Like this, the curtains were raised to our fun party raid. Chapter, 40. Midterms ended. I had no classes on Fridays, so Thursday was the last day of my midterms. It was also the class I happened to share with Su Yiun. I vaguely thought she'd hit me up to go eat fries again. Since I started having classes with Su Yiun, I started avoiding food with potatoes. Let's celebrate the end of midterms with beer and fries. 
I expected nothing less. Let's go, Shin. How did the test go? Kayak. Su Yiyun answered my question with a scream. How did this girl get into college? Something always happens when I eat fries with this girl. When the communication channel opened last time, I was almost scared out of my wits. It was almost like it happened because I went to eat fries with her. In a displeased tone, I asked Su Yiyun. Don't you have any friends other than me? Anyone you have classes with? And no one talks to me. Then stop always wearing your hoodie. With the hoodie covering her face, Su Yiyun's presence disappeared completely. I almost thought it was some passive skill. With her pretty face, people would be all over her if she just dressed up a little. I hate getting attention. You really have a tiresome personality. It's fine, I have you. For a moment, I saw tentacles with suction cups stretching out from her body and wrapping around me. Was I caught in a trap? By this zero social skills, zero presence, monster phobia, potato witch. Come on, let's go. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. They said words sowed seeds. I didn't believe in it, but I decided to believe it from today. When I was taking a breath after ordering a beer and fries, the TV on the wall was showing a strange place. It was suspicious. I began to hate this shop famous for its fries. Breaking news. At a shopping mall in Seoul's Yangdungpo district, a black pillar of light suddenly shot up to the sky. This phenomenon which was first seen two minutes ago is also being observed in other countries' main cities. On TV, I saw a shopping mall I visited in the past totally enveloped by black light. As if that wasn't enough, the black light was shooting up into the sky, forming a pillar visible from quite a distance away. There were also images from major cities in other countries. Japan's Osaka, America's New York, China's Beijing, Britain's London, etc. They were all large cities with huge population densities. Experts consider this phenomenon as a continuation of two moon, and have advised governments to dispatch guardian to affected areas. According to Article 7 Section 1 of New Moon Act, the government has begun to evacuate all Yangdungpo district residents and has dispatched guardian special forces. New Moon Act It was a law created after two moon to deal with monsters and monster-related work. It outlined the government's response when a monster-related disaster occurred. For example, the Code of Conduct, safety measures for citizens, and federal assistance for any material damage received. Although it had many faults and led to endless protests, it was still convenient in times of crisis like this. S. Gary Wright Hmm. I wonder what it is. Black light. Major cities. Just looking at them through the TV screen, I could feel the ominous aura emanating from them. However, I knew what those lights were. That was the feeling I had. Dungeons. Shin, did you say something? Hmm. Did I say something? Su Yiyun looked at me like I was acting strangely. Didn't you just say something about pancakes one? I like pancakes too. Pancakes. What pancakes? I'm not in the mood to eat. In fact, I think I have to go to the dungeon. Dungeon. I shouted out loud. As if in response, the black light shooting up from the shopping mall subsided and revealed the building's appearance. No, it was wrong to say it was a building. It was a whirlpool of black smoke emanating an ominous aura. It was just like teleportation portals in games. At the same time, I heard message Nuna's voice in my head. She'd been making a lot of business trips recently. Event dungeons have been created on Earth. When cleared, you can obtain various rewards such as stat points or skill points. All awakened on Earth likely thought this, it's finally here. All dungeon explorers on Earth likely thought this, those are event dungeons. I quickly opened the communication channel. Sure enough, Mastiford was chatting away in it. You all heard it right. Those are event dungeons. Uni, you're going to go. Of course. You should come with me, Samire. B but. If you die in an event dungeon, aren't you dead for real? At Edward Walker's words, the two girls became quiet. I was thinking the same thing, 
even if it was something I did not really want to admit. This world was different from the dungeon. We were not given second chances. As such, adventuring had a danger incomparable to losing a week's worth of time. These event dungeons are dangerous. I can smell it. The sweeter the reward, the more lethal the poison they bear. Then are you just going to leave them be? The rewards will disappear if other awakened clear them. Are you that much of a scaredy cat? How can you call yourself a British citizen? Shut it, Masterford. I don't see what that's got to do with it. Me being British has nothing to do with acting like a fool who doesn't know fear. Well said, Mr. Walker. The dungeons we've been going to until now were like games. There was no risk involved. Although being hit by monsters may have hurt, you were guaranteed your lives. And when you won, you were guaranteed rewards. But not now. It's a gamble with your life on the line. No matter how sweet the reward seems, it's not worth it. Ho, oh, you're more prudent than I imagined, or should I say cowardly. Shouldn't a man charge in no matter how dangerous it is and come out victorious? Father, who had fought against a tiger barehanded and won, had the right to say that. That said, I won't forgive him for making me fight one when I was only thirteen years old. Even if I won in the end. Humph, are you saying you'll go into those dungeons? Think about it. I'm not active yet as an ability user. If I go into a dungeon, I would be advertising to the whole world that I'm an ability user. So you were just talk after all. You, do you want to make a trip to Korea? I'll welcome you wholeheartedly. With my spear, that is. Father I felt I needed to interfere before father started fighting Walker. I also needed to point out something everyone was missing. Sorry everyone, but before we talk about the benefits we can gain as dungeon explorers, there's something important we need to address. Ah, Yun Wawu. Great. Why did you ignore me until now? I've been calling you for a while. Hmm. I had the communication channel turned off, why? Ugga. How annoying. I ignored Masterford's screaming and continued. You guys know what happens when you clear an event dungeon, right? I haven't entered one before, but I've heard about it. Ah, I've cleared it before. Hoo-hoo, twice in fact. And for one of them, an event raid hap ah. Masterford who was excitedly bragging cried out in shock. It seemed everyone had an idea what I was trying to say. The event raid you're right. That's right. I remember now. Eh. Father, you're on the 21st floor now. I didn't think head catch up to me so quickly. Though, as I was completely into raising my stats through the muscle strengthening elixir, I didn't pay much attention to leveling up. That's right. If we rashly clear one, a raid boss might appear and make the situation worse. We need to come up with a solution before we do anything. Hmm, but even if we don't do anything, wouldn't the Awakened be dispatched? That's true Masterford, didn't you brag about being a SS rank ability user with public trust? This is your opportunity to shine. Send the world a warning. Um, I'll try. I'll try, but I don't really have much power, you know. Britain has another SS rank ability user so my words won't have much weight. Plus, Korea isn't a powerful country. This is exactly why I wanted to create an organization of dungeon explorers. Miss Masterford, I'm saying you should use your personal authority as a SS rank ability user. Don't you understand the weight your words carry? Don't talk to the government, talk to the mass media. You can even hold a press conference if you want. We need to prepare the entire world, whether we clear the dungeon or not. E even if you suddenly compliment me, I can't do anything. Humph. Boonie. As I was chatting in the communication channel, I naturally had my hand over my mouth. Su Yiyun, who had three fries sticking out of her mouth, was staring at me like I was the weird one. I ignored her gaze and turned to the TV. There, I saw a letter written on top of the dungeon gate. It was undoubtedly the letter A. Mr. Walker, if you knew what difficulty the event dungeon you had to enter was, what would you do? I would still hesitate. That said, given that I have some information about the dungeon, I could prepare myself to challenge it. 
Compared to the huge danger I would have to eventually face, overcoming the current smaller danger would have some merit. Good. Korea's event dungeon gate has the letter A above it. I think this is like the rank that classifies ability users. How about other countries? At my words, everyone became quiet. Sumire was the first to respond. It's true. Osaka Castle's gate says B. The entire Osaka Castle disappeared. I wanted to go see it eventually. That's not important right now, Miss Masterford. Hey, you stop picking faults at whatever I say. I'm at my mom's house right now, so I can only see Young Dumpo's gate. I'm a Yun Dumpo resident too. Like I care. Turn on your TV and look at the other countries. I'm in a place where I can't even change the TV channel. I growled at her in my head. I confirmed it. Britain's event dungeon says A. It seems America's event dungeon is S. Ichem. France has B, China has C. Although China has the lowest difficulty, five event dungeons appeared there. 3 CS and 2 CS. If the alphabet above the gates were really based on ability users' rankings like I thought, wouldn't a single S rank ability user be enough to clear a S rank dungeon? Wasn't solo play the standard for all dungeons? Hugh, this is hard. If you consider a 10 man party as the standard, no, since you can't quit and come out like in the dungeons we go to, we'll have to consider at least 20 people for taking shifts. Since they don't have inventories like us, we'll need to add 5 more people to carry daily necessities. That's 25. Even if porters can be low rank ability users, wouldn't America's S rank dungeon need 20 S rank ability users? That'll be difficult. There's a possibility that only 10 people can enter a dungeon. In that case, we'll need ability users with higher ranks than the dungeon itself. I decided to stay quiet. Although I was also a dungeon explorer, the amount of common sense knowledge I knew seemed light years apart from theirs. Not to mention, not all ability users on Earth were dungeon explorers. Plus, if an S rank raid boss appears, we'll need at least 100 to 300 people to come out victorious. That'll be a disaster among disasters. Now that you put it that way, Young Dumpo's boss would be A rank too. Masterford seemed to be immersed in her thoughts, when she suddenly said, Everyone, I need your help. My mom's feeling uneasy. I want to get rid of the dungeon quickly and calm her down. Help me beat this dungeon. As a magician, although I have strong firepower, it'll be taken out if I leave any openings. I can't do it alone. Just like I thought from the beginning, she was honest. People usually found it hard to acknowledge their weaknesses. For someone like Masterford who seemed like a blob of self-esteem, I didn't think she would so easily admit her weakness. Right now, she not only revealed it, but she was also asking for help. It meant she knew her weaknesses just as much as her strengths. I began to see her in a more favorable light. Plus, I knew she really liked her mother. I refuse. There's no reason for me to put myself at risk. Edward Walker was the first to answer. In a way, it was the logical answer. On the other hand, Minami's answer was the complete opposite of Walker's. Ill help, Uni. Ill fly to Korea right now. I have confidence in my defense, so I can withstand most attacks. Samire. Thank you, I love you. That girl was still too kind. She should really think things through a bit more. Miss Minami, I'm not trying to be condescending, but I don't think an explorer on the 18th floor can take on an A-rank monster. Why you're right, but I have confidence in my defense. I can even take a floor master's attack head on. Really? This young lady was certainly not normal. Climbing 18 floors in two years, plus a. Two years. There were five dungeon explorers right now, and there were five dungeon explorers when I became one five years ago a question emerged in my mind. But now was not the time to ask. I reluctantly put it away in the back of my mind. Miss Masterford, what are our plans if a raid boss appears when we clear the dungeon? Don't worry. I have an SS rank firepower. If I'm properly protected, I can deal with an A rank raid boss by myself. With that, I made my decision. I'll participate too. 
Although I might be lacking, I can at least protect Miss Mastiford. W what's up with you suddenly? What are you scheming? Is it the stats? Is that what you're aiming for? That one thing. More importantly, I'm confident I won't die in an A-rank dungeon. Plus, if someone can guarantee to kill the raid boss without suffering losses, it would only be proper to lend a hand to the person capable of doing it. Objectively, I assessed my ability to be about B-rank. Of course, that was only taking Pika's ability into account. Adding on my physical strength and techniques, plus my abilities as a dungeon explorer I was probably A-rank. Even without my spear that is. Humph. Even if you change your mind now, I won't put you in our organization. I don't want to go in your organization, you witch. W witch. Ill cooperate too. Since my so I mean, since Yun Wa Wu is cooperating, it's only proper as a fellow Korean to join in. Just say the word son, father. I complained in my head. That said, father seemed to be worried about sending his son to such a dangerous place alone as he also joined in. But do dungeon explorers have to be the ones to go? Miss Masterford, you're a SS rank ability user. Why can't you just bring other ability users instead? What other ability users? Do you think people would choose to barge into a suspicious and dangerous place like that without receiving any rewards? An SS rank ability user's name doesn't even have that much weight. After hearing what I said, Masterford let out a deep sigh. You see, British guardians are busy with the gate that appeared in London. Korean guardians would be all over me, but I'm afraid of the aftermath. Aftermath? Ah. The scene of Masterford entering Korea's gate with other Korean ability users would be the perfect advertisement for the proud Korean image the government was trying to sell. Once I understood, I nodded my head instinctively. Even though we're doing a good thing, we have to sneak into the gate. Do you understand, Yun Wa Wu? Yeah, I got it. You have it rough, Miss Masterford. Thanks for noty wait, why am I talking so friendly with you? Masterford suddenly yelled after talking well for a while. Reaffirming that this woman wasn't normal, I shook my head. At the same time, Masterford put the conversation to rest. Then we'll gather in front of that shopping mall in two hours. That's too fast. Miss Minami has to fly over from Japan. I know you want to take care of the dungeon as fast as possible, but calm down. Ah, you're right then two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Fine. Got it, Uni. That's fine with me. Ho. The four of you are gathering. Yun Wawu, I thought you'd be different well, good luck. With that, Walker went silent. It seems he turned off the communication channel. I'm off too. It'll be there on time so don't worry. W Hood worry for you. Ah, uh, wait, you're about to turn the communication channel off, right? Don't. I turned it off. Letting out all the tension I built up with a sigh, I gulped down on lukewarm beer in front of me. At the same time, I caught sight of Su Yiyun staring at me strangely. What's wrong, Shin? You seem to be trembling. I'm just nervous. It looks like you'll be doing something dangerous. I stared at the gate on TV. A whirlpool of grey smoke. Although Mastiford didn't say much about it, I still had a lot on my mind. It was different from the dungeon. If I died, that was it. Wouldn't they be fine even without me? TSK. I can't turn tail in front of just this much danger. It had been a while since I thought about it, but I remembered. The superhero I dreamt of becoming when I was a little kid was not a coward. From the dungeon, I learned that a coward cannot get stronger. If everything ended when I died, I just had to not die. What was the reason I raised my strength in the dungeon? Before monsters began appearing on earth, it was to see just how far I could go. I also wanted to know what was at the end of the dungeon. That was the same even now when monsters began appearing on earth. Until now, I ignored earth's monsters because I could not gain skills or level up from hunting them. It was different now. If that dungeon's difficulty really was based on A-rank ability users, then it was worth taking it on with my current strength. 
If things went badly with that dungeon, there was the possibility that ordinary people, not ability users, would die. Just like when the second moon first rose in the skies. Though, I only said I'd go because I was confident I wouldn't die. D die. It's that dangerous. Like I said, I won't die. I wasn't a saint. I had no plans to throw my life away for someone I didn't even know. But young Dumpo wasn't that far from here. If a raid boss appeared, it was possible that someone I cared about would get hurt. I had to prevent that at all costs. Most importantly, there were rewards in that dungeon. Although it was only temporary, I had an SS rank ability user in my party. It would be hard to find another opportunity to leech rewards so easily. Whoops, my real intentions were leaking. Hoo hoo, hoo hoo hoo. D don't suddenly laugh. It's scary. Ah, the world is vast and there are truly lots of things to grind. It'll get stronger. Overcoming danger and getting stronger from it is what excites people. Thinking that, I tightly clenched my fists. Although I sneered at father's simple personality, I had yet to realize I was just like him in the most crucial area. I should really take you to the Dr. Yu Yu, I'm worried. You mind your own business. 1. The Jian in Dungeon sounds like the word for pancake. Chapter, 41. That's right, Shin Nim. As if she had been waiting for my question, Loretta nodded her head. The gates are certainly marked according to Earth standard for ability users. An A marked dungeon would mean A rank ability users could take care of it. So it really is as I thought. I'm curious how you know about it, but I won't ask for now. Even if you do, I'm unable to give you an answer. But I can tell you this, Shin Nim. That place is a dungeon, yet not a dungeon. If something goes wrong. Seeing Loretta's worried expression, I nodded my head with a bitter smile. I know it's dangerous, but I have confidence. I have strong reinforcements as well. Thanks for worrying about me. Ha, I still have misgivings. But it's not like I can go with you, Hugh. More importantly, there's something I want to buy. Do you sell masks? Something that can completely hide my appearance. I do. A mask that prevents others from reading your information and even slightly changes your height, build, and hair. It's called Otta Secret. Today, this amazing magical item is only 50,000 gold. 50,000. That's over 100 million won. Well. It's probably going to come in handy from now on. There was a huge merit to being able to act as an ability user while hiding my face. Whenever an event raid occurred, it would let me participate without revealing my identity. That way, I could act without reserve. I bought the mask with tearful eyes. I messaged father while I was at it. We of course had each other on our friend lists. Father, buy Otta's secret from the floor shop. Hmm. What's that? It's a mask. Are you going to reveal your face? Mm, -hmm, I was going to tell you later, but I registered as an ability user today. You act too quickly. I remembered the talk father had with Walker not long ago. Although I thought he was rather calm about it, it seemed he fell for Walker's provocation. He was my father, but he really was simple. My ability has grown quite a bit too now. I can't stay hidden forever, so I registered as an ability user and ignored the requests from Guardian and Freedom Wing. Ho ho, I'm an A rank ability user now. Congratulations on getting A rank, but you could have registered with your identity hidden, father. It was true. Many rogues who did not want to join Guardian or Freedom Wing disguised themselves when they registered as ability users. What was important for ability users were their abilities, not their faces. That said, compared to Guardian, who were officially recognized by the government, or the worldwide organization Freedom Wing, who had their own independent system, rogues were a lot less trustworthy. They were also unable to enjoy the benefits other ability users had such as tax cuts, memberships to government facilities, or free entrance to certain public and private facilities. Simply put, they were things I didn't care about. Eh. Really? Well, it's too late for that. Hugh. Well, I'm only going to be fighting barehanded tomorrow. Also, don't make it obvious that we are father and son. 
Shouldn't you take this opportunity to register as well? I will. With my mask on. I'm still not confident in my ability, so I don't plan on revealing myself so openly. A man shouldn't be so spineless. It's being cautious. My stupid son has grown so much. Thinking that my father's intelligence stat couldn't be that high, I purchased Ada's secret. It was a black, metallic mask that covered my forehead, eyes, and even my nasal bridge completely. However, I felt that it wasn't perfect. What I get discovered. It doesn't hide my mouth or jawline. Like I said, it changes your build. Try wearing it first, Shin Nim. When I equipped the mask and imagined myself getting slimmer, my body really did get slimmer. Plus, my height, which had reduced to 190 centimeters with all the bone compressing elixirs I consumed, reduced further to about 185 centimeters. My hair then became a little longer and was dyed gray. My appearance really did change according to my imagination. Loretta who was watching from the side suddenly laughed. I didn't like the way her eyes curved to a crescent shape. Shin Nim, is that Shin Nim's ideal form? UK. And no. I only dyed my hair gray so my identity wouldn't get revealed. Yes, I believe you. Wow, how cool. I might fall in love with you. You're talking in monotone. I had to admit Loretta got me there. Just as I vowed to get my revenge one day and took my mask off, someone shot me a question. Are we not doing any more raids today? It was Ren, who was quietly watching Loretta make fun of me. After two weeks of fighting the Lizard Knight three times every day, Ren charged at the Lizard Knight's tail much less than when we began. I had also collected all of the Lizard Knight set, and only needed a few more muscle strengthening elixirs. By the way, the Lizard Knight set was a plate armor set with much better effects than the leather armor. It raised strength and constitution by 10 points, and allowed me to use Dragon Skin, the ultimate defense skill that reduced incoming physical and magical damage by 90%. Of course, it was not completely effective against attacks from enemies that exceeded a certain level. In addition, it reduced my movement speed by 50%. However, it was still an amazing skill. Becoming tougher meant that my attacks became stronger as well. I stored this skill on the 4 o'clock position of the pocket watch. Mm, I like that the gauntlet is metal. I didn't really like the leather glove. Hey, Crown Prince. I asked if we were done for the day. Of course not, Ren. We still have one more raid to do. Kook, my back hurts though. Please, we both know you're going to go wild once the raid begins. After making Ren shut up, I checked myself out one last time. Metal armor and mask. Although they weren't really a good combination, it didn't matter. I was exploring the dungeon, not going on a fashion show. Loretta, wish me luck so that I can come back safe. If it's Shin Nim, I believe you can crawl up from even the deepest depths of hell. Ha, huh, can't you just say come back safely? You don't have to exaggerate so much. Uck. Come back safely. I won't forgive you if you come back hurt. There, happy. If you say that in an angry tone, it doesn't sound sincere. The next day, I decided to leave early in the morning. I equipped Ada's secret and wore the most formal attire I owned, the Wraith Queen set. When I looked at myself in the mirror, I had to admit that I looked great. Although I was thankful that I had grown slimmer by consuming compressing elixirs, I wished I had become a bit slimmer, just like how I looked right now. Until I was 16, I had enough muscles for orcs to call me Big Brother. As such, I always yearned to become slimmer. When I went out to the living room, Yua, who was drinking milk, found me and tilted her head. Appa, why are you wearing a mask? Emm, um, Appa is going to go register as an ability user today. Really? Yua's eyes sparkled at my words. Then can I brag about Appa to my friends? Eh. Emm. Um. As you can see from the mask I'm wearing, I'm registering under a fake name. Sorry, but can you wait a bit longer? E.I. Okay. I wanted to brag about Appa. Watching Yua murmuring with lingering attachment, I patted her head. She quickly cheered up and saw me off. If she knew that I was going to clear a dungeon that appeared on earth, 
she would be crying and trying her best to prevent me from going. For that reason, I didn't tell her anything about it. As I walked on the sidewalk, I could feel the gazes of people passing by. With the rather fancy Wraith Queen set, the metallic mask that covered my eyes and nose, and grey hair, I couldn't blame them for looking at me like I was crazy. Kook, it was painful. Why did I sign up for this? I had to hurry to New Moon Agency. It was where people registered as ability users and received ability user-related jobs. Yun Wawanim, you're here to register as an ability user? With the mask? Yes, just like this. Follow me. You'll have to show us your ability. The employee led me to a room with all sorts of random things. I saw a large boulder, thousands of bean-like things scattered on the ground, and weapons like swords and spears. If you need a tool to use your ability, do tell us. No, it's fine. I asked Pika to infuse herself into my glove. When lightning began to flicker from my hand wearing the scale glove, the employee became startled and jumped back. I is it lightning? Nature type abilities are rare. Hugh. Hap. Since there was a good target in front of me, I shot my fist flickering with sparks toward the large boulder. Although I wasn't using heroic strike, I had grown familiar with focusing my strength into one point. I could thus maximize my fist's destructive power. As expected, the boulder turned to dust and collapsed. This. You'll have to measure the value in detail, but it seems to be at least B. To get such a high rating on your first assessment, amazing. Ha, huh, thank you. No, not B. Father will make fun of me. Please, give me an A. Damn, if I knew this would happen, I would have used a spear. Even though I happily replied to the employee, I was feeling grim on the inside as I walked out of the assessment room. The employee who had left for a while then came back with the data extrapolating my mana and strength. The results are out. Just looking at mana, Yun Wawanim would be at B rank. However, taking into account the ability's uniqueness, suitability to the user's body, and control, it comes out to a rank. A rank ability users are only about 12% of ability users worldwide. Yun Wawanim is beginning from that starting line. The New Moon Agency is happy to have come across someone with such a strong potential. If you'd like to join the Guardian, under the government's direct supervision, then. No, that's fine. I'd like to get my license now. Yes, follow me. After taking a picture, you just need to pay for the license application fee. Carrying the license with my masked face on it, I left the New Moon Agency. When I looked at the time, it was nearing 1p. In about an hour, I would enter the event dungeon. I felt my body tensing up from nervousness, but I somewhat enjoyed it. The dungeon was nice, but martial artists really shone when they trained themselves in a pit of danger. At around 1.50, I was sitting in a cafe near the shopping mall, sipping on an iced coffee. With the lizard knight set I put on along with Otta's secret, the gazes I was receiving were no joke. Who is that? An ability user, right? Why is there a fully armed ability user sitting here drinking coffee? Ah, it's that thing. The gate. The entrances to the event dungeons were officially called gates. Feeling goosebumps at people's deductive ability, I silently drank my coffee. Sitting across from me was my father, happily sipping on a caramel macchiato, wearing thick leather armor and with a thick silver spear sitting by his side. Every time his Adam's apple moved, his muscles bulged in an unsightly manner. Mm -hmm. What's wrong, Yun Wa Wu? It's nothing. Why were the two of us the first to arrive? Because we couldn't act like father and son, the current situation felt incredibly awkward. I just wanted to quickly go into the dungeon. Why was this happening? Let me enter the event dungeon. I'll go in alone if I have to. I just want to fight. Itchem, so. I mean, young man, why did you make such a dangerous decision? Father could have texted me at any time, but it seemed he wanted to ask me face to face. My master and father told me that martial artists grew by fighting with their lives on the line. Ho, oh, what a splendid father you have I'd love to meet him. Father praised himself shamelessly, and retorted with a butt. 
but when a real situation of life or death arrives, it isn't easy to move words into action. I'm curious how you so easily made your mind to go to the dungeon. You're saying I accepted Masterford's request without thinking much about it. Exactly. Father's eyes seemed a little deeper. Ah, they were the same eyes he had when he began to lead my ten-year-old self onto the path of a dungeon explorer. In other words, I couldn't trust him right now. I knew the event dungeon's difficulty and had trustworthy comrades to help me. Furthermore, Yang Dungpo is close to where I live, so not only would it have been unwise to back out in this situation, it also would have not been honorable as a martial artist. Rather than make say, I want to hear the real reason. He found me out in an instant. With a shrug, I replied. Even now, all ability users are fighting against monsters with their lives at risk. Although their goals are likely money, they are undoubtedly getting stronger in blood battles. Indifferent. In getting stronger leisurely in the dungeon where my limbs would grow back when they are cut, where I would not die even if I were killed. If I kept advancing in the same way, although I would become stronger, I felt that I would lack the ferocity required of a warrior. Ichem. The fact that others were advancing without me was unbearable. I also need ferocity. Otherwise, when the time comes where I need to put my life on the line, I might become a coward who would try to run to safety. I don't mean to throw my life away, but I don't want to miss a chance to get stronger just because it's dangerous. Is that it? Yes, of course. That was the truth. The dungeon was certainly exciting and thrilling. It was full of danger, and it hurt incredibly when enemies stabbed me with a knife. The pleasure I felt from breathing a living monster's breath, exchanging blows with our lives on the line, and finally plunging my spear into its heart was real. At the same time, it was fake. I knew I would not lose my life even if I died in the dungeon. I acted knowing that I would always have another chance. Of course, if monsters did not start appearing on earth, this would have been fine. But that wasn't the case now. The moon had become two, and the world became a place where it wouldn't be weird for a monster to pop out at any time. Event dungeons had appeared as well. Let's say a situation arrived where I had to face monsters on earth. If I fought with the same mindset as the one I had in the dungeon, if I fought without knowing the ferocity of my life being at risk, a knife would pierce my heart in a moment of carelessness and that would be it. Could there be anything more foolish? I did not want to become such a pathetic warrior. I did not want to become a warrior from a game where losing my life was an acceptable outcome. Although it could become a way of getting stronger, I could not let it become a mindset for battle. Life was not an easy mode where I could try again and again. It was always in hell mode. Only in this way do I think I can truly become strong. Become. The strongest. Fath. Kong Yung Gung Nim. It was father's name one. Yung Gung means hero, which was rather embarrassing to say. Ha, huh, I like your honesty. Too bad, he'll be the one to hold the title of strongest. Ha, huh, you kid. That will be me. Ha, huh, I'm not kidding. ITLL be me. Mm. Mm. We began to glare at each other. At the same time father grabbed his spear, lightning began to flicker from my hand. When a fight was about to break out to determine who was superior, we were interrupted. Wow, you guys get along pretty well. Chapter, 42 Wow, you guys get along pretty well. H hello. When I stopped glaring at father and looked up, Yi Waya, or rather Waya Eleni Mastaford, was there. She was even more beautiful than on TV. Her fiery red eyes and flame red hair stole people's attention and refused to let go. Plus, she had a provocative hourglass figure that accentuated her curves. For the sake of Yua, I almost wanted to ask what she ate to grow so well. Most importantly, the red dress she was wearing left a strong impression. I opened my mouth staring at her dress fixedly. Nice to meet you, Masterford SSI. Are you sure you should wear a fluttery dress like that for battle? Humph, what do you know? This is a battle dress I personally commissioned the 45th floor shop to make with material dropped from a named monster. It raises my magic by 50 points. Though, it decreases my strength, dexterity, and constitution by 10. 
I was thinking her Korean was excellent when I realized her words didn't match her mouth's movement. I suspected that the dungeon translated our words when we were talking in the communication channel. It seemed I was right. Masterford SSI, what language am I using right now? Of course it's English. Eh? She seemed to have noticed too. We were both talking and listening in our mother language. I thought this translation service only worked in a communication channel, but it looked like all conversation between dungeon explorers was translated automatically. Thinking back, this was probably why I could talk to explorers from other continents with no problem. Without thinking more about it, I put the thought away and smiled. As you know, Im Yun Wawu. Nice to meet you, Masterford SSI. Humph, I'm not really interested in getting along with someone suspiciously covering his face, but I'll accept your handshake for now. Masterford reached out and met my hand with a sour look. For someone who was called the Flame Witch, her hands were incredibly cold. I then looked at Minami standing behind her. I had heard she was mixed before. She had a black ponytail with grey streaks, and had emerald eyes. Although it wasn't as pronounced as Mastiford, she was still a beautiful young lady. Moreover, although she was slightly shorter than Yua, she was more grown in other areas. Ah, just what do I do about Yua? With a complicated heart, I reached my hand out toward her as well. Nice to meet you, Minami SSI. Im Yun Wawu. And nice to meet you. Yu Yu. Sorry, B but I'm not really good with men. Ah, uh, sorry. I doubted whether she couldn't even do a handshake, but I still retracted my hand. Immediately afterwards, father got up from his seat and spoke in a deep voice. Im Kong Yung Gong. Nice to meet you. Em, mm, nice to meet you, Ajushi. You aged well. Ha ha ha, you are quite beautiful yourself, young lady. Your mother must be a beauty as well. This was the first time I was hearing father's societal tone of voice. Scratching the goosebumps I was getting, I asked Masterford. By the way, is the mana surrounding us an isolation magic? No one is looking this way. As much as Masterford herself did not want to admit it, she was Korea's only SS rank ability user. If she appeared at a cafe at a metropolitan area, the surrounding people should have gone wild, as if they just saw a top-class celebrity. However, it was too quiet. It was so quiet that it was impossible not to notice. Masterford smiled contently and nodded her head. Yep. I used an anti-recognition magic to prevent people from noticing us and a magic to erase our traces. I was originally a magic practitioner from Britain. Before you even became a dungeon explorer. Correct one. I was chosen as second dungeon's dungeon explorer thanks to my outstanding talent in magic. In any case, it seemed Masterford was extremely proud of the second dungeon title. I told myself to never tell her which dungeon I came from before my level surpassed hers. I, I from a shrine, my father was a priest. This time, Minami started introducing herself. Ah, uh, a Japanese shrine. I.D. visited one with father before during our training. When we drew our fortunes, father got great curse and I got great blessing. He then proceeded to snatch my fortune, and a death match ensued between us. For the record, I managed to defend it, and it was still enshrined in my room. In any case, if Minami's father was a priest, then she was. A shrine maiden. A part-time shrine maiden. I suddenly felt mana one day as I was working part-time. Well, I heard there weren't real shrine maidens nowadays but how is that fair? Are Japanese shrines overflowing with so much mana that a part-time worker would feel it? Oh, how much I suffered to gain mana. Father used to be a second dungeon explorer, and he let me become a dungeon explorer after knowing I obtained mana. He passed away soon after that. I see. So until two years ago, her father was the fifth dungeon explorer, but he passed away after making his daughter a dungeon explorer. I finally understood. Father, Masterford, and I became quiet after hearing that her father had passed, but Masterford soon shouted cheerfully. All right, let's hurry into the dungeon before my magic runs out. I agree. Let's go. We left the cafe and headed to the gate. On the way, Minami's clothes caught my eyes. It's light, 
semi-transparent fabric revealed a hint of her skin. Minami SSI, didn't you say you were a tank? Are you okay with clothes like that? Ah, thanks for worrying about me, Yun Wahoo SSI. But this is a drop from a named monster, so it's strong and sturdy. Oh, I see. I'm wearing a floor master set. I'm not jealous in the slightest. I walked forward embarrassed, and saw father laughing. Like I said, I'm not jealous. In a bit, we arrived in front of the gate, a whirlpool of grey clouds. On top of it, the letter A could clearly be seen. Masterford first glanced at the ability users guarding it and confirmed that they would not notice us. All right, let's go in. Wait, Masterford SSI. What? We didn't form a party yet. Ah. It was extremely simple to form a party. After expressing the will to form a party, you just had to shake your hands with the people you wanted to invite to your party. After the four of us formed a party, she nodded and put her hand on gate. At the same time, we all heard a message. Would you like to enter the A-rank event dungeon, Spider Den? I suddenly don't want to enter anymore. Masterford's face suddenly lost color. As I knew the reason, I urged her on. Let's hurry. W8. I I hate spiders. It's too late for that. I lightly pushed her in. You whack. Like in a manhwa, she screamed as she fell into the gate. Because the party leader had gone in, we were sucked into the dungeon too. I feel like I'm riding a roller coaster. With that, I lost my consciousness. Yun Wa Wu. That was the first thing I heard when I woke up. I looked around. I was in a completely dark forest, dense with trees I had never seen before. The sky was no longer blue, but jet black. At the same time, two moons, one yellow and one red, were lighting up the world. We were all together, though Masterford was glaring at me with a demon-like face. I retorted lightly. I know what my name is, even without you yelling it. You pushed me. My heart wasn't ready for it. Masterford SSI, think about it. Who was the one that made us come here? Me. Who's the party leader that has to go in first? Me. But. Who's the one that has to understand our situation and make plans? Me. Hying, Sumari. Yes, Uni. Don't cry. There, there. It was nice seeing two beauties hugging each other, but I wondered if Masterford understood what I said. Excited by the new environment, father was looking around fiddling with his spear. He was better than the two of them by a wide margin. If you're done crying, let's go. You, am going to burn away all your hair one day. Just tell me when so I can get it insured. As if I would. Strange. Why did jokes come out so smoothly when I was with Masterford? I can feel something all around us. It's certainly different from the dungeon. Event dungeons usually have various environments. However, there is always only one clear condition. Killing the boss. Masterford answered as she lit up a ball of flame on her hand. Immediately afterwards, something flew toward us from every direction. Spider webs. Master, burn them. Following Pika's advice, I let her infuse herself in my gauntlet so she could shoot out lightning as she pleased. Her lightning then collided with the webs flying toward us, burning them to crisp. Minami, who was watching from behind, flinched and took a step back. Il go to the front. Father seemed to have discovered the enemy's position as he charged at a direction with his spear. I had also mostly figured out the number of spiders flying toward us and their positions. Those are some huge spiders. They're almost as big as Mastiford. Don't say that. Masterford screamed as she shot out fire everywhere. It was perfect, except her overly strong flames burned up the trees along with the spiders crawling down from them. Not even ashes were left of the spiders. I felt slightly regretful that the expensive monster remains were disappearing into the skies. Masterford SSI, can you freely extinguish your fire? Yeah, I can just withdraw my mana. Then let's burn up all the trees as we go. That way, we won't need to worry about ambushes from above. Hot. 
As I talked, I stabbed my gauntlet into the head of a spider that used its string like a rope to fly from a tree across me. PZZT. With a crackling sound, the lightning and the spider's head exploded. Its disgusting bodily fluid splashed out in all direction. It did not drop a bluestone either. It was not until later that I.D. learned that bluestones, blue nuggets that were found in monsters, were rather rare. That is, they didn't drop from just any random monsters. I dissected the pigeon from long ago, but it didn't have one either. As I was thinking that, the two girls who saw the spider exploding in front of their eyes screamed. Kayak. My ears. I I hate spiders. Mastiford stretched her arms out and sent dozens of balls of flames flying. Any spiders and trees that were hit by them were burnt up in an instant. There was truly no environmental destruction like it. Even an arsonist would bow down to her skills. Father, who was watching after killing a spider with his shockwave spear attack, gasped. So strong. KHM, if only I awakened to an ability like that. Just do your job. Mastiford was truly powerful. She was proving the worth of an SS rank ability user. No matter where a spider came from, when she stretched her arms out and sent her flames out, that would be the end. There wasn't much for the rest of us to do. The few times that we had to take action was when spiders that were lying hidden underground suddenly popped up. The spiders had tough carapace that were hard to penetrate with pure strength. However, I had my fists strengthened with spirit aura and mana, and father had his shockwave infused spear techniques. We both had no problem killing the spiders in one blow. Although I was ready for a certain amount of risk, it seemed I didn't need to worry too much. For the record, we did not find even a single bluestone. It was because Mastiford burned the majority of spiders we came across to a crisp. Since we were here to clear the event dungeon and not to farm money, I stayed quiet. I was rather down from seeing Mastiford's ability, but it seemed Minami thought differently. Seeing father and me killing the spiders so easily, she spoke in awe. You two are really strong. I heard monster spiders were at least B-ranked and had hard carapaces that many abilities could only scratch. Ha ha ha, don't underestimate this Kong Young Gong. I understand, so keep looking forward. Exploring a dungeon with father was more embarrassing than I imagined. Swinging my fist out and throwing spiders by their legs, I did my job silently until one hour later, when I sensed something and stopped everyone. 1. This was in English, i.e. it wasn't translated by the dungeon system. Chapter, 43. About an hour after we entered the dungeon, I made everyone stop. I sensed something strong, and there was more than one of it. I feel something. It might be the boss. Mma, there really is. One, two, there's three. Wait, let me use detection magic. Kayak. Because I forgot to say they were hidden underground, I ended up hearing a soprano scream. Just like father said, three spiders suddenly appeared from underground, and I quickly pulled the party back. Each spider was about three meters tall. Spiders this big, where did I see them before? Ah, that's right, Harry Potter. Kayak. Mastiford seemed to have received huge shock from the spider's visual as she kept on screaming. As if it had been annoyed by all the screaming, one of the giant spiders shot a stream of white spider web like a bullet, aimed at Mastiford. Minami then stepped forward and helped her shield up. Boom! The sound of a cannon shell colliding with metal rang out. Such destructive power for a mere spider web. I looked back, worried about Minami's status. Thankfully, although she looked a little pale, she was fine. It seemed she didn't say she was good at defense for nothing. I am fine, so take care of the spiders. Got it. I clenched my fists and charged at one of the giant spiders in front of me. Father was also shooting out shockwaves at the other giant spiders, handling two at the same time. As I could not do long-range attacks with Spirit Aura yet, I could only fight one spider at a time. Eat this. I kicked the ground and approached a giant spider. Before it could tilt its body and dodge, I plunged my lightning-clad gauntlet in the hole where it had shot spider webs earlier. When I let the lightning flow, the giant spider trembled and shrieked. Kaya. Eat another one. 
left hand this time. Right hand again. When I consecutively punched with my fists, it tried to use its two front legs to strike down at me. Although they were fast, I could easily dodge them as I had seen the leg's initial movement. The two legs only hit empty air and dug into the ground with an explosive sound. Immediately afterwards, I threw a right cross at one of its front legs. Clang! A sound like I had hit a metallic pillar rang out. I had to clench my teeth to endure the recoil, but I obtained the result I wanted. Kia! An opening! When it screamed and raised its body halfway up, I instantly ducked and jumped under it. I then pushed it with my lightning-clad fists, making it fall on its back. Wow, amazing! Leaving behind Minami's awestruck shout, I leaped up and landed on its belly. Although it struggled and tried to attack me with its legs, it was in vain. I held its carapace on one hand and rained my other hand down like a hammer. Die! You! Spider! Bastard! Stop! Shooting! Out! Webs! Every time I struck down with my fist strengthened with mana and lightning, the spider twitched. It let out a bloodcurdling scream and struggled every time it was hit, but his reaction lessened as time went on. Eventually, my fist succeeded in penetrating its belly. With my hand inside it, I let as much lightning flow out as possible. PZZT. Key. The giant spider let out a short scream, then became calm as it dropped its eight legs on the ground. After confirming that it was dead, I dropped back down. It was then that I heard a message in my ear. You mastered mid-rank martial arts. Attacks that make use of your body will be quicker and stronger. It can intimidate enemies possessing lower proficiency skills. That was considered martial arts. I was just punching it. When I was about to rebuke the message in my mind, more shocking messages flowed in. You satisfied the condition and learned high rank martial arts skill. Your body becomes even tougher. It becomes easier to use highly complex skills, and your attacks will be effective against enemies stronger than you. You satisfied the condition and learned Thunder Beast skill. Thunder Beast is a combat type special active skill that comes from possessing high rank martial arts and a lightning ability. Thunder Beast is a dangerous technique that attacks the enemy by exploding the user's superb physical ability and the power of lightning. This technique puts a burden on its user's body, so using it without high constitution may hurt the user instead. With its huge magic consumption, your magic stat must be high as well. It uses 1% of total mana per 1 second it is active. Using it for a long period of time may have negative effects on the user's constitution. It uses 1% of HP and MP per second when used inside the dungeon. My eyes became wide. Obtaining high rank martial arts was somewhat expected, but the Thunder Beast skill was something I would never have imagined. It was like a surprise present. I knew what skills like it were called. Compound skill. It was when two or more skills combined to create a stronger skill, or when achieving a certain level created a new skill by combining two or more skills. In my case, Thunder Beast was the result of my high rank martial arts skill and lightning ability, or more specifically, Lightning Elemental Pika's Spirit Aura, combining. Although I had heard of it before, I never thought it would happen to me. I remembered Elo's complaining about wanting to get a compound skill. The skill itself had an immense drawback befitting of its strong sounding name. Using 1% of my mana every 1 second meant that I could only use it for 100 seconds at most. Not to mention, it said it also put a burden on my body. I could easily see how much burden it would be by looking at its HP consumption in the dungeon. Although it would undoubtedly be strong, I could feel how dangerous it was. There was a reason for the difference in consumption inside and outside of the dungeon. Outside of the dungeon, it was impossible to check one's HP and MP. Both HP and MP were values that only applied in the dungeon. They were safety mechanisms there to prevent dungeon explorers from dying. When the HP hit zero, the explorer would be kicked out of the dungeon. Likewise, MP was the safety mechanism on the explorer's mana. No one explained this difference to me. As I explored the dungeon, I naturally learned the difference on my own. In truth, there was not a big difference in my ability inside or outside the dungeon. 
It was just that I could not check my HP and MP outside the dungeon. That was just how it was. Although Thunder Beast seemed to be a dangerous skill, the fact that I could use a powerful skill without my spear made me happy. I thanked my good fortune. With this, I really did not need to use a spear outside the dungeon. When I finished going over all the messages I received, Mastiford had finally snapped out of it. When I was about to say something to her, Father Shockwave glazed a spider and hit the ground. It was then that I realized Father was dealing with two spiders at once. Yuak, he's going to scold me later. Yun Wawu, miss, I need help. I'm coming. A ah. Sorry, Ajushi. Even Mastiford's flames could not instantly burn up the giant spider. Plus, the two remaining spiders teamed up, as one attacked with its legs and the other attacked from the back by shooting out its webs. In the end, Minami stood forward and blocked the spider's web bullets as father and I dealt with the spider fighting with its legs. Masterful then managed to burn them up with yellow flames she created with few seconds of concentrating her energy. I thought it was a decent team play. Since we burned them up, we won't know if they had blue stones. I, I don't want to look through spider corpses. That one too. Masterford SSI, that one's mine. Don't burn it up. I leisurely picked apart the giant spider's corpse, and found a fist-sized bluestone near its head. As it was the first bluestone I found, I was especially attached to it. So this is the reason why so many ability users gritted their teeth to fight monsters. Wow, it's huge. With that size, it should easily go for 40 million. 40 million one. This thing. That was equivalent to about 20,000 gold. The giant spider was certainly strong, but that was still the amount I got from two floor masters. I was suddenly disillusioned by the job called Dungeon Explorer. But Minami still had more to say. No, it's 40 million yen. Wait, then taking 100 yen as 901, that's 360 million won. Why are you so surprised? It's an elite monster even amongst A-rank monsters. Not only are their numbers small, blue stones don't always drop. Since we're fighting with our life on the line, it's only appropriate. In fact, isn't it too small? You should take this spider corpse too. I've never seen a spider this big, and its carapace is only broken around its belly. It should go for as much as the blue stone. 7, 720 million one. Maybe I should work as an ability user on the side. Realizing just how much money ability users made, I fiddled around with the bluestone in my hand. However, as father was also eyeing the bluestone with sparkling eyes, I left the detailed scrutiny to a later time. For now, I stored the bluestone into my inventory along with the spider's corpse. Is this mine? Or do we have to split it somehow? Since Yun Wawu SSI killed it alone, it's yours. We didn't help you in any way. Mm. It still felt weird to take it all by myself. I could focus on the one because father was handling the other two, and the two girls then helped take care of the other two. I can give 10% to each. As a chipu. Yun Wawu SSI, that's Japanese. Mm as a tip one then. How picky from a Japanese. Tip was in English and Mastiford didn't say anything. By the way, that wasn't the boss just now, right? No. The event dungeons collapse when the boss dies. Yu Yu, with elite monsters like them, the boss monster would be Yu Yu. Mastiford murmuring to herself with a frown was rather cute. But I just ignored it and walked forward. Of course, father's eyes were still fixed on me. I won't give it to you no matter how much you glare at me, father. Be happy with the 10%. 1. In English. Chapter, 44. As we walked further forward, the forest became more and more like a vast plain. How could a forest become a plain? It was simple. You just had to put a bunch of spiders in the forest along with Mastiford. With that, you'll be able to see the forest become a plain with your very eyes. More precisely, the forest would become a field of ash. Mastiford SSI, are you fine on mana? Yeah, light flames like these don't use up much mana. Impressive, right? Yeah, it's impressive. 
H. Mf. Even if you honestly praise my ability now, I have no intention of letting you enter my organization. No, in telling you, I don't want to. Why? I wonder why. I mumbled. Why were all girls around me so strange? There was Yua, who was strange as her cuteness went beyond the realm of humans, Paludia, who after seeing me only once four years ago, shamelessly asked me to climb to the 25th floor in just three months. Su Yiyun, who had a bigger monster phobia than ordinary people even with her cheaty stealth ability, and Mastiford, who I couldn't tell if she wanted to fight me or draw me into her organization. And Loretta too. Loretta was too complicated a person, no, elf, to describe in just one sentence. Mm -hmm. Mastiford who was excitedly setting the forest ablaze suddenly frowned. It won't burn. Where? Oh. It was true. In contrast to the barren surroundings, there was one area of black trees where her flames could not invade. She tried once again using her sun-yellow flame, but it was only enough to burn a few branches of the trees. The black trees were clearly special. Suddenly, black smoke began to rise amongst the trees. It was as if the trees were calling us. Mastiford SSI, we should go in. It doesn't look like we can burn them. B but. What if a spider falls from above? Then just burn the spider to your heart's content. Eek. You think I want. She became angry at my words and produced a white flame this time. I was curious what rank her different colored flames were classified as, but I decided to just watch for now. The white flame she shot out flew like an arrow and seemed to envelope the entire forest, but before we noticed, it suddenly disappeared. It was almost like. I don't think your flames are the problem. Doesn't it look like the trees are absorbing the mana? You're right. The trees got bigger too. With that, Mastiford bit on her lips, drawing blood. She then used the blood to draw something on her palm. TSK. Am forced to use a skill. Humph, I don't like it. Go, flame beast. I doubted my eyes. Blue flames erupted from her palm and took the form of a tiger as big as the giant spider from before. If you had a skill like that, why didn't you use it before? I have to concentrate to use it, so I couldn't use it staring at the spiders. Don't say that so proudly. The giant blue flame tiger wagged its tail once, then ran toward the black tree forest. Meanwhile, we dealt with the spiders appearing from the flat earth. As they did not appear from hard to see trees, but from an open field, we didn't even break a sweat dealing with them. When the tiger reached the forest, it swiped at the tree with its huge front paw. This time, there was a reaction. As the attack wasn't purely made of mana, containing some of the tiger's physical strength, the tree broke and fell. The tiger seemed excited as it set its fire ablaze and rampaged. Suddenly, however, something swooped down and pounced on the tiger. Ah, cutie. It has a name. I wanted to ask just what part of that four-meter-tall tiger was cute, but now was not the time. A spider leg that suddenly popped out from the black trees had pierced the tiger's body. The huge spider leg, which looked sharper than blades, then dealt a second and third blow without giving the tiger any chance to escape. In the end, the tiger disappeared into flames. Mastiford's eyes were set aflame. You dare kill my cutie, I won't forgive you. I shall transform a piece of my soul into an undefeatable army. Army of flames. Mastiford chanted in rage. Although I thought the chant was cringy, father thought it was cool. Soon, the temperature around us shot up, and flame incarnations like the tiger cutie began to appear around us. Tiger, lion, bear, wolf, leopard, elephant, eagle, hawk, owl. The entire animal kingdom was here. Oh, it's the animal kingdom. To my dismay, father had thought the exact same thing. Mastiford quickly turned around and glared at father, then ordered the animal king. The army of flames. Burn up all the spiders in that forest. The animal army answered with their own cries and charged at the forest. Seeing the army, I understood why she was an SS rank ability user. Who could possibly fight an army of intelligent flame incarnations? If they were my enemies, the result would be tragic. Just like that, 
the rampage of the animal army began. Their goal, to destroy the forest. If this was a movie, it would undoubtedly be a blockbuster. An army of animals destroying the environment and the flame which commanding them. But there was one animal who did not join in on the environmental destruction, but was instead wagging its tail on Mastiford's shoulder. The other animals were white or red, but this one was made of blue flames. Mastiford seemed to have noticed my gaze as she said, isn't my cutie cute? Is it the same one? Yeah. It's smaller now because it was reverse summoned once. When it was big, it looked like a tiger. Now that it was small, it was more like a cat. Flame witch and her pet flame cat. It was the perfect picture. Kook, for someone who looked like an evil witch commanding her demon soldiers, how could she look so lovely now? I shook my head and looked away to prevent myself from being sucked in by her charming appearance. My body then stiffened. Rather than shrinking, the black forest was expanding. The barren ground became dyed in black. Seeds sprouted up and grew to black trees in an instant. The black earth continued to expand and approached where we were. Although the animal army roared and set the trees on fire, spider webs that endlessly shot out from the trees restrained them as sharp spider legs cut them in half. Every time the army went down in number, the black forest's rate of expansion was increasing. A deafening shriek rang out from the forest. At the same time, a killing intent sharper than razor blades shot out toward us. There was no doubt. The owner of the forest had locked onto us. Mastiford SSI, cancel your skill. They're only fertilizer for the forest at this point. Booney, hurry. Cook. Sorry, guys. Big bang. Our shouts and Mastiford's judgment were both swift. The moment she yelled Big Bang, an explosive boom rang out. It was undoubtedly a self-destruction skill. All the animals besides Cutie, who was standing on Mastiford's shoulder, had exploded. The result was enough to instantly shrink the expanding forest. At the same time, a sharp shriek flew out. Everyone prepare for battle. Minami SSI, protect Mastiford SSI. G got it. Hap, guardian. Minami shouted something and she began to shine with a golden light. I was curious as to what skill she used, but I decided not to look her way as the light was almost blinding. Father and I stood on guard on the left and right side respectfully when suddenly something flew toward us. It's poisonous. The spider web is poisonous. It's poisonous, be careful everyone. Thanking Pika for warning me, I punched at the spider web and burned it up with Pika's lightning. Not one or two streams of spider webs, but hundreds flew toward us consecutively. Damn, if collected, there were enough to make several shirts. Mastiford also created a few balls of flames in mid-air, and was freely controlling them to burn up incoming spider webs. Father consecutively shot out light shockwaves and exploded spider webs mid-flight. Watching it, I realized people's abilities could be used in various ways. I thought to develop new ways to use my ability as an elementalist. By the time all the spider webs had been leisurely taken care of, someone's voice flowed out. Ah, humans. I finally meet you. Because the voice was so sweet, I stopped moving for an instant. Where was this voice coming from? Whose was it? I was shaking just by hearing the voice. Come, come to my embrace. I raised my head. Everyone else did so as well. That's where the owner of the voice was. From beyond the burnt up trees, the abdomen of a spider appeared. It was slightly bigger than the giant spider from before at about 5 meters, but on the place where the spider's thorax should be, there was something one would not expect to see on a spider. Spider Den's boss monster, Arachne, appeared. Defeating Arachne and clearing the dungeon will grant special rewards. Come, hurry. I will give you everything you desire. A girl. Father quietly whispered. Yes, it was a human. An extremely beautiful one at that. She had flowing black hair and a pair of big eyes. The irises which carried a web shape left a deep impression. It was a beauty that could not exist in reality. A mystical, illusionary beauty. She had the power to grasp people's attention and not let go. 
Without wearing any clothes, her seductive figure was hard to describe with words. Master, snap out of it. The moment Pika's shout rang out in my head, I bit down on my cheek. Although it bled, it roused me completely. Thinking that I was about to run into its embrace, I couldn't help but get goosebumps all over me. Not to mention, the temptation had not ended yet. However, with my years of experience as an explorer, I knew what I had to do now. It was something that never let me down once. Oot. Hood fall for it. A mere monster, you're a hundred years too early to try and seduce me. In that instant, my somewhat hazy mind became clear. The girl on the spider's abdomen was certainly beautiful, but it was still a monster. How could anyone be mesmerized by a girl with a spider body and spider legs? W. What? I, just what happened? A monster. It's a monster. Hook. W. Wife. I'm sorry. Father, we're going to need to have a deep conversation about this later. Chapter, 45. After questioning what thoughts father had in my mind, I urged everyone on. Attack. Now. D did you do that, Yun Wawu? Less questions, more attacking. With that, I charged at Arachne. War cry lasted for five minutes. If we couldn't defeat Arachne in five minutes, her charm would likely wipe us out. I, I don't have mana right now. I used it all up exploding the army. Are you really SS ranked? Hey, we wouldn't be doing so well without me. I'm recovering, so wait. It was true that she played a big role. Arachne's most feared weapon, the Black Forest, was restricted for now. The huge explosion from just now seemed to have reached Arachne too, as one of her legs were missing and green goo was coming out of what should be a hard carapace. That said, Mastaford was a magician. Shouldn't she have learned how to manage her mana from the time she spent exploring the dungeon? For someone with such a powerful ability, she wasted too much energy in using her skills. In a way, her ability was something that went beyond her league. For the record, Arachne's bodily fluid sizzled upon contact with the air and rose up as smoke. It was poisonous as well. Kayak. What sounded like the singing of a beautiful voice was now nothing more than a monster's roar. At the same time, two of Arachne's legs flew toward us. I instinctively knew that if I was hit, I'd die. The goosebumps I instantly received urged me on. Using divine speed, I charged past its attacking legs and sent a punch toward its upper body. Kayak. Letting a grappler approach, it's over. Thunder Beast. Since I used 20% of my mana with divine speed, I could only maintain Thunder Beast for 80 seconds. The moment I activated Thunder Beast, the lightning that was staying in my gauntlet expanded to cover my entire body. I could feel it strengthening my muscles and nerves. I could tell that this powerful ability had at least doubled my overall power. From the outside, I looked like I was simply shining, as if I was shooting out lightning from my body. So that's why it's called Thunder Beast. To anyone looking at me, I probably looked more like a lightning beast than human. Master, something is forcefully taking my power. Just hold on a little, Pika. It'll end it soon. Oh okay, it'll do my best. Do Master's best too. With Pika's cute voice cheering me on, I struck my lightning-clad fist on Arachne's face. Although it looked like a weak woman's face from the outside, there was not even a scratch, as expected of a boss. In fact, Arachne screamed and tried to bite down on my fist. At the same time, she raised her two legs to attack me. Thankfully, father was there to stop it. You dare seduce me, when I have a wife. It'll take your silk and make my wife and you a address. Mega Wave Lance. Father seemed to have used a major skill as Arachne screamed as her huge eyes trembled. Using this opening, I quickly wrapped my legs around her waist. Although she was a monster, I had still come in close contact with a naked woman's body. As such, her sweet scent and soft skin distracted me. After seeing this, father shouted, You bastard! I'll tell you about this. Shut it, Kong Yung Gong Nim. Can you not make it obvious that we're father and son? After shouting at father, I continuously punched Arachne's fair face. 
tactile feeling aside, she was still a monster. Her beautiful looks made me feel like I was doing something inhumane, but I chose to ignore it. Kia. Don't open your mouth, your spit's getting on my fist. P.U.K. 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 After continually pummeling her face with all my strength, Arachne's face finally tore up from the heightened impact from Thunder Beast, and poisonous blood began to shoot out. However, the lightning enveloping my entire body did not let the poison reach me in the slightest. I continued to punch her to do as much damage as I could before the time ran out. At the same time, just in case I couldn't finish her off in the time frame I had, I did not forget to prepare the highest grade health and mana potions I had. Kia. Arachne seemed frustrated that she was unable to do anything as she wildly shook her human arms to attack me. Although they looked like a frail girl's arms, the impact they had upon hitting my armor was indescribably painful. Although they weren't as strong as her spider legs, they were as strong as my own arms. Furthermore, as time went on and she realized the life-threatening situation she was in, she crazily shot out spider webs from her bottom half. The streams of spider webs flying out in all directions then joined into a single large stream and attacked father and me. As we were both super armored, receiving the attack didn't hinder our movements by much. That said, we would still be injured. At that moment. You you, if I collapse from anemia, it's you two's fault. Cutie, hold out a little longer. Mastiford shouted. As if to prove the saying that a diamond on a dunghill was still a diamond, Mastiford made her final move. I felt something flying past my shoulders like an arrow. At the same time, the poisonous spider webs that were attacking me were burnt up and disappeared. Not only that, a white ball of flame that was flying through the air struck Arachne's body, making her cry out in pain. In just this short moment, Mastiford had recovered enough mana to use another skill. Although she was regretful in some areas, her ability was undoubtedly shocking. In truth, I almost fell for Mastiford who managed to play such a pivotal role even after using skill after skill. Thankfully, I held on with Warcree's effect. As I thought, love was a status effect. It wasn't normal. I converted all of my emotions into rage as I pummeled Arachne. Ha! Die di 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 Kayak! Die! Wave Gatling! It was the moment where I found out from who exactly that I inherited my harsh tongue. Father and I both yelled out crudely as we beat up Arachne. She in turn screamed and thrashed about with her two human arms and five spider legs. In response, I used dragon skin. When Arachne hit my body, her eyes opened wide in pain. Keek. Keek. Yep, that's what I wanted to hear. A mere arthropod should not try to seduce a human. You're five million years too early for that. Die. I considered using Dark Thunder Explosion, but I saved it in case an event raid broke out afterwards. Plus, I felt it wasn't necessary now either. Because of Dragon Skin, the speed brought up by Thunder Beast was halved. Even so, I was fast enough that Arachne could not dodge me. My fists hardened by Dragon Skin had more than enough destructive power to make up for the decrease in speed. Eventually, the end arrived. My fists pummeling her face finally penetrated skin and broke her bones. Key. The headless Arachne let out a short shriek and went limp. I finally got up from my mounted position and deactivated Thunder Beast. The party members then eased their tension after knowing the boss fight had ended. Phew, ha. I'm exhausted. Good job, So Yun Wa Wu. Nice finish. You looked cool. The moment the Thunder Beast's effect went away, exhaustion swept over me. I felt like collapsing in place. The drained mana gave me a headache and the overexertion of my body made my muscles convulse. Dragon skin was the only thing keeping me from falling on my knees. When I tried to pull my hand out of Arachne's head, I felt something in the way. When I dug through its brain and looked, a bluestone glowing deep blue came out. Although it was small, its brilliance was incomparable to the giant spiders. I suddenly felt strength in my body again. With sparkling eyes, I showed everyone the bluestone. Oh, this looks expensive. Everyone, look. Hey, I know it's a monster, 
but you shouldn't dig through a beautiful woman's head like that. Masterford SSI, you yourself called it a monster. Don't be so picky. You were cool, Yun Wawanim. Really cool. You were like the incarnation of Takamikazuchi One. Unlike Masterford who gasped and backed away, Minami applauded me with sparkly eyes. I didn't know what Takamikazuchi was, but I let it be since it sounded like a compliment. I gave her a thumbs up and slid down Arachne's body. I then saw father rubbing his chin while staring at Arachne's leg that he had ripped off. When he saw me looking at him in anticipation, he knocked on the leg's carapace with his spear and said, this. Don't you think it would taste great if you fry it? Like crabs. It's poisonous. He calmly said something I never would have imagined. Then, a fanfare suddenly rang out. You defeated the event dungeon boss monster, Arachne. 100,000 gold is distributed evenly amongst party members. You receive 25,000 gold. 1. Arachne's silk dress. 2. Arachne's black earthen spear. 3. Arachne's cobweb earrings. 4. Arachne's cobweb bracelet. Gasp. My contribution was the highest. I definitely thought Mastiford would have the highest contribution. Now that I thought about it, although Mastiford showed great firepower throughout the dungeon, the only damage she did to Arachne was through the initial explosion and Cutie's final attack. She would have high contribution points, but it seemed it wasn't higher than mine, as I dealt most of the damage against Arachne and even dealt the final blow. As expected, Mastiford was complaining. What? Who has the highest contribution? Why isn't it me? It's me, Mastiford SSI. Mm, -hmm, if it's you, then though I don't want to admit it. Thankfully, it seemed other people couldn't see the Kong Shin Nim's contribution message. I had forgotten about it, but my real name would have been found out. After answering Mastiford, I slowly examined the reward list. Perhaps because it was an event dungeon, or because all four of us made good contributions, all four items seemed excellent. That said, I knew the items higher up on the list were better than the ones below. Since the dress and earrings were likely for females only, I had to choose either the spear or the bracelet. I glanced at father. His weapon was the silver spear just like mine. I wondered if I should give father the spear under the elder's first spirit. All right. I contemplated for about zero. Zero one seconds before I picked the black earthen spear without hesitation. I then quickly stuffed it into my inventory so father wouldn't see it. It was the perfect crime. 1. Japanese God of Thunder. Chapter, 46. Sorry, but it'll be the first to get stronger, father. It'll pay you back for letting me become a dungeon explorer later. I said in my heart. I knew that if I said it out loud, father would continue the fight we couldn't finish before. I decided to call it even by forgetting about his shameful act when Arachne first appeared. As I finished up the negotiation with father in my head and looked at the spear in my inventory with smiley eyes, Masterford flinched slightly. It seemed she got second in contribution. Ah, im second. Good, it would have been too shameful otherwise. Let's see ek. Masterford clicked her tongue as if she didn't like what she saw. I mean, I couldn't fault her. There were really two items she could choose from. The silk dress was obviously the better one, but she already had an excellent battle dress. There was also no guarantee that the reward from the A-rank dungeon, Spider Den, would be better than the battle dress she made using 45th floors named Monster Drop. She would obviously choose the earring, which meant Minami would end up with the dress. Even if her contribution was higher than father's, she would not choose the bracelet over the dress. However, the dress wasn't a suitable equipment for a tank like her. Although father would gladly take the dress if that was what was left, Minami, who didn't know how much father cared for mother, would undoubtedly take the dress to be considered a father. Masterford likely knew all this, and thus could not easily pick the earring. She was thinking of Minami. Masterford mumbled to herself and asked Minami. It seemed she wanted Minami to make the decision. Some ire, between an earring, bracelet, and a dress, what do you want? You and me can choose what you want. You don't have to be considerate of me. 
my contribution is probably the lowest anyways. How can I? I could freely use skills because you were protecting me. It'll get angry if you keep saying that. I expected as much, but she was too good a person. How could she act so compassionately toward girls? I wondered if she was bipolar. No, maybe it was a scheme to draw Minami into her organization. If so, she had a terrifying acting skill of course, I could only feel sincerity from Mastaford's words. It was unlikely that it was false. Minami must have felt it too as she looked deeply touched. Uni. D don't look at me like that. I only said what was on my mind. Uni. Seeing the two girls embracing each other, I looked away. Stop showing off and pick your items, so we can check whether a raid boss appeared or not. In the end, Mastaford chose the dress which would have no meaning in Minami's hands. With this, Minami had the chance to get the earring. Mastaford looked quite content with the black web pattern silk dress, as she was smiling. It was father's turn next, and he unexpectedly took his time. What are you thinking about? I wondered if I needed to treat father like a pervert from now on. Of course, father quickly dispelled my worry. No, I was just thinking how beautiful my wife would look with the earrings. You can stop with the devoted husband act just buy her some other pretty earrings. Minami SSI would prefer the earrings over the bracelet, too. A Jushi's wife is quite fortunate. She has a husband who thinks of her before his own reward. Kuham, right Yun Wawu is right. Earrings would be better than a bracelet for a young lady. In the end, father took Minami into consideration and chose the bracelet. There was only one other reward left. Before Minami picked it, we gathered in one place as promised before. Make sure your health and mana is recovered. If a raid boss appears, it'll tie him down with a huge skill, so use your strongest skills before it causes any casualties. Got it? Couldn't we have just warned the other ability users? If people end up getting hurt, it's on you, Masterford SSI. Raid bosses automatically focus on the party that cleared the event dungeon. Other people won't get hurt unless they try to get in our way. Don't look down on an SS rank ability user. Mmm, -hmm, well, okay. Yuga. I was kidding of course. Once Masterford's mana was completely recovered, I believed she could restrain the raid boss just like she said. Now that I had experienced clearing a dungeon with her, I fully understood where her confidence came from. If only she was a bit more serious about her fights, she could become much stronger perhaps her clumsiness was a side effect of obtaining such a strong ability so suddenly. I didn't need to worry. I believed she would realize it by herself one day. I just hoped it wouldn't be in a situation of life or death. After we all had a good rest, Minami took the earrings and finished the reward distribution. Everyone tensed up and prepared for the raid boss to appear. However, a fanfare rang out once again. You completely cleared an A-rank event dungeon. All party members gain one bonus stat. You will now return. Eh. What about the raid boss? There is none. When a raid boss appears, the clear reward is given out, then it pops out after the ground collapses. In any case, hurry up and gather. I'm going to cast anti-recognition magic. Leaving behind the sense of emptiness we felt, we quickly gathered around Mastaford. She mumbled something to herself then opened her hands. At the same time, a black whirlpool appeared below us, and I once again lost consciousness. When I woke up, we were at the shopping mall where the gate was. When the gate suddenly disappeared and revealed the shopping mall, the guardians protecting the area became startled and started looking around. We did our best to hide any trace of us being there as we made our way out. Just like that, we took care of a source of trouble without having to face a raid boss. Since I had to deal with the giant spider's corpse and bluestone, Arachne's corpse and bluestone were also left for me to take care of. Ability users could create an ability user-specific account at the bank, meaning the account could be under an assumed name. Although there was a catch that the ability user needed some way to prove his identity to use the account, it was more than made up for by the fact that it could be used anywhere in the world. I wrote down everyone's bank account to evenly distribute the gains from Arachne and to give each of them 10% of the gains from the giant spider. 
As we had partied together, there was at least that much trust between us. After we had planned everything out, we were done with our day. Hugh, thanks for listening to my request. Samire, Yun Wawu, Yun Gongajushi. With this, I'll forgive the two of you for refusing to enter my organization. You are still holding that against us. Shush. I remembered her saying she was weak in close combat, but her elbows certainly hurt. After silencing me, Mastaford offered father a handshake. I liked how you charged him without fear, Ajushi. You were pretty strong. Ha ha ha, you were cool too, young lady. I'd be happy to be in a team with you in the future. You're more honest now. If it's Ajushi, just contact me at any time. You'll always be welcome. After fighting together, we were much less on guard against each other. Moreover, by fighting together, we confirmed that we were virtuous people. After shaking hands with father, Mastaford hugged Minami again. Samire. Thanks for coming all the way from Japan for me. I love you. Me too, Uni. Although I only found out later, it seemed they had met each other before after talking in the communication channel. That was why Minami had flown over from Japan so wholeheartedly. Perhaps it was because they were both actively working as ability users, but they were certainly quick to act. You can sleep over at my place today. Mom said she'd prepare something delicious. Wow, thanks, Uni. Well, I'm off. Because the two of them looked like they'd continue for a while, I wanted to quickly get away. When I tried to leave after waving my hand, Mastaford hurriedly grabbed my wrist. Whoa. Why Yun Wawu? Th thanks for coming. Although it wasn't as much as me, why you at least had the strength to back up your confidence. She was still embracing Minami, not showing me her face. However, I knew she was being sincere. Feeling my impression of her becoming better and better, I answered, yeah, it's good that you know. I'm off then. Did you want to come too? To my place. No, I'm fine. Who knows what'll happen if I go. My house is a normal home. I found it funny that an SS rank ability user who could build a mansion out of gold was living in a normal home. Well, she did mention she was staying at her mom's place. With a smile, I lightly shook her hand and let go. Then see you later. Same for you Minami SSI. You really were tough. I'll see you later. Why yes. Take good care of me, Yun Wawu Nim. Nim. Yun Wawu, I'll see you later. Yeah, Kong Yun Gong Ajushi. After exchanging a strange goodbye with Minami in an awkward goodbye with father, I turned around. Lizard Knight's scale armor was making a pleasant clicking sound. A lot had happened. It was a good opportunity to see other dungeon explorer strengths, and a good opportunity to explore a dungeon that had appeared on Earth. I felt good. The bone chilling danger I felt for an instant while fighting Arachne. The divine speed that I activated at the perfect moment without saying anything. Plus, the thunder beast I obtained. Everything was satisfactory. How fun. I might become addicted. If I were to give it a review, I would rate it all five stars. I felt an exhilarating surge of strength that went beyond what could be described with numbers, and came not from heightened tension, but from something more fundamental. I couldn't hide the smile coming out of my mouth. The world was a beautiful place. Dungeons. Monsters. I didn't know who set these dangerous things loose in this world. But I knew one thing for certain, they were making me stronger. I will become the strongest. The strongest that no one could dare to go against. Pledging to myself once more, I began to head toward the trade center. It was then that I received a call from Yua. Appa, where are you? Did you register as an ability user yet? Yua. Yeah, Appa hit a jackpot in his first hunt too. Really? So cool. How much did you make? Hundreds of millions. I'll bring some fried chicken on my way back. If there's anything else you want, just tell me. Fried chicken. I love you, Appa. Yeah yeah, Appa loves you a too. Just wait a little longer. Ah, it was truly a perfect day. 
There was nothing better than eating chicken with one's younger sister. Chapter, 47 There was only one week left from the three-month period Paludia made me promise. And today, with the muscle-strengthening elixir I gained from the first lizard night I hunted, I had reached my limit. Your muscles become strengthened to their limit, greatly increasing your explosive power. Your strength and dexterity both increase by three. It seems there will be no further effect if you consume more of the same item. The moment the tenth increase appeared for muscle strengthening elixir, I saw my strength and dexterity increase by three for a total of twelve. Combined together, they were almost five levels worth of stats. Name, Kong Shin Race, Human Sex, Male. Class, Elementalist Sub-Skill Collector Title, Lizard Knight Master Rank, Silver 9. Level, 21. HP 7, 6507, 650 MP 5, 4605, 460. Strength 70, 22 Dexterity 63, 15 Constitution 60, 15. Intelligence 205 Magic 775 Charm 455 Luck 215. Normal Skill High Rank Martial Arts LV 1, High Rank Spear Technique LV 4, Pryuta Circuit LV 4, Mid Rank Heroic Strike LV 3, Low Rank Provoke LV 9, Return LV1, Deific Manifestation. Class Skill Low Rank Spirit Mastery LV9, Low Rank Spirit Aura LV6, Low Rank Elemental Control LV7, Low Rank Elemental Contract LV7, Low Rank Elemental Tempest LV8, Thunder Beast LV1. Subclass Skill Endow Skill, Spirit of the Collector. Wow, 22 bonus stats just in strength. 5 from the title's effect, 2 from the power earring I obtained on the 5th floor, 10 from the Lizard Knight set effect. The other 5 came from Black Earthen Spear, which had a cheaty effect of increasing my strength by 5 and dexterity by 10. As expected of a reward from an A rank dungeon. There was more. All attacks done with the spear applied poison damage, and poisoned the enemy with a fixed chance. I didn't regret picking the Black Earthen Spear at all. Although it had not been long since I got my Silver Spear, it was simply incomparable to the Black Earthen Spear, both in terms of stat bonuses and extra effects. Though I'd love to enter another event dungeon. After Korea's gate suddenly disappeared, other countries went on high alert and increased the security on their gates. Although many countries investigated why Korea's gate disappeared, unless a dungeon explorer told them, they had no way of knowing. Masterford had also gone on TV to warn the world about the danger of gates. With the excuse that she saw it in her dream when she awakened, she warned that a disaster might strike if they were cleared hastily. Her words had also increased security around the gates. As there was no guarantee that a raid boss would not appear, I couldn't just randomly clear an event dungeon. Even if I knew a raid boss wouldn't appear, there was no way for me to enter an event dungeon without being found out by other countries, not unless I had Masterford's help, anyways. Knowing stat points and other delicious rewards waited, I could not do anything about it. So there's only one thing I can do. I looked at the scene in front of me and grabbed a handful of popcorn, which I took out from my inventory. Then, I shouted in a mumble, keep going Ren. Crown Prince. I hate you. Ren shouted as he frantically parried the Lizard Knight's attack with his claymore. That was right. I was currently watching Ren's one-on-one -on -one fight against the Lizard Knight. It was a fight that really had you on the edge of your seat. Don't give up. Put more strength into your legs. Yuga. Ren squeezed out all the strength he could muster as he swung his claymore. His form had been honed through three weeks of training. As he had an abnormally high strength from the beginning, if he learned enough techniques, there was a good chance he could defeat the Lizard Knight alone. In truth, the thrashing phase was supposed to last a full month. However, there was no need to break my promise with Paludia and stay for one more week. The tale's coming. The moment I yelled out, Ren instantly reacted and slid toward the Lizard Knight. The tail swung empty air, and having approached the Lizard Knight, Ren rushed into close quarters of the Lizard Knight whose form had been disrupted from swinging its tail. Then, he shouted as he raised his claymore. Lion Upper. Kahak. Good. I clapped. Not facing the enemy directly, but going for a fatal blow using the inevitable opening the enemy created. That was at the core of my teaching. 
Ren had just done exactly that. Realizing I had succeeded in putting down his hot-blooded temper, I felt like crying tears of joy. With this, he could proudly say he had passed the thrashing phase. Sheik. Human, die. As if. Lion strike. Even though I was eating popcorn as I cheered Ren on, I tensed up when the lizard knight raised its spear. If Ren failed, I had to jump in and pick up where he left off. It was why I was here in the first place. However, it seemed I had worried for nothing. Ren used the perfect skill for the occasion, making the lizard knight let go of his spear. When he became flustered, Ren's attack poured in. Lion cross attack. Ren really likes lions. Thinking absent-mindedly, I watched a cross-shaped wound appear on the lizard knight's chest. It was deep. He didn't consume elixirs by grinding floor masters like me, so why was he so strong? Even though I raised my strength with the muscle compressing elixir and muscle strengthening elixir, I felt like I would lose by a slight margin if I compared my strength with Ren directly. As I tried to wrap my head around this mystery, Lizard Knight used dragon skin. At this point, Ren started using the tactic I had taught him. That is, he picked up the Lizard Knight's spear faster than he could, and ran away. Give it back, human. I want, Lizard Knight. Ren picked up my way of talking as well. I called it the IED Intermittent Explosive Disorder 1 Reflection. It was because monsters who heard it would almost die from IED. I wondered if the dungeon would let that become a status effect. Today, Ren's and my provoke skill proficiency was diligently increasing. Give it to me now, human. Like I ever would. The lizard knight became slower in his dragon skin state. As such, he always used his earthquake attack to deal great damage. However, if you made him drop his spear, he would always try to pick up his spear first. If you took his spear and ran away, the lizard knight would always chase after the one who took it. He could try to use his hands to attempt the earthquake attack, but he never did, no matter what. He always tried to get his spear back. With the 50% decrease in speed from dragon skin, it was hard to catch up to someone focused on running away. Even so, he chased after Ren with his reddened skin. Against such a horrifying sight, the one running away would also be motivated to run faster. Since the runner would die the moment he was caught, he quite literally ran with his life on the line. The result was a game of tag that made any spectators watching laugh hysterically. Run, I can see your legs. If you couldn't see my legs, I'd be a ghost, not a human. A huck, he's going to get me. Human. The lizard knight roared as he chased after Ren. Oh. Ren was getting faster. Humans truly showed greatest growth in the most desperate situations. I came to such conclusion as I shoved some more popcorn in my mouth. H. Human. I'm not deaf, you lizard bastard. Kusha. Ren and the Lizard Knight were making laps around the wide boss room. The Lizard Knight, who saw me in the middle of chasing Ren, came after me as if to finish me off first. When I grabbed him and sent him flying back, he coughed up blood, got back up while shaking his head, and continued chasing Ren. It seemed he instinctively understood that he was no match for me without his spear. When the Lizard Knight began chasing him again, Ren frowned and shouted. Unfair, Crown Prince. Why are you so relaxed? I'm not relaxed at all, Ren. In fact, I'm tensed. My hands are all sweaty from thinking about whether you'll be caught or not. Nom. Don't say that as you eat popcorn. Their running competition ended in less than five minutes. Once dragon skin had worn off, the lizard knight had caught up to Ren. I caught you, human. I'm the one who caught you. At that moment, Ren instantly turned around and threw the spear randomly at his face. The lizard knight instinctively grabbed the spear, then made a regretful expression. Lion rage rush. Immediately afterwards, Ren's claymore radiating with a golden aura pierced its chest. It was a clean and powerful strike. Although the lizard knight tried to strike down at Ren with his spear, his trembling arms no longer had any strength. In the end, he dropped his head without ever stabbing Ren. He was dead. You defeated the floor master. Ten thousand gold is distributed evenly among party members. 
you received five thousand gold. Holding his claymore, Ren stood still silently. I clapped as I put the popcorn away. Congratulations, Ren. Aye aye. That's right. You defeated him alone. Hoo 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 hoo. Thank you, thank you, Crown Prince. I never thought I would succeed in hunting the Lizard Knight alone. Ren raised his claymore into the air with a happy expression. I also smiled and responded. You did well. Well, you'll have to do it again by yourself if you want to receive the special reward and title. Ren looked at me with a blank expression, then asked. I, I see then what was this? The thrashing phase graduation test. After hearing my words, Ren became silent for a long time. His hands holding the claymore trembled as he opened his mouth. Hey, are you saying that I have to do another floor master solo raid? Yep. You did it once, who's to say you can't do it again? Ren slowly turned to face me. His hands were holding his claymore. Crown Princey. Smacking my lips, I cleaned the popcorn crumbs on my mouth. Getting up with my spear in hand, I mumbled regretfully. TSK, it hasn't been fully fixed yet. Three weeks. Although the time I spent with Ren was short, it was enough to form a close bond between us. Standing in front of the floor shop, I shook hands with Ren, who currently looked like a mess. I taught you everything I could. If you succeed in the Lizard Knight solo raid, you can go around calling yourself a warrior. Thank you, Crown Prince. But it hurts where you hit me. You reap what you sow. All right, then. I wish you luck. Before you go, there's something I want to confess. Sorry, but I'm into women. I like women too. That's not the confession I'm talking about. Ren shouted angrily. I laughed at his predictable reaction. Then what confession are you talking about? I'm not human. Eh. That wasn't what I expected at all. Not knowing how to respond, I just stiffened with my smiling face. Ren then put strength in his body with a humph. In the next moment, two triangular tufts of fur appeared. No, rather than tufts, those were ears. Ears? I'm a beast man. You've probably heard of them before. A race that possesses the traits of both beast and human. Ah, I've heard of werewolves before. Ones that turn into wolves under the full moon. Full moon. I'm not sure what you mean, but I am the last surviving member of the lion beast man, called were lions. Although we can't turn into lions, we do have strength that vastly surpasses that of humans. In exchange, our wild nature explodes out often. So that's why he was so strong. The mystery had been solved completely. A race possessing traits of both human and beast. As I was thinking rather stupid things like how Pan and Continent also had lions, I noticed Ren's lion ears twitch. With Ren's handsome, but not at all cute, face, it created somewhat of a weird combination. Looking at it, I could feel something boiling inside of me. Ren, put away your ears. Crown Prince, why are you holding up your spear? Why are you pointing it at me? I shouted at Ren who was asking such an obvious question. I don't need animal ears from men. You woa. See calm down. You whack. Just like that, it would take a little longer until Ren could go do his solo raid. Thanks for everything. I'll report to you once I succeed. Goodbye, Ren. Try not to take your ears out. Em, I have no plans to show them to anyone other than Crown Prince. Then, I'm off. After confirming that we had each other on our friend lists, we disbanded the party. Ren returned to the dungeon he came from. Confirming that he had disappeared, I let out a deep sigh. Now that a comrade I spent some time with was gone, I felt a little empty. Unconsciously, I mumbled. I'm alone again. What do you mean alone, Shin Nim? I'm disappointed. When I turned around, I saw Loretta with her elbows on her shop desk and her chin on her hand, staring at me with her oval eyes. I've always been by your side. Ah, uh, sorry, Loretta. You're right. It's us two again. I feel a bit happy since Loretta pointed it out. Because I felt like a connection other than that of shopkeeper and customer existed between us, I felt happy. 
Hearing my words, Loretta's face reddened. Then, as if to hide her face, she put her hands over it. Loretta? What's wrong? Shin Nim. You did that on purpose, right? You did it fully knowing everything, right? Knowing what? Ah. You're really frustrating. Go away, don't come back. Even if I do, they'll see you again on the 21st floor shop. I don't care. Just go for now. Ah, before you go, Hare's holy water. 1,500 gold per bottle. You're still selling. Your business spirit is astonishing as always. A woman's heart was indeed complicated. I didn't know just which rhythm to beat to. I climbed to the 21st floor grumbling. In my hand were five bottles of holy water, which was 7,500 gold. There was one week left. To appease the little crown princess anger, it was time for me, who wasn't some knight nor hero, to run to the 25th floor. 1. Behavioral disorder characterized by explosive outbursts of anger and violence, often to the point of rage, that are disproportionate to the situation at hand e. Impulsive screaming triggered by relatively inconsequential events. Chapter, 48. Zombies. They were creatures with the terrifying appearance of rotting skin, moving erratically without hints of human consciousness. They were said to be able to infect those that they bite or wound, turning them into zombies. It was why so many people watched zombie movies on the edge of their seats. In these movies where everything was realistic except for the existence of zombies, the main characters awaited their doom. All humans on earth turned into zombies, and the main characters, who were always among the last surviving humans, trembled in fear at this unprecedented terror. But what if you added another element to this formula? For example, what if by having high constitution and a bit of mana, you could disinfect yourself of the zombies' poisons? Or even if you didn't have those things, you could just spray some holy water on your wound, and even melt the zombie by spraying it in holy water. Of course, I did not believe zombies could break through my armor anyways. Even if they could, they would have hard time breaking through my skin that was strengthened by my high constitution. In any case, what was left in that situation was the irritation caused by smell of rotting corpses and the concern about my eyes that were forced to see rather unsightly things. Kayak Tempest used in conjunction with the black earthen spear swept up dozens of zombies like they were paper airplanes. Most of these zombies died, and the ones that didn't soon collapsed from being poisoned. As I fought floor masters most of the time, I was like a wolf in a flock of sheep when fighting normal monsters. Tempest. Tempest. Kayagya. Kwa. When I used Tempest like consecutively shooting out bullets, the zombies around me exploded out in all directions like bowling pins. Blood from those that died from black earthen spears poison scattered on other zombies and infected them as well. I felt like I was playing some first person shooter. Of course, no matter how much mana I had, because Tempest used 300 MP every time I used it, I had to drink a lowest grade mana potion every minute. Pika, take care of that side. Got it, master. Since the zombies weren't strong enough to make me use spirit aura, I left Pika to act independently. As her lightning was getting stronger by the day, she could easily take care of the zombies by herself as long as she had my mana. The 21st floor's monsters were weak individually, but there were many of them. As such, I couldn't just leisurely hunt them. You obtained 70 gold. You obtained 80 gold. You obtained 75 gold. As they were so weak, each of them gave less than 100 gold. However, with so many of them, the gold piled up at an incredible rate. Ignoring the annoying messages ringing out in my ear, I quickly made my way through the dungeon. Ellos had described the 21st floor as turtle paste advances in a situation where tension devoured reason, but I didn't know just where the tension was or where I was supposed to be turtle paste. Gulping down the lowest grade mana potions I was overflowing with, I ran forward as I used Tempest. Pika flew in front of me, burning the zombies coming from directions I didn't face. Just like that, I succeeded in breaking through the 21st floor in just two hours. You became level 22. You obtained the qualification to enter the 22nd floor. In all of First Dungeon's history, you broke through the 21st floor in the shortest amount of time. 
This record will remain for long time to come. You obtain the title, Master of Divine Speed. Your speed permanently increases by 3%. Divine Speed becomes level 2. When used, it uses 19% of your mana and multiplies your speed by 550% for 0. 55 seconds. Shin Nim, why are you BAA? This is the 21st floor shop, right? Yep. I just broke through. Why didn't you tell me there was a reward for breaking through the dungeon quickly? Loretta had her mouth open like an idiot. She then spoke as she stared at me. Because I didn't think someone would break through the 21st floor in just two hours usually, two months is considered fast. Is the 22nd floor like the 21st floor? Yes. Ah, uh, yes, it's more or less the same until the 24th floor. That's when ghouls start to appear. But wait, ah, uh, Shin Nim. See you in a bit. You became level 23. You obtained the qualification to enter the 23rd floor. You swiftly broke through, sweeping through the 21st and 22nd floor zombies. You obtained the title, Zombie Slaughterer. You gain 10% increased damage and resistance when fighting undead monsters. This effect becomes 20% when fighting zombies and ghouls. You became level 24. You obtained the qualification to enter the 24th floor. The dungeon will remember this day for all eternity. You set a grand record of clearing the 21st through 23rd floors in just 5 hours. You obtained the title, Incarnation of Lightning. Your speed permanently increases by 3%. Your affinity to the lightning element increases greatly. You obtained the special passive skill, Dash. When you run, your speed increases greatly and you will not get tired easily. The skill proficiency will increase the more you run. When I was about to enter the 24th floor to do the same, Loretta hurriedly ran out from the floor shop and blocked my way. It was the first time I saw her come out of the floor shop. Shin Nim, stop. It's dangerous to recklessly charge through the 24th floor. Huff, huff oh okay. Let me take a breath then. I became stronger with titles. Focused solely on that, I overworked myself. I first put some oxygen back in my tired body and regained my composure. When I looked back up, I saw Loretta glaring angrily at me. No matter how good titles are, how could you use brush past the 22nd floor shop where I was waiting? What a rude explorer. Eh, that was the problem. Loretta turned away silently. She seemed angry. Sorry. I'll always visit the floor shop from now on, so don't be angry. Ramen. Yeah, yeah. I'll bring you some. Mm, -hmm, okay. Then take some rest now. Loretta appeased her anger and smiled. Since she had brought it up, I decided to eat here as well. Taking out the necessary tools from my inventory, I cooked up some ramen for Loretta and me. Loretta cheered loudly as she stared fixedly at the boiling ramen. By the way, Loretta, I heard monsters above the 21st floor dropped residential area entrance tickets. That's right, Shin Nim. What about it? Loretta's eyes were still fixed on the boiling ramen. It was almost ready now. They didn't drop any. I must have killed at least 10,000 monsters as I charged through the last three floors. You shouldn't think so simply. Residential area entrance tickets are super rare. Super. Super. Loretta picked up her chopsticks as she answered solemnly. She was silently telling me to give her ramen. Putting ramen in her bowl, I complained in a murmur. Damn it, when will I get to go? What use is there if I have a special mansion purchase ticket if I can't use it? Special mansion. Loretta's eyes suddenly became wide with her mouth still full of ramen. Watching her trying to swiftly swallow the ramen, I couldn't help but think how cute she looked. Yep, special mansion. I got it from hunting the lizard knight alone. The only ownerless special mansion in the first dungeon is Marianas Garden. Then WHO. Loretta suddenly clenched her fist and shot it up in the air as she shouted in joy. Watching her with a curious look, my eyes then met her own. Loretta seemed to have regained her composure as she slowly dropped her fist and avoided my eyes. Who? I it's nothing. 
Nothing at all. Come on, let's eat ramen. Ramen. Another unsolvable mystery had appeared. After filling my stomach with ramen, I did some quick equipment maintenance and bought five more bottles of holy water. Then I heard about the 24th floor from Loretta. Shin Nim, you know about ghouls, right? Kind of. If zombies were resurrected corpses, then aren't ghouls monsters that appear in graveyards and feed on corpses? Yes, that's what Earth's dungeon explorers say. However, their origins or methods of reproduction don't matter. What's important is how strong they are. She explained that ghouls were in a different league than zombies. First was in speed. Ghouls were incomparable to zombies in speed. They were also strong and tough. Their skin could easily make steel bounce off and their powerful claws even possessed strong neurotoxins. Furthermore, even if they were injured, they could recover by devouring the flesh of other zombies. Not only did it have high attack, defense, and speed, it also had portable potions all around it. Just from their description, they couldn't be more terrifying. Loretta put up her index finger and advised. The moment you see them, send its head flying or pierce its heart. Got it? TSK, looks like you'll have to give up on progressing quickly. Don't even try. If the number of ghouls start increasing, even Shin Nim would be in dire straits. Thanks for the kind explanation, Loretta. T that'll be 500 gold for the information, customer. At my words of gratitude, Loretta put out her hand and looked away with an oops expression. I wondered why she was asking for gold when I thanked her. Life really was full of mysteries. The dungeon generally had the same structure across floors. It was as wide as a castle's hallways and the ceiling was high so that you couldn't actually see it. Torches hung on the side stone walls, lighting up the passageway. If you kept following the hallway, the path twisted and turned. If you kept following the path, you would end up in front of the staircase to the next floor. Although there were some crossroads, they all led to the same destination. It was just a matter of going straight or taking a roundabout way. However, the 24th floor different. First, the pathway was narrow and the floor wasn't hard. Second, there were cross-like objects stuck here and there. The fire of the torches also gave off an ominous aura. It felt like my HP would drop just by being in this place. This is a place full of death, master. Pika spoke, brushing her dress as if something had gotten on it. I tightened my grip on the black earthen spear and observed my surroundings. Even the undead could get poisoned, as they still had flesh and blood. As black earthen spear's poison was one that burned blood and devoured bones, I had nothing to fear as long as I had it. I believed in Loretta, but I didn't let myself become too nervous. If I let myself get scared by something like ghouls, I couldn't become the strongest. Commence Exploration Chapter 49 Commence exploration. The moment I shouted out with spirit, the crosses nearby trembled and then shot up. As I thought, they were graves. What popped out from them were, of course, zombies. As if to show that they were different from the 23rd floor zombies, their corpse bodies were much more intact. They even carried swords and shields, or bows and arrows. Goo. Warriors. Blood. Zombie warriors. Unlike zombies that were born from corpses imbued with mana. The zombie warriors were said to be born in large numbers when the knight's magic power seeped into the corpses of low-class soldiers left on battlefields after large-scale battles. They were known to always appear in large numbers, and they would sometimes turn the people they killed into zombies, adding to their zombie army. However, there weren't that many zombie warriors in front of me. They were likely poor souls who were forced to fight when they were alive and could not rest even after they died. Blood. War. Calls. Us. I gulped down a mouthful of saliva as I watched them slowly getting up with their weapons and rolling their eyes in their decayed eye sockets. When I lightly attacked with my spear, the zombie warriors exploded into pieces and scattered. They were extremely weak. Goo. So it still works. It's because Master is strong. Although they were stronger than normal zombies, I was strengthened by all sorts of elixirs and even had the level 4 high rank spear technique. It was slightly embarrassing to say with my own mouth, but
but I was in a completely different league than normal explorers on the 24th floor. It seemed that even after hearing I had cleared 21st through 23rd floor in five hours, Loretta did not know me well. My overwhelming superiority would not change just because zombies were upgraded to zombie warriors or because ghouls appeared. Ghoul. Human, living, breathing human. Hot blood, soft skin. Human. More zombie warriors got up from their graves. At the same time, I saw ghouls trying to ambush me by shooting out of the gaps in the dungeon's walls. They were certainly faster than the zombies, had tougher bodies, and had claws that gleamed threateningly. Moreover, their eyes clearly showed signs of intelligence. That said, they only seemed to think about devouring me. Come, you ghoul bastards. I'll return you to your graves. Previously, as I heard Loretta's words, this was what I thought. Even if they were fast, could they be faster than ratmen? Even if they were strong, how much stronger could they be compared to the lizardmen? As for their claws containing neurotoxin, I could just avoid them. Even if I were hit, I wouldn't be poisoned unless they could break through my helmet and armor. Of course, because Loretta warned me about them so much, I decided to come to a conclusion after fighting them first. Goo. Human. They were slightly faster than ratmen. However, my physical ability was completely different than when I fought the ratmen. I could see the ghouls' movements clearly. If I wanted to dodge them, I could do so with ease. However, if I faced many of them at once, I was bound to be hit by one or two attacks. In that case, knowing how strong their attacks were would help me clear the 24th floor more easily. Thinking all this in the short instant that the ghouls were coming toward me, I stood in the trajectory of its claws. Bracing myself for impact, I prepared to counterattack. However, the moment their claws hit my armor, an absurdity I never expected happened. Snap. Ghoul, claw broke. Ghoul hurt. Hurt. Ghoul claw hurt. Ghoul weak. Super weak. I had not even used dragon skin, but the ghoul's claws broke upon hitting my armor, and they ran away with pained faces. Why did this happen, again? Oh, right. I had heard that if my defense was overwhelmingly higher than their attack, the weapons of the attacking enemies would break. Defense was calculated using HP, constitution, equipment, and how much mana you use to strengthen your body. With high rank martial arts, my body was further strengthened, which then affected my defense as well. Ghoul hurt. Ghoul return. Ghoul hurt. Ghoul call stronger ghoul. Strong ghoul take revenge. Can you guys stop crying like little kids? And don't talk like you're calling your older brother after being hit by the local delinquent. As I was wearing the dark rat man's leather armor set until the 20th floor, my defense wasn't all that high. Now that I was wearing the lizard knight set and had increased my constitution, normal monsters couldn't pierce through my defense anymore. As I had never let myself be hit by the zombies, it was only now that I found out. Even if I did let the zombies hit me, I wouldn't have thought that even the 24th floor's ghouls couldn't do any damage. After realizing all this, I stood still and blankly stared into the sky. Meanwhile, the injured ghouls except the one that went to call his. Brother were devouring nearby zombies while complaining about how much pain they were in. Once they finished, they attacked me again, broke their claws, and went back to eating zombies. Ghoul recover. Eat zombie, recover. Ghoul attack. Ghoul hurt. Ghoul go back. What did they call this? Macro. Looking at the ghouls sprawled around me with disappointed eyes, I held up my black earthen spear and aimed at them. Although I was starting to like the way they talked, I didn't need to hesitate now that I knew how weak they were. Pika, take as much mana as you need and open a way in front of me. I'm going to run. Okay, master. I like running too. Under my permission, Pika, who started to freely take my mana, shone with a radiant light. Soon, sparks flickers from her body. She then charged forward, burning every zombie and ghoul in her path to crisp. The zombies were, of course, killed instantly, and the ghouls staggered after taking huge damage. Without hesitation, I lifted my foot off the ground. It was time to make use of my special passive skill, dash. 
You oh oh. Clear the path. The moment I lifted my foot off the ground, the surrounding scenery began to be pushed backwards. The zombies stared at me with blank expressions. The ghouls that came after me bounced right off. They then clumped up and tried to block my path forward. However, like exploding grenade shells, they were sent flying in all directions by Pika's lightning and my charge. Fast. This dash skill, I like it. If Ren saw me right now, he would regretfully say, so it really was possible to make your legs disappear. Now that I thought about it, Ren had not contacted me since we parted. Did he lose after challenging the floor master alone? If so, I was going to need to start thrashing phase season 2. Ghoul. Ghoul dying. Just by pointing my mana strengthened spear forward as I ran using dash, the zombies and ghouls in my way were all sent flying. Even if the ghouls' bodies were stronger than steel, I could pierce a 5 cm thick plate of steel with my spear at the age of 14. My current strength was incomparable to back then. Ghouls were no different than zombies in the face of my dashing. I didn't check whether the monsters sent flying were dead or alive. I didn't need them to be dead to clear the floor. I just had to get to the end of the pathway alive. In the past, I believed I needed to kill all the monsters to clear the floor. However, that was only because I would likely be killed by the monsters otherwise. Killing all the monsters wasn't a necessary condition to clear a floor. I had heard some dungeon explorers hone their stealth abilities to the max so they could clear dungeon floors while avoiding battles as much as possible. Regardless, I was currently running while ignoring most of the zombies and ghouls. Even so, because of all the monsters Pika was killing and the ones who died after colliding with me, I constantly heard gold piling up. At some point, I hit a large ghoul and realized he was not sent flying after colliding with my spear. I realized at that point. Kara. Crook a punish human. You're the older brother ghoul. Kara. I first cut off the head of a ghoul glaring at me from the side, and checked my remaining mana. Because Pika was continuously taking my mana, I only had about 50% of my total mana left. The large ghoul was over 2 meters tall, and had a freakishly large right arm. Judging by the color of the right arm skin, it was undoubtedly stronger than other parts. Pika, come in my spear. Okay. Kara. I kill. Then I beat and make tender. The moment I activated Spirit Aura, Kruka swung his massive right arm at me. Although I dodged the attack, fully aware of its trajectory, its direction suddenly changed mid-air and chased after me. Startled, I hurriedly ducked and rushed to his body. Whether it was monster or human, fighting became easier when the enemy was an arm's distance away than when he was right up to your shoulder. Kruka was no exception. Without knowing what to do, he tried to strike me using his entire arm. Hap. With a short, spirited shout, I shot my spear toward his head. He was still a named monster. His much tougher head did not explode out like all the other ghouls' heads. He only let out a painful scream. Immediately afterwards, I was struck by his forearm. Although it was heavy enough to make me groan, I did not receive much damage, as I had minimized the amount of impact force I received. Holding in my pain, I shot out my spear again. It hit the same area, and his poisonous blood spurted out into the air. Cruck. Annoying prey. Only eating meat isn't good for you. In your next life, eat some goddamn vegetables. Kruka attacked once again with his large arm. This time, however, his arm split into two mid-flight. Was he still considered a ghoul? He was a mutant. I would be severely injured if that thing hit me, I didn't particularly think to dodge it. I simply concentrated my bodice energy and mana and shot forward with my spear. It was an attack that used 20% of my HP and MP. White light combined with spirit aura enveloped the spear, giving it an imposing look similar to heavenly god's lightning. At the same time, it exploded Kruka's head into oblivion. His arm had no chance to strike me. In the next moment, a message flowed into my ear. You defeated the named monster Kruka. You obtained event dungeon entrance ticket, giant zombies attack. As a reward. Why did I get a zombie-related dungeon from a ghoul? 
Wait, that was the wrong reaction. Yes. An event dungeon. That was the right one. Chapter, 50. You became level 25. You obtained the qualification to challenge the floor master. Above those that fly are those that leap through dimensions. You cleared the 21st through 24th floors in under 7 hours. Just your courage, audacity, and swiftness are enough to place you in the ranks of great explorers. You have a choice. You can obtain the title Hermes by giving up the three titles obtained from clearing 21st, 22nd, and 23rd floors. Or, you can obtain the title Incarnation of Light by combining the Master of Divine Speed and Incarnation of Lightning titles. Divine Speed becomes level 3. When used, it uses 18% of your mana and multiplies your speed by 570% for 0. 7 seconds. Dash becomes low rank level 5. You can run swiftly for a longer time without feeling tired. You receive bonuses to instantaneous evasive maneuvers. Loretta looked at me with a dumbfounded expression. I smiled bashfully in response. It's been two hours. Shin Nim you became level 25 in just two hours hell. I wonder. Ha ha ha. When I smiled awkwardly, Loretta puffed her cheeks angrily. She then reached forward with her hands and pinched my cheeks. It didn't hurt at all. I was worried. That Shin Nim would go wild without heed to my warning. It was just as I expected, too. Though, I didn't think you'd actually succeed. The ghouls couldn't get through my defense. Ha, huh, really, what am I going to do with you? Loretta let go of my cheeks and let out a deep sigh. Do you understand, Shin Nim? Shin Nim just leveled up four times in just seven hours. I assume you already distributed your level up stat points. No matter how confident you are in your physical ability, you won't be able to fully bring out the power of level 25 for a while. Because of the update, right? Right. I don't even need to ask, but you were planning on going through the 25th floor and challenging the floor master right away, right? I flinched at her pinpoint accuracy. To be honest, I was feeling quite self-confident after breaking all the way through the 24th floor. I remembered my fight with the 20th floor master, and was excited from thinking about the reward I would get for being the first to defeat the 25th floor master solo in my first try. I planned to keep running forward but it seemed my plans were discovered. As expected, after five years of watching over me, Loretta knew me quite well. No way. You need to rest. Just do some light exercise if you want to work out. For at least five hours. Although even five hours shouldn't be enough, with Shin Nim's physical ability, you'll at least grow somewhat used to it. Make sure you rest for three hours afterwards. Do you understand? I got it, so don't look at me with such scary eyes. I smiled bitterly. Then, I remembered the message I got when I broke through the 24th floor. The message that asked me to make a choice. I decided to ask Loretta about it since I was curious. Loretta, if you had to choose between Hermes and Incarnation of Light, which would you choose? Hmm. What an interesting question. Why do you ask? Loretta became absorbed in thought. She had her index finger on her cheek and was tapping on it as she thought seriously about my question. It seemed she had soon come to a decision as she told me. The incarnation of an element, or a god. Although I.D. prefer to choose the element, the other side isn't an incarnation, but a god's name. In that case, there's really only one's choice. A god's true name possesses his equivalent power. So Hermes. Hermes is what I.D. choose. I see. I didn't really understand though. When I said that, Loretta gave me a cute grin, as if to say that's what I thought. She then asked. Where did Shin Nim hear about that? Regardless of which myth, to hear a god's name in a dungeon, you should at least be on the 50th floor are you friends with a gold rank explorer. Ah, uh, no, I've just been told to choose between those two titles. You know, between Hermes and Incarnation of Light. What? Loretta's eyes quickly widened. Then she grabbed my shoulders abruptly. Hermes. Hurry, hurry. Before another miracle happens and some other explorer takes the true name before Shin Nim. 
Hurry. Oh okay. Ill choose Hermes. Even as I was being shaken by Loretta, I made my will known. In that instant, a fanfare rang out. You became the first explorer on earth to obtain a god's true name. Congratulations. For accomplishing this grand achievement, you receive three skill points. Current skill points, 9. You obtained the title Hermes. Your speed increases by 15%. All stats increase by 5. You obtain the qualification. Your affinity to all elements increases, and your affinity to the wind element increases greatly. Once per day, you can summon Teleria for 10 minutes. Teleria allows you to step in the air freely and even fly. However, when inside the dungeon, you cannot use it for the pure purpose of moving around. As your body familiarizes itself to the true name, more abilities will become open. D did you get it? Did you? The moment I earned the Hermes title, I felt my body become significantly lighter. Even taking into account two of the three deleted titles that raised my speed by 6%, my speed rose by 9%. It wasn't too surprising that my body felt so light. Not to mention, my strength and dexterity went up by 5 each as well. Being able to move 15% quicker was nice. That said, it seemed I would need more than one or two days to get used to this speed. In fact, until I grasped my physical ability in detail and knew every little change to it, I felt this ability would do more harm than good for a little while. In exchange, once I got used to the change, the increase in my strength would be incomparable to if someone else received the same ability. Plus, there was Teleria. It was the name of Hermes' winged sandals. Although it was only for 10 minutes every day, being able to fly had great benefits. Of course, this would also take more than a day or two to get used to. Most important was the fact that there was more I hadn't unlocked. As my body familiarized itself to the true name that short statement was crucial. I would be getting more abilities in the future. I was dazed. I didn't even know why I was able to obtain Hermes. It was a title in a completely different league than the titles from the 21st through 23rd floors. To think you'd really obtain Hermes' true name. You did it, Shin Nim. You obtained the qualification. What qualification? Oot. Ah mm that's a secret for now. As I thought. I couldn't help but smile. A god's true name must represent something other than just raw stats. I could just slowly find out. If it was necessary to me right now, I knew Loretta would have explained it to me. Hermes' true name was certainly an amazing ability. But in a way, although it was amazing, it wasn't enough to completely change my identity. It was important that I didn't get too self-confident. Although I might be the first to have obtained Hermes' true name, Earth shouldn't be the only world with myths. In that case, it wouldn't be weird if there were other dungeon explorers who obtained the true names of gods from their myths. Why would Hermes appear here? Ah, uh, I see. Hermes is the messenger god, but he is also the emissary who guides deceased souls to the underworld. Since that's the case, he must have been affected by all the zombies and ghouls that were slaughtered in such a short amount of time. Though, the biggest reason had to be the record speed clears that had never happened in First Dungeon's history. Loretta? Eh. Ah, it's nothing. Nothing at all, Shin Nim. In any case, congratulations. Hermes' power will be of great help to you in the days to come. But. But. Loretta raised her index finger and advised me in a solemn voice I'd never heard from her before. A god's true name is heavy, Shin Nim. Remember that a day will come when you will have to pay the cost of using his name, so don't become too drunk on its power. Thankfully, Hermes isn't a god known for his battle prowess. That's something to be thankful about. Huhu, Shin Nim is only a level 25 explorer. It will be hard for you to handle a god's power at that level. In fact, you have a greater chance of falling from losing yourself in its power. It's only because it's Hermes that it would be of help to Shin Nim. Am I not understanding because of my low intelligence? Although I said that, I did kind of have an idea what she meant. For example, let's say I obtained the true name of Athena, who was known as the goddess of war. I would end up relying on her power more than my own, 
which would be no different than relying on others' strengths. Even if I tried to find my own style again later, it would be too late. I could only continue climbing the dungeon with something wrong. On the other hand, Hermes' power was entirely supportive in nature. Using it in battle would only increase my battle prowess. As it needed my strength as a basis, Hermes was indeed an excellent ability. I couldn't help but be incredibly happy at the fact that my desire to quickly climb the dungeon led to such results. Sorry to say this while you're so happy, but there is bad news as well. Bad news? When I stared at Loretta fixedly, she put out her hand. Before that, you'll need 30,000 gold for the information cost. Do I have to buy it? Shin Nim, I always want to keep a win-win relationship with you. Without money, I'm not allowed to open my mouth, and if Shin Nim doesn't hear what I have to say, you will come to regret it slightly. Loretta was giving me a hint. After all, there had to be a reason why she brought it up in the first place. 30,000 gold wasn't big enough to risk breaking our friendly relationship. Okay. Here, 30,000 gold. Most importantly, with the large amount of gold I had gained from clearing the event dungeon, I didn't need to worry too much about spending gold frivolously. Loretta mumbled a quiet yes and took my money. The glory of succeeding in the 25th floor master solo raid on the first try was taken by a foreign world's hero 1,500 years ago. Gek. It really was bad news. Like Loretta said, I would have regretted it if I didn't hear it, but I didn't want to have to pay 30,000 gold to hear it. The satisfaction of obtaining Hermes' true name disappeared, and I stooped my shoulders. The 30,000 gold was for this piece of information as well as the information about the 20th floor master from before. Although it was on credit with this, Shin Nim and I won't have to receive any penalties. Phew, thank goodness I don't need to hear from that oldie aga ah. Loretta put her hands over her mouth in the middle of talking. I got the feeling she was intentionally doing it to give me some information. When I looked at her with narrow eyes, she stuck her tongue out and said, Ehet. It was so cute that I almost fell for her. After letting out a dry cough, I asked her. In that case, can I know about the availability of the first for 30th and 35th floors? Yep, that'll be 50,000 gold, customer. Maybe she really was just hungry for gold. Watching her smile so happily, I imagined myself flicking her forehead.